Ah, man, I was going to play Caster Chicken with you. I'm sorry, Sparky. So how you are doing? We, are we on? Yeah, we're oh, on. Yeah. <laughs> man, uh, he's too good at it. You know what? That's the way it goes. I'm TWK, joined here with Sparky for the Spring Championship for Brawlhalla. We've got singles this weekend. How you doing, Sparky? Um, I'm doing. I'm doing good. They they have you in my ear like super blown out and super oh, loud. Whoops. So you probably didn't see, but everybody at home saw the the look of terror and fear as I was instantly startled <laughs> when you started talking. I was, dude. I I was flow state writing notes down in literal silence, and I never work in silence. I always wow. have like break core mix to X two playing and just being bombastic in my ear. So I was I was in flow state, complete silence, and then you come in. Totally blown out. Waking me Man. up for the spring championship free show. Here we are, <laughs> TWK. Uh, we know how I'm doing. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. I was just staring at the camera, and I saw you just nonchalantly looking over to the side. I was like, dang, he's really just going to leave me hanging. But you just <laughs> didn't even know. No, I promise. Didn't even I know. Promise. You weren't fully bloomed yet. But now, now we are ready. I am a late bloomer. Uh, most people know that. So, yeah, we're in the pre-show here for the spring championship. Winter Royale was just a few weeks ago. We saw how that kind of shook out. So now that we've had, like, one iteration of win championship, grabbing our top three from that, or if you're in South America, your top two, sending them to the Winter Royale and seeing how everybody kind of reacts to that, more or less, not, not that it's anything new and earth-shattering, but at least for Brawlhalla Esports, definitely a new and earth-shattering format for us, and especially for a lot of these players. So we've had one iteration of that. The people who were able to qualify for it got to go on, got to move on and actually travel to the in-person event, and I'm sure that left a lot of people at home being like, well, well, I, I, I'm, I really want to go. That looked like fun. Everybody seemed like they had a great time. All the pictures of uh, the players getting into whatever shenanigans they got at, at into in the dinner at Foca de Chao, all that oh kind of stuff. Oh my gosh. I'm sure that serves as nothing but like a new motivator for the players wanting to come out and accomplish the same thing at Spring Championship. Yeah, because you know what? This is that new chance. Everybody's in the running. Some people might be a little less in the running than you would like. I know we've been talking predictions as we've kind of been getting towards all this. But, I don't know, the, the Royale format, it is super cool. You know, you get to go on those dinners that you will never financially recover from. And you can catch that all on the top players' Twitter accounts. It's great. So yeah, we're in spring championships now. Winter's always like the crazy one. That's the one where we talk about it ad nauseum every single tournament every year that it happens like oh this is the weird one this is the one where we're going to check in on what these players have been doing for the past like two or three months yep. after the world championship they had that kind of crunch time and then all of a sudden once you pass your finals you move on and it's summer break and everybody's chilling so some people are working on themselves over summer break some people like myself staying up late sleeping in and not paying attention to anything else until that very next first day and all of a sudden that first day of school you're in the world championships we saw how that played out now we have all of those implications going into the spring championships this year with the idea of San Diego being around the corner just Ooh. a couple weeks after spring 2v2s, the idea of spring Royale. So there's a lot like right around the corner. So the players preparing for this tournament are not only preparing just for this tournament, which still, even if there was no San Diego, even if there was no Spring Royale, players would still be preparing a lot for this tournament, but there's even more that they have to prepare for. Yeah, so what are you kind of expecting, uh, you know, from that winter shuffle? Now we've got the solidification going into the Spring Championship. A uh, lot of people been grinding. Do we expect to see as many crazy upsets, fewer crazy upsets? Who are the you know, the horses that'll really be running right out of the gate here that are going to be the front runners for potentially the year. My guess is we're kind of going to have our top two horses for a while. And then I think that third horse is going to be the one that is going to be the question mark, at least in my mind. And even those top two, I don't know exactly where they're going to be coming into play. Could be this person coming first, could be the other one going second, could be the flip flop. Could be the third person coming in first, but I don't know uh, who we are starting with for our pre-show. I wonder, are they just letting me like freestyle it or 
because I don't want to do that. You know, I I trust. <laughs> I you. would rather them you can freestyle. Tell me Toast who's is giving up you first. the thumbs up. I'm all about uh, it. Let's talk about Godly. Of course. How could we not? Godly Cliffs, are they going to come into play here? So Godly's coming in at number one EUPR. PRs have just been recently updated. Number one on the EU ladder. Number three globally. Coming in with a 9.25 win-loss record. Now, I'm going to ask you and everyone Ooh. at home to kind of remember that because the win-loss record is going to be kind of similar for a few of these players and then not so high for some of the other ones that we're talking about. So remember, Godly coming in with a 9.25 win-loss ratio in rent. That's 233 wins to 25 losses. And if we're seeing him on screen, now we do see the Petra right there. Now we actually see the Asuri. That's what he played a lot of at the Winter Royale and at the Winter Championship. But today he said he's largely going to be playing Lucian and Petra, which uh, am, I, am I looking at two of the other players that played extremely well at Winter Royale? Because Lucian was played by Luna and Petra was played by Radish. Yeah, so taking a little bit of that uh, cross-region inspiration, I guess. You know, past years, we didn't really have those royales set up, so it wasn't as common for players from one region to get to fight against another until, you know, world championship times, certain land times. So I, I wonder if that's something that he's kind of bringing back, like, hey, those were really good picks. They seem to catch us quite a bit off guard, and maybe he'll get to run through his own region with that. Now, Godly, I... I think we can't talk about Godly without his absolute dominance of last year. That kind of momentum, I don't think is petering out anytime soon. I'm with you in thinking that Godly has an incredibly strong run to come here at the Spring Championship, uh, second place at the World Championship, and you know, still on the podium in the Winter Championship. I will say, I think he got a little bit matchup checked, and I think this expanding stable of characters that he's able to play, these new characters that he's bringing into his roster, is only going to help deal with those situations. Now, if we're talking about his stats, he has nine top eights in versus in official tournaments. Uh, I'm not actually going to count Winter Royale at this because uh, oh. I don't want to, because that's not the narrative I'm trying to push. So nine top eights coming out from Godly. Uh, ignore the numbers on screen right there. Nine top eights, six of them are gold medals, two of them are silver medals, and one of them is a bronze medal. Uh, please don't pay, pay no attention to the uh, numbers on the screen right now. Uh, just worried the, the numbers that I'm saying with my voice. So if we add six and two and one, that equals nine, and nine equals nine. Nine top eights, nine podiums. Every time he makes it into the top eight, he's going to make it into the podium. That's huge. Wow. That is something that, like, nobody else is doing that is an amazing track record but absolutely then if monstrous. we look at what he's been doing recently he has been trending in a surprise direction of course second place at bcx third place at winters when it's you it's a smaller pool of players that he's going up against compared to the to the world championship and then fifth place at the winter royale if anything he should be doing the best at the winter royale because you know exactly who you're going to be playing uh, uh, against. It's a smaller pool of players. And you mentioned yourself, that matchup check came through and he wasn't prepared for that. So that sees me looking at Godly going in a negative direction, which is kind of surprising for him. It's not, it's not horrible. It's not anything he can't come back from. It doesn't look my stock portfolio right now. But a large amount of people, like myself included, expected him to possibly win BCX. Um, mm. Definitely win Winter Championship and a good chance at winning the Winter Royale as well. So the fact that he's been doing more poorly, even though the more I talk to him, he talks about, okay, I'm focused. I want that top spot. I'm ready to win into an L. I'm focused. I want that top spot. I'm ready to win into an even bigger L. Top spot, ready to win into an even bigger L. That's just very surprising to see for specifically Godly as a player when we compare it to that domination you talked about. So I, I guess you've, you've got to look at, okay, but what has kind of been causing this? Because let, let's see, really, it's not like he's really falling off. It, there's, you know, about two or three people in the world that are outperforming him, knocking him down off of that gold medal spot. 
And I, I do want to talk about one of those players who did end up doing that in the Winter Championship. And that is Machete. I just think this player is absolutely phenomenal. He's been in the scene for an incredibly long time and currently power rank number two in the Winter Championship, that gold medal. So that's the player that we're seeing having that more upward trend. Exactly. He's going to be number three on the EU ladder currently. He's going to be at about a 3.21 win-loss ratio. It's going to be 241 wins to 75 losses. And if we look at the bracket that we've seen today, he's moving on through it. Doesn't seem to be having too much trouble with any of the players he's gone against so far. And he's locking in the Tesca. So we're still seeing him play the legend that he won the Winter Championship. That was his first official tournament win since Super Summer Slayem EU from Brawl League in 2019, and that was first oh. major win ever. Only dropped two games the entire tournament, one to Spill and one to Neves. Man, that is absolutely wild. And you know what? Machete, he's played so many different characters throughout his tenure. It was really interesting to see him play that newest legend and the newest weapon, the Battle Boots, in the Winter Championship. Uh, there, there were a couple other players that were trying to make their run through the bracket with those battle boots ended up falling you know outside top 32 uh he was the only one to really just sprint into top eight with it and he actually ran that all the way to the victory so i I, I like seeing him pick it again here that choice is interesting because we expected a lot of domination from battle boost we expected to look at our top eights in several different regions and see like half of it dominated with battle boots everybody thought it was going to take every tournament in every region completely run away with it because it's new it's the mm. hotness everybody's going to be playing it but that didn't happen that's not how things played out and even after that in the most recent patch boots did get a nerf they got some of their recover time on mist increased and then also got some stun times decreased as well and then of course tessa being the only boots legend also yep. got hit with signature nerfs as well on the fixed force so we didn't see the success from the boots domination like many people expected in winters that was probably something that steered some people away from boots and then also nerfs coming out might have steered some more people away because they see nerfs and they're like okay well the thing's unplayable we can't touch it anymore that didn't deter machete from continuing to play this legend he still sees some gas in those boots that Tesca has. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm with you. I think that momentum is going to keep on carrying. He's got a good stride, and I'm really excited to see what he's got today. Uh, who else do you want to talk about heading into uh, the let's one? Let's move on to Acno. Because uh, Acno is an interesting player right now. I believe Acno is coming in. Let me verify the seed. I don't actually have that written down. Acno is coming in fourth seed for this. He's going to be coming in number three PR. But here, I'm going to ask you to buckle up to before I read out this next number to you because it certainly took me by surprise and that is Acno is number 50 not 15 not 15 he is number five zero on the EU ladder he has 80 victories and 36 losses Godly has two-thirds of those losses and almost three times the victories Acno is not grinding on the ladder. Man can't even technically be Valhallen yet because he hasn't played enough in the ranked <laughs> ladder. So I'm hoping he's practicing somewhere else. Yeah, so you're looking for those custom games, right? Get the sweaty Discord grind going. Yeah, um, I, man, I, I don't know. I still, of course, Acno has everything incredible in his toolkit. I mean, we're seeing a, a moon in on the screen right now. So he has those kind of uh, more strange picks that we're not used to seeing from a lot of different players coming out. We know he also has the standard picks like the Koji. He has several other different legends that he's willing to pick in tournament and do successfully with. So he's always going to be in this conversation, at, at least now until he completely, quote unquote, falls off. But he's been a top three player in Europe for the past three years. That's huge. He had his era where yep. he was like the number one and sometimes the number two, but really mostly the number one. And then even when he kind of fell out of that era of domination, he was still a top three contender at almost every tournament, at least the majority of tournaments in EU. He had one of the most unforgettable clips 
in Brawl oh, history in BCX 2v2s. I just got to say that. I don't even have to go into detail any further that it was the gravity cancel Kaya Bow neutral signature Phenomenal. to get over back to the stage. That context isn't even necessary because everybody knows that clip. And even at the winner championship, he got fourth. If we knew about Machete not being able to make it earlier, of course, it was a last minute change with that Machete was unable to make it. Akno would have been the sub. So it's not yep. like he's down there slumming it at 385th place. Shouts out to everyone who places 385th in a tournament. You're doing better than, than me because I don't even enter tournaments. So we love you, number 385. <laughs> but Akno is still an incredible player, even recently. It's just one of those comparisons where once you go from like winning every tournament, even a mm. little slip, and people are like, washed, he fell off, oh my he's gosh. done. Get him out of here. You're old news. That's how the chat goes, you know? But there is one player that I want to talk about beyond this, and it's actually somebody who beat Akno in the Winter Championship. I'm talking about Knees, the other representative that went over to the Winter Royale from the European region. He had an absolutely phenomenal run in the Winter Championship second place and he was coasting through the bracket consistent three ones and what i really love about seeing on this player in particular is he runs like this counter pick heavy style in four sets of top eight he played seven different legends he also continued that trend back through top 32. he is not shy about switching off his characters to go for a better matchup and i think the more that he sticks with that, the better he's going to be able to identify which matchup is going to be the most favorable, and it's just going to get stronger and stronger from here. Now, we don't know who he's actually been playing today because he hasn't reported any of his legends yet. Shame on you, Knees. Shouts out, uh, we're gonna call, give a call back to Machete because he has reported his character today. Oh, That's very how nice. he's still playing Tesca. Thank you, Machete. Do you want to give him credit for that? But for Knees, uh, we talked about how great he did at the Winter Championship, and that's 100% true. You won't find any arguments from me there, but he did not have a great showing at the Winter Royale. He only won one set in the round robin phase other than his DQ victory against Machete. It was against Sack, who was the sub for South America, and even that was a game five. So he was barely able to take that in the end. Overall, he ended the day in the round robin phase, six and 17. The next Ooh. lowest number of victories was Stingray at 10. He almost had double the victories that Knees has. Three of Knees' sets were 0 and three. One was against Kaina, one was against Stingray, and one was against Luna. It Listen. was a rough weekend Listen, for Listen, Sparky, man. all right. None of those other players are here, all right? We're back in our separate regions. Whatever you want to say about how those regions stack up, you know, Nies, he's getting victories against everybody else in Europe. Now, I do want to show some hope for Nies because I absolutely believe it's there beyond just the general idea of, oh, Nies is a really good player, but I want to look at a couple patterns that he has in some of his placements. If we're looking at his last four tournaments, we see him coming in Autumn Championship in third place. That's very good. That's on the podium. Then at BCX, not so great. We're introducing the rest of the world, but he ended up coming out 13th place. So he wasn't even top eight there, but then at Winter Championship, he's second back on the podium, better than his third place at Autumn Championship. And then we go to the Winter Royale and it's seventh. So he goes, great placement, not so great. Great placement, not so great. What's the next thing in that pattern? I'm asking you to do TWK. This is like an SAT question. Identify the pattern here. You know what? I'm gonna go roll right into my predictions because this will give you okay. your pattern for you. Okay. All right. I'm saying for third place winter championship, that's where knees is gonna be today. I I believe in him still podiuming. I think his momentum is continuing its course. I love the counter pick play style. That's what I want to see. Now, second place, I will give to Godly. He is just that dude. I imagine this guy in grand finals, just another grand finals medal for him. But I don't know. I need to see a little bit more proof that he's kind of learned 
to be able to play against that Battle Boots matchup, especially since Machete is locking that in again throughout today. So that top spot, I'm going Machete. I think he's got the double in him. I think those are solid. Mine are going to be similar. Um, I, knowing what I know now, uh, I wish I could include knees in my top three, but I'm oh. not going to change because that would be a dishonorable thing to do. <laughs> uh, my, my third place, uh, I'm not very confident in it right now, is Acno. I was much more confident before the tournament started because all the way in winner's round one of top 128, mind you, this isn't top eight, this is top 128, Acno lost to has legs in a game five and currently is in the top 32 of the elimination side going up against Fridazol, and that is currently oh, in their game what? five. So in third place, I have Acno. I really wish I put Knees because Knees has a history of doing better in uh, spring championships than he does in winter championships. And if he got second at winter championships, then springs the only way to go for that one would be ah. first place. Hmm. So third place is Akno. Not feeling great about that one, but we'll see how it shakes out. In second place, I'm going to take your gold medal and throw some silver on it because I think Machete is coming in second place. I think the battle boots are going to give him similar success. But that's because Godly is coming in first place. The gold medal is going to be around Godly's neck. I know he wants it. I know BCX was a wake-up call for him. I know Winter Championships was a wake-up call for him. And I know Winter Royale was hopefully that final third wake-up call that he really needed to get back in the form that we're used to seeing him play. Sword sometimes you just gotta kind of you kind of have to play it slowly now and that's not mm. the way he wants to play so he's getting away from that Asuri. he's going over towards the lucian over towards the petra gonna get some of that speed under his belt so he can really bring the domination to his players rather than having to play a little bit more slowly something he doesn't want to do okay you know what i i i can respect that i can respect those choices i'm gonna spoil a little bit for people on twitter if he's posting up there but my picks were the same as duke's picks so i don't know majority rules maybe maybe we'll find out well with the way that act is playing today i don't think i will be the most correct at least including him in my top three but we also have chat predictions coming in here as well we have Acno in third place. You and you and me, chat. I'm the, I'm a voice of the people. I'm a man of the people. Uh, normally, I wouldn't like to be aligned with Twitch chat, uh, but today, you know what? We're gonna take that one. In second place, they have Machete coming out, and then first place, they have Godly. So chat's picks are going to match my picks, which are similar to you and Duke's picks, except I'm swapping out Acno for knees. Um, we'll see how this one shakes up, man. Uh, I really, I want to, I'm hoping that the Acno Friday Ball game in soon. It was Acno! All right, uh, the dream is the still alive. It is, and it's actually going to be Acno versus Baze on the other stream, which we can go Ooh. ahead and start throwing out some links that people can look at. The other stream that will happen is twitch.tv forward slash Pro Brawlhalla. Now, if you want to know what games are going to be streamed on that channel, which games are going to be streamed on this channel, make sure to, uh, if you're on Twitch, you can type exclamation point bracket in chat, or you can go to .gg forward slash Brawlhalla. That will give you a link to past tournaments, current tournaments, and future tournaments. And of course, if you're looking at the bracket, you will see a little kind of flag on there saying which channel it is streamed on. If it is selected to be streamed yeah. some of the other links take us away to the uk all right yeah you know what i'm just going to tell you to park it right here because okay. we're going to be getting into some of the matches on this mainstream so we've got those over at prawl brahalla and the matches starting up here so you're not going to want to go anywhere don't miss a beat because the matches are just starting
to Brawlhalla. This is the Brawlhalla Spring Championship. I'm TWK, joined here with my good buddy Sparky, and we've got European singles bracket going on. How you feeling, Sparky? I'm excited to get into this one. I'm looking at how the bracket is shaken up right now, and we're going to get to see someone on this stream that I haven't called a set for in like a really, really long time, Ooh. and it's Kixay. We're going to get Machete and Kixay in uh, winner's round one of top 32. We're also going to get some godly Sarme in here. I feel like I haven't nice. called a Sarme match, especially in ones, in a really, really long time. There was one, like, 2v2 tournament where I think Sarme did really good in. I think, believe it was, like, Fozy and Sarme. They might have actually won that tournament. So, yeah, going to get to see some new players on – well, new – players on the stream uh, that we haven't been able to watch in a while that's going to be exciting yeah i like uh checking on some of these players that we haven't seen in a bit and we can actually take a look at the list of matches that we're going to be running through during the start of the stream here and there it is godly versus sarme pr1 versus pr22 and then we're also going to have machete versus kikse and also the matches of flamethrower versus his opponent to be determined they're burning through the bracket at the moment as well as simple waiting for his opponent that we're going to see matched up just a little later now we mentioned it in pre-show just a little bit but if you want to look at the bracket yourself and you're on twitch type exclamation point bracket in chat that will give you a link to it and you can see which matches will be streamed on this stream and which matches will be streamed on pro Brawl hall of course we cannot stream every single match that would take too long so we have to split it between the two streams make sure to keep your eyes there if you want to follow your favorite professional players trip through bracket so uh yeah what are we starting with here TDB? i'm You're looking with at a uh, godly godly versus sarme so godly definitely a lot of uh people's top player to watch especially for the european region in this day and age i mean he had an absolute phenomenal performance all throughout last year i mean he's been consistent podiums you were talking about it during the pre-show that he's got a 100 percent podium rate that's unreal Yep, every top eight that he makes turns into a guaranteed top three for him. It's like once you get past that threshold, he's guaranteed to have a medal <laughs> around his neck. Uh, it's most off the gold one. It's not even just like, oh, he got a gold one time and then it's usually bronze. Like, no, it's most often a gold one. Between these That's two wild. players, they don't actually have a lot of history with each other. Their career matches in official tournaments is it's only one. It's one set which oh. of course went in the way of godly but that was all the way back at oh that might have been a long time ago that was the winter championship of 2022 so that was over a year ago it's been a long time since these players have met in an official tournament all right well they're meeting here once again hopefully sarma can put one on the board against godly we're opening up game number one there's godly on that lucian you were talking about this is a new legend pick for him Yes, he's going to be bringing this one in because he wants to play something more quick. Now, you do have the Qatars on the Asuri like we saw him play at the Winter Royale. But what you're going to have with the Lucian pick is you're going to have possible major uh, solid blasters DPS that you can bring out very quickly. But also, you're going to have really high movement speed. And that's just always good. It never feels bad to play a fast moving character in this game in terms of movement speed. Yeah, usually the thing that people talk about with Lucian is, oh man, he only has three strengths, so it takes a lot of hits, especially when you have a low damage weapon like Katars, but look at all these reads he's getting. It doesn't matter how little damage he's doing per hit if he just gets all the hits. He's able to move in and out, use oh the low gosh. startup frames that Katars have to his advantage. Now he's swapping over to the blasters. Again, it's like hardly getting hit at all. He has probably around 50 to 60 damage Woo! on this stock. Finds yet another stock, still in the yellow, has his choice of weapons, likely will be swapping over and sticking with the Qatars. That's what he's been doing so far. And this just seems like an insurmountable obstacle for Sarme, who's choosing to go in with these ground pounds off stage. He needs something huge, but also he maybe shouldn't go for those massive plays right now, even though that's the way he could turn this into his favor. It's extremely unlikely. So maybe you try to figure out as much as you can while you're still losing. Yeah, I guess that that is a really good point because these are best three out of five sets. So the more that you can turn it into a little bit of a marathon, hold on during this first game. That information, as kind of the underdog coming into this match, 
Looks like it's just going to fare better for you than for Godly. Oh. Right now, Godly's <laughs> pedal to the metal, three stock, under two minutes. Wow, 551 damage. We're gonna average that over the three stocks. That is 183 and two thirds. You turn red at 160. If you're playing a low strength legend like Lucian, he is going into the strength stance, gonna raise that from three to four, take one out of his movements. So you sort of give him that four, five, six, seven stat range that everyone loves. One of the reasons why people played Val for as long as she was dominant in the meta. One of the many reasons to play her. So yeah, he has, you know, decent KO potential in terms of just the raw statistic numbers, but the way he's able to play means he doesn't have to put out 200 damage and KO with a blaster side. Yeah, that's that's the real thing, right? It's because Lucian with that low strength, Tars usually a little bit later on the knockout range. Blasters, you usually have to go for the, the down light into recovery, but this is a tall ceiling stage. So what does Godly do? He's been leaning on the signatures for the knockout. He's been blending them in really, really well. But Sarme right now has been blending in this counterplay really, really well. He's going to lose the first stock there, but he dealt far more damage than he did in the entire first game. Yep, he already has Godly in the red. There was a chance that he was almost gonna KO with the Blaster's neutral signature, of course, off of this Diana swap. Tried to grab the D-Sig, no, goes over with the ground pound, picks that one up. I don't think the D-Sig would have KO'd because it was way too far from the corner. So he's gonna get the guaranteed bounce off the stage, taking away some of the momentum as far as he sends Godly. So I don't think that D-Sig even if he picked up would have KO'd, but of course, you saw how much force was on that ground pound. Gets the KO there. Doing some good spacing here, coming out from Sar. He's able to get in and out, but he's starting to take a little bit of punishment. That fadeaway turnaround side Ooh. air that Godly just did, that is one of the reasons to play Lucian. You have that in-air movement speed. It just feels so good. You can fly around the stage, get on top of your opponent, put the pressure on, which when you have guitars in your hands like he does now, that's, that, that's exactly what you want. Yeah, that's the real thing. Where did all those stat points from Luc Lucian's strength go? All into speed. He's one of the fastest legends in the game. I mean, you can see him just blitzing around the stage. I do love Sarma's pick of focusing more on the longer range weapons, the blasters, the bow. You get that down light engagement. So that way you don't have to keep up with the speed if you can just engage from farther away. Now he finds the down light reaching out with those three blast picks up that Gets the recovery, of course, right after for the true KO combo. But one thing he could struggle with, he hasn't really struggled with it too far just yet, but if he wants to focus on the bow for that KO, then he's gonna have to worry about, I mean, like, what's the setup? It's D-Light Recovery, which is a consistent option, but on a map like Demon Island, when you're sending at that 45 degree angle, that's far away. And even though Lucian is quick, he also has solid defense. And the way this it's set up right now with the stance, he's at six defense which is a solid place oh. to sit. he's a thick boy and he's adding up this damage on Sarme's final stock but this is a much better game for Sarme yeah I mean he's brought it down two final stocks he's not even really that far behind but he's got to watch out for those big heavy hits he's dodged two signatures now and he's chipping away at that slight lead that Godly has whoa oh. what a phenomenal perfect punish right after the signature uppercut ends he just jumps right back over and gets the ground pound. I think most players would have gone for an uppercut there. That was such a wild option. And that was a good choice given that he was unarmed because exactly like you said, I, nine times, not even nine, 11 times out of 10, I'm going for the unarmed recovery and then I would throw the game away. But no, Sarme knew that because he's unarmed, he basically has that, all, that stacked hitbox with the ground pound. He activated that so quickly for the vertical down KO, and we're seeing the instant swap. God saw some writing on the wall there, whether it was like the matchup change that he wants to go with, or whether he just wants to change things up in general to keep Sarme guessing. He's going over to the Petra. All right, we're gonna see if that'll kind of play out the way that the uh, first game opened for this set, where Godly was able to just kind of accelerate over Sarma before he could get his bearings. Or if, you know, the legend swap isn't going to be quite as jarring as going into the set. Now he goes in with that ground pound and immediately gets punished for it. But one thing we saw, like specifically with that punish on the signature, on the neutral signature or the side signature last game that he got, 
Godly was using the signatures so well, and still was last game, but all of a sudden we saw things sort of change. And that major thing, that major uh, singular thing with the signatures, where he was finding KOs for early, all of a sudden that turned into a little mm. bit of a rough spot for him there at the end of the game. Sarme starting to figure it out, but all of a sudden now we have this swap, and now it seems like we're looking at game one. You replace this Petra with a Lucian, and I would not be able to tell the difference between this and game one. Yeah, I, I, this is a very scary thing. And, oh my gosh, already he is once again on pace, working on that three stock, potentially under that two minute mark like we just saw in game number one. D does Godly just have this? I think he does. I think after we saw everyone's kind of matchup trouble, specifically with Raish, and I mean, for the most part, Raish's orb at the Winter Royale, I think this is a fantastic choice because that's just going to be even further exploited once he goes back to oh just gosh. EU. It's another three stock, now going up to one. If, if nobody knows how to fight the orb in the region where you have the one orb ambassador of Raish, then if you take a strong orb and put that in EU, it's going to take down everybody. That's really scary. But I'm staring at a legend swap of Sarme once again. Here we've got the Mordex on deck now. So this is an interesting pick coming out for Sarme. I'm going to have to find some stats on this. Hasn't really reported it too much in tournament. Godly is just already going to work with this orb. And that's not a surprise based on what he said just like right before the tournament. He didn't want to play sword anymore because sword is sort of a slower paced weapon. So what does he swap to? The Katars. Very high speed Lucent. Now what does he swap into? Over to the orb. Over to Petra. She's quick. Orb has fantastic frame data. It feels good to just throw out those moves. Great range, great close defensive options as well. Great string potential, great edge guard. And you're seeing all of it. Every single piece of it come out from God. Yeah, Godly just starved out the options. It was the phenomenal edge guard there. Just enough side airs to get the job done. And Sarme, you know, I was hoping there was, uh oh, wait a minute. Signs of life, yes. <gasps> no, oh, no. Man, he, he dipped. Down. He really Just a wanted that knockout. Bit too long. TWK, oh. he got the hit, the neutral air, able to get back to the stage, and Godly is keeping this one going. Now, I do have some numbers here. Mordex oh. for Sarme is going to be level 100, his second highest level legend behind the Val. Oh, wow. But it's still, man, Godly just makes you look like so much worse of a player than you actually are. Well, okay, at least the three stock has been denied. When we saw Sarme make adjustments in game number two, he actually was able to turn it around. This one, a little bit slower to make those adjustments, but I like hearing that he's got so much experience on the Mordex, that level 100, that's insane. And we're seeing him do better this game than we saw him do the first game. So while the character swap from Godly has seemingly thrown Sarme for a loop so far, he's still doing better than that first game. He still has some good damage on this stock. He could take that away. He goes for the sidelight into the ground pound. Oh! And gets that one. <laughs> we're Actually, in it. I'm surprised he was able to find contact with that. He's going to have his choice of weapon. He's going over to the gauntlets. I love seeing this adjustment. You know, it seems like Godly is always able to get one just absolute blowout game on whatever le legend he opens up with. And then Sarme has the answer. Now, if he's actually going to be able to bring that to a game five, still a little bit too dicey to say now we've had top 32 being best of five for a very very long time but like this right here is why we have now top 128 being best of five it's for these adjustments it's for games like this where godly looks like a nightmare in game one all of a sudden that starts to change that adjustment from sarme he's doing such a fantastic job even though it's likely and oh. now firm that he's going to lose this set 3-1 to Godly. You saw, I mean, we saw it happen in real time. Yeah, just absolutely unreal. You were talking about both the Lucian and the Petra picks, and sure enough, on this first set of watching Godly on stream, we got to see both of those legends to maximum effect. He was very quick to make that swap, to change that up, and it's such a drastic change going from the Lucian over to the Petra. There's, of course, no weapon coverage between those two that they share, even though you have 
fast startup weapons like the guitars and then like the gauntlets, you still really don't have that much crossover between guitars and between gauntlets. I mean, kind of once once gauntlets came out, there were your handful of guitar players, but for the most part, everyone just kind of moved over to gauntlets because they just like gauntlets better than guitars. But man, the way he's able to move between these two legends, the way he's able to change things up at the drop of a hat, surprise his opponent, surprise me, and probably surprise everybody oh, yeah. at home. This is a very scary godly that we're dealing with. It's it's pretty terrifying. I love the spread. I love that there's no weapon overlap, so he gets the maximum matchup spread. And also, you know, Lucian, we were talking about with the low strength, Petra, one of the highest strength legends in the game. So he gets to dictate the pace on even the damage dealing. So that's going to be Godly moving on. He's going to be going up against Flamethrower. That is going to be a top Ooh. eight winners qualifier match. But now we are going to one of the matches that we teased previously, Machete versus Kixay. I feel like I have not seen Kixay on the mainstream in a very long time. It has been a while. I see I see the Jala there, but I, I seem to recall Kixay running a lot of uh, a Surrey in the past. Definitely one that uh, Foda was always rooting for. But Machete, I, I want to see, does Kixay have the knowledge, the matchup experience against the Battle Boots? You know, how much have you been grinding the ranked ladder in this new year since Tezka has come out? That'll be the big question on my mind, because if if I was a player going to the Winter Royale, uh, of course, this is before Machete had to drop out last second, but I would be practicing against Battle Boots because I know I'm going to be up against Machete. Someone like Kixay and virtually every other player except for those three that made it into the Winter Royale may not focus against the Battle Boots as much. I don't know how prevalent Battle Boots are in the ranked queue. I think once we get Thea out, we will have a lot of Battle Boots. True. Because she'll be the new hotness. But if you're just any other player, you may just look at your bracket and be like, well, I, I'll run up against Machete, but I'll also run up against a lot of other players. And if Machete is the only one running boots, maybe he's the only one he can get practice against. So am I going to focus on that for that one matchup that I might go up against? Or am I going to focus on the smorgasbord of other legends that I'll be playing against on board? So we'll see how he plays against these boots specifically. All right, well, I see Kixay locking in. It's not the Asuri, but it is the Katars. It's another Lucian on deck. Katars and Blasters. Going to be going up against Machete's Tezka with the Battle Boots and Gauntlets. Are, are we in the age of Lucian? You know, I, I guess so. It's been a while, but here he is once again. So the last time that... Kixay made sort of a big splash in the bracket would be at the Winter Championship 2023. He's going to open this one up, put some damage out onto Machete, but he got ninth place. And I'm going to have to look at the bracket. I believe he maybe came through the elimination side of the bracket for that uh, because he did. Yeah, he came in ninth place. So right outside of top eight, he's now going up against the winner of that very tournament on a legend he probably doesn't have a lot of experience with. This one's going to be really tough for Kixay. Yeah, I mean, at least just as you said earlier, Lucian does have a bit more defense than your average legend. That is going to help against the enormous strength stat of Tezka. And I, I really love the map pick here because a lot of people that I've seen, you know, they end up fighting Tezka on like small brawl haven or something. That's an eight strength legend. That is absolutely wild. The knockouts are going to happen so early. So here, at least on Apocalypse, you get to burn it all the way through to true red. That they come in and already throwing out some of those signatures. Now they did get a nerf, as we talked about in the pre-show, in their fixed force. So that's going to hurt the sort of early game KO potential, or at least the setup into that sort of early game KO potential. Great neutral air coming out from Kixay. Very safe move when you're playing blasters to throw out on the edge. You should be ready to spam that if your opponent starts to make a move towards you. Ooh. D-Light dash jump recovery. Kixay's got those on deck. Evens up the stock count, but he does have quite the damage deficit to play through. He still is in a pretty good spot. I believe that hit might have turned him red. We'll see the hit Machete gets whether or not he's actually in that red. Yes, he is. Looking for those vertical KOs. Kixay being very careful. Oh, he man. wants to initiate. Sent over to the edge. Machete setting up for the edge guard. Nice little bounce pass there. Goes over, grabs the gauntlets. 
Kind of playing a little floaty here. Almost reaches out. Man, Kixay has been just shy of all these initiations. And Machete just playing like right back at his shoulder blades, getting behind so many of these attacks. Nice two piece there. Gets another hit. Oh, the final hits of that made it over the corner. He's continuing to just add this damage up. It's no like major, I'm going to knock you out, edge guard, but it is just, it's damage when Kixay was already basically a full stock behind. Now more than a full stock behind, still adding that damage up. Okay. Ooh, ooh, As let's go Kixay. Almost, he almost got the slap, TWK. Man, he is hunting for it. He's gotten a lot of unanswered hits, but now Machete starting to fight back. He built himself enough of a lead that just that, that little bit of attrition, just the, the chip damage over and over again, could spell doom for Kixa in short order. Starting to bring this one back, though. He's certainly making it interesting. Has the weapon control. Machete is going to be disarmed. Throws out that neutral life in the middle of the stage. Another one. That should, yep, gives him enough room. But he Ooh. picked up the weapon, then got caught by the D-Light into the recovery. So Kixa is going to have weapon control yet again, swapping back over. Are we just going to see? Oh, he's actually able to pick those up in time. I thought he might have gotten hit out of it. Yeah, Machete did knock him off the stage with that wake-up attack. That's something that you've got to remember. Machete may not respect those guitar strings, certainly not in game one, as he takes the victory with a full stock to boot. But that was overall a less dominating game than I expected. I expected oh, yeah. it to go a little bit more quickly. I'll be able to see on, on the replay what the actual timestamp was by the time the final KO came through, or maybe not, as they're moving to this one pretty quickly. Okay, so that was around a three and a half minute game. Even though it was it wasn't a JV2, but it was a full he had that full uh, one stock to go. But I expected maybe three, some more speed two, coming out from it. I think that is a testament to how Kixay is playing defensively against these boots when Machete has them. It's not just a stomp, he's not running all over the place. It's not necessarily too much for Kixay to handle the where he's just completely overwhelmed. He's doing a good job. Yeah, it's, it's in a lot of these small situations that Machete's really just been getting the better of him here and there. Just playing it in close, tight. Oh, wow. So many recoveries. It, it, Kixay just couldn't land, and he was taking damage all the time. He was getting juggled so much. I felt like I was going to, like, 2019 hammer. Okay. Kixay with the ground pound, expecting the dodge to come through from Machete when it did. So by moving up, throwing at that ground pound, oh, he actually got that was through beautiful. the dodge. The dodge was done, but Machete with big answer back gets the KO off the bottom, has his choice of weapons, sticking with the gauntlets, going with the gauntlets here. There's the two beasts, try to get it with the three, hits the weapon toss and the fourth hit on the boots. All right, let's see if he can get as much of a uh, edge guard as he did last time. It was only the one recovery, so Kixay has been finding better routes back onto stage. Uh-oh, just, just a little bit of that stage. soft dunk there. Oh, dude, the juggles are so good. It seems like Kixay is a little bit afraid to throw his weapon whenever he's like trying to land back Ooh. on the stage. That was one thing that led to so many of the juggles that we saw earlier. Now we're starting to see him do it a little bit more. But you got to think when the Katars are in his hand, his range with the neutral air, a standard like falling Katar option, that's not really going to have the range to deal with Machete's recoveries or even really Machete's nares. So he's afraid to throw those weapons away because it is Katars. He doesn't have a lance in hand. He doesn't have spear. Oh, wait it's a minute. A wait a minute. Oh, okay. Is denied, but some solid damage was done. But say that's going to send him off screen. Yeah, I absolutely love the reads that were happening there. He was on the wall. He knew Machete wanted to go for that, you know, just the, the blitz ground pound, maybe the down airs, the way that he's been spiking Kixay all set so far. And Kixay had the answer. He was going to dip around behind and get that down air of his own. He's going to need some crazy read play like that to make this up because once again, Machete finds himself with a full stock lead over Kixay. See Machete just kind of throwing out attacks. That could get him into trouble. Still has a long way to go before he's really in danger zone whatsoever. So, I mean, he can still afford to just kind of throw out attacks and really put uh, the fear into Kixay, especially because Kixay's on bus stock now officially in the yellow. Ooh, Kixay gets the better of that weapon exchange. Machete unarmed for a little bit, but he's so good at just getting behind Kixay. 
ceiling just a little too tall to f finish that off. That's going to be a little bit of that low strength. I think if, if yeah. he's playing a five strength legend or higher, that might have KO'd at that point. But he still definitely keep himself in this one. That GCD light into the recovery was very nice. Great spot dodge there to get through the weapon toss. That would have set oh. each guard. And he grabs the D light into the recovery. So Kixay, he's not giving this one up without a fight whatsoever. Going to go back over to the Kataris. He has struggled a little bit for range here against the boots, though. You know, I, I, I've got to say this. I love the consistency on Kixay for the down light dash jump recovery because we've seen so many top players in high pressure situations, that one can slip away from them. But Kixay's hit every single one. Unfortunately, Machete going up 2-0 will not be deterred. And Kixay pretty heavily on the back foot here. It looks like he's trying to figure out what legend he wants to choose. Maybe he's just taking a moment for a breather. If he has more in his legend stable that he's been playing, recently. I don't think you can take an old favorite out and expect too much success from it, but if he has something else that he's been practicing recently, I don't think the Lucian is necessarily the best pick, and yes, we are getting a legend swap here. It is going to be the Moonin coming out for Kixay. Oh, wow. Okay, so no shared weapons, fully changing over to the bow and the sight. So this does give him Again, a, a good amount of range for engagement, similar to what you'd be seeing on the blasters. So that way the bow can come in with the down lights. Uh, but Scythe, um, I guess the dodge reads a little bit similar to those he was getting with the Katars. We're just hoping that those are really gonna pop off. Yeah, I think that range difference here with both of his weapons is going to feel a lot better in dealing with Machete. I think he's going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe or even outright beat the range that Machete has with the boots and then definitely with the gauntlets. Right now, damage build definitely going the way of Machete. Every hit that Kixay is getting, Machete is getting at least two or three instead. Ooh! Able to get through that one. Throws out the down signature right over the corner. There is a weapon spawn on the field. I'm not sure neither player wants to be disarmed or they're just happy with what they have right now. Down air is going to send Machete over to the side. Kixay had the time to swap over to the bow if he wanted to, so I think he definitely wants the sword here. Or sorry, the uh, sight. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great signature kit. Unfortunately, that weapon toss didn't find purchase, so Kixay is unarmed. And Machete continuing the weapon starve. Machete has been really uh, not hesitant at all to swap weapons. There it is, the big grapple, tossing him off screen. That's stock number one in just about a minute. And Machete, you know, he's still got a little bit to go before threatened to be knocked out. Kixay going very low. That's a uh -oh. dodge. He's going to have to be careful. He's playing really low here. I think Machete doesn't want to get caught in a bad situation. He knows it will take a lot to actually knock out Kixay there, so it's just probably not worth it. Happens to side air the wrong way. He was so close. He just had to make the guess in that split-second decision. But Kixay's highest level legend is going to be a Mordex, so has plenty of time on the scythe. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, not enough time on the scythe because now it's out of his hands. Over to the bow we go. Now, one thing Chete will have is a lot of moves that actually just kind of hop him just a little bit of the ground. Oh, geez. Ooh, that is likely going to be it. Yep, that's the stock. Kixay on final stock now. But something Machete will have is several moves that, like, hop him up just a little bit off the ground. So if Kixay really wants to play the range game with the bow in hand, goes in for that down light, Chete could just throw a move out to get over that, or if he's just throwing a move out in the first place, and Kixay happens to, th to throw out a down light as initiation at the same time, but Chete can just hop right over that and avoid it. Doesn't have to burn a jump, doesn't have to burn a punch. Yeah, and we find ourselves once again Kixay spends so much time disarmed because Machete has dodged every single one of his weapon throws. He hasn't really been able to get too much off of it. And Machete's weapon starve is so, just so refined. Finally, we get the kill for the KO. Now Kixay swapping over onto the scythe. His main weapon of choice here, the stronger the two weapons, the weapon he has the most experience on. Neutral light going in, he's stuck low. There's that recovery, even that sent high. That not gonna KO just yet. 
Ooh, went for the down air, hoping to end it there, but the down light into recovery, and that's a swift 3-0 for Machete over Kixing. Machete gonna be feeling real good after that. We saw so many different things from the Tesca kit come out and have success. We saw signatures on both weapons do very well, even including a signature KO. Of course, we saw strong edge guards. We saw that amazing juggle from the neutral airs, from the recoveries on the boots from Machete. We are seeing virtually every reason why he wants to play this legend. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I, I, I think the similarities between the gauntlet and the boots kits work really well for him just continuing to rotate through those weapons, kind of keep the opponents on their heels, and also just capitalize on the weapon starves every single time that he can. I, I would love to see, you know, the, the stats, I'm probably gonna pull them after the stream, of just how much time he had Kixay disarmed throughout that match, because that's where just continuous juggles and so much damage happened time and again. Uh, looking at the stats right now, he spent 36% of the game unarmed. He had uh, 42%. Ooh. I actually, the, the picture is uh, unfortunately broken here, so I can't tell which one it is. I'm guessing it is, he spent 42% of the game on the scythe, and I'm guessing 22% of the game on the gauntlets. But yeah, right in between those two, he spent over a third of the game unarmed. That's the weapon star wow. coming out from Machete. Yeah, I mean, that just turns into so much damage. So what are you thinking for Machete here, seeing this performance compared to his performance in the Winter Championship? What do you make of this Tezka? Do you think he's going to have a similar path through the bracket, a similar path through the tournament? I don't think it is as strong. I don't think people are as unfamiliar with boots as mm. they were previously. I think Machete is probably playing at a, at a similar level but because there is a match of experience that EU has had, I mean, largely probably due to specifically Machete <laughs> of all people. So I think people are a lot more familiar on how to deal with this. And as we get further in the tournament, I don't think it's going to be as dominating. Of course, that was a 3-0 in the winner's round one of top 32. But the entire winner championship, I believe Machete only dropped two single games and if i look back at his trip through the bracket i wouldn't surprise me if they were duos and three o's once we got into the top 128 but i expect him to lose more than two games this tournament and of course based on my predictions i don't think he is going to win this game but he does have the possibility okay okay and you know what you you also pose this question of are we in the age of lucian again do you expect to see any more throughout this bracket uh, well, we're going to see Godly, so I think that's an easy yes from me. I think it is a great time to play Lucian. I think Blasters blasters are fine. Blasters are solid. There's no reason to really stay away from them. But, of course, guitars are very strong. The signature kit is very strong. Once we saw like Luna like figure that out and learn how to use those signatures, aside from just like spamming them like we saw from him at the Winter Championship, once we saw that change when we were looking at the Winter Royale gameplay coming out from Luna. And of course, what we just saw earlier with Godly, a very strong signature user as well. So the signature kit is strong. Because the signature kit is strong, you're not as wanting for KO potential. Mm. Of course, you have D-Light Recovery on Blasters as well as a more consistent option. Right. So you're not really wanting for KO potential, even though he is a low strength legend. You have high movement speed, which always feels good. If every legend could have two movement speed in this game, no one would be sad. Like everyone <laughs> would be like, oh, give me more movement speed. Yes, I will take that anytime. It just feels good. And couple that with higher defense. Yeah, I think Lucian is a fantastic pick in current meta. Okay, yeah. And I'm curious uh, if we're gonna see Godly just pushing through the bracket with that. If we're gonna see anybody else breaking out the Lucian. And we're just gonna have to wait for the future matches to find out. The bracket is going to continue to burn through. We're going to take a very short break, so don't go anywhere.
European singles bracket of the spring championship has been blooming and we are now in the top eight qualifier portion. I'm TWK joined by Sparky. What are we looking at here, Sparky? Uh, man, I was going to ask you what we're looking at. Here, bro. <laughs> you're, you're in the studio. I'm at home. I'm looking at my wall. I'm looking at my camera with a sticky note that has a smiley face drawn on it so that I know what to look at instead of looking all, right, all, all over right. the place. Like Listen, a big dumb idiot guy. I know you've got the bracket in front of you, and you folks at home can also have the bracket in front of you by typing exclamation bracket in chat. And just judging by the looks at that, we've got Godly versus Flamethrower. Winner of that is going to be moving on into top eight winner's side. We also have Coco versus Simple and Machete versus Viper. Now, S-Grape is waiting for his opponent, and that's either going to be Knees or Delta. They're currently duking it out right now over at twitch.tv slash pro brawlhalla. So Godly got here over the victory over Sarme that we previously saw on this stream. Flamethrower is here because of a 3-1 victory over Blaze that ended up sending Blaze down into the elimination bracket where Blaze and Akno teammates will end up fighting on the side stream over at twitch.tv forward slash pro Brawlhalla. But we have Godly and Flamethrower here. Of course, you're seeing that Godly and Sarme set on the top there, 3-1, followed by Machete and Kikse, which was a 3-0, a swift 3-0 for Machete there. Didn't seem to have too much trouble. So we have Godly versus Flamethrower. And then we're going to have Coco versus Simple. That is going to be France versus Germany, followed by Machete versus Viper, another French player against one of the old head Swedes. Viper coming out here. And then, uh, of course, you, you laid out earlier, TBD versus S-Grape. It's either going to be Knees or it's going to be Delta. So it'll be a Swede or a French player versus, I don't know what flag that is. What's the red one? 
red flag, white plus, not Swiss. Not Swiss. I see you. I see you searching it up right now. <laughs> I mean, I, I got. I gotta know. <laughs> Is it okay? That's Switzerland. That's, it's Denmark. Denmark. He's Dan Wait, hey, let's go. Danish people are from Denmark, right? Yes. Okay, I didn't remember if it was like a weird thing. Like, oh no, actually, the Dutch are I from think so. Denmark. Whoa. And I'm. I'm a Mara brained. I need Godly to All save right. me here. Hang on, and hang he's on, hang out on. The gate with this Petra. I gotta talk about something very strange that just happened. Flamethrower actually hit the double downlight into side air, and that's why you got to see such a weird angle on the side air, or I think it might even been the recovery that sent sideways because, hey, he comboed two of the same attack together. So that activated directional influence, and Godly was on the ball enough to be like, hey, I'm going somewhere else. Yeah, that just shows the amazing reaction time that Godly had. Because, okay, when we're in 2v2s and it's, it's down in a 2v1 and you're, like, about to be hit by a 2v1 combo, like, your brain is programmed to get ready for the DI potential if you see, like, two swords on the field. But to pick it up that early in the set right there, when you're in 1v1s, to already Again? be thinking about that, it's Godly's amazing. Yeah, Flamethrower really going for these double downlight setups. He wants that little bit of extra damage because that really will kind of propel this forward. But it seems like Godly is just saying, no, no, no. You've got to keep this clean and honest. First Flamethrower is coming in with the Kaya. Same legend, same skin that the world champion Impala won the world championship with last year flamethrower going under the stage just barely Ooh. gets away from that down air that came out from godly but he's still keeping the pressure up he wants to play those faster legends he wants to play those rush down legends so he can stay on top of you stick to you like blue keep the string up keep the pressure up keep the domination up and he's doing that so far against you know virtually everybody he's gone up against so far today yeah, just opening up a set against Godly, I, I think at this point you just kind of have to accept things are not going to go your way initially. Godly's Ken has been absolutely decimating this match. Full stock lead, but Flamethrower starting to fight back. He's really chipped this damage lead down significantly. Now, last time these players fought was Summer Championship 2022, but of course they were on neither of these legends. Oh. Flamethrower was on the classic Ember, and Godly was on his classic Val as well. Flamethrower doing a great job of evening up this game, though. He is still in the yellow. Grabs that weapon away, yoinks it from Godly, continues the juggle. But here comes Godly, has the gauntlets in his hand. They're almost even in damage. This is a good spot for Flamethrower, who has the range advantage, and he's keeping it going. Yeah, this is just absolutely phenomenal. What looked like it was going to be an absolute blowout from the way the first stock and a half went. Flamethrower completely turning this around and not even taking a full game to adjust to Godly's pace bodes very well for him. Neutral light, that's going to turn Flamethrower red. A little bit of the juggle there. Nice dodge from Godly oh. to get through the recovery. The weapon toss to follow that one up. In sweat beads, rips that GCD light a little bit early. Still finds the hit. Picks up the gauntlets, gets the KO off the top of the recovery, and that is game one. Man, they went into map selection so incredibly fast, and then Flamethrower has been taking his time, really thinking about how he wants to knock this down. He taking his time. That's 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 a classic Flamethrower. He does that <laughs> apparently on the map screen. He does that in his gameplay. That's something we've known from him. Which, if Godly wants to play a much quicker game. And if he has the ability to do that, where the fast speed wins out, I mean, it's it's working for him so far. It's not like Simple, who is known to slow games down and force you to play his game. It seems like Flamethrower wants to slow things down, but Godly's just not letting it happen. Yeah, he's definitely sticking right on him. Right now, the damage has been pretty equal. Godly managed to eke out just the, the little bit of the comeback at the tail end there to squeak out game one. But game two, you know, I'm going to give this anybody's game. Nice stare coming out from Godly. That gives him the landing. That gives him so much range to play with. That down air can be so helpful. If you can set up at that 45 degree angle rather than having your opponent directly below you, like you have so much range there. Went for the GC in light. Oh. Get the active frames. Ends up tripping up flamethrower. 
Just broken Balls. ankles. He just juked him. Yep, That's all it. the way down. You just kind of dribble in that orb around him, almost like you'd be dribbling through your legs. But of course, when you're on the edge, you can't really be doing that. Can we can we get the rights to like the Harlem Globetrotters theme or something? Well, we gotta play that in the background. I don't. I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> Ain't no <laughs> way, man. That's gotta be like ten million dollars for a thirty-second snip. Ooh, great dodge on that coming down light. Godly again with these punishes, building the damage up to a full stock lead. Toss swapping back over to the gauntlets. He's going in for neutral signature there, gets interrupted by the weapon toss. Ooh, down light recovery. recovery. I love that choice. It was great awareness. There was a lot of stage left to cover. The side air might not have done it. But that down light into recovery, it doesn't matter where you are, left or right on the stage. Up is always up. Oh, they're coming back in. He's getting juggled a little bit here. Flamethrower fighting his way back in this one. How you see him? You see the way the flamethrower is kind of slowing things down. Even after that weapon toss, <gasps> you saw him back up, which kept him way out of the way. Oh, there's the ground pound godly who gets the stock in the end eventually. Yeah. Flamethrower kind of backing up. That kept him away from the neutral signature that Godly threw out. He was probably expecting like a jump down air or something like that right at that 45 degree angle. And Godly would have been spot on. That's what came through. That's an easy punish for Godly there. You saw him moving down just a little bit. Didn't want to fall into it. Had plenty of room to punish that, but he's going to get here. And that's where you throw out the side air versus the recovery like you pointed out earlier. Because we're on that edge. Because the closest blast zone is the left one and not the top one. Yeah, just great awareness. You'd love to see it. So now Godly just trying to weave his way around these bow shots. Doing a pretty good job so far. Damage advantage in his favor, but ever so slightly. Oh, beautiful dodge read. Here. Wasn't able to turn it into too much more. But again, he's sticking with him. He's always going the right direction. Even if he's not getting the attack, you know that's got to stick in the head. Stay away from those neutral airs. That's going to be oh, the oh, single oh, oh, oh. hit, the side light. No true follow ups there. Off of that one, but there's the GCD light into the ground pound. Godly now going up 2 0, but that was a much closer game from Flamethrower. He's starting to figure out the godly rest. Yeah, that ground pound, I, I really thought he was going to seal the deal there. But Godly, such a phenomenal reversal, not only getting past the edge guard, but turning it into one of his own. No swaps here whatsoever. Flamethrower sticking with the Kaya Godly. Sticking Just run with this Petro, of course. The Ken crossover. He's been feeling good with it. Even with Jet Black Air, he's playing Emo Ken. But he's got to be feeling happy. Seems to be. I mean, it, it's been no hesitation. Straight back into it every single time. Throw disarm. You see him just chugging away. He's just trying to get away from Godly. He's waiting for the weapon to spawn back in. Now he throws out the unarmed side light. He's trying to put some space between him and the weapon. Bond grabs the bow. Oh, that's the first time that we've really seen the neutral signature here. Such a phenomenal option and one that uh, you mentioned Impala earlier, one of the premier Kaya players. It's just such a strong tool in her kit. You see them break it out constantly. So I'm really glad to see Flamethrower unlocking that option here. It just has so many things going for it. It has solid startup, solid hitboxing. It actually has movement. So you can use it to get closer to your opponent who thinks they're in a safe spot. If they're just sitting there jumping up and down, figuring out what you're gonna do, all of a sudden, boom, the almost instant signature comes out and moves you closer. If they're caught in the air, they're gonna get hit by that little butterfly. D-Light into the neutral light. Even Thea probably can't run through that butterfly. That's too quick. Oh, it, it's, it's there just instant. It's crazy. Go. Once Ooh, again, great punish. Great, Even cooked man. that one a little bit. That's flamethrower going for the blender, just trying to whip him up, and it's just that's, that's the second time, and it's been a major punish each time coming up from Godly. That signature like used to be one of the most feared signatures back in the day, the way players were able to hit it, but uh, you know not quite as much anymore, especially when you figured out like Godly has. Oh yeah, I mean he is just prepped and ready, but right now flamethrower 
still has a bit of an advantage for this one. Is this going to be the pivotal turnaround? This is kind of like do or die for his winner's bracket moment, just because he's down 2-0 in the set. Juggle opportunities, no, just a single hit. Flamethrower, doing a great job getting around him. Ooh, went for the side signature, but Godly interrupting, giving no quarter every single time. He's there just throwing hands. Has control of the weapons here. Gonna stick with the gauntlets. Had plenty of time to go over and grab the orb. But he just let it fall and despawn. Next weapon spawn comes in. It's gonna be the spear. There's the recovery. Hoping for the juggle, but he wasn't able to grab it. Was in sweat beads. Now gets hit by two. That's been the vertical options for the follow-up out of the neutral air that Godly's been going. He reaches up with the neutral air and throws the down air vertically down. Uh-oh. There's a dunk. Some trouble brewing. Flamethrower with the momentary edge guard. Tries to slide charge that. Godly scoots just behind it. Ooh, oh, the neutral bow, light. Neutral light? Oh, my gosh. How much was damage was enough. on him? Yeah, he had a lot of damage, and he was up high enough from that soft platform. That's the brutal three-piece that Godly just picked up. That back side of the recovery. All right. Oh, flamethrower now unarmed. You see it over there. Godly going for the weapon starve. Flamethrower's got to pick his spot so carefully. Flamethrower, he needs a victory here. He has to start wrestling this one back in his favor. He had a lead early on, but that's just dematerialized. Oh and yet again, on the edge, Flamethrower, he tried to channel Akno, but you are not him, and Godly is ready. GCD light into the ground pound. That's now one of many stocks that we've seen Godly take away with that exact move today, of course, over on the edge. Godly moving on with a 3-0 over Flamethrower. Man, look at just the precision of that knockout. Sniped it out. I mean, the knowledge that, hey, that owl, it only hits above. It's not going to hit anybody that's standing on even ground with Kaya. So let me just line it up so that way I can slide kick right under the owl. Yeah, that is an owl. I don't know. I, I called it a butterfly. I'm bad at recognizing <laughs> uh, shapes and colors in front of me. Which is why I thought that like the taxi cab thing that Jay does, I thought it was a toaster. Um, sure, so why I'm, not? I'm not. I'm not good at recognizing shapes and colors. Sorry, everyone. That's okay. At least you recognize how much of a threat they are. That's all you really. That's need. true. That's true. Man, 40% accuracy for Godly's signatures. Really knowing where to place them. I I love that punish against the Kaya down spear. Just cook the shore you can right behind him. Oh, brutal. Being able to punish that several different times on top of the reaction time that he had to get the DI early oh on in the set. That just shows that he's he's like so much more than a flowchart player who like goes in with a plan. And then as long as everything goes according to plan, like everything's great. You follow step one and then step two, and then, oh, you go on to step three, step four. But if you mm -hmm. don't have that plan, you need to have reaction time to be able to notice what's going on at any given moment on a frame by frame level. And Godly just showed us that. His ability to recognize what might be coming, to be able to react to that in time, to be able to, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna coin a new term here, preact. Oh. where you react ahead of time because it's a read. Some people might just call that a read. I'm going to call it a pre-act. <laughs> but his ability to do that while also showing that he can find those moments as they are spontaneously happening in front of him. I mean, who's going for double unarmed delight? This isn't this isn't 2018 anymore. People aren't really people aren't doing that on the regular. So hey. that shows raw reaction time coming yeah. out from Godly as well. I, I I love that. It's it's the awareness, it's the reaction time, it's the the knowledge and also just you know, the whole roster that Godly's got put together, it makes him such a terrifying player to go against. We've seen it now in both of the sets where right out the gate, he will take like two stocks completely unanswered to kick off the set. That is a scary, scary thing, especially this deep in a bracket. 
and it shows that he has two different legends that he can do that with. Mm. We saw him leading against Sarme earlier with the Lucian. That set, he just completely paid the, played the Petra from game one on. Yep. And that's the reason he made it into the top eight on the winner's side. So he's guaranteed top six at this point. And we're going to be moving on to our next set. It's going to be Coco versus mm. Simple. Okay, first time that we're getting to see these players on the mainstream yet today. Uh, we do also still have some matches going on over on twitch.tv slash pro brawlhalla, so you can kind of side stream watch them both at the same time. But it looks like Simple is going to be playing the Asuri, and Coco, another player, rocking the Petra. Yeah, this is an interesting pick coming out from Coco. I mean, we really know Coco as sort of more of a twos player. Mm -hmm. alongside Spyrox. their teammate of Spyrox. If we're looking at like 1v1 placements, the winner championship, Coco was 33rd. If we're looking at the world championship 1v1, Coco was 65th. Now, if we go back to autumn championship 2022, seventh place, but that was a long time ago. Ooh. And I'm guessing it was not with Petra. So I don't know, he does have a level Three, 47 two, Petra. One, so this isn't out of left field or anything, but it'll be interesting to see and figure out whether or not this is like a normal pick or whether it's like recent events with Raidish at the Winter Royale or the Winter Championship or just general sentiment to Petra in general is the reason why we're seeing Coco pick Petra in turn. Now, this is going to be a very tough match because Simple kind of has every advantage going for him here. You know, he's, he's got the experience, he's got the power rank, and right now he's definitely got the speed really just kind of dancing around Coco. There was so much damage that happened early on, even just the, the little things, like hitting that sword down light and going for a ground pound instead of just a side air or a down air, getting that maximum damage, even on just an edge guard. Now, one of the reasons that Godly is not playing Asuri as like the leading option anymore is because you have to play that sword slower. Who is the king? at playing slow, at forcing your opponent to slow themselves down and play your game that you exceed at, simple. Keep it He's simple. He's done it so much of his career. He did it back when he bowed bar with that hammer and sword. Now he's gonna be able to do it on a Suri with her guitars and sword. And right now that is catapulted simple for a full stock lead. Coco, ooh, getting a bunch of unanswered hits to really start bringing this one back. Popping over to the gauntlets. Not going to have as consistent of a KO option. Of Woo! course, we're going to the sidelines. Momentum. Air. Coco don't care, though. Getting the KO off the top and turning what was like a full stock lead into basically even. Oh, and manages to sneak out the weapon throw. Continue that momentum. Don't let off the gas here. Going to recover the other way to put some space in between. Simple over on the edge, throws out that recovery, not making contact again. Petra's gonna have some speed as well. So you might just see Coco outrunning some of these options. That Simple throws out if Simple doesn't actually move himself forward while he's doing it. If he's not dashing when he does that, if he's not doing a chase dodge forward, he might just not have the range for the way that Coco is outrunning some of these options. Yeah, you definitely see Coco starting to get a little bit more of that spacing down, getting around Oh, I love that option. The gravity cancel, down signature. The teleport actually does reset you against the wall, but unfortunately the rest of his options got starved out in short order. Just a weapon toss and a juke. Simple was enough of a threat over there that Coco was so worried about the edge guard for good reason. One, Simple is a very strong player with a strong edge guard weapon, but also we're playing on Demon Island, so that wall is tiny. Now, while it's easy for him to reset his jumps with that signature like we saw previously, getting over to that wall and just touching it on your own without the aid of that signature against Simple, that's a tall order. Ooh, has a little bit of the corner threat. You see it with that, that Petra signature. Everybody who plays Petra, they're looking for that dunk. They want the dream spirit bomb. Coco fighting back in this one against Simple. It's now going to be that sword coming out. Again, those back-to-back -back neutral lights. That is something Coco has thrown out several times, but he doesn't go for it there. It's usually towards the beginning of the stock, and he's already transitioned out of it and gone for that neutral light into the side light follow-up. Oh, beautiful spacing from Simple. Knew that the orb down air was coming, 
and was like, all right, I'm gonna let that one bounce off the ground, then I'm coming in for the perfect punish. And there's the side air to finish that one up. Simple had so many of the movement options from Coco, but that gauntlet, sorry, not the gauntlet, the orb side air actually got Coco back on the stage. So then Simple didn't want to mess with the edge guard. He didn't have to. There's no reason to risk that when you can just wait for your opponent to land on stage, hit the D-Light side air right on the corner, and force a legend swap from Coco Whoa. over to the Negan. Okay, now this is something I was not expecting. We do have a pretty decent stage for it, although there is that soft platform that Simple's going to be able to, to land on. You see him going there immediately right off the bat because the craziest part about Negan is he has that great sword. That is a weapon that you definitely need to practice against, you need to practice with. It is one of the most mechanically complex things in Brawlhalla, but it does want to use a lot of runway. It needs a lot of stage space to be able to use its attack chains. So Coco's pet was level 47, gonna be his fifth highest level legend. Jay Yun is right behind that. Level 44 gonna be his sixth highest level legend. So a lot of time spent on this, of course, has the Negan crossover as well. You see the gold forged great sword. That, oh, I thought he was gonna end it there. Yeah, definitely was looking for the big finisher. He's got the dodge reads, just not enough to score off the top. I think Coco was a little bit too worried to throw out a D-Light there because that was a GC D-Light that came out from Simple. So he's worried about Simple being a little bit too high to get over the D-Light that would lead into the recovery, that would lead into the KO, which is why we saw the answer that Coco went for instead of the standard bread and butter KO combo. Yeah, I mean, at least get some sort of punish rather than just kind of letting him get off scot-free. Gonna play this one nice and safe. He has the lead on Simple. Ooh, there it is. That was just enough damage. And now the question is, how much extra credit can he get? We saw some crazy dodge reads already with that greatsword. Can he do it again? That seems to be his weapon for the damage buildup phase of getting the stock from Simple. And then all of a sudden, wants to swap over to the sword for maybe those more consistent options, maybe those safe options that lead to a KO. Because like we saw earlier, like hit the end light finisher, but that's gonna send up and to the right or up and to the left at that 45 degree angle. And that didn't lead to the KO. So maybe he's gonna be focusing on that sword for that KO finisher, for that stock finisher. Yeah, so this is a much closer game than the previous one, but unfortunately, you know, simple, he, he stemmed the bleeding before Coco was able to really run away with that second stock. I can't believe Simple was able to punish that. Oh my oh. gosh! <laughs> Trick shots? Okay. Okay. Get all the Coco extra with the damage. Swagger? I think his weapon the throws are laser guided. Swagger? They just can't miss. Yeah, it seems like it. Neutral light coming out from Simple, hoping for the dunk there, or at least the setup into maybe a future dunk or a very early stock loss for Coco. Not gonna find purchase with it from the middle of the stage. Man, Coke can cover so much with that D-Light. They're really looking for the range. There he's got the dash through. Oh my gosh, look at all the damage. Unarmed, sneaks by, goes for the hit, wow. even pressing the advantage further before grabbing his weapon. Man, Coco is feeling himself. Yeah, he's got to be feeling pretty confident after that instead of retreating back and grabbing the weapon. And there's the D-Light ground pound from Simple to finish that one up. He's not too far behind. Has around 100 damage on his final stock. Getting closer to red. There is a weapon spot on the field, but it favors Simple. He's going to get over to it, grab the pair of Katars. D-Light into the gravity cancel. Neutral heavy over to the swap onto the greatsword. Coke might be looking for the regular sword soon if he wants to continue the way he's done it so far. Oh, a finishing oh off the gosh. stocks, because even that, the dare into the neutral air, gets the recovery to finish this one up. He was just in the yellow. That Negan swap working great for him. Yeah, absolute chef's kiss there. Now I think it's going to come down to what map are they going to play it on. I, I don't expect him to switch off the Negan. I think this is going to be just kind of the run through for the whole thing. Simple, I, I don't think we saw a legend change. 
Okay, I'm staring at a Demon Island for this next match. This is, I think, even a better map for Coco than the previous. There's no Fuck soft that. platform. It's all runway for the Greatsword to do what it does. Now, we do have very tiny walls, and we haven't seen too much from Coco over on the wall. To see what he has in terms of the edge guard game, we've seen him throw a couple signatures over the corner, like a neutral signature on the great sword, but most of those when he throws them out on the corner are not hitting or they've been punished. And what really worries me about this is I think simple definitely has the advantage on the edge, but then exactly like you said, Coco with all the runway of an island, he may have the advantage on the main stage. Yeah, there's just a lot of potential, but Simple doesn't seem to let Coco land. He's really sticking on him this time. Uh-oh, but all it takes is just a little bit and a dodge read. Wow, really so going for those signatures out of the attack chains. And Simple's able to punish them pretty well. Yeah, he's, he's definitely been tagging Coco consistently. We've got both players in the red. There it is, Simple scoring the first knockout, but it was by inches. Anytime we see that neutral signature coming out from the Greatsword, it seems like Simple knows that data inside and out because he, he's able to get in while it seems like that animation is still playing. Simple just has the timing on a dash in and punish that with a sword D light or a sword in light so well. He's done it several times. He's even done it like when he's on the edge. Ooh. So he's able to get around the corner, get on stage and still find punish before Coco is able to respond. Yeah, and that is absolutely great but because you cannot let him have carte blanche to just go swinging with these big hits. You gotta make him pay for it because otherwise he's going to run away with such a huge damage lead. Kept going the same direction after turning things around. Oh, just the two piece there. Oh, wow. Expecting the dodge in or no dodge. Simple, just kind of tear away. Knockout by a thousand cuts if he has to do it. Now he's swapping back over to the sword. The D-Light recovery is not really even close to KOing now. He's, he'd have to get a Hail Mary way high up in the air. Oh. Coco, he's just floating around, swinging the great sword with those recoveries, and he found a connection. Yeah, a couple recoveries, the neutral air, just everything that swings above. Looking to catch another of Simple's landings, but Simple just dancing right around every one of these swings with the giant blade. Simple's just really struggling to find any way to get in on this great sword from Coco. Finally hits the recovery, but even that is not enough. Coco's just kind of running around. Oh my god! Every now and then, then it'll also hit the string like that, and Simple is in dangerous territory. He does have the sword. Coco just absolutely turning this set around after the way that game number one went. There it is. Finally, Simple tying up the stocks, but not before he took so much damage. And and Coco, what, I, I think next he's got the regular sword primed? Yes. So Simple has to keep him on this. I mean, even when he's on this, I think Simple might be taken out with a D-Light recovery. It might need just a little bit more damage, but yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't oh, matter. Oh, yeah. Because he gets the great sword, and he gets the dare into the neutral air for the KO. Fighting back in this one, it was looking tough for Coco, but the swap to Negan coming in clutch, showing that there's more than one great sword player out there. Yeah, okay. I'm not surprised. I'm staring over at the map bans. Demon Island got banned out, like, immediately. We are not going back there. That map is so phenomenal for the great sword. So it looks like we're going back to the small two, fortress one, of lions. So there is that one small platform that Simple can hope to land on and not have to deal with all the shenanigans of the greatsword. Yeah, that's an interesting thought to bring up, the idea of that soft platform to kind of get in that safe landing zone because, I mean, you just saw it right there, the D-Light. I swear oh that covers like a third of this stage. It's absolutely wild, especially dashing into it. You know, you can engage from pretty much bow D-Light ranges. It's crazy.
it feels like you can engage from small brawl haven and you will still <laughs> land over here on the fortress of lions Uh, over to okay, the wall, yep, man. yep. He didn't want to play this game anymore. <laughs> he was like, uh, no, thank you. I have had enough. I would like to breathe. And yeah, and he finds, like, finds one hit. That's just so brutal as a guitar player. Having to play against Coco, he's getting one, two, sometimes three, maybe even more hits. And Simple's getting, like, one at a time. And it's guitar. Okay, but now we're seeing Simple adopting a lot more of this short hop play style. He's been seeing a lot of those dash in down lights, and he's punished a couple of them now by this point, just because that is a significant amount of range. Coco manages to take the first stock, but again, we see it's very, very close at the opening of the game. Sword in hand, maybe Simple will be looking to catch Coco. Beautiful. Once again, Jumping short with. hopping over that down light. That's Coco's main engagement tool thus far, and Simple has found an answer. Gets the stock as well, evening this one up, has his choice of weapons. Gonna continue juggling, goes back over to the guitars. Coco's gonna be looking for the next weapon. It is gonna be that normal sword. Oh, he had the range for that. Keeping the damage up. The Ooh. longer that he keeps Coco off of the great sword, the better. Doesn't matter whether it's sword, doesn't matter whether it's unarmed. So now Where's the weapon spot, TWK? I feel like it's been 20 <laughs> minutes. It's right there. You know, you just had to ask for it. It's on demand. Oh, oh he makes okay. contact. The first of and those big signatures back. actually landing here. That's definitely going to stick in the mind. I was a little bit surprised that he went back over to the sword, but I think he just wanted to keep Simple Weapon Starved, period. Mid side air coming out from Simple, who was able to make it over and grab a sword, but Coco has the great sword in hand. That's going to be the burn. Dodge, Simple looking to punish the landing. It was just a side light that made no contact as Coco gets back to the main platform. That's oh. going to hurt. Yeah, luckily there was a lot of stage left to go, but not enough ceiling to go. Coco, once again, marching Simple down to his final stock. And this could be Simple's final game in the winner's bracket. I'm thinking Coco might take this one. You think so? Yeah, it is I'd give dead it like even. I think Simple, unless he can make something huge happen here, I think the mental might be a little bit broken here. Because you're fighting Ooh. against Great Sword, which I don't know if uh, how you feel about fighting against Great Sword. I don't like it. <laughs> it is, uh, it, it weighs on my mental quite a bit. Knowing Simple, I don't know him that well, but knowing Simple at least as much as I do, I could see the frustration really setting in, especially now that he has guitars going up against this great sword. And Coco Ooh. has momentum in his favor. It's 2 1 in the set right now. The swap over to Negan. I think the mental damage might be too much. Simple is such a clutch player. There's a reason we've talked about him for years and years and years. Man, Simple does manage to sneak in, arm himself up. Now he's got the sword and contesting everything that Coco was falling with. Sword neutral air, definitely one of the best air-to-air -air anti airs in the game. See if the pressure is the thing that gets to Coco here. If Simple is able to maintain mental fortitude, he has Coco in the red. He's definitely Coco worked his way back. Oh, went for the big signature, but Simple just drifting out of it. Those short hops paying such great dividends for Simple. Coco's disarmed. Simple has complete control of the weapons. Weapon spawn coming in, but it favors Simple. Whoa, whoa, side oh, air just it. at the tip. And that's going to be Simple keeping this alive for a game number five. Coco's actually moving into this one very quickly banned out his four maps, leaving up Apocalypse, Demon Island, Small Fortress of Lions. I know we're not going to Demon Island. No, no, sir. So it's going to be going Small back. Fortress of Lions. Yep. I respect it. Simple hoping that he can replicate the success that he had last game Three, in two, this game. We are in a game five here between these two players. This is a top eight 
qualifier on the winner's side. So your bracket here changes drastically, whether you're on the winner's side or whether you are on the elimination side. So we see Simple, it, it, he, he plays these, these short hops to stay over that down light of the greatsword. And then as soon as he lands, he's going to be dashing in with that guitar side light. Get the chip damage, get the extra combo, just a little bit of juggle. These, these in -light, oh, my God. oh, he gets the three piece there. These in light D lights from Coco. He's just fighting them so consistently. And he was able to find the in light finisher there towards the end. But you can see that does not have KO power that it used to. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the main thing, right? I love seeing Coco engage with those great sword neutral lights because that is the answer to the short hops. If he's getting over your down lights, you've got to swing for the skies. Coco has a very nice lead here. Still in the orange. He almost has simple in the orange. Well, dodge through the weapon toss. The unarmed neutral air coming through. It's now back to the sword for simple. Coco just kind of fishing for those dares, those neutral lights as well. Ooh, that was close. Oh, that's going to be a punishing kick, Oh, dude. my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Coco's really running away with this game. Working on a three stock. Man. So the fact that Simple was able to come back last game, I felt the momentum, or at least a little bit of momentum, in oh, his no. favor. My gosh. I didn't gosh. think this was going to happen. This is brutal. Even if last game, let's just say the score was like 0-0 or whatever by Magic, even if Coco was able to win last game and then not win the set, I didn't think it was going to be this heavily in his favor this very next game. I thought Simple was really starting to figure it out. But no, Coco's just got his number. Yeah, it's the adjustment to the adjustment. That's why I love watching these best of five sets. You get that adjustment time. And especially players of this caliber, you know they're going to find the answers. This could be. Okay, oh. setting up. Yes. Okay. It's we're... the second ground pound. That was huge. The dream that is alive. Momentum back in his favor. He's still so far behind. The next weapon Coco picks up will be the great sword, which is and Simple's disarm. Uh-oh. That's dangerous. Now he's got the sword, the downlight, side air. That's enough. Coco with a 3-2 victory over Simple to make it That's into huge. winner's side top eight. That's so huge. Massive. Coco's PR 24. Simple Ooh. is PR 5. Yo, let's go. <laughs> that is a huge win for Coco here. Guaranteed top eight on the winner's side. That means a top six placement under his belt going big for france today wow man that swap over to the negan totally the right choice totally the right choice yeah absolutely and i you were you were talking about the legend levels for the experience and that being a technically a step down in legend levels for his repertoire but such the right answer i i know great sword is one of those like volatile matchups either kind of you know it or you don't and there's just so much that can change within those matches and coco just played it to perfection absolutely coming in sixth highest leveled legend for coco start off with the petra also like another weird matchup choice one of those you either know how to play against orb or you don't and there's uh a lot of people who don't know how to play against Orb, just like there are a lot of people who don't know how to play against Greatsword. And on the other side of that as well, there are several people, a few, who really know how to play Orb. And there are several people, a few, who really know how to play Greatsword. Of course, oh, yeah. I mean, we're putting Coco up there, especially in ones now, man. That was a conversation that we were not adding Coco into for a very long time. Now we might start having, uh, we might start have to make that conversation and add him into it more than we used to for sure. So cool, absolutely so cool. I love the adaptations of just, hey, I'm engaging with the greatsword downlight, simple start short hopping over it. Oh, I'm gonna beat your short hops by engaging with my greatsword neutral light instead. And round and round we go, rock, paper, scissors in the deepest of mental games. 
So as our bracket is shaking up, I do want to check in on Akno and Blaze. It looks like their set just started over on twitch.tv forward slash pro brawlhalla. Seeing if, uh, looking at the bottom side of the bracket, seeing if anything crazy happened. Kixay is still moving on now in a top eight elimination side qualifier against Flamethrower. Oh, Simple wow. is going to be moving down. He's going to fight XJ Cool J for I their say, elimination top eight qualifier. Kixay, not only is he still burning his way through the bracket and going to be going up against Flamethrower, that was after scoring wins against the Ninja 729 and Blue in a row. So yeah, Kixay's that's actually well. that's that's Kixay losing to Machete. Of course, wow. Machete playing Tesca lost 0-3 to that. Went down, fought against the Ninjas Tesca, and won that one 3-1. So very Ooh. confidently in Kixay's favor. We'll see if Kixay was able to learn anything from that. If we get the potential run back, or at least in the future, learning more about how to play against Boots, given that you've now gone against two different Boots players, which is Let's be real. That's that's kind of rare. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you know what? We might get to see a bit more boots coming up because I know we still have Machete and Viper to play as well as Knees and Escrape, both looking for their top eight qualifier. Don't go anywhere. Those matches are coming up. It's the spring championship.
This is the Brawlhalla Spring Championship. The European singles bracket is burning its way through. Half of our winner's side top eight has been decided. We're still waiting to see who those final two qualifiers for that top eight will be. I'm TWK, joined here by Sparky. How's it going? It's going good, man. Those two sets that we are about to see. The first one is going to be Machete, we saw earlier against Viper, who we haven't seen yet today on the actual broadcast. And then the other set is going to be Knees versus Escrape. It does look like Knees came out 3-1 over Delta's Brent. Of course, Knees is also playing the Lucian today as well. So we're getting more Lucian than we really ever have in any bracket ever at any, at any point in Pro Hollis <laughs> history. All right. You know what? I'm I'm all for it. The gameplay we've been seeing today has been absolutely phenomenal. You see Coco with that 3-2 win over Simple. That was a clutch last set right before the break. And now coming up, we've got Machete versus Viper, Knees versus Escrape. And you see these power ranks, they're they're starting to funnel together. They are. Now, we talked about kind of earlier in this year about the possibility of France being one of the main dominant countries in running EU Brawlhalla because they have their own kind of insulated community, the Brawlhalla French League, where they run their own community tournaments a lot. We kind of see something going yeah. on with France like we see with South America as a whole. It's like South America's grinds as an entire region. A lot of Brazilian players, but the entire region grinds. France grinds a lot in EU. But if you happen to notice on that screen with the flags next to players' names, we still have some Swedes here. We still have Viper. We still have Knees. And Sweden used to run EU Brahalla. So we could have these now two war nations of France versus Sweden for, some, for seeing how many top spots that they can grab in the top 16s, in the top 8s, in the top 3s for EU. All right. Well, this is going to be an interesting one because we've got Machete on that new hotness, the Tezco with the newest weapon, Battle Boot, that he used to score the gold medal in the Winter Championship, going up against Viper with another Lucian. Three, two, one, brawl. And we're going to get into this one on small brawl haven oh right out of the gate. So some of that lower strength that Viper might have with Lucian, you see him already out the gate. This is why Godly wants to play this legend. This is why Viper wants to play this legend. You can get on top of your opponent so quickly. Yeah, there's going to be some terrifying signatures, uh, particularly that Qatar down signature, biting over the corners, looking for those spikes. That's probably going to be one of Viper's main threatening tools here. But I'm so scared that we're on small brawl haven against one of the highest strength legends in the game. Machete is going to be scoring knockouts so early. And he's going to take this one super early so far. He's only in the yellow as well. So not only did he not have to do a lot of damage, but he hardly took any damage whatsoever. Now, the history between these players is oh. going to favor Machete heavily, but Viper firing back with those Lucian Blasters, hoping to juggle a little bit with that neutral air. But no, Machete gets below him. Now Viper. Oh, man, the neutral light into the recovery. Big slap, though. Punishing the landing as Machete gets closer to the ground, and we have a pretty even game here. All right, Viper setting up with the blasters. He wants that extra range. I love this option. He's used that twice now in the last minute to beat out the, the approaching downlight from Machete's boots. It's just the short hop into gravity cancel blasters downlight gets a maximum punish while evading Machete's own combo start. He almost picked up that down signature. 
Tried to go Ooh. for it again there, as he knew the D-Light recovery wasn't going to be like KO option, so maybe he just wanted the single force stump on that actual down signature. It is gonna pop back. One of the like early signatures that we talked about like in Brawlhalla's history of having some movement in it, where you actually like pop back if your opponent is pushing onto you. It's sort of a defensive signature in that way of it move you back in the area that you kind of used to be and puts out a hitbox. Oh, where whoa. you were Viper chasing over the corner, grabs the slap, showing big KO potential still from these Katars and it's back over to the blast. That was really slick movement. Hitting that side light, dragging Machete off stage, and then using those chase dodges down to chase him just at, at such incredible speed really set him up for a phenomenal edge guard. Ooh, that edge guard isn't going to happen because Machete ended up picking that up close enough to the center of the stage that the sort of downward angle towards the end of that signature didn't send over the corner, but just bounced off the main stage. Perfect position to punish with that end light. Ooh, Viper just getting away from that recovery. He's got another chance at life, but options are dwindling, and that's going to seal the deal. Machete with a game one victory. No legend swaps whatsoever from these two players. He's absolutely terrifying. Small Brawl Haven still open on the map bands. Viper might be thinking about it. It's left open. Machete would probably just take that in a heartbeat, right? We've got Small Brawl Haven, well, Miami Dome, and Western Air Temple. I mean, I would think so too, but it's been several heartbeats and we haven't seen him actually make the choice yet. Ooh, ah, okay. there it is. We are yeah, going we right there. back to Small Brawl Haven. Just run it back, no change. And despite both of these players having times of dominance in their own region and being very well-known players, you see in their titles Three, the two, major difference one, between ball. them. As you see Machete coming out with a 1v1 Winter Champion 23 title, and then Vipers is like, uh, I, I forgot what it was, but it was like the 2019 DreamHack something 2v2 <laughs> champion. So even that just shows like a major difference between levels of success here recently versus history. Ooh, down signature getting a decent chunk of damage there as Machete was trying to peek over the corner. We're starting to play this one a little bit more slowly than past. You saw Viper like hugging that corner when Machete started to push onto him. He would move over onto the wall oh. before going back. Just missing the slap on that one. Viper has been just shy of some really great punishes that might have scored actual knockouts. Oh, tried to pick up the raw recovery. Didn't quite make contact. Didn't do it with the D Sig either. Gets punished with a nice little neutral air. He's still in the orange, getting closer to that red. So he's not in major danger of any of these standard recover or KO options coming out from Machete. And he actually cleaned up that stock from Machete. Side lights off oh. stage. Machete, there's a weapon on the stage. You could have grabbed it, but no. I mean, he, he didn't believe in that slide kick himself. He wasn't ready for it to hit. Dunk, there's not going to do it. The corner. That's the one he wanted previously that actually just made contact with the main stage. That one he was able to steer close enough to the edge and get it over that corner to send that spike. And that's going to be the KO there. Machete has his choice of weapons. Going to juggle these back to the boots. Viper trying to take ground here and there, but every time that he gets a solid footing on the corner, Machete is there just dashing in with some quick attack. Viper doesn't seem to mind being on the corner regardless of whether he is the one in stage control or not. If Machete's off stage, of course, he's going to sit on that guard, uh, corner. He's going to guard that one as best he can. But even when he's sort of in disadvantage state, he has no problem being over on the corner, but he might start oh. worrying about it because Machete has now picked that signature twice sent over the edge with it twice, and then eventually finding the KO shortly after it twice. Yeah, he's just been so consistent and really pressing that advantage. Even the weapon toss to fill the distance. There it is, there's that down signature, and now a side signature to boot. Viper unlocking the kit of Lucian here to tie up the stocks. He's showing that he has a heavy button too, after Machete's already used his very well so far. That time he used it to bring 
Viper actually back towards the center of the stage so he can keep the string going, keep the pressure up, because Viper wasn't very damaged. There was no potential for spike, no potential for KO, so he just wanted to keep the string going and add up the damage, because Viper's only in the yellow. Oh, I'm worried about the slap. Yeah, Machete was too. You saw him go wide around. Didn't want to have to deal with that, and just a quick signature. So much strength on the table. That is a 2-0 lead in the set. Viper's got to find some sort of change to claw his way back. We got to ban Brawlhaven, right? Like, we got to ban Brawlhaven. It's time to ban Brawlhaven. I, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The first okay, map right. ban <laughs> just right away. Like, I respect the way that. that signature just picked up Raw on its own and KO'd, that's when you realize, okay, the, the victory, the win condition is not going to happen on Brawlhaven. We, we got to go somewhere else. Because Viper, I mean, we, we already saw earlier today from Godly's Lucian Three, and from two, some of the other Lucians one, that we'll probably Raw. see more of throughout this tournament is you can hit those signatures and they don't have to be over on the edge on Brawlhaven for you to find KOs with them once your opponent's in red. You can use those at normal times on normal stages that aren't as small and still find KOs. Yeah, so now Machete arming up over onto the Battle Boots. Viper's got his guitars. This is the setup that they've seemed to favor for the early damage build. All right, TWK, this is a question for your Brawlhalla history. Sure. Uh, has that skin that Viper's using always? Okay, goodness. Whoa. Has that always lit up in the like the NVG goggles? Um, I know that was when we first started adding like any kind of extra animation. That was one of the first ones. So as long as animation has existed on skins, that one has had it. Okay. Because I remember like Brax being the big one that I remember, of course, because I'm a selfish, ignorant Brax player, and that's the only thing I really care about. The green but I've thumb. never really noticed it on this skin. And this is an old skin that people used to use back in the day. Ooh, Viper, exclamation point's coming out. Gets clapped, sent over into the blast zone. Machete, gonna juggle these weapons. Probably stick with the boots, that's what he's been doing. Ooh, brutal dodge read, chasing again with that, just the neutral air into recovery, trying to build that ladder all the way up off the top. Didn't score the knockout, but it is a lot of extra credit. And there you go, that's that side signature. Even though that sends at the 45 degree angle, it took straight off the top. But Machete, he has a pretty decent lead here, especially now that he's able to grab that weapon very quickly. It's not boots though. We'll see if Viper can keep him at bay using the range. Oh, man. <laughs> Just take to the skies. Honestly, I always expect that to send further than it actually does. I expect to get caught with that even when I'm like, fresh at white, and I expect to be sent into the Shadow Realm. It just it looks <laughs> like it's going to send you so far so fast. Oh, yeah. Tezka, he's he's all about the, the big explosions. He wants those ground splashes. That's where all the force is. Okay, Viper, he's searching for the slaps. Gets the recovery, and that one does KO here. So Viper, little bit of the lead here. If he was going to mount his comeback, this is a phenomenal start to it. Down 2-0 in the set, but up by just a little bit. And he's living there. Now, because the blasters were just picked up fresh from the weapon spawn, I don't think he's really even close to being in danger zone of being disarmed. If he gets hit by Machete, oh, but well, his stock is yeah, in but... danger of being taken away, and it does fall. Viper's next weapon is going to be the Katars. Machete has the boots in feet. Ooh, slapped okay, against the slap. wall. Stuff the recovery. It. There it. it is. Viper still alive. That's one on the board. Dude, that was huge. We got to look at replay because it, was, it wasn't, that was so it wasn't quick. a lot. Yeah, it was just very, very fast. There's that side signature, of course, that we saw KO. This is going to be the second stock coming in the recovery. And then here we're going to get Slap in. It was that wall. side air. There was one jump. Ooh, That's the recovery, the recovery interrupt. Yeah, that was it. I think he even jumped so before clutch. that. Like, he did the one jump, and I think he did a jump Three, recovery. Two, oh, yeah. And that, that was it. Just caught at the right place, right time. Viper was happy to take that one. Yeah, so now we find ourselves on small Fortress of Lions. Run the Legends right back. 
Viper, he, he's got to be feeling good, you know? <laughs> I mean, he's been dealing with the boots so far. That's something that not a lot of other people can say that they've successfully done. Oh, wow. Machete just starting up with that signature. I think Viper was looking to maybe dodge a neutral signature. Didn't expect the up and down of the down signature. Uh oh, oh that's recovery. Big. He got the one? touch. He's okay. Machete did play that one safe. He could have put out more pressure there, but he chose actively not to. Wanted to float very high, putting a lot of distance between him and Viper. So he didn't get caught with anything goofy, and I don't blame him. Yeah, don't want to, you know, give a set away. Usually, if you've got the lead, you it usually behooves you to play it a little safe. That weapon toss was so nice from Machete. He got that bonk, and you saw him make the move over there. He was still in orange. Viper was very much in the red. He was at that disadvantage state. So that was a situation that Machete Ooh. felt comfortable pushing. Oh, wow. Viper just unarmed sidelight, knocking Machete across the stage. There it is, down light, dash jump recovery, scoring the knockout in short order before too much extra credit was dealt. We're now at the weapon advantage, Machete immediately throws at them, happens to be behind Viper. Viper's finding these hits. He's finding the range and then he chooses to go in, picks up the two hit and backs up. Yeah, I mean, that is just a recipe for success. If you can hit those consistently while dodging your opponent's attacks, it all adds up. Great answer. Ooh. Viper barely landing on the soft platform as the weapon oh, toss. Okay. I'm surprised he's not going for a nair there. Yeah, I was really expecting that. The, you know, Machete, he pulled up on that drift just in time to avoid the Qatar ground pound coming from Viper and just a beautiful reversal to turn that whole thing around. Now, Viper might have felt that he had more priority there with the ground pound than he would with a Nair and because Machete had gauntlets in his hands. He could find greater priority against the gauntlet Nair, which would completely swap their position. So maybe that's why he went for that. I'm not sure. Starting to set up the edge guard. Recovery not yet enough to knock out. Where's the signature? It's got to be coming in soon. Oh, yeah. There's the dunk. Set up the edge guard. Machete, once again, playing it safe. Big signature. Evening up stocks here, but Viper. Stuck in the orange, has control of the weapons. Machete grabs gauntlets very quickly. That's going to set up Whoa. the possible edge guard. Dodge has been burned. Machete, again, playing it reasonably safe. Even though he did go in with that ground pound, he didn't tell vision once the dodge was burned. So he's playing it safe. He's got quite a health lead, but Viper chasing him up off the top. That was so incredibly close. There's the slap. Viper has the guitars. We saw what he did last game. Okay, the damage is really adding up. The unarm recovery. Machete is going to be good for a vertical KO. No. Ooh. Goes for the side air. All the way from the middle of the stage. Viper barely touching. Again, Machete being very careful. He knows he can walk away with a 3-1 victory here rather than having it push to game five. Viper armed up. Continues the weapon starve. He's got the guitars. Machete looking for anything. You know he just wants a slide kick into an uppercut or something. That's it. Strong Machete. combo option, Machete. That 3-1 victory going to be moving on into top eight. Just barely taking that game four for the victory right at the end. It was really starting to slip away. Viper was doing a fantastic job of adding up damage, not taking very much damage in the process, but wasn't enough by the end of the game. Machete's boots still holding on, but we're seeing... We're not seeing the same damage spread that we saw during the Winter Championship where everyone would like take a picture of the screen where it says 435 damage on boots and then like 33 damage on the gauntlets and okay boots, okay boots, ha 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 boots. But like now we're seeing much more even split even though we're seeing mostly boot damage still. He put out 200 almost on the gauntlets and of course a little bit of damage on the unarmed kit as well coming in with 31.
Yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, Machete just swapping between the weapons a lot more than he did in the Winter Championship previously. Also, in a lot of those cases where it's for optimal weapon starves. He's been doing that to a lot of his opponents today, and it's been extended times for them being unarmed, and he really gets to press that advantage because when you're unarmed, going up against gauntlets or boots, that's really scary. So that is going to be Machete moving on 3-1 over Viper into the top eight, guaranteed a top six placement. And let's see, where is that going to put Viper on the elimination side mm. of the bracket? He is going to go down to fight the winner of Blaze versus Sarme. That means Blaze took out Akno in Whoa. 1v1s. That is not what? a normal thing that we're used to seeing. That is absurd. The teammates, you know, usually it was, okay, yeah, Blaze was the glue that made the 2v2 work, and Akno just ruled the 1v1, but, man, flipped on its head for 2023. That is going to be a big one. The fact that we have Escrape on the winner's side, and we have Akno already out of the tournament. Escrape looking pretty solid. Today. His previous set that got him to this point was a 3-0 over Solarson. Now, he did report an Orion for that against Solar since Asuri, Jala, and Vector. Ooh. So not only did he beat the, the first two characters that Solarson had, but he also did the Lance Mirror with the Orion versus the Vector, and we are getting the Orion in this game as well. All right. You know, Lance, we, we don't see too much of it in the single space outside of a couple dedicated mains, right? So I am just... Uh, interested to see what Escrape has going here against Knees. Now, Knees, we were talking about the Lucian pick, right? That seems to be one of the hot things for this season is a lot of Lucian in Euro European Spring Championship. Is Knees going to have any different picks? Uh, Winter Championship, he had like this whole counter pick thing going on, or is it going to be the Lucian all the way? Um, that's a that's a good question. I think nobody can answer that right now except knees because even if we look at Winter Royale, it was a lot of sight coming out from him. There was Petra, or, sorry, not Petra. There was Mirage. There was more decks. There's a little bit of Diana coming out, so you're gonna have some coverage with the blasters there. Now we do oh. know knees is a blasters Whoa. player, but Escrape is also very much a spear player as well. Yeah, I loved all the height that he had there, starting from the platforms. Got the double down light on the. Spear. Spear. That's just so much damage. The gravity cancel into the neutral signature. My gosh, he has just given a tour of the whole kit. Now, he did kind of drop that edge guard a little bit there. He threw out the side air while Knees was in the middle of a move where the ground pound probably would have been oh. a better option, but he cleans it up very quickly and is probably going to swap back over. Yeah, he's going to stick with it. Not going to juggle those weapons whatsoever. Now he's going to do kind of what we saw Machete doing of if he can be on the spear, he will be. But if he can just keep knees weapon starved, that's also the main priority. Yeah, that's always the Ooh, interesting. Quite make it. Wow. Just not enough fuel to make it all the way up, I guess. But that, that's always what I like to see, you know, whenever players... Uh, kind of favor <laughs> wow they are just juggling all the way up there huh dude that's guy's crazy he just wants to take someone off the top when they're in yellow that's just that <laughs> seems to be the goal for today need a vertical knockout at a fresh stock oh Ooh, big okay, ground pound the ground pound not afraid go off edge with the lance of course you hit that ground pound when your opponent is like even in the early stages of orange they're gonna be feeling that one in the morning it hits like a truck i mean it's like perfectly inelastic collision right where it's just like they go flying down you just stay in place perfectly elastic there you go but uh man s grape has been doing a phenomenal job knees tying up the stocks there but s grape this is what i wanted to see and I was talking about before, where you just kind of favor what is your priority? Is it having the weapon that you want or denying them a weapon altogether? And for the European region so far, it seems like denying the weapon is priority number one. And now we're actually going to get to see some Lance neutral where both of these players kind of started out in the yellow. And Knees oh. is easily winning this matchup. 
He's by chopping every up. Every single metric. I bet Esgrave wants to swap over. Yep. Yep. He's going to bounce past that over to knees. Ooh. Gets away from that side signature. Beautiful Turns read. Around, max damage. The light. Is he finally going to get his vertical knockout that he wants? I hope he gets it. I think he's earned it at this point. The side air to set up the edge guard. Can't stop him from grabbing the weapon, but ah, the recovery not yet enough. Yeah, knees. This this D oh that's it. Wow. That the defense of Lucy is just barely holding on there towards the end. I thought the side air on the left side was gonna do it. I thought he was gonna get the vertical KO even before that. And then I thought when he was on the soft platform on the right that he was gonna get that recovery KO. But no, it just eluded Escrape at every single turn and Knees was able to clutch it out again. Man, oh man. So Escrape, I, I'm curious, last time did he go into strength stance? I believe so. So he's like trying to make up the difference as much as possible, but you know, even so, Orion is a base four strength legend. So you're really fighting the uphill battle. I forget that because I'm just so used to seeing uh, the Spear DC KOing and that's <laughs> that's the thing. And so it seems like Orion oh. players really, oh. All right, he had nothing geez. left, spent yep. everything. If he had more, he would have gone for more for sure. You know he's looking, yeah, just chase dodge into the recovery. That's the option we want. That's that's the Blastoise where uh, he tries to use Hydro Pump, but there are no points left. Oh, uh, no. Hydro Pump to use. <laughs> oh, oh, there we see the D-Sig. Yeah, you were talking about it. It is a very attractive signature. Bro, this how are not KOing? All right, there it is. Finally, S-Grape, you know, he may just never get his vertical knockout. It's just not in the cards for the spring. It seems like everything's working again, him, man. I don't know how those uh, recoveries are, K are not KOing. And now he goes vertical, but knees is completely fresh on this stock. Nice three P though. S grape with a solid lead. Not gonna get caught by that side air. Ooh. Big neutral signature, knees tying up the stocks. I guess knees can get vertical knockouts, just not S grape, huh? Yeah, dude, that hurt. That hurts, man. Rude. Ooh, starting to show okay, off those Orion platform. signatures. They are incredibly potent, powerful, very versatile and useful. Oh, and oh, he's still able to keep it going. Okay. Bravo, bravo. That was just masterful movement. He got the pinball action off of the bottom of the stage and just kept following it up for the edge guard. D-Light, of course, gonna follow it up with a side air. Goes for the down air off stage, that spiking maneuver. I can't believe he went with a GC D-Light instead of another deer. Oh no, dude. Wow. There it is, dash jump, recovery, knees. All day today has been so on point with that. KO for him, still eludes Esgrave. He's just all but evened up this game, doesn't have quite the range for that swipe or that slap. Uh oh, okay. He's, he's the one, Come he on, man. so bad. Just the one, we just need the one. Stay grounded. A, hold on. A <laughs> side light into a pivot neutral signature? Who does this guy think he is? He's definitely scheming, that's for sure. He's the winner of this game. That's who he is. He's going to take that one, even up the set 1 1 between these two. Ooh, they are scrapping. Oh, and it looks like we're going to be going to Small Brawl Haven. And Knees, he does have something other than the Lucian in his back pocket. He's swapping over to the Mordex. Yeah, even though we saw some great blasters spent out from him, uh, Knees is a scythe player, for sure. If you look at all his legends, like, yeah, he spent a lot of time on Nyx, but also he's just kind of spent a lot of time on all of the scythe legends. He spent a lot of time on Mirage, on Mordex. On we Nyx saw, as well. Yeah, we saw a lot of Nyx. We saw some Moonin during the Winter Championship as well. Yeah, Moonin as well. I forgot about that. 
Oh my god. Oh, gosh. he's also a gauntlet player. Don't sleep on his gauntlets. Absolutely terrifying. That's great. Go, setting all it those. up. No A's in. And that's going to take off the top. Now, we are in small Brawl Haven compared to Miami Dome. So maybe that will give Esgrave the juice that he needs to get a vertical KO. But Knees is going uh, to absolutely pre prevent that from happening. Oh my gosh, he wanted that second gravity cancel down light and we saw it come out instead as a down air. Unfortunate. Esgrave looking for these vertical knockouts, but Knees just not giving it to him. Ooh, that happened to be definitely the wrong direction on that GC down signature on the Lance. Just needs to watch like a little bit more uh, Stingray footage, where Stingray uses the GC D sig very, very well. Even just going on stage uh, two. Ooh. There, again, a vertical KO for knees. D Light into gravity cancel neutral heavy. Full <laughs> stock lead here. Going for the dodge read, can't quite get it. S grape juggling knees. And at this point now, they're answering a little bit back and forth. There we go, there's the extra damage that we need to bring this back. And he actually went for the nair there instead of the recovery, the true option off of that final D light. Probably just want to keep knees around so that he could do more damage. If he did the recovery, it's gonna have the higher force on it, send knees further away. But because knees was only like halfway through orange, the KO potential was next to none there, at least at that point. So that's probably why he went for the neutral air. Oh, there's that GC dig sig D signature and also gets his vertical knockout. He's been looking for that all set, man. Back to the spear in hand. Hopefully feeling good after that KO off the top. The stocks are even, but he's very much in the red, and he's now down. One, two against Knees. So I will say in the Winter Championship, I was looking through the bracket, and Knees, you know, he had that kind of counter pick. Oh, hey, this one legend didn't work out. I'm swapping to another, and then he closes out the set. They were all 3-1 sets, working his way through pretty much the entire bracket except for Grand Finals. So I'm just saying, statistically, this does not bode well for Escrape with knees being up 2-1. Now, Escrape is swapping over. He's going to do the Scythe Mirror, but he is on the Mirage instead of the Mordex. Even though Mordex oh my is gosh. his second highest leveled legend, the Gauntlet's coming out big for knees. But finally, Escrape has the weapon in his hand. He has the Scythe in his hand. His Mirage is going to be a level 31. It's his 12th highest leveled legend. Oh, wow. Knee's just tossing the scythe away. He wants the gauntlets. It's not going to take much to KO Escrape here. Oh, wow. Signature missing by inches. Down light, gravity cancel, neutral heavy. Just bread and butter. That is nice, consistent. Has the weapon control already hit two. Weapon spawn comes in, Escrape grabs the spear. Of course, that's the spear we saw off of the Orion, so we know it's solid. Has another stack option with that down signature. Doesn't quite cover oh. left to right as far, but there's the neutral signature. That's that was absolutely for beautiful. Sure. I do love that signature just because it's a nice anti-air. You know, it also has movement built in, so you get to chase any of their horizontal dodges with it. And it hits like a truck. Mirage is a high strength legend. She will take you out. Back over onto the spear. He picks this one up. Knees. Still has just a little bit of a lead here. That's going to be. Oh, oh he doesn't have wow. a range to get it in time before Escrape is able to jump away from it. These stacked D6 from S Grape, that one actually moves your hurt box into the stage. Yeah, I mean, just Almost look at the like coverage. Oh, man, oh and the God. sand clone to seal the deal. S Grape, this mirage starting to pop off. Signs of life. Yeah, he's just starting to spam these signatures, Woo. and it's working really well so far for him. Putting a lot of fear in Nisa's eyes. I thought Knees was going to run away with this one, but Esgrave put the full brakes. Now 
He's coming in PR5. Esgrave coming in PR12, so he's not too far behind. But there is definitely a deficit there. But there's also a deficit in this game. And it's very much in Esgrave's favor. It's looking like Whoa. we're going to be heading to a game five here. Unless Knee's going to have to pull something out of his hat very quickly. Side air, enough to knock out from that far away. Esgrave has been living these stocks so incredibly deep. Nisa's damage done is going to be so high this game because of inefficient knockouts. There's the recovery, and we're going to a game five. Let's Woo. look at the overall damage that Nisa did. Maybe it's... Okay, so where was Esgrave on his final stock? We'll have to do a little bit of damage estimation here towards the end, because Nies did 504. Okay, so Escrape about got about 50. 50 damage on that second stock. So if we subtract out the Game 50, five. we are at 454. We're gonna divide that by the two Three, stocks. Two, I have to, one, I have to. Out of my two. Yeah, it's 227. Uh, it's 227 on average estimated yeah. per stock. So yeah, you're exactly right. That is very inefficient. Oh man, but now we're looking for the most efficient knockouts. We're over on Small Brawl Haven. And Escrape actually was really efficient last game because he did 70 more damage than Knees did, but he also got all three stocks by the time it was all said and done. Oh, he wanted it. He was wow, so close. Wow. Just give it I to mean, him. he is just, just chasing the all the way. Wow, again, that signature. Such a great option. Beats out the spot dodge. It's basically a spot dodge of its own. You were talking about how she just kind of shrinks down into that sand and then comes out with one of the strongest hits. Ooh, weapon toss going to bounce off the ground. Knees was just enough above it. The weapon spawn comes in. It's scythe v scythe. And despite Knees being known as a scythe player, uh, a very good scythe player, Escrape is just Ooh. handling him in the scythe mirror match. This swap, absolutely incredible from Escrape. Yeah, what an absolute just giga chat of an option. There's no other way to say it. I mean, his Mirage has been going off. Beautiful punish on the signature. Got the down light into side light combo. Great damage and a setup for potentially more. Unfortunately, didn't find purchase here, but Knees, oh man, he is starting to fall behind in the, uh, in the damage deficit. Oh no, and now it's a full stock behind. I gotta look at Esgrave's previous placements, cause like, you feel oh. like ninth at Winter Championship. And, and what we're seeing now is not a ninth based performance. No. That was like a month or so ago. That was not that long ago, and all of a sudden, Escrape coming out the gate. It's not even like, like, yeah, we talked about how Knees had a bad Winter Royale, but like, Knees is playing good today. This isn't him being bad in any means. Knees is a very strong player. Setting up for the edge guard. Hmm, a little bit of damage, but couldn't seal the deal. Chance number two. Okay. This is kind of the same situation we saw last game where it would take a lot of miracles, several miracles for Knees to come out on top here. He's starting the damage build pretty well, but all of a sudden now Scrape has the scythe in his hand. Oh. And there it is, just like that, a single down signature. And that is all it took. And he's even more efficient that game. The previous one, he 574, and now he did 551. Wow, Scrape's Mirage is something else. I want to see more of that, and hopefully we get to, because Escrape definitely has more matches to play over on winner's side top eight. That's got to feel good. Him coming in at PR12. Though he is seed six for this. That is after that ninth place finish at the Winter Championship. I mean, he wow, he got 17th at Worlds. That's huge. Woo. That's very, very big for a player like Escrape to come in almost top 16 at the World Championship. So he's kind of more or less come out of nowhere. Like the last major placement he had before the ones that we just mentioned was like 13th at the Spring Championship. Like, wow. yeah, that's that's that, that's pretty good. That's definitely a good like starting point to really start being on people's radars. But like, fifth at the Mammoth Arcadian, not even the Mammoth Invitational, but the Mammoth Arcadian. Whoa. And he got fifth in that. 
So yeah, uh, Escrape went from being like a last chance qualifier player to all of a sudden now, like it seems like sky's the limit for him. Definitely on the rise. I think I was seeing Escrape talking on Twitter, uh, happy about the latest power rank placement, you know, shooting up into that 12th place slot. But now taking down the likes of Knees, who was power rank number four, he's looking to go up way more than that. Uh, just from this performance alone, let alone where he might actually end up for the day. Yeah, that's going to guarantee him a top six placement, which wow. let me just skin these numbers really quick. Other than like an Arcadian and a last chance qualifier, he's he's never done that. This is already, Jeez. I believe, his best placement in an official tournament other than the Mammoth Arcadian, which again, that's awesome. for those who don't know what the Arcadian is, is the Mammoth Invitational was like the top X number of PRs, and then the Arcadian was like the people that are below that. So it's sort of like a last chance qualifier where the top 31 seeds or whatever got invited to the event, and then the last chance qualifier was everybody else in the tournament. Yep. So yeah, this is this is a massive placement for Escrape. This is huge work, showing everything paying off, starting off with the orion and that not working showing that he has more in the tank and that depending on the matchup it's even better i love that i absolutely love that so that does set the stage for our top eight winners side and i'm just gonna quickly mention that we've got godly coco machete escrape all sitting up there so you know these matches are going to be absolutely phenomenal don't go anywhere because that's coming up next
Thea might be zooming into Brawlhalla, but we are zooming into this bracket because we've got the top eight of EU in the Spring Championship here today. And what's exciting about these upcoming matches is they're going to be deciders to find out two of the people going to the Spring Royale later in time. I don't know how calendars <laughs> work. It's, it's going to happen. Uh, but either Definitely way, uh, we, we got uh, the winners of the next two sets, Godly versus Coco and Machete versus Escrape. Those winners are going to be, of course, invited to that Spring Royale. But that's going to be fire, man. I mean, I saw Godly and Coco playing earlier, so that's going to be a banger to figure out who gets to go, uh, go to that Winter Royale, man. I, I'm looking forward to see what they have. And, I mean, we were we were talking earlier. I was talking to, uh, to TWK, and he was breaking down to me that Godly's been playing some of the more known uh, NA picks. And he's been tearing up people, so I want to see what he can do with the rest of this bracket because it's looking like he might be on a tear and be able to take this one home. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, again, uh, both of them did get invites to the Winter Royale, um, but unfortunately, Machete was not able to attend because he got sick like right before the event. So I'm really, I'm, I'm really pulling for Machete personally. I want to see him make it to the Spring Royale this time and actually get to perform and play because like that slight misstep, that slight lack of representation for the EU region, I think it'd just be really nice to see him there. But before that, of course, we've got Godly versus Coco, which you were talking about. Coco, of course, is he's kind of interesting in the sense of like i'm used to seeing him in the two space and of course we can see the matches that we've got up ahead um but i'm used to seeing coco in the two space i'm supposed to look back wait what <laughs> look look backwards what <laughs> matches we saw already codly versus flamethrower coco versus simple machete versus viper and knees versus escape of course these are the matches that they had to win to get into the top eight of things Okay, and now we've got what we got coming up next. There we go. We got Godly hey, versus one. Coco coming up. And oh. after that one, Machete versus Esgrape. What happens if we ask for another one? Another one. Let's go. TBD versus TBD. <laughs> yeah, that's hold right. Hold on, hold on. Another one. Oh! TBD versus TBD. That's, that's good right. stuff. The elimination side of the bracket, that's what those TBDs are. They have not filled out yet. If you want to catch those matches, of course, those are going to be over at Pro Brawlhalla. But like we've been saying, Godly versus Coco. Both of them had to win their matches to get here into the top eight of things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is going to be a banger. Uh, Coco was using uh, Negan, right? So we're going to yeah. get to see some some uh, great sword action. And he was playing very well on sword and great sword. So I want to see what uh, what Godly can bring to the table. He was pu pulling out that Lucian. He had the uh, the Petra is what I was seeing shake a second ago. So I really want to see what he brings out. He has deep pockets. He has a few different characters he can bring to the table. But that Jay Young was looking really crispy. So this is going to – I'm calling it a game five in this one. Okay, you're already declaring that. I think by the numbers, a lot of people have been favoring Godly again. Godly kind of burst out onto the scene and has been doing incredibly well for himself. As of late, struggled a little bit, but he's still PR number one. Definitely one of the favorites of the EU region and the favorite of this match. But kind of like to your point, to these characters that they're picking – they're not exactly what I would have expected coming into today. Godly, a little bit known for like Rayman. Of course, he's got those gauntlets. He's got that Mordex as well. And then on the other side, Coco, 
generally has been playing Wu Shang in mm. the two space alongside Spyrox. So coming in with that Jay Yun, it's definitely a little bit of a surprise for me personally. Exactly. It's a surprise for you personally. I bet you it's not going to be something that uh, Godly is just completely used to, right? And then you have to throw in the fact that he's going to have a different play style than any other Jay Yun that you played on the regular. So you can have the character experience, but do you have the player experience? And I mean, it's going to shake up to be a great match. So you see the God, you see that Godly went with the Petra. We see the Jay Yun, and I'm ready to see this thing shake. Let's get into game number one, a top eight. Yeah, and Coco again did have to beat out Simple to earn his spot here and did very well for himself. Those uh, great sword plays in particular were impressive. He was doing a great job building up that damage with the great sword, swapping over the sword for the KOs, and already picking up the great sword to start this one off. Already trying to mix and master him, put him on the mixtape. He's got the got the mix-ups I already saw, but you saw Godly was not dodging, right? So he's he's gonna make him condition him and figure out what he's trying to go for before he starts finding his defensive options to get out of those mix-ups. Now you're seeing Godly make the swap over to the gauntlets, maybe a little bit more KO potential, maybe looking for an N-Sig. We've seen like Radish over in NA do that a lot. Charged it up, but Coco with the dare actually stops that one out. Yeah, that was pretty brave. I'm pretty sure he was going to do that anyway, right? But it was it was good for him to hit that uh, signature before it came out because that's a banger. Would have sent him up high, and he would have had a rough time getting back down. But now having a rough time getting back on stage, Sarah's going to steal the recovery, and that is the first stock going Godly's way. Yeah, you saw those stars come out. New Coco did not have any more movement because he was really hoping he could get back to the stage there. And definitely a good Sarah from Godly to deny any ground touch. But now Godly's got an opportunity. Get some extra credit here. Yeah, this is the first stock of this one, so we're going to see what is Coco's KO options, right? Like, which weapon is he going to lean on to get stocks off? He racked up good damage with the Gray Sword, but he can't get anything going right now with the regular sword. Godly had complete control. The orb was looking very nice, already throwing out signatures because he has that second stock that hurt. Yeah, I don't think Coco had a single opportunity to do anything with that regular sword. Like, that was all godly, just amazing orb plays. Side light, side air puts Coco out to the right side, and another side air could KO, or that recovery from godly. Yeah, recovery did it. Yeah, that, that uh, orb recovery is a little sneaky. Like, I always feel like I'm not going to get KO'd when I get hit by that, and you just kind of hover into the space for a bit, and then you die. <laughs> it's got a surprising amount of movement inside of it, and will hit pretty hard, especially from this Petra, but Coco does deny the three stock there and likely will be setting up to stick with that greatsword. All right, yeah, he's going to stick to this. He's been racking up the damage with it, so it makes sense. He gets a nice little combination, but we finally see Godly decide to dodge. He's seen enough. He understands what he wants to do in defense, or maybe it's just a, I have the lead. I'm going to get out of this and then put on as much pressure as I can. He dodged out, and if Coco was ready, that could have been big. Yeah, but, I mean, that was an amazing string already coming out from Coco. His greatsword looking very clean. He is getting a lot of extensions here. As he swaps greatswords, likely going to look for some sort of setup for a KO. And Sig, yep. And that, that is going to be the equalizer. He's got him. He's got him to start trying to want out of the strings. And then he was able to set that one poke up into a dash up neutral signature. Got the damage. Uh, doesn't get the right read, but he's getting the opportunities. Yeah, it's basically a 50-50, right? Like, he's trying to decide, are you going to go out or are you going to stay in? Are you going to maybe dodge in? Either way, he's going for that dash forward uh, neutral light, and he's just trying to pick which side he mm. goes to. He was looking good, but that side signature, I, I mean, as soon as he hit, I already know Petra slaps it. I, I knew he was toast. <laughs> yeah. A lot of damage put out. But, I mean, again, credit to Coco. He was bringing that one back. Godly took the first two stocks with his starting stock. You can see it here in the replays. But Coco was able to bring that one back to uh, final stocks, I believe. Yeah, brought it down to the end of the game and had a chance. Had him pretty hurt. I mean, he had him about, you know, goldish, yellowish gold. And, uh, and he finally got caught by that side sig. Godly knew it was time to capitalize, and that's one of the things I was talking about yesterday. Uh, timely KOs, efficient KOs, as uh, TWK was saying. You know, you just got to make sure you get people out of there. Yeah, and we talked a little bit about how Coco was not able to uh, do anything with his uh, regular sword. Yeah, he put out 15 damage with that regular sword, so he's definitely going to be leaning heavily onto this great sword here in game number two. I feel like if he gets the opportunity, he'll play with it a little bit more than he did. <laughs> but he didn't even get the opportunity, as you said. But we're still looking at the great sword right now. Actually, one of my favorite great sword skins. The old Ooh. mixed and mastered. Get him out of there. <laughs> the side swaps from Coco, leading to a lead over Godly here. Oh, that was so good. I love when this when this weapon works. When you get the right reads, it is just second to none in in its cool in, in its swag. You know, 
though. But Godly able to equalize, comes in, gets that side sig, goes for the, the forward throw. And uh, now he's got an opportunity to get a little bit more of a lead here. Now that he's got so much weapon control. I feel like if he would have had the orb right now, it would have been a – he went back to it. Yeah, unarmed against the orb is a very, very rough time. Gets a, gets a weapon instantly and lands a nice string. Tried to land a Sair, but nice movement from Godly get around. Now control has shifted. Oh, this is scary. This is scary. One wrong move. One wrong move. He was able to touch. He gets his resources back, but not able to get a weapon. Going to have to deal with the Gauntlets now. Godly was doing such a good job pressuring Coco, but Coco managed to stay on. And like you said, he got that ground touch. So he kind of got out of dodge there, and now he's got that sword. Let's see if he can do a little bit more damage, but no, the end sig from Godly. And I want to see him stick with the orb. The orb was definitely the damage dealer. Definitely, man. That orb is looking really good. Look at it. Look at the strings he's putting together. Just starting this off and letting him know who's boss, getting good damage, and just making it harder for him to mount these comebacks that he's having, he getting in a position where he has to do. Coco, going to run back, pick up this great sword. Ooh, immediate end sig attempt there. He knows Godly's in that KO percent. Yeah, he wants that hit. He wants a big hit. But I don't know. Maybe he shouldn't fish because every time he whips, yeah, he's getting damage racked up. Maybe he could, you know, play it a little slower and maybe he could have got the stock. But Godly closing that one out, making it 2-0. I called for a game number five, but Godly wasn't liking that. Yeah, he, he did not appreciate that. He was like, uh, maybe not. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every time, like once he's got the damage built up, he just finds the right opportunity. Boom. You know, these stocks aren't going much past light red. It, you know, like they're barely getting into like a, a slightly darker red. He's just closing them out. And now we're seeing Coco swap on over to the Olgrim, characteristic of his twos pick, something that he plays alongside Spyrox. So Three, two, we'll see how well this does against Godly because the Jayun got completely shut out. Yeah, that second one was, was really, really rough. I mean, both games were kind of the same, got put down into a really bad situation early on, but the first one, he at least got a chance to try to bring it back. Second one, which is no chance. And now we got the Olgrim picks, got the axe going into the orb. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about this pick, honestly. I mean, the Jay Young wasn't working, but I don't know how much better Olgrim's going to do. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> it's not working great right now. Great side air from Godly. And uh, he, he has, honestly, a bigger lead than he did against the Jay Yan. But Coco, this is definitely a comfort character of his. So he's hoping that this comfort is going to be the thing that helps him take a win off of Godly. Yeah, okay. I see him doing a little bit with that Lance. I like what he's doing. But, man, if Godly keeps getting this damage per interaction, every time he gets a touch, he's racking it up. And it's going to be rough to do any type of comeback. And Weapon Toss, he's going to go right back into the orb. Side like there. Falling side air from Godly. Coco with the turnaround does get the side air, keeping this one relatively even. And yeah, it looks like it's going to be all about that Lance for game number three. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, that axe definitely was not doing anything. So, I mean, I like the way his Lance is looking. He's going to have to make sure he doesn't whiff too much because Godly is playing really close and he's getting clean punches. Look at that. That's a banger, puts you down oh. in a horrible situation, but nice, gets the down air for the chase dodge. Yeah, he needed that hit. You saw those sweat beads. Got that touch so he could chase dodge back up safely. Back over to the Lance. And playing the neutral a little slower. There we go. Got a hit. Whiffs again and gets side lights aired. Those Nair whiffs have been treating him real bad. Side air, still not enough. What's the option from Godly? Goes down weight and the nice little jump. A little, I didn't even know he had that last jump in the bag, but it doesn't matter. Godly going to close that one out. And I'm guaranteeing opting to go back to the orb for the closeout, sitting on second stock about orange. I mean, this is a big lead. Yeah, this is going to take a lot for Coco to bring this one back. Optimal damage there, down like ground pound. Over to the axe now. Hasn't been doing too much with the axe, and we'll see if he gets an opportunity to, because Godly is just he's keeping that pressure going. Oh, man. Okay. Oh. That's, that's big. That's big. Oh, finish. no. He missed. The closeout on that second stock, that would have been timely. It would have got him, like, back to an even game. Okay, still pretty good. Still pretty good. And I think he's going to stick with the Lance. Yep. Okay. And he's only on yellow, so he can really do this. He can bring this back. He's got to be careful about giving Godly those punish opportunities because Godly's going to turn that into one to three hits every time. 
Yeah, those whiff nares, like you called out, they have just been getting punished by Godly. Over to the orb now. Coco running out of movement here. Still gets the wall touch. Godly not able to get the side airs that he wants. Okay, he's got Godly unarmed. I like this. I like this. Even if he gets punished, it's not going to be too rough. He's going to get sent out. Throws a weapon down, trying to get back safely. He's going to have to deal with this orb. Gets a nice combination. Weapon oh. toss. Okay. Uh, he didn't really have any opportunity. The angle that Godly came back to the stage, he could not find that closing hit. And here it is, oh. the dare. And he gets a game on the board. Caught Godly trying to hit him with that uppercut. Get back onto the stage. Sneak up there. And he said, denied access. Yeah, I did. like it. <laughs> He didn't do that much damage with the axe, but it was just enough at the very end there. He put out 70 damage on his axe, but that final down air at the very end ended up uh, getting him a dub. 70 damage, but the most meaningful hit of that round is with that weapon. So, end of the day, it did its job. Yeah. <laughs> he did the, the exact amount of damage that he needed to do as we get into game number four. And, of course, Coco definitely sticking with the Lance or uh, sticking with the Olgrim at the very least. We'll see how well he does if he trying to, tries to change it up because he did a lot of nares there that, like you said, kind of got punished by Godly. Yeah, a lot of those nares with the uh, with the Lance were getting popped. I mean, he's definitely been getting punished a lot with the axe. But I feel like if he can get something going, he can put a little bit of more intimidation in with this axe. It's just, it's just in the neutral. He's just losing so heavily. Oh my gosh! The recovery with the KO. I didn't see that coming once again. Yeah, I did not think that that was gonna uh, KO Coco, but I guess because they were so high in the sky, uh, just unfortunate for Coco there. Godly, still sticking with the orb, still putting out damage. Just wants to build up that lead <laughs> and doing it. <laughs> wants to do it and is doing it. All right, switch over to the gauntlets and said, you know what? You got gloves on. I don't. My punch is still going to hurt. Gets the stock off, goes into the lance, and, I mean, keeping the game close. That was necessary to get that stock right there and doing it unarmed nonetheless. Yeah, can't let Godly get too big of a lead. Sidelight dare. Looks for the side air, but didn't see Godly jump. So nice kind of pivot there at the very end. Switch to a nair is just kind of a hopeful attack. It was good. If he didn't turn the other direction, it would have been perfect. It would have hit, right? The back end of it just didn't touch on the uh, the hitbox, and Godly was standing right there. Oh, the recoveries again from Godly, though. Dancing around, trying to get something. Okay, he finally gets the lance. Uh-uh. Oh, my gosh. Side lights there. It's going to KO. <laughs> Oh, this weapon, man, it's so it's so hard to deal with in neutral. It, it's like, it's a, it looks like a stubby weapon, right? It's just a little ball, but man, the way that it extends, the way the character hops around on the movement of the weapon, uh, on the attacks, it's just so hard to find your moments in your spacing. It's also tough because there's just not that many orb mains out there. Like, there's very few people who are really sticking with the orb, and uh, Godly picking it up definitely has some uh, matchup advantage here because I don't think Coco's played against that many orbs at this level. Yeah, for sure, for sure. There's a difference, you know, uh, playing in the rank ladder, fighting a couple of orb mains here and there, and then you come in here and you fight one of the best players in the world, and he's playing orb. That's a big difference. Two beasts. Doesn't find the side air. Coco running out of room here on this final stock here in game number four. If Godly gets one more sideline side air, could put him in position to close this one out. Yeah, sideline side air is definitely going to do it. So now we're looking at a situation where Coco's dang near going to have to play a perfect stock to bring this one back. And the way it's been looking, Godly is going to find a hit. He tries the Ooh. neutral stick instantly. Not going to touch. Nice combination from Coco, but he's in danger. Dodges red, uppercuts good. Godly. Taking the set three to one. A clean three one earns him a top three finish and of course an invite to that spring royale. But of course his day's not done. He gets to sit pretty in that winner's final and wait for his opponent of the next match. But Coco, uh, I don't I, I don't know what to say because it's just like the Jayun kind of worked at times, but then it ultimately didn't. The yeah. Olgrim kind of worked at times, but then it ultimately didn't. It just seems like almost like uh, running into a brick wall there and hoping that something works out. It just really, when you when it comes down to it, the way that Godly was punishing, it seemed like he was just too familiar with the game plan itself. 
it, you know, it was no nothing too tricky for him. And anytime you gave him uh, one of those just basic attacks, he knows you're just trying to keep him in place or keep him at bay. He's like, no, I, got, I have the spacing, and I'm going to make you pay dearly for even throwing that attempt out. And it just, yeah. It, we saw it all transpire. So, unfortunately, going down to that lower side of the bracket, Coco's still alive, but, you know, God, we moving forward. Done. But uh, again, a, a good performance from Coco overall. Coming in here, PR number 24. Like, he's definitely getting some upsets. He's definitely doing very well for himself. And he's not done again. He's got a guaranteed top five finish. There's still an opportunity for Coco to earn his uh, flight and hotel for the Spring uh, Royale. But of course, he's going to have to wait in the elimination side of things. Up next, we've got Machete versus Esquate. And that's another one. Of the, Machete was one of the other players that has a chance to be invited back, right? What, where do you have to land to? He's just got to win this next set. Oh, so he this just wins this next one. He's top good to three, go. Top three of EU gets right. a flight and hotel. Top three of EU gets a flight and a hotel. All right. So, Machete, <laughs> this one means a lot. You know what <laughs> I mean? You want to win, right? And you want to get that bread. But this is probably the most meaningful set of the day to get another chance to get some more bread. Because you get some bread when you get the third place. And then after that, you get another flight, and then you get another chance for some more bread, right? That's what they're playing for. There's bragging rights, and then there's the cheese, the gouda. Yeah, you got you to gotta get it all. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you want a, a nice, well-made sandwich. You don't just want some bread at the end of the day, you know? Uh, but, of course, he's got to get through Escrape, who had to make a little bit of an upset to get here. I believe Escrape took out knees in an amazing uh, set. It went 3-2 in favor of Escrape off that swap over to the Mirage. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't know if... Uh, We've got any expectations, but apparently the viewers have some expectations. 77% in favor of Machete. So you know, he, I'm an underdog fan, so I initially wanted Machete to win, but fans, you guys keep uh, doing these type of polls where one guy's getting pushed down to the side, so I'm automatically going to go S-Grape. Come on, strut your stuff and show them that they're wrong. That's so funny. Like, normally when you, you they pull up the, the, the vote, right, and it's so, like, heavily weighted towards someone, Someone will come in and be like, no, no, no. We got to get this a little bit closer to even. But that one just kept going further <laughs> in favor of Magette. They're like, oh, yeah, that's that's a really smart idea. Let's keep doing that one. Yeah, that one definitely just kept climbing and kept climbing. What was it? He had like 20-something percent at first, and then it just kept shrinking. <laughs> nope. Oh, my gosh. All right, so Machete is going to be coming in here with those battle boots, the Tesca, but the Black Knight from S-Grape over here. I like what we're going to see here because I saw him playing a moment ago, and he was definitely giving me shades of Stingray. Okay, yeah. Uh, definitely excited to see, of course, uh, like you said, the Black Knight kind of a nod to Stingray over in North America. But one thing that I'm really going to be looking out for for S-Grape is how is he going to get these KOs? Oh, oh, oh my God. Okay. I, I questioned. He answered immediate zero to death on the Machete. Machete, the person who won the Winter Championship not that long ago and S-Grape already putting him down a stock. That couldn't have been more perfect. We're going to see how he's going to get these KOs. Brruh, brruh. <laughs> Took them out in less than 10 seconds. All right, so now having to use these boots after you're stocked down and still eating a good bit of damage from S. Grape's Lance. And it looks like he's not even going to opt to switch. I mean, he knows what he's doing here with this weapon. Yeah, definitely familiar with this weapon. Of course, I, I expected a little bit more spear lean just because, again, that Mirage was had that carryover. But right now, the Lance is doing work. Already putting Machete down to his final stock here in game number one. What a start. Hey, guys, how y'all feeling about them votes? 18% yeah. <laughs> of chat feeling real good right now. <laughs> All right, Downlight Recovery denies the three stock, but Machete, he's going to need big play after big play. Boots can do it if he gets the right read in the offstage, but Escrape not giving him any room to do it. Oh, my gosh, he just throws a raw side stick out of me, but it is Orion. It is the Black Knight, so it's not a bad idea. Gets the hit, and now he's just he's playing some pretty good nooch with the with the spear, and he can afford uh, some of these punches that he's getting. Uh, it's not like Machete is literally turning it into a lot of damage into like big combos. So he's like taking those hits and then trying to reestablish and land a combo. Oh man, but that one's big. Okay, so he's getting to the point where he's close to losing his stock. Tried to catch Machete jumping, but he's playing a grounded weapon, right? That's a I don't think that was the greatest read. A little bit lower, he could have caught him. End up making it back to the stage, but the ground hound will do it. And now it's an even stocks, but look at the damage on Machete. Yeah, I mean, Machete is slowly bringing this one back, but like you said, there's such a huge lead that S Grape had uh, created that basically a down sick, and S Grape is going to take game number one. 
Oh, yeah. Down SIG, even if he would have went over there and landed a ground pound, I feel like he could have closed the game right there. But, you know, it's in a situation where Machete's got to play very careful. Down SIG is going to whiff. Oh, my goodness. If he keeps now, this is what I was Whoa. saying a second ago. It, he's trying to just play it safe and let him have these small taps, but these small taps are racking up. This is how he got this game back this close. Down SIG again. We'll close it out. That's great with a nice start, but, man... You started to see what Machete is capable of. Yeah, I mean, that that was Machete starting without a stock here. I mean, what an amazing start for S-Scrape, taking out, again, the top player uh, of recency for EU, right? He's the one who won the most recent championship for the region, but S-Scrape starting it off real strong. Yeah, I like it. I like what we were saying from that Lance. His spear was actually pretty strong, too, so uh, we'll see how this one plays out. But those, those boots of Machete, man, I don't know. It seemed like Esquire didn't really have an answer once uh, Machete got established. One thing that uh, I, was, I was noticing from Machete's boot play uh, in that last game is like he really likes going for, I think it's down like Grand Pound, like that right there. It's such a weird option because it doesn't do a whole lot. Like maybe it's good for damage, but it's not something that like you're taking stage with or you're getting this pressure situation to go for like another follow up. So it's very interesting that he's been doing that a lot against Esquire. Well, what I'm noticing is he a lot of a lot of the boots players we've been seeing they like to push you off the stage and then go off stage and try to create another situation, right? And maybe rob a stock or just rack up the damage. He's doing those combos that keep you close to him, and he hovers around you and looks for another punish. So he just wants to keep it as tight knit as possible, is what it looks like. Oh my gosh, goodness, what a good sare from Esgrave. Pinpoint accuracy takes the first stock. Yeah, this Lance is doing so much work for Esgrave. He was able to put out 359 damage in the last game with his Lance. He's going to be looking to put out big damage again, but Machete wants to find that evener. The dare drops as he slips over the corner. He had a chance for the stock right there. That one's going to bounce off the stage, so the Sayer didn't send him at the trajectory he would like. And s still going to survive going down there. Nice, timely movement to get in there. Okay, just scrapping unarmed. I thought after the second one, he's going to go back to get the weapon. He ends up losing the stock weapon less for that manner. I mean, here we go. We're going to go into this. Now you're going to have to deal with these boots. And... I feel like he could have had a chance. He went back and got a weapon and could have scrapped a little bit longer. I think he recognized the damage he was at and was like, you know what, I'd rather start the next stock with the Lance than try to pick one up now and then potentially start off the next stock with the Spear. Because, I mean, again, the Lance has been doing a lot of work for Esquire. That's big thinking. That is big time thinking. Oh, baited the dodge and caught him slipping. Let's punish. Okay. Nice two-piece coming out from Machete. Mmm. Wanted to stay a little too close. Already used a lot of resources. Machete got punished big time for that, but wasn't able to catch the KO. It looks like the big KO option. I mean, we're going to see a neutral stick there, but it looks like s -Grape really wants down signatures. Yeah. I mean, when he has that damage lead, the way that he does, like he just throws out whatever sigs he wants. And sig down sig. So much damage put out from s -Grape with that sequence from his lance. That could have been bad. If s would have noticed that he was throwing that sig, he really could have punished that big. Go over there with a dare, side air, something. That could have created a bad situation for Machete. There's the dare, and this time, not going to overextend. Gets that down ticket that he wants. And he's got a two-stock lead. I mean, he's comfortable. He can eat this and really not be in too much danger. Down air is going to hit, but he touched the side, so he got his resources back. Yep. Machete going to try to catch a landing there, but S great. Does get back. Nice. Downlight side air. Final stock for both of them here in game number two. And if Machete does not take this one, this is going to be a huge hill to climb. Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel like it already is. Like, he's going to have to play this very slow to even have a chance and not even going to give him one with a gravity cancel down sig. Nice job from S Grape. This Black Knight, I'm liking it. I'm telling you, tell me that you're not seeing Shades of Stingray. In this I time. definitely see it. Again, like the down sig <laughs> usage, the N sig <laughs> usage in particular, are definitely like Shades of Stingray. Like those jump gravity cancel down sigs or something that, like, when Stingray first kind of burst out, that right there was like, that is Stingray play. Yeah. And uh, it's forcing Machete off of the Tesca. He's not feeling it right now. The boot's just not working, not able to get in on that Lance. So he's going back over to the Fate, something a little bit more classic for Machete. You know, that fit had me so confused. I could not tell that was Fate. I ain't gonna <laughs> lie to you. I don't think I've ever seen the skin. <laughs> Yo, the Astronaut Fate. Astronaut Fate. I don't actually know what this is. I think the skin name's like Star Speaker or something. How you go from a magician to an astronaut? She's a little of both. Maybe, maybe it takes some magic to get into space. 
You know, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> if you try to ask me to explain how a rocket ship works, might as well be magic. Might as well <laughs> be magic. <laughs> the Sayer is magical, putting out a bad situation for Machete. And side light Sayer will close it out. The bad situation turned even worse. Down a stock, S-Grape with a commanding lead. Yeah, just so much amazing lands play. Coming out from S-Grape, Machete is really struggling here in game number three. Like, the entirety of the set has just been S-Grape doing work with the lands. Yeah, I mean, what, what's the option here? I mean, I know that I know that if uh, Machete has a good orb, he can really try to lean onto that to deal with this lance. But Scythe was looking okay for a moment. Ops to go over to the orb, so maybe I was correct that that's the option. That's what he wanted in this uh, matchup. But S-Grape, it just looks like S-Grape uh, Lance is, is the real deal. Oh. The real deal, baby! Oh, my God. Gosh, every time he gets him out there on the side over there, it's a scary situation. Escrape is on the cusp of three stocking Machete and earning his spot at the Spring Royale. Escrape looking so strong right now. Dare's not going to do it for Machete. Opportunity here. Yep, that Dare will deny the wall touch, but still two stocks left for Escrape. Machete again needs big plays. That was good patience from Machete on that uh, edge guard, right? Just really waiting out all the options. Asgrave was trying to figure out, like, okay, when is he going to go back up? When can I make my play to touch this wall one time? And now he's going to have to deal with this scythe, right? This is the robbery weapon of them all. And if he ends up getting gimped once, this could turn into a very even game. Not getting his Dodgers red, so that's a good look, but he is getting tapped a lot right now. Jete is starting to get a little bit more neutral wins over Asgrape, but Asgrape is finding these hits. Okay, recovery to punish that side sig. Oh, if he would have landed that Nair, that would have been huge. Yeah, it could have kept him in that pressure situation. Now Asgrape over to the spear, something we haven't seen too much of in that last game. Only put out 92 damage, throws out the end sig. Did he get the wall touch? Yes, he did. I feel like Machete thought he didn't and really bet the farm on that down oh, air. No. And now, oh, okay, you're going to get the chase dodge, but the Nair into down sig does not work out. D like uh, neutral sig does not work out. Still, Machete, a stock behind, just a side light, needs to finish this stock off. Can't find a punish. Okay, side air puts it to final stocks here, but Machete, he is running out of health. <laughs> 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 and just like that, Asgrave earns his flight in hotel. He gets to go to the Spring Royale, a guaranteed top three finish over the last championship winner. Amazing plays coming out from Asgrave. What a 3-0 victory. And what a read. Like, the way he's been going out there and picking Machete apart on the edge. He goes out and he faints sometimes. Just, like, comes back to the stage. I'm not going to do anything. Sometimes it's a dare. Sometimes it's a sayer. And he's been right most of the times when he makes those choices and forces Machete to guess. That so that was a rough, rough road for Machete. And uh, kudos to Esgrave. Hey, guys, the pulse at 18%. 18%. You know what I'm saying? 18% Underdog believe is feeling up. good, yeah. The, the underdogs, the the uh, believers out there, definitely feeling real good about that one. That's great. 3 owed Machete. Again, Machete won the most recent championship. He didn't get his opportunity to go to the Winter Royale, and now he's got to earn his opportunity to go to the Spring Royale because he's going down the elimination side of things. That's it. That's it. He's going down on the elimination side. I mean, still alive. You still have the opportunity to, to try to make it, but... Man, it's going to be hard. That's going to be a tough journey because there's a lot of bangers left in this in this bracket, right? Like, we already saw Coco went down there. Coco was, has been putting on a performance. Coco took out Simple earlier, if I'm not mistaken. And we already know Simple. I don't need to explain anything about that man. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you have the thing over here. Yeah, so, I go and break down who else is down there on that so side of the bracket. Simple has earned his spot in the top eight. Right now, over on twitch.tv slash Hall, that second stream, Kixay and Flamethrower fighting. Kixay up 2-0. Uh, off stream, Deffy and Knees are fighting, and Deffy's up 2-1, so Knees might not even get an opportunity to come to the Spring Royale. And then uh, another match set to go on to Pro Brawl Hall right now is Viper versus Blaze. Blaze, who took out Akno and Sarme to get here, is uh, set to fight against Viper to get into the top eight, I think. So we still got some more matches left to go for sure. Yeah, took out Akno and Sarme. What a run. This is a stacked bracket, man, and some people have had to go through uh, through some really rough stuff to get to the point that they're at in this bad boy. So kudos to anybody that's made it as far as they have. Like, you know what I mean? People want that that prestigious top four. People want their chance to go to the, to the Royale. You know what I mean? But 
just getting as far as they have is not something to just sneeze at. Yeah, definitely a tough region over here in EU. Of course, a lot of strong players out there. But for now, we're still waiting to find out who's who's going to be coming, who's going to be challenging Simple. We still got Godly and Escrape sitting on the winner's final. Of course, both of them have earned their spots in the Spring Royale. And Machete and Coco chilling in the elimination quarterfinal. Uh, for their opponents for a while, actually, it's gonna be it's gonna be a hot bit. It's gonna be a bit. Yeah, okay, it's be a bit. got it, got <laughs> it. <laughs> so for us here, what are we looking? I think we're we're looking at a break. We're gonna be looking at taking a short little break because of course we gotta wait for those matches to happen. EU taking their time a little bit getting here. So we're gonna take a short little break, and when we come back, of course, we'll bring you that top eight of the EU region for Spring Championship. Stick around.
One more can earn that uh, prestigious title as well as only one person can be crowned the 1v1 champion for the spring championship in EU. Godly and Escrape sitting in the winner's final down in the elimination side of things. Kixay earned his fight to go up against Simple Knees sitting in the top eight as well. It's a... Uh so, like I said, we were talking right before the break. We were talking about how there's some bangers down there, man. There's some goons down there. And now we have Machete down there, Sample, and all the other people that he just named. These are going to be some scraps coming up next. We've got a few more sets for you getting into the top four. And, you know, we already got the established two that are going to make it. And now those guys down in the bottom are trying to figure out which other person is going to be able to get one of those flights to the Royale. It's going to be some good stuff. Stay tuned with us. And let's look at this right here. We had earlier, we had Knees versus S-Grape. That was two to three. Godly versus Coco, three to one. And then we had Machete with a surprising 0-3 loss to S-Grape. And then now we're coming up and we're about to have Simple and Kixay going up next. I love that uh, wheel of character swaps that was just happening right there. They're like, guess what? It keeps changing. Kixay apparently has been locking in the Lucian. Also extra precision on his PR there. I don't know if you noticed that point zero. They had to make extra sure that you knew. That is. He wasn't. Funny. He's not triple digit <laughs> PR. I hope. I don't actually know. But they 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 give him a little extra precision on that one. But yeah, up next, Kixay versus Simple. Uh, definitely not a match we've seen too often. Looking at the head to head, currently yeah. zero one in favor of Simple. But guess how many years it's been since they fought? Uh, I'm going with four. 
you're surprisingly close. They last time they fought 2020, it went 2-3 in favor of Simple. So it's been about three years yeah. since they have fought. So effectively out of the range of data that we have. Yeah, I mean they they dang near fought in a whole nother like game. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> it's been patched up. It's it's new meta. Like they, they, this is not the same matchup they fought back then, right? And then and we were looking at this a moment ago, and we saw Kicks they normally was locking in to the uh, Asuri. So, you know, coming in with the Lucian, uh, and then we got the Hattori on the side of Simple, which back then was probably the Bodvar, right? So it's just going to be a totally different ball game. Who knows if they run into each other, each other on the rank ladder. Uh, I mean, we'll see what happens here. This is going to be exciting for everyone because nobody knows what's going to happen. Yeah, it's really hard to say. Again, like by, by raw numbers, I think a lot of people would favor Simple. He's had a little bit more successes, but then you look at the most recent couple of events and you got Kixay uh, getting a ninth place finish, Simple with the fifth. Kixay got 129th in the Autumn Championship, Simple with the fifth. Kixay got a 65th finish in the Summer Championship and then a second for Simple. So you can see by the numbers, uh, definitely favors Simple just a little bit, but again, Kixay's doing very well for himself today. Uh, oh yeah, for today, for sure. Uh, just for fun, I just have to ask, production, <sighs> beep, 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 beep. do we have a poll? Is there a poll? Did you Morse code that before that? All right, it's a little too late. <laughs> <laughs> they'll tell us the numbers, you know, they'll, they'll give us the head to head. I'm pretty sure fan pressure is gonna be in favor of Simple at the very least, but, oh, it's 50-50. Wow, okay, a lot of Kixay believers out there. Oh yeah, I just, wanted, I just wanted another chance to, you know, see an upset and just talk to the crowd and let them know <laughs> you can't be downplaying guys like that, but they didn't, it looks like they didn't downplay this time. Yeah, that's usually what happens, right? Is like they lose horribly in a in a, a gamble, and now they're like, you know, we'll we'll shave the odds a little bit. Simple, not gonna cover that dodge down. He waited and watched it, and was just like, yep, that happened. <laughs> All right, so I mean, leaning onto this uh, this spear at the moment, gonna be going up against these blasters, and you can tell, yeah, kicks. They wanted these bad boys. One of the guitars. They're super strong right now, and I'm pretty sure with being an Asuri player, that's your main weapon. I Good combo from Simple, catching pretty high up and still not able to KO on the recovery. But uh, nice little, nice little small lead. Tried to go for a recovery. You have no resources left, but the weapon toss down is gonna keep you safe on the way and gonna get caught down live recovery. That one will do it. Simple taking the lead. Yeah, nice pickups from Simple all around. Uh, some great spear play. Recognize that that spot dodge was burned, led to a double down light for that recovery, and of course clean pickup down light recovery. Not gonna drop it. Definitely. Very familiar with this sword. He was playing the Asuri earlier today. And of course, definitely known for his Bodvar back in the day. I like the reads I'm seeing Kixay go for. He's trying big plays to really get this stock off, but he's not able to touch yet. But just seeing the confidence is uh, making me feel real good about him. Now, going into the Blasters, went ahead and threw away those Katars. So maybe feeling more confident in finding the final hit to get a downlight recovery or something like that to get this, final, get this first stock off. Well, he's definitely going to need something soon because uh, Simple is finding more and more damage down there. Not going to lead to a KO, unfortunately, just a bounce onto the main stage. Over to the Katars, could go for a lot of signatures here, but Simple picks up another downlight recovery. Yeah, Simple definitely picked him apart that time with the sword. He, everywhere he went, he tried the Katars. He said, okay, this is not working. Tried to go back to the Blasters and found out that ain't going to work either. Now you're down two stocks. Still got him on red. You have an opportunity to just get this stock out of there, but you've got to find a clean hit. Nice. And the sale do it. Yeah, had enough damage there for that falling side air. Kicks A playing pretty far behind here. Has the guitars in hand. We haven't seen those, like, big strings from his guitars just yet. Yeah, not, not at all. I mean, he got one kind of at the very beginning. He started to get some damage racked up, and then is that's when everything changed. It was like, it's like Simple got Ooh. caught by one loop and was like, nah, I don't want any part of this, and just started playing neutral. He's like, just, oh, yeah, I'm just going to pick you apart. That's what Katars like to do. Zig mm. and Simple going to take it very simply over Kixay 2-0. What a setup. You know, that nice short weapon toss upwards, right, and then lands that, that side signature. Just, just set him up clean. He's like, I don't want to run into the weapon. He just caught him slipping. So, I mean, simple, making simple dis simple plays and uh, got a simple victory, right? Going into this next one, it's going to be 1-0 his way on a two-stock. 568 damage to 200. And how much was that? 281? Yeah, 281. 
put Pain. out from Kixay. Yeah, that Pain. was a little bit of a struggle. And uh, unfortunately, like like we said, Kixay has uh, apparently been playing Lucian for the most of today. Um, so not sure if he has too many swaps. We did talk about that as Suri earlier on. But this is definitely a situation, like, when you are only putting up 281 damage against your opponent, you might be thinking about the swap. Oh, yeah, for real, for real. I mean... I feel like mainly he just didn't get to play. But deciding to switch over to the moon, and I feel like I've seen this character a lot more recently. And, I mean, I like that because I've always thought this character was really good since the release. I thought the sig pack was good. I think the two weapons are really good, especially back when the bow. I mean, the bow, the bow got nerfed, but it was it was so strong. I didn't understand why I wasn't seeing much of this character, especially when the scythe has always been what the scythe is. You know, so now I don't get to see more of this character. We'll see if it works here in this matchup. Yeah, it definitely seems to be that pivot pick for Kixay. Uh, last time we saw Kixay onto this character was uh, in his match against Machete, right? He played Lucian for the first two games and then swapped over to the Moonin for game number three. Uh, looks to be a similar theme set here in this elimination top eight. Simple was playing with fire just a moment ago. Got to two exclamation marks, and there was a scythe on the board, right? If he, he just let that one last one come out, he could have just got clipped. And there's a clip for your troubles. Oh, my gosh. Kicks oh. a – ooh, if that ground pound hit, man. It was just back-to-back -back taps coming out from Simple, really trying to fish and get that stock out, but not able to do so. Kicks a able to live and switching over to the scythe. I think the neutral was playing out a little bit better with this one. Oof. But Simple still putting in work, putting out that damage. Downlight, Gravity Cancel, and Sig did that in that last game. But Kixay with a great punish as Simple went too low. Picks up that ground pound, and now Kixay has got the lead. Messing around too much on that side of the stage. Kixay said, I got two weapons that got answers for that. I got down airs, and I've got ground pounds on both of these weapons. Really, really good tools. So if you get under me, I can make something happen. Does so and the first lead for Kixay in this set. Nice double end light, getting some good damage put out onto the second stock of Simple. Scythe's starting to level up for Kixay as Simple needs to find that finisher. Recovery will do it. That was very, very nice. Nice and clean. Got that uh, recovery and now opting to go back to the sword. The weapon that's been dominating most of the time, right? Been playing good on off stage with it, playing good in neutral with it, and getting the KOs with it also, right? Downlight recovery was the answer in both, uh, both stocks in the last game to start off. So it makes sense. Gonna switch back to it. Had the spear for just a second, right? Oh, but Ooh, kicks a. good dodge through, but you have no dodge left. And Kixa makes the wrong read on Simple getting back to the stage. Had a chance to get that stock out of there. Tries a down stick, no good. Oh my gosh, Simple going for it all. More dares. Oh, but Ooh. a dare from Kixa on the turnaround will give him the lead again. I thought Simple was playing that edge guard differently, right? He wasn't going super high, looking for that ground pound that whiffed in the the first stocks, but uh, fortunately didn't work out here in the second stock either. Tried out that ground pound, it's <laughs> not gonna work out. Kixa goes straight around it, but I like it. You gotta present the option. Nice and side light goes back to the sword. So it looks like Spear is just kind of like a keep away for a little bit weapon, reestablish neutral, and then go back to the sword and start dominating again. But it's not working. This Scythe from Kixay is the answer. I feel like this was the perfect swap. Yeah, this Scythe looking very good for Kixay. Simple does manage to even up the stocks, and he's going to juggle for a moment, just trying to delay that next weapon spawn. But he's, uh, he's playing behind a little bit here. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, not, not too damaged, but really close, especially the way Kixay's been working. When Kixay gets a couple good hits, it's kind of like, all right, not really throwing too many blows out and then finds a good timely KO. Now, if Simple can find a way to extend this one, it's definitely been favoring Simple in the neutral interactions. Side of the stage has been going either way, though, oh. and here we go. Nice job landing no. every hit, and the dare will do it. Stolen recovery, Simple. Two to one, I mean, two to zero. Yeah, took his time trying to figure out how to do that edge guard just right. He was throwing out dares for days, threw out that ground pound as well, but finally started to find that rhythm on the edge guard and ends up cleaning up the final stock. Simple's pressure, man. It's like, I, I've been watching, like, you, you go back to last night and then you watch most of the sets from today. People aren't really being that aggressive on the side of the stage. And Simple's going out there and saying, you know what? I don't care what weapons you have. I don't care what kind of turnaround possibilities you have. I'm going to come out there. His dares are so pinpoint. He's landing. I mean, I wish we could see the accuracy on just that move alone. Yeah. And uh, the accuracy he has is just making it so dangerous to mess with him out there. Uh, his overall light attack accuracy, though, is 43%. So yeah. still pretty solid accuracy on all of his. Wait, he only threw out. No, this is wrong. 
Is there about <laughs> 65 attacks? No I mean, way. maybe. Is that real? Three. How do you do 376 damage with 65? Okay, well, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Kicks ain't making the swap. Moonin didn't work either. Now over to the Stevani, that Val crossover. Again, no carryover to the last character. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, complete swap. Complete swap goes for the Gauntlets, goes for the sword. Uh, I mean, Gauntlets looking good to start it off, I'll tell you that much. And picks up the Gauntlets again. That was clean. All right, we're going to see what's, what's simple going to do. Okay, he has the spear. Haven't been seeing him really play the spear. Just kind of like trying to land a couple touches. Just like stay away from me until I can get my sword back. And uh, looks like you might get your sword back by getting KO'd and having to get a new weapon. Yeah. Really good movement from Kixe. Stand right alongside Simple and outspaced that recovery. So he's able to pick up that side air. Nice lead here for Kixe here in game number three. Very, very good start. I mean, had a good start last game too. And... Uh, Unfortunately, just wasn't able to do much with it. Simple just stayed hovering right around and made sure to keep the game as close as possible. Uh, this time, we're gonna see if Kixai can extend this one, right? If you can keep, if you can rack up a lot of damage right here with this first stock, I, I, I think it's favorable. You haven't really played from behind too much. So I think Kixai can really lock in and get this to a 2 1. Yeah, definitely a real possibility here for Kixa. Definitely a, a, a more possible than it has been in the previous two games against Simple. All right, he's got that spear. A lot of nares being thrown off. Side light gets you punished. Down air, right back at you, though. Ooh, down weapon toss into the neutral air. It's like nobody's okay. super comfortable right now in this matchup. They're really being patient with their blows. But kicks, say it makes more sense, right? You can be as patient as you want. As long as you're not taking damage, you don't really have to overextend. Yeah, I mean, he's got the lead. I mean, if you wanted to, six minutes from now, he would be taking game number three. But uh, very unlikely that it'll go that far because right now he's still playing that edge guard. He's still playing right alongside Simple. Nice side air. Doesn't hit the weapon toss, but Simple's still taking a lot of damage here. Oh, man. Simple wants that first stock gone. Double signatures. Doesn't land either. Weapon toss into the dodge. Nice job from Kixay, but going to get hit with the Sair. Down on the side of the stage. Is Simple coming down? Nope. Simple's going to let you have it. Oh, there. Catches you as soon as you flinch. Nice reaction, and the recovery will do it. But ate a lot of damage on the way to the KO of that first stock. Now he's going to be sticking with that sword. It feels like it took him a while to get really his footing here in game number three. Like, kixay has been looking strong with the gauntlets, but Simple's been kind of, like, struggling to refine that rhythm. kixay has been holding strong with the gauntlets and also uh, Simple's been stuck on the lance, I mean, on the spear a lot more this game, right? So that's one of the big deals. And, uh, I mean, the sword's actually been pretty good for, for Kixay too, but it's been mainly gauntlets. Keeping Simple away from the sword, I think that's the play. Yo, I mean, the gauntlets as well from Kixay, just doing a lot of damage. Just a nice combo of, like, having solid gauntlet play and having good weapon denial from Simple. And now Simple has his opportunity. He's going to get this sword. He's got some health to play with, but he's definitely playing from behind. I tried to go for, the, go for that uh, quick and easy one, landing that signature, but... Right under this kick, say, goes and got, gets the gauntlets. Now we're back in Nooch. But Simple's been strong here. Playing really slow, trying to find the opportunity. Really wants to go for punishes. You're playing from behind. You can't really do too much and give punish opportunities to kicks, eh? Nice combo there. Lands the Nair straight into the gravity cancel neutral light. Down light side air. Puts kick Kixe over to the left side. Edge guard opportunity. Simple mm. finds the ground pound. Last stocks here. Gonna be sticking with a sword, yeah. Yep, it's gonna be sword v sword to close this one out. Got a damage lead for Kixe, but Simple's sword is the answer for him. Nice job. I'm liking what we're seeing out of Kixe with this sword. Wow, and the ground pad actually connects on the Simple. He did not find the positioning. Down light down air. Was looking for the bounce, trying to get that extra that extra damage. Mm -hmm. Downlight recovery is a victory for Kixe, and there's one on the board. 606 damage. What a turnaround from game number one, right? Yeah, he was able to put out some great damage, great pressure. Uh, a lot of it, again, starting off with those gauntlets. 289 damage put out from his gauntlets. Yep, that's good stuff. Only 439 taken. Uh, average damage per engagement, 31. That's actually really good. Yeah, especially compared to Simple, who was putting out 22 per engagement. Like, he yeah. was... 
struggling to get multi hits, struggling to get those longer engagements. Yeah, and I, I mean, I'm pretty sure the previous games were nothing like that. I know Simple was at least, especially the way that sword was working, Simple was definitely in like the 35 range. Yeah, well, now he's making the swap over to the Asuri for game number four. Okay, okay, okay. You know, so you don't have your, your uh, spear anymore, but you have the guitars, and if you want to get back to where you're – if you win neutral, you want to rack up damage, this is definitely the character to do. Yeah, the one thing I'm worried about the most for uh, specifically Simple is, like, if he gets stuck unarmed. He took 150 damage while unarmed, so he's only struggling for a while there. But now we'll see how all these Katars do for Simple. Again, he played this Asuri earlier today, so it's not a complete departure from what he's been doing. Yeah, if you, the way that you get caught unarmed like that a lot is when you're relying on one weapon. I think I've spoken on that a few times where I think, like, the game where you have two weapons for a reason, you need to use both. I mean, there's guys that can be weapon specialists, of course, and just keep playing the same one. But there's going to be moments when if you're getting stuck on a certain weapon you don't want or relying on a weapon spawn and you're getting starved, you're just going to have to play the other weapon at a certain point, and that's what happened last game. I don't think that's going to happen this time, having the, the Katars and the Sword. Yeah, Simple already putting out some great damage onto Kixa, looking for that opportunity to get that downlight recovery. There's the downlight. There's the recovery. Simple able to get that stock, and... Uh, We'll see what he decides to stick with. I expect the Katars. Yeah, again, back to the Katars for that damage build. Mm -hmm. There it is. You're going to rack it up on the second one. And uh, this is where you're going to have to be really careful as kicks it. You let him get those touches. You know what I mean? He's going to keep getting these loops. If he catches one dodge read, this can turn this lead. He's going to bust this lead right, right, right open. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he can he can make this lead much worse for kicks a, Uh He's starting to get those hits every single time. Kixi is not finding any responses. Too simple. Yeah, just can't figure out what to do right now. The control on the ground is simple all the way. Throws away the weapon. Going to go into the sword and lands neutral light. Has the side of the stage. Just going to wait for you to try to leak up. Lands a down light. Sare. Sare again. I think that's it. Yeah. Good. Sare's coming out from simple. Last stock here for Kixi. This is the elimination side of the bracket. Kixi has already taken an L to Machete earlier today. So uh, if he loses here, he is done for the day. Goes home with a seventh place finish. As a weapon toss, not going to get it. Not on point. All right. Side light. That's the option. Oh, good defense from Simple. Yeah, I like that up toss, especially against a Val, right? They like to do those si the side sig over the corner there. That up toss really dissuades any of that. But Kixay does deny the three stock. It definitely denies the three stock, but we'll see if we can get the second stock off in a timely manner, right? This is where I think this is the biggest moment of the game for Kixay right here. This is the only way you stay alive. Yeah, he needs a big second stock here, and uh, so far not getting much uh, height, much uh, size out of this one just yet. Waiting and trying to find the moments instead of turning on the aggression. I don't know about that. You're, you're just getting tapped and tapped and allowing Simple to open this lead up. And there's another punish. Simple's movement is just so clean. Staying exactly where he needs to be. Making it hard for Kixa. Got him on red already. Another nair. Another <laughs> nair. Oh, my gosh. The just chase up from Simple. Just a little too much. He's going to close that one out 3-1 and earn his fight against Machete uh, in a little bit. Nice, clean gameplay. Simple played that very, very smooth. Had some good uh, shining moments for Kikse, but uh, unfortunately, simple. Closing that bad boy out, moving forward in the bracket. Kikse is going to go home with a, what is that, a seventh place? Yeah, a seventh place finish. Still a, a, an impressive finish for Kikse coming in here. Not the highest PR or seed. Did very well for himself, but Simple did ultimately close that one out. It's always funny, again, like watching those highlights of Simple, because like uh, people have memed about how like the the high, you'll see like the Simple highlights, and he's just like downlight side air, <laughs> yeah, another side air. He's, he's just a nair, but like that's like that's his play. It just chips away, and he finds these very efficient, very clean hits to ultimately close out. Yeah, I feel like I haven't seen him be very swaggy since the hammer. I think I think his hammer had a little sauce on it, but everything else, like it really fits his name. He plays very simple, but it's very efficient. He's gonna get get you out of there, right? So, I mean, if you can't figure something out uh, in the neutral space with him, that's the problem. If you're losing neutral, he's just gonna keep playing neutral, not gonna apply pressure, give you opportunities to turn it around. He's just gonna get, you know, gonna whittle away at you, as you said, chip away at you, take you out, man. It's, that's a tough, tough opponent. 
Well, on that note, we're going to go over to the other side of the elimination bracket. We've got Blaze and Knees on deck. Blaze, of course, did get that victory over Viper. Waiting for the bracket to tell me what the score was, but uh, he did earn that uh, victory here. 3-1 over Viper to get here in the top eight. 3-1 over Viper. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. I got, who was it? Who took out uh, Knees in the winter side? Um, S Grape, I believe. S Grape. Yes. Yeah, S -Grape. There, there it is. There it is. Yeah, that was a good that was a good set. Uh I mean, like I said, I wasn't I didn't know what to expect from S Grape, but S Grape really showing his stuff. Uh so now knees is down here on the lower side where I'm pretty sure he didn't expect to be yet. And gonna go up against uh go up against Blaze. These guys, what's the what's the history on these two? Good question. And I can answer that when they they update this thingy in the back and they tell me. Oh, there it is. I, okay. it's, it's not my fault. Hey, oh, look, I oh, thought this was a, you. You know, they, I thought this was a database. I thought that Duke was just over here no. just searching stuff. I up, get right? carried by technology. <laughs> that's that's the secret right here. Is I get I get carried here. Let me see if does it, if I do this, does okay. this tell me? Oh, oh, I think he figured it out, y'all. Yeah. I think he what figured it out. What does this do? Uh, nope. Okay, it's it just it just made itself flatter. Okay. This just in. He didn't figure it out. I don't know how technology works. <laughs> uh, don't worry, you're better than me. I have no idea how that thing works. You guys, you you talking about getting carried? These guys carry me with this tool right here. I don't know. Oh hey, look it updated. Hey, Seven never one. Mind. He found it. He found in it. In favor of Blaze. It's what is it? Seven one in favor of Blaze. Seven one in favor of Blaze. Wow. Yeah, I did not expect that. Blaze. Not generally known for being the strongest 1v1-er. He generally does really well in 2v2s. But again, as of late, has been starting to do better than his twos partner, Akno, right? He's been beating out Akno. He had to beat Akno to get here today. Um, and of course, that that uh, spread 7-1 in favor of him. A little bit of a surprise. I think the last time they fought was in 2022 in the Spring Championship. It did ultimately go in favor of Knees 0-3. So we'll see what the viewers feel. 0% uh, either side? Okay, no one believes in Knees. Ain't no Nobody way. likes Knees. Y'all playing Knees is with cringe. Me. Okay, oh, there wait, we wait, go. Wait, wait, okay. <laughs> Knees ne is back on deck. We believe in Knees. Y'all, whoa. Jeez. <laughs> oh, my. What is happening? What is? <laughs> this is not real. <laughs> what is all right, all right. I guess Blaze is. This is AI crazy. generated, dog. <laughs> this is not. This is not happening right now. This is like those animations where they're like, "All right, everyone in the audience, you gotta make some noise," and it like fills up the bar. But it's just an animation that's like super fake, and you're like, "All right, whatever." <laughs> uh, I, I would expect it goes in favor of Knees. Yes, there's a seven-one matchup history in favor of Blaze, but in terms of recency, Knees has done better. He won the most recent time they fought against each other, and then again, going back to that Winter Championship, the most recent recent event where they all were participating knees did better he got that third place finish i go i got you i got you you know back to what you were saying There's about uh about blaze uh coming from the two space i feel like a lot of 2v2 players are like formed in the uh, well 1v1 players that are of of the new age they were formed in the 2v2 space maybe like training with already prevalent 1v1 players and getting the the situations where they were able to play in the on the big stage and see those big moments help them in the 1v1 space. That's what I feel like. I feel like we're seeing a lot of them come in and start to be better in this space. I, I, I got to agree with you. I think there's a lot of people who are like that. Uh, Blaze, though, has been in the game for a really long time. He's yeah. been playing for a long time, had one of, I think he has, he still has the longest winning record in 2v2s in his region alongside Akno. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, not known for his 1v1s, but today looking good. He's on that Asuri going up against Knees, who's over to the Mordex. This is a swap. He was playing, I believe, Lucian earlier today and then made that swap over to the Mordex. I think he was playing uh, Asuri also. Oh, and okay. Yeah, he came over here to the Mordex. Uh, I did see in the last, in, in that match against Esgrave, he went to, uh, Mordex in the final game. It didn't work out, but it did look pretty good. He had good shining moments. So starting off in this one's pretty even though up, up, up against Blaze. And Blaze with a nice signature to take that first stock. Yeah, good pickup, that sword down signature. It's interesting, like when someone doesn't really like isn't known for playing a legend sometimes they bring out stuff that like the real mains of that legend aren't really doing like that sword down sick you don't see too many people on the asuri doing that but blaze was very effective knees still manages to pick up that recovery though also doing it on uh frames like doing it when you're above their head thinking like okay if he comes down to attack me right now i'm gonna pop him right like that is definitely not a moment you see that very often 
Well, Mies is going to have to adjust to this unique style of Blaze. Blaze generally more known for his axe play, but right now the sword looking solid. Again, not playing like the other Asuris out there. He's not leaning on the guitars for the damage build and going over to the sword for the KO. Instead, predominantly sword play coming out from Blaze. My goodness, Blaze looking really good. Oh, if he would have landed another Sayer, I mean, I feel like Mies might have still touched the game, right? But I think that could have been the situation he needed, putting him at far right again. Neutraliant lands for knees. Trying to get some more damage put out onto Blaze here. This is comeback potential. He's doing pretty good. Controlling yeah. space right now, landing some good hits. That's still not enough. The Sayer from Blaze won't do it. Tried to go off for a recovery, gets nared. And nope. another nair. Wow. Overextended with the Sayer and got clipped. Could have just got back on the stage, but really thought that that was the answer. Yeah, I mean, just kind of that wrong decision there of going in, going for that recovery. He still manages to clean up the stock, but just that slight misstep. It really took him a while to get that stock off Knees. He had him in the red, and Knees ended up bringing him into the red alongside him, and then ultimately getting that stock first. Yeah, Knees started picking him apart with the gauntlets. It was it was a uh, quite a show. Uh, so go back into this, and we got the gauntlets versus the sword. Now there was that moment where we had Knees winning gauntlets versus sword, but. For the majority of the match, the sword has been really keeping these gauntlets at bay. Yeah, Blaze really feels like a sword main who just likes cats right now. Like, he has not really <laughs> played the guitars. Is all about this sword from Blaze. And it's not even like the signature kit as the ground pound connects. Down like goes for the second ground pound. Blaze gets away, but damage being done here. Knees has an opportunity to take game one, and he will with the down sig. Down signature. I was expecting, I was actually expecting the side sig, man. But uh, that down sig, active input, nice stuff, nice stuff. Yeah, looking at the damage. Uh, looks like Blaze did put out a, a little bit on the guitars, 189 versus the 330 that he did with the sword. So then we had some moments on the guitars. But, I mean, for the most part, it, it really felt like a lot of it was that sword play. It was. It, I mean... Yeah, we had 100-something. Cool. We could all see with our eyes the eye <laughs> test. It was the sword gameplay. That was all that was really being played. Those, those, That little bit of damage with the guitars, that was the I have to use this weapon just for the time being damage. Yeah, I mean, like, in terms of time equipped, 50%, 56% of that game was held with a sword by Blaze. There it is. There it is. But here we go into game number two. Knees over to the side to start this one off. Felt like it was going to be pre predominantly Qatar based, or sorry, gauntlet based on the side of Knees. Yeah, I do. I definitely want to see the the, the the site pick it up a little bit. I mean, towards the end of that last game, saw a little bit of moments where he could have really stuck with it, but opted to switch over to the gauntlets. Maybe he's just more comfortable, but this site's really going to have to make an appearance to top. Gosh, <laughs> the site's going to have to make an appearance to really even this bad boy up at this point. There's Blaze with another lead to start off in game number two. And it starts off with, again, another unorthodox signature catching Knees' landing, that side sig this time. But now we're seeing Blaze try to play some guitars, but Knees ends up picking up that recovery. And he's like, you know what? Why don't I just win? I'll just play the gauntlets. I don't have to worry about leveling up my scythe right now. I mean, he's doing great with the weapon, right? That was the weapon that... Brought him back into the game, but I mean, in this matchup itself, the sword versus the gauntlets, he has not been faring well. That's why I personally want to see the. Ooh, I, hey, I see you, my boy. That was a nice read going for that signature right after he lands the neutral light. But uh, right back at him, Blaze coming back swinging, not afraid of it. He's like, okay, you caught that one, but I mean, that, that didn't do too much. You know what I mean? It did a little damage. You didn't put me off stage or anything, so nothing to fear. That down light in the recovery is almost enough. Another one of those will be the end of Blaze's second stock, but Blaze still scrapping. Yeah, he's getting that good damage. Nice chasing into the nair there. And Knees still manages to get that wall touch, but Blaze with the down light side air not going to give him that easy KO on the edge guard this time. Not at all. Okay, opted to go for the Katars, or maybe he just got kicked out of the way and couldn't get his sword back. I feel like he was doing this on purpose, though. Yeah. Oh, no. I feel like that was a jump there, but he got a side light, and that's going to be the end of the stock. Gets caught slipping. Knees does not want that side. Switches over to the gauntlets again to, for the final stocks of game number two. Swinging on Blaze already. Getting good damage built up. But again, Blaze with the sword. He's utilizing that extended range over the gauntlets very effectively. Man, oh my gosh. He is really racking it up every time. 
He's just winning all these engagements, and then he gets like a one to two more touches afterwards each time. Nice. I like that read. Yo, what a yo. combo. Please talk to this man. That came out of nowhere. He is the magician who reached into the hat and pulled out an entire family of rabbits. That was magic from knees, leading to the double ground pound to finish off game number two. That was nice. Blaze was in pure control, had everything, everything going their way until it did. Yeah, <laughs> that, that looked like Blaze was, was starting to run away with it, and he was like, oh, yeah, oh, let me just do some sick combo here real quick. That combo was clean. I mean, that second ground pound, he guaranteed could have dodged it, but he just was not ready in the slightest. He was like, he's not coming down here, and peekaboo, I see you, bam. Really well done from Nice. Puts him up 2-0 over Blaze now. Prepared to halt the run of Blaze, finishing out with the top seven finish. Again, elimination side of things, so Blaze is now on tournament point. My goodness. What a way for this to go. I like that we're seeing. I mean, I was assuming we were going to see more Qatar players uh, sticking with their with these characters, uh, sticking with the Lucian, sticking with the Asuris, but I'm liking what I'm seeing. We got the, you know, this board Mordex has been prevalent in the ranked, uh, I mean, the, in the tournament 1v1 space for a very long time, and he's showing that he still matters here. Yeah, Nees definitely has uh, the Mordex. He's been playing the Mordex for a hot minute here. Needs to find the wall touch. Play is going to deny. Nice gravity cancel, neutral light, a lot of active frames. And uh, Knee's going to fall here. Blaze has a lot of health to play with. Real opportunity of Blaze getting on the board. Oh, nice. I like this. This sword is so good. It's like whenever I'm seeing him doing stuff like this, I can't even figure out how Knee's was getting back in these matches. Yeah, I mean, it, it's Blaze like being the uh, the matador, just waving that big red flag. And then Knee's comes in and he's like, all right, let me just uh, hit you real quick and get that <laughs> stock. Ole! <laughs> Now we're into second stocks. And again, like like you said, Blaze had so much momentum. He was looking so clean on his sword. And suddenly you look at the health bars and Nies is right there tied alongside Blaze. Yeah, it literally is the blink of an eye. I cannot tell when he's getting this damage or when he's finding these opportunities to get back in here. He, not, he landed a nice combination on that first one, landed that D-Light uh, ground pound and got the stock off. But where did he get all the damage to get that? No, but Blaze. Still playing well, getting some good hits Ooh. in, but Knees steals the lead out, chases high, hits the recovery, and now Blaze on his tournament stock here. And after all that gauntlet play, all this to get this lead, goes over here into the scythe for the final Whoa. stock. Yo. Oh, no. <laughs> he wanted the big play. He wanted the highlight reel. He just didn't hit that recovery and was like, oh, I'm out of movement. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. You got to put on a show for the people. You've got cushion to try to make plays like that. So why not, right? Goes into the gauntlets for the final stock. The sword is back for Blaze. Landing some good hits, but not able to land that side light. Now, knees. Turning it around. Got a lot of damage. Tries to go for the read. Good dodge down from Blaze. Yeah, mixing it up, but another recovery and knees. Cleans it up, 3-0 over Blaze. He is going on into the top five. Man, what a set. I mean, it was quick, but no, none of the games were just a, a clean wash, right? Like, they were they were back and forth, back and forth. And, uh, I mean, I, I still to this moment can't understand how, with all the dominance I was seeing from Blaze, I don't know how that was a 3-0 in Nisa's favor. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, I mean, like, each of those games, you could probably stop at, like, the one-minute mark and be like, okay, it looks like Blaze's game. And yeah. then, like, you just fast forward a little bit, and you're like, oh, Nies, Nies won this? And then you go to the <laughs> next one, and you're like, oh, okay. Nies just, like, he has that ability to sneak in, get that damage real quick. And like you said, just, like, if, if you're not paying attention, suddenly Nies is getting all this damage onto Blaze. He's getting a lot of damage, and then he's, like, he's forcing issues, too, right? He goes... He goes, all right, I got a good little combination. I got a side light into a recovery. You're coming down. He lands a nair and just puts you right over the edge, and then he's going to make you think about it. You're going to either catch a side there. You're going to catch another ground pound if you go too low. He's really going to stay on you and make sure that he capitalizes on the opportunities that he has. 
Well, really well done from Knees. He is, of course, going to continue on. We've now got our top, uh, I guess, technically six uh, players right now. Godly and Escrape, again, still sitting in that winner's final. Down in the elimination side of things, Machete will be fighting Simple, and Coco will be fighting Knees. Both of these matches will be happening in a little, bri a little bit. But before that, we're going to be taking a short little break. Any uh, parting words? Hello. I'm gonna need that bump song because that was actually a very good song and so my people will get in touch with my other people in the back because that was a really good song but we still got two more sets to go uh to find out who's gonna be in the top four we still got godly and escrape sitting in the top side they both got their flights to the spring royale but machete simple coco knees only one player will be joining them in the top three 
And that's got to be nerve-wracking for everybody down there in that lower side of the bracket. These next few matches, you know, to figure out who's going into top four, right? That that matters. But to figure out who is going to get another flight, man, that's what it's all about here. These guys really want to go, like what I said earlier, they're trying to go get this bread, this cheese, that cheddar, that gouda, that guac. That ham, that turkey, that mayo, that ranch. That man's trying lettuce, to make a smammy, Tomato, bro. onions. <laughs> I don't know how you like your sandwich, but either way. Hey, I'll eat the sandwich with all that on it. What are we yeah, talking about? Yeah, you got to get you gotta get all the fixings. But sandwich guy. Viewer vote. Machete versus Simple. Uh, currently 66 in favor of Machete. But the last time the viewer vote was heavily in favor of Machete. They know that he gotta, he gotta it definitely didn't work out. out. Last <laughs> time it was, it was leaning in his favor big time. And, uh, yeah, we saw what happened, guys. We all, we all saw it together. But, um, I mean, going up against Simple, I'm sure that. This is a matchup he's a little bit more familiar with, right? I feel like they've played each other a lot. Yeah, I mean, we could probably look at the head-to-head -head stats. 9-10, very slightly in favor of Simple. Uh, very slight lead in favor of him. But again, looking at that recency, Machetti winning 3-1 over Simple in the Winter Championship. And then before that, 0-3 in favor of Simple at the Summer Championship. 2-3 in favor of Simple at the mid-season championship of 2022. So it looks like it's been relatively back and forth between the two of them. Slight recency in favor of Machete, again, winner of the winter championship. But still, there's always that chance that Simple's gonna come sneak it out. You know, I feel like yesterday in the previous regions and then today, every time I'm like, look at the, look at the stats, right? We see the guys have been playing each other and one guy's dominating, but then it's every one of them in recency has been losing. And I don't understand, like, are these guys getting that much better? What's going on? It's it's that level up, you know, that, that grind doesn't stop. The competition keeps continuing, and uh, we'll see how well that competition continues here as they are locked in, they're ready to go. We've got Machete back on the Tezka. Simple over to the Asuri for now, but again, we saw that Hattori earlier on the side of Simple. More battle boots, bro. More battle boots. I, that's what I want to see. This is something, you know... I haven't seen a lot of, so whenever I see it, it's a treat. I'm, I'm here for it every single time. And, uh, you know, and, his, and the way he played it, right? We were talking earlier. The way he was playing his battle boots, he just was going for small uh, combos but big damage. He just did it again, right, what you were talking about. But I, I like what he's doing. He keeps you close, racks up damage pretty quickly. He's not getting combos, per se, but he keeps you close to him, plays better neutral than you, and then you're in a situation where you could get KO'd. Yeah, this is definitely a really solid pick for Machete. I mean, the last time he played against Simple, it was with this Tesca against Simple's Asuri, and he won 3-1, likely looking to replicate what happened in the Winter Championship. Just needs to find that KO tool now. He's got a lot of damage built up on the Simple. A side air or recovery might do it. You know, just watching uh, Simple and watching that he's just wanting to play that neutral, get the small taps with the sword, I feel like this is going to be rough dealing with the neutral Machete with these battle boots. This is probably exactly why he ended up losing the last time. So we'll see what new information he has on the playstyle, but he's down right now in the beginning. It gets caught with a signature, and that's going to be the first stock. That was a lot of damage on Simple. He could have gone either direction with that one, and it would have KO'd. Could have gone for the standard throw back or go for the active input forward. But nice patience from Simple will connect with the recovery there. Standard throw back. I don't know why that sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the recovery coming out from Simple. Going to take that stock out. You know, throw these weapons around and ops to go cut tars. Yeah, so he did not like how that boots versus the uh, the sword world was looking. Or maybe he just wanted to attack Machete unarmed with these guitars. We'll see later when if he decides to switch. But right now, doing a pretty good job against the gauntlets. Yeah, he's definitely starting to find more hits with those guitars, even if they're not the biggest hits. Like maybe winning in neutral is that priority for simple as he does a good dash back to avoid that down sick from machete yeah that was a great move just leaked off the side right there just disengaged didn't take any damage for it nice ground pound though quick movement from machete comes over the top and lands a nice side there the recovery's good okay uh -oh. lands the neutral sick oh doesn't go down oh tried to go for the side air and doesn't get it. Now he's down on the side. Going to get up pretty easily. Didn't really get any extension from uh, Machete. Yeah, nothing too crazy either side. After that end sig, Simple kind of let Machete come back up safely. And Machete didn't get too much of a turnaround there. But he does get disarmed here. Stuck on this edge guard. Simple not able to connect with the neutralite. All right. Okay. We're going to have the gauntlets out. 
Try to figure out. No, he said weapon up. denial, right? When he went to go pick up a weapon, switched over to those boots and booted him up. Oh, no. Six the wrong way and a clean punish from Simple. Yeah, really well done. Down light into the gravity cancel, neutral heavy. Optimal for force for those KOs. Will KO slightly earlier than the recovery, but now it's his opportunity to get extra damage here. Start to build this lead. Yeah, he's got the guitars. Right weapon for it. And there it is. Nice little short hops. Just trying to bait out a button from, from Machete. Ends up getting it. Push him out to the side. Goes for the Sarah, but a nice fade back from Machete. And gets the KO. All right. Pick of weapons. We'll definitely be staying with the boots for the final stocks here. But Simple's been doing a really good job spacing out Machete. Machete likes to do these kind of short hop side airs. And Simple has been spacing perfectly around all of them. Yeah, he's been getting better over time as this round has gone on. At first it was working, and, and just now the spacing is there. Down nice air. It goes down there for the Nair. The Nairs were really good in the last set we saw Simple in, but not really able to get those started yet. Down light recovery is going to close it out. Simple, going up 1-0. So many Sairs whiffed by Machete, and so many of them punished by Simple. The spacing game from Simple, just too much. And now Machete going to swap off of the Tezka, but not over to the Fate that he played earlier. Instead, it's going to be over to the Olgrim for game number two. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Okay, so he goes over to the Ogrim, and I'm not mad at that idea. He saw that after a while, he was winning the neutral engagements at first, and then Simple just started to get into his own and uh, and started to dominate. So I get it. You switch over here, but which weapon, right? You think it's going to be the axe most of the time? You know, I, I could really see it go either direction. Both the axe and the lance have solid side airs. They're going to have a little bit more range than those boots had, which if he wants to stick to that game plan of kind of these falling side airs, both will work well. But at the end of the day, most people like the lance when they're playing the old room. That is very true. That was a scary situation. He landed that Sarah and it was like, you try one false <laughs> move getting back up here. I will rob you. And he's like, try. <laughs> Come back over here and try. <laughs> All right. This is more of those nares we were seeing from Simple earlier. Just picking away at him. Couple taps. Oh, snap. Starting to land the bigger hits. Okay, goes and gets the guitars. And let's see what he can find in the closeout bag with the guitars. Nothing. I mean, just the tip of the lance is going to touch. And Machete ends up getting the stock after kind of getting dominated for like the last 30 seconds. Yeah, he had just enough there. I think on any other map, that side air would not have KO'd. Simple still picks up that KO, down that recovery, and will prep. Yeah, he's going to be sticking with the uh, Katars. Uh-huh, yeah. You definitely want to take these into the unarmed, right? At yeah. first, you want to you want to deal with them, and then at this point, right, I think he plays neutral, tries to fight it off, and I, he's going to go back to the sword is what it's been looking like so far. And I think that's a pretty good game plan. And I think uh, Katars has a lot of good tools against the approach of Lance. Like, if Machete is a little frivolous with his approaches, could see a lot of damage mm. come out as the edge guard from Simple is going to give him a clean stock advantage. Ain't no way, my man. That was ridiculous. That was a really, really early stock. And he was he was only around the yellow range. I mean, on the, the orange range and got cooked. All right, so now tries to go over with the side sig. I'm not mad at that. Machete hasn't really thrown out many sigs. Almost caught him slipping on the second hit of that side signature, but nothing doing. Now trying to create situations, but he's simple, just playing it really, really safe. Not overextending and only going in for punishes. Ooh, misses the neutral light there. Simple getting more, gets another dunk down. Edge guard opportunity, the ground pound, and Simple is up 2-0 both in stocks and in games. How many times is that that neutral sig going to hit? Too many. I feel like he, yeah, it, too many. it was definitely too many. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every time he did it in that game, it worked. That stock was crazy. <laughs> that Sarah hit, and it was just over with. And then just baits out the recovery. I know. I mean, I don't know what uh, Machete was looking for, but he just thought, okay, he's going to come over here. Tried to hit him with the recovery, and it was all but a dream. He just baited him out and caught him with the ground pound. So clean. So clean. Going back to the Tesco set. Get your stinky behind out of here, Ogrim. You didn't, you didn't help me at all. <laughs> you didn't do anything. That was a bait. Whoever was in Discord who told me to switch to Ogrim, you lied. You fool. <laughs> 
Now he's over to oh. the Tezka for game number three. He's going to have to reverse three if he wants to earn his flight and hotel to the Spring Royale. But he, I mean, has to get through this and the next set if he wants that. Yeah, he's going to have to do a twofer. And uh, this one's already going to be a difficult one running back. The reverse 3-0, but nice read there. Catching simple, trying to fade backwards away from the pressure. And out on the side, it's oh. a bad situation. Got hit by the ground pound. The dodge oh. is not enough. And simple oh. went too low also. Simple was trying to deny the wall touch. That final ground pound was a little too extra. He did not have the movement to come back up safely. And simple and machete both going to fall. That is a rough one. Yeah, yeah, this, that's the worst when you're the offensive player and you got the KO, but then you do something too extra, you lose track of your, your resources, or you are banking on the hit to give you like that, yeah. that stoppage. Just go a little too low. That's just rough because you could have had a lead. Now it's still a tied game. I mean, at the end of the day, he still has a big lead in games right now. Like He's not sweating too much. Uh, but if this one starts to slip away, it might start having some egg on his face that he uh, let that first stock go so easily. Yeah, that is, that is for sure. Ooh. Ah, man, that thing is so clean. It comes out so quick. You just make the wrong move, and that thing is coming to get you. Majethe's doing a really good job of starting to recognize the habit of when Simple wants to come back in. That's why that down sit keeps working, is Simple likes to go out a lot of times off of that initial hit, but every now and then he'll come back in, try to catch your movement forward, and Machete's like, I know exactly when you're gonna do it, catch you with his down suit. Catch him the pacing of simple. I mean, that's definitely something he's gonna have to do if he wants to run this back, is really just understand his opponent and pick him apart the way that the simple likes to pick you apart. You don't figure out what he's doing, he's gonna slowly learn what you're doing because of the pace of the game that he plays. But nice little combination, and there it is, getting on the board, Machete, one to two. Very clean boots play from Machete. Really picked apart simple on that one. 420 watt, 429 damage put out from Machete. Basically all of it on the boots. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, and only 179 damage taken. That's that's the surprising stuff. Zero of it on his gauntlets. Fun fact. Are you serious? Yeah, he took zero damage when he had gauntlets. He only put out 22 damage when he had gauntlets. So he didn't really have gauntlets that long. Crazy. <laughs> he was he was unarmed longer than he had gauntlets, but still technically did took zero damage when he had gauntlets in hand. That, that's still good. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like you said, he definitely didn't have them long, but that's crazy. All right, so coming in here, and he is going to be starting with the gauntlets, dealing with the guitars on the side of the stage. A little bit more aggression from Sempo this time. I mean, I was talking about earlier, he does play the side of the stage a little bit more than we've seen almost anybody do tonight or today. Uh, but that was really, really aggressive. He was fishing and trying to take that stock off instantly. Yeah, I think he's, he's got some emotions flaring up after that uh, loss in that last game. Because again, like losing that initial stock, I think it kind of got to him a little bit, started to let that one slip away a little too much. And he wants to get that momentum back. But right now, Machete playing very well with his boots. He's got that slight damage lead. Yeah, he's doing a very good job. But now he's he got two big whiffs. Uh, almost got punished with, with a rough attack coming out from Simple. But luckily he missed. If that neutral light hit, the neutral sick hit, that could have been a bad, bad situation. But back over here, he throws the boots away. He gets the gauntlet, lands the side sick, and gets the KO. That side sick so strong for KOing because you can throw forward and backwards. But back to the boots for the damage build. Over to the gauntlets. The mix up, Simple wasn't ready for it. I see him. He's trying to play with these this time, right? He's really going to put some effort in with these. And I get it, right? You're getting your gameplay downloaded if you keep playing the same weapon over uh -oh. and over. He's finally switching over. Oh, does he make it back? Oh! Yes, he does. The reversal. Oh! Wow. Gravity cancel. Ensig steals, uh, steals Simple off the wall, gets a wall touch himself, and then goes down, hits a side air for the edge guard. Machete, he wants this W. What a Play. That was so clean. He said it was going to be rough to get a reverse 3-0, but uh, he's looking like he's going to get this to at least 2-2. Two, uh, two, two. He's got a 3-1 three, uh, three to one stock lead. He's getting damage after damage after damage. Sample can't get anything going, and he won't. A three stock. Domination coming out from Machete. Three stocking Simple after losing game one and game two. 
all of the momentum is on Machete right now. And it's not all about the boots. 209 damage on the boots, 260 on the gauntlets. He is ready to close this one out. But at the end of the day, you still got to remember, Simple has the lead both in set count and he won the first two games. There's still that potential for Simple to close this one out. I, I mean, it's possible, but I mean, this is definitely even ground. They're coming into this one. And you just watched him, the weapon that was getting him all the mileage, the boots, he made a conscious decision to just go, let me show you through these gaunt gauntlets talking about also. You know what I mean? That means that he's feeling confident. Yeah, he's, he's feeling <laughs> very good right now. And we're going to go into game number five, Western Air Temple, Machete versus Simple. First one to pick up a weapon is Machete. He's got the boots, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's what he wants to start this one off with. But he's going to have to deal with the guitars. Simple, I don't quite know if this is the matchup he wants to lean into to start, but he's doing a pretty good job to start. Yeah, no major swings either side. Simple really trying to shove Machete over to this corner. You can kind of see Machete back away. When he shoves Simple off stage, he's like, you know what? I want to stay on stage a little bit more. Yeah, he, he's playing the side a lot, but yeah, cold in the middle of the stage is what's going to get you the victory. Simple trying to leak up there. Man, and ready for it. Machete just picking them apart, getting some good damage. Nice combo, not going to be enough. Stays with the – wow, he tried wants to – Wants none of them. He was trying to get the gauntlets back. <laughs> Hell's not on purpose. Ain't no way. He said, uh, look at all these weapon spawns I could have. I'm going to just come punch you in the face with my unarm. But still doesn't <laughs> get that initial stock just yet. There, the side arrow will do it. Wow, what happened? It's just there's nothing in the tank for Simple at the moment. This is all Machete at the at this time. He got the three stock a second ago. He got a pretty dominant first stock, and he has a chance to rack up extra damage. Bill goes for the ground pound. Machete going to try to play this one a little bit safer. Ooh, lingers in the offstage this time. Doesn't immediately back away. Starting to get a little bit more confident here against uh, Simple. Okay, nice. Hands a good couple hits. Sent out to the right side of the stage. Got the sword. We going to see an extension? No. Simple does not decide to go out there and party, but lands the down my recovery. So a safer option instead of going down there for those dares that we've been seeing him play. Uh, and he gets the stock. I guess the dares are more for if you got a lead, uh, but without the momentum, he didn't really want to go down. Uh-oh. Machete. Playing risky there. Went for the side charge side sig. Simple. Put him in a dangerous spot, but Machete did manage to get back up safely. Starting to throw out a lot of side sigs here. Yeah, he's got the damage on, and he's been seeing like uh, how far that sends, right? So I understand he's like, okay, if I can at least land this, I might KO, or I'll put him out so far with the gauntlets, I can come out there and finish the stock. But you know, back over here with the boots, with the toss, got the damage lead, but he can't find the big hit. Trying to find the landing here. Simple starting to pick apart Machete. All right, down light side air. Final stock here for Simple. For all the cookies. All right. Got the sword. The weapon that got him here. Every match I've seen where he dominated has been all sword. He goes off there and lands a beautiful Sayer. Throws the sword up and opts to stick with the Katars with everything on the line. All right, let's see what he's got here. No weapon in hand, switches over, weapon starved. Oh, and ends up not able to get his Katars back. Yeah, a rough spot ends up denying himself weapons as well. Down to connects for Machete, gonna back away. Wants to play that weapon denial. Confident on both of his weapons. Simple does pick up a pair of Katars. Huge moment, he took damage for that. He allowed Machete to get established, Whoa. but this is good offstage play. Again, that recovery hits and gets Machete back on the stage. That happened also on the first stocks. It's an air, not able to find a follow-up. Starting to play taps on both sides. They're just getting one hit, trading back and forth. We saw Simple get two hits in succession right there. Trying to get the damage tied. It's dang near there. Oh. Ooh, Ooh Sig for it. Sig. Neither one able oh. to land it. Machete's throwing out a lot of Sigs here. Not sure if they would KO just yet. Simple. All right, back to the boots for Machete. I know both of these guys are sweating. Machete sweating in his boots, and I know oh. those palms are clammy under those guitars. One of these guys trying to find the final blow. 
I think both of them could maybe eat oh. one banger hit. That's not going to be enough. So close. Both in the We're red. Confident. Not enough. High ceiling here. Tournament stock on both sides. Machete looking for recovery. Simple from below. The Nair doesn't hit. The Sarah doesn't hit. Oh, my gosh. Both of them. Look at the movement from each. You can tell it oh. means so much. And the downlight recovery from Simple after almost getting reverse 3-0. Simple is going to deny Machete not only a repeat victory here in the Spring Championship, but also deny him the invitation to the Spring Royale. Simple continues on into the top four. Man, what a set from both players. Both of them had the moments when they were in complete control, and then in that last game, super, super even. The damage dealt. Wait, ain't no way. He did more than 157. <laughs> ain't no way. They, they're just disrespecting him in the back. They're like, nah. <laughs> just clowning on him. We love our short kings, though. Both of them, two, not even halfway up on the screen there. But Machete, of course, uh, is he's done for the day. Goes home with a fifth-placed finish, and it is, in fact, Simple, who continues on into the top four. And we'll find out who's going to be fighting him. Will it be Coco or will it be Knees? Okay. All right. Is that the one we got up next? Yeah, that's what we got next. We, oh. can, we can look at the schedule to find out. Well, there it is. All right, so we got Coco versus Knees coming up next. We had just we, Everybody just watched the Knees versus Blaze. We saw the Simple versus Machete just now. So, yeah, Coco and Knees going up next. They're going to figure out who, who goes into the top top four. And uh, wait. Yeah, that is the yeah. top four. Okay. Yeah. There and after is. that, you've got, of <laughs> course, Godly and Escrape sitting in the top side. And uh, I know people were looking at Godly's PR. He's not PR 10. There was a, a decimal there. Again, you got to have that precision. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You got to make sure. Scientific. Um, Machete <laughs> versus Simple uh, is done, uh, but it still shows it here. So I have nothing else. I was going to look at this and say, like, facts based on the information I have, but it just it still says Machete versus Simple. I got you. I got you. <laughs> it's all good. Oh, but we do have Ooh. a poll down at the bottom of the screen. We are seeing it going heavily in the favor of knees. Now, what was the last poll? Did they go for Simple? Um... Sure no, I one. think it was in favor of Machete. It was in favor, it was of, in favor Machete. of Machete. And I was like, uh, yeah, last time y'all did that, uh, Machete lost. And then yeah. they did it again. They did it again. So I, I'm, I'm sorry, Knees. Chat is cursing you. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, if you like Knees, you might want to start putting your vote on Coco because you guys are <laughs> definitely cursing people. It's not It's they, not working. They are, are, they are rallying to drag uh, players down right now. Uh, all right, that's right. Knees believers, start putting into Coco pools. <sighs> Well, hopefully it's not actually a curse. We're going to see what goes on in this one. Knees is definitely looking good on the Mordex. Uh, but Coco, I wonder if we're going to see the Jay Yun again from Coco, right? The Jay Yun was, was looking okay. I can't remember who sent him down to the loser side, um, uh, the elimination gonna, side. Uh, let me look at this again. It was Godly. Yep, yep, Godly. Yeah. Godly picked the Jay Yun apart, right? I mean, that was, that was a rough, rough match yeah. to watch. Uh, so, but we'll see what we got here. Going with a Petra up against okay. the Mordex of Knees. Okay, so Coco reaching into the bag. Learned a little bit from uh, Godly. Saul was like, you know what? I couldn't do nothing with his his orb, and I can play a little bit orb. Let's see what Knees got. Yeah, really just trying to uh, learn from what he lost to, I guess, and switch over to the Petra here. Uh, we'll see how well he does against Knees, who's definitely known for that Mordex. Yep, and his gauntlets were looking great previously. So you were mirror matching a guy that just came off of a hot win with his gauntlets, with the gauntlets. And now, going over to the scythe. Make one wrong step and that'll be it, brother. Oh, brother. wow, talk about a wrong step. Knees almost got KO'd, but barely evaded the Nair and almost got snatched and thrown down. Dude, this is so crazy. Like, this is again, like Coco swapping characters and just, he's looking ready. Like, he, there's no downtime of him trying to warm up and be like, oh, yeah, that's how you play Gauntlets again? No, he's just immediately coming out the gate, swinging, looking uh, impressive, except for that decision there. That was a little bit of an odd one. But either way, still putting out some great damage. Yeah, I was doing a great job. I mean, that was that was a rough, rough play. I mean, I guess I guess if that hit, it could have chased dodge, right? Yeah. No, well, it's a projectile, yeah. so no. I don't think, yeah, I was going to say, I don't know. <laughs> Man, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Had to be in a miss input. We'll put it at that. And, uh... Getting put off stage, Knees just going to back off after throwing him down with a Nair. And Coco trying to find a way to establish uh, control in this neutral situation, but can't really find it. Okay, there we go. Get a side like Sarah. Still not enough. Knees going up on the side. Nice. Wow, that, that went low. 
Yeah. That covered the whole side. I mean, that's one of the reasons why Petras uh, are big fans of Demon Island. Again, those really short walls makes it really easy to cover, but really well done from Knees dodging at the right time to get up. Unfortunately, still eats a side air, still gets taken out, but good play is coming out. It had a lot of damage on, and Coco did a good job of not eating more damage, right? So that stock is pretty fresh still, but now the Scythe really putting in some work to start this one off. Ooh, Knees. This is, this is rough. Both of them sweat beaten though. Both of them land. Knees putting out great damage with the scythe. He is managing to find multi hits. It's not like your standard scythe strings, but he's still finding continued neutral wins. Oh yeah, he, he's popping you once and he's not really getting like the full string. He's just waiting to see where you go. He might catch a nair, throw you around, and he's just keeping you close. I think that's like the theme of what we're seeing with these players. Simple you know, knees with the with this gauntlet and that scythe, and then. Uh, well, who do we just see a second ago? Machete with the gauntlet, I mean, with the boots. Like, they they like to keep you really, really close and not push you too far away when the damage is low. Definitely a solid strategy, especially with, like, string-heavy weapons. Makes a lot of sense. You want to stay close, start to get those reads. But Coco, with a good dodge up, avoids that recovery. Still playing from behind here as Knees did get that second stock. Okay. Knees. Trying to get something going. He's getting some good side airs, but he's not really getting any follow-ups. That's a good one. Caught the ground pound afterwards. Got a two-piece combo. Oh, but there's a two-piece for your troubles. Coco taking the stock, all right? This time ate a little bit more damage, right? Didn't keep this stock as fresh, but gonna have an opportunity here to play this orb and try to close this out. Ooh, dodge through. Knee's not able to get that turnaround. Good spot dodge from Coco, avoids that recovery. Could have been a KO here. Look at them both dancing around. You see, like, the further we're getting into this bracket, everyone's starting to calm down a little bit. It's like, okay, we're on final stocks. I don't want to do anything too crazy. Like, everyone's understanding the weight of the situation. They know what's on the line. This is the spring championship. Only uh, one of four seasonal events. They want to do incredibly well here. One of those opportunities to get that nice PR boost, especially in your region. But Knees does take game number one. Coco is going to make the swap over to the Jay Yun for game number two. So Okay, so he did do the swap over. All right. I mean, I like the Petra, you know. Uh, it looked good. Um, maybe a little bit more on uh, on the orb. We were seeing a lot of gauntlet play. Yeah. And, and, and then you look at how the match went and how close it got at the end. And there was also that that, that moment of the, the missed him. Like, there's no way he was trying to do gravity cancel down safe. Yeah, so. definitely was a, an odd input at the very least. But you know what? He can't make that miss input now because he's mm -hmm. got he's got JM. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> can't make that same mistake. <laughs> All right, here we go. He's going with the great sword. He's got that that good old bat, Lucille. They are just, they're scrapping. These guys are just going back and forth, throwing blow after blow. Look at that. Nice air. Going Yo! for the sink. The toss down. The first stock goes to knees quickly. He is seeing into the future and reading minds the way he charged up that down sick. He knew one trillion percent Coco was going to come right up. He's going to catch him with that down sick. And that is a massive lead for knees. You know, it's unfortunate that I don't see people pull out the, the book. You know what I mean? The you book. <laughs> the I think I read that, is you. The, yeah. that is one of the top three greatest emotes in gaming history. I, 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 when I realized that the book said you on it, I was like, <laughs> oh, you cannot be serious. This is the most disrespectful thing ever. <laughs> They're falling there from knees. He's going to try to add insult to injury here as he's trying to get up more damage. But Coco! Bringing it out. All the stops, gets the two-piece into a jump dare nair to close out that stock of knees, and he's swinging again. That was actually pure sauce. I'm sorry, that was Louisiana hot sauce. No mayo to be found, you know what I'm saying? He keeps it on him, man. He's, he's got it in the bag, got to bring it everywhere he goes. <laughs> All we have is Tabasco, sir. Don't worry, <laughs> I got my own. I brought mine. <laughs> We're good. Okay, gets a nice touch, goes for the dare, thinking he's going to get a dodge in. Ooh. Reed on the dodge from knees, gets the second stock off. So even after throwing that swag out there, he's not able to keep it as close as he wants. I mean, he got some good damage on knees, but this is going to still take a little bit to get the stock out. Nice dare, can't find the follow-up afterwards. Yeah, Knees is doing a really good job. When he finds those pressure situations, he's been in the head of Coco many times. Mm-hmm. 
He's definitely found more success after the initial touch than we see Coco getting here. We're seeing the first starts uh, or dares hitting from Coco, but then afterwards it's just the wrong decision almost every time. Lands the nair, good stuff. He needed that nair too. Knees was 1,000% looking for the ground pound. Still gets the wall touch there. We'll get back up safely. Doesn't get the second side light. Coco dodges up and away, so he gets out of that one. I ain't gonna lie, Nies is mad wild for that ground pound attempt. <laughs> the recovery's gonna do it, and that's gonna be two games in the favor of Nies. Looking better this time. I mean, actually, I don't even know if that was looking better. I think that the Petra did really good. So, I mean, you're gonna stick with the with the Negan. I guess this you feel more comfortable here. Gotta find more reads. That's the the name of the game. There was a lot of initial touches, but could not figure out where Knees wanted to go afterwards, so couldn't really find the KOs or the damage rack ups with that Gray Sword. But just initially in neutral, it was looking okay. Yeah, I think either finding those longer extensions, kind of like what you're talking about, or getting more openers onto Knees so that you get more opportunities for those extensions. Because there were those times oh. where he had it, but it's not going to be right now because Knees on the scythe is playing like a madman, but. He gets back up safely. Coco gives him a tap on his way out the door, but knees with an impressive side string to start off game number three. You know, the sad part is because I know he could have chased dodged, but he didn't realize he was facing left, guaranteed, because yeah. he wanted to go back towards the stage, but he was back to the stage, so he couldn't chase dodge over. Rough, rough, rough situation. And uh, it only gets rougher. He's currently down two games. He's already down a stock, and knees. Putting him close to the red already. And he's 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 wanting to put this one away. Yeah, he's really trying to close this out. He's got good damage. Oh man, barely missed the nair. Land of the recovery, still not enough. So the, definitely the nair wouldn't have been enough. Six are flying for knees. <laughs> A lot of confidence to be had here. And the s turnaround sayer with the gray sword will do it for Coco on the first dog. But man, look at that damage. Yeah, knees added up so much damage there. But again, Coco with that great sword, he has that chance. If he can get those openers, if he can get those resets, could get a lot of damage here. But again, knees just tracking the movement, reads that dodge, and catches him with the recovery. Yep. Instantly, man. Timely KOs. That's the name of the game. That's just this is what it all counts. It all that's what it all comes down to when you're talking about a platform fighting game. If you got the damage to KO them, you need to finish that stock off. The longer you let it linger, the more of a chance you're giving the opponent. And Knees is not letting any of that linger. Here goes another SIG. Guarantee you another one comes out here shortly. Oh, yeah. Definitely going to see a lot of those SIGs fly. They've been throwing it out on both sides. Coco using those to try to finish off stocks whenever possible. I can't believe he didn't go for the Nair. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the neutral light into Whoa. the neutral SIG. I was ready to hear Mordex roar. <laughs> Yo, it's a good play. Actually, Nice hasn't really been doing that as a whole. Instead, like, Gauntlet Recoveries have been his biggest KO tool on this Mordex. Yeah, it definitely has. Boom, boom. Lance of Sayer. Weapon toss, no Dodge. good. But the Nair will cover space for Coco to get back on stage. A lot of damage, though. Can't really eat too much. So you're going to have to play a perfect game here pretty much. And can't do it. That signature is going to be the closeout. Side Sig from the Scythe of Mordex. Nice. Is staying alive here in this elimination bracket. Yeah, I mean, he earned his flight and hotel to the Winter Royale. He wants to go to the Spring Royale. He is currently sitting in the top four now uh, after taking that dub over Coco and is really just picking apart Coco at all opportunities. Yeah, that was rough. That was a that was a tough set. Uh, it looks like finally uh, the the fan poll was correct. Yeah. <laughs> he, he managed to survive the fan curse and uh, get that W. You know what it really was? It was those last minute believers who put into Coco who were like, you know what? I'm believing in knees, so I'm going to swing for Coco. That way I win either way. And, gave uh, a little bit of that out. energy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gave some of that energy back. Okay. But yeah, man, those were some great matches. Uh, we do have our top four set up, right? Yeah, we got our top four. Godly, Escrape, Simple, and Knees are now in our top four. Of course, plenty of EU action. Some amazing sets, like you said, that we've gotten to watch already. Oh, yeah. The, that that Those sets were amazing already. And then now we're getting down to the real nitty-gritty. We're going to see some more bangers. You guys know you want to be around for this. 
But I feel like it's the end of our time together, right? Yeah, I think I think we're done for now. We've still, again, got more EU action here on the Brawlhalla broadcast. Uh, but I think for you and I, we're going to take a short little break. And when we come back, it'll be Foda and Steven bringing you the top four of the EU Spring Championship. And hopefully production's ready because they've said literally nothing. Okay, we're good. <laughs> we'll see y'all in a little bit.
What's up, Brahalla, and welcome back to the European Spring Championship 1v1 bracket. You are soon to see Foto and Steven here with you guys. Oh, we're going to have some fun today. Steven. Yes. What about, t tell me about S. Grape, dude. No. <laughs> Already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We Hold don't have on. Anything? Okay. We're coming into top four, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Okay, top four. Yeah, right. Let me reel it back a second. Reel it back. Top four is coming up. I'm excited about it. Yeah. As you may be able to tell. <laughs> S. Grape is an unlikely hero here, right? Yeah. A little bit. I. What's he doing in, in Winner's Fun? He hasn't lost a set yet in this entire game, and there's only... Four sets left, so yes. there's four people left in this entire tournament, and he has not lost a single time. S great. What in that world? That is true. He is PR twelve, I believe. So he he's punching above his weight class just a little bit. But anyone who wants BCX, dude, he had a set, and I know you remember this set. Sometimes it, it's all it takes is I see one set from a player and I know they got the dog in them. And S Grape is that player, okay? He had a set at BCX against uh Brain Slime. And he exploded. Every single game was like a minute game or less. It was actually crazy. So I know he's got such explosive potential on this legend. And uh, I'm excited to see how he, he handles his winner's finals. S-Grave, dude, I don't hey, – yo, production, <laughs> we can hear you. Thank you. Okay. So, <laughs> I honestly, Steven, I had trouble listening to you on that one. <laughs> But I know they what you. Me. I know Everybody what you said. Me. The the stream heard, heard you, and you did a great job. If you watch BCX, <laughs> you dude, you job. know Scrape's got insane potential, and I'm I'm such a big fan. And I know he's PR twelve, so he should be on your list already. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Not, the statistics alone, the statistics alone show you what's right. going on here. Uh, the, we have crunched the numbers. The numbers have been used for a long time. The yeah. numbers they go far. They go they go wide. They go long. They <laughs> they they tell the story very clearly. It's no surprise, right? Yeah. We very often often see PR1, PR2, PR3 in the, in the top four. PR12, though, Escrape's defying expectations. He's defying actual math right, right now. Let's see what we got lined up here. Oh, man. Okay, so Godly and Escrape, they're going to be in winner's finals. And Godly last year had this region locked down. Like, he, you, see, you still see there he's ranked uh, PR1, okay, against 12. So that's going to be a big upset if Escrape can take this. And then the only other people left in this tournament are Simple and Knees. So this match that S Grape has coming up yeah. is surely the most daunting one yet, right? It's winner's final. This is you know, neither of these players have been defeated at all. They're the only two players left in this entire tournament who haven't lost a set yet. One of them's going to have to lose. And one of them has been the number one power ranked player in Europe for a while now for over a maybe, year maybe yeah it's been over a year yeah so and his name is godly and that, his name is what's interesting is it seems preceded. like almost every season there's like one champion who comes in and locks down the region of EU yeah. and this year over any other year is the most wide open we had machete win uh, the winter championship. Right. He's now been eliminated. He's not even in contention now. That's crazy. So we could see anything happen here and oh looks like we're getting right into this first matchup winners finals godly versus escrape Oh, love to see Escrape on the Black yeah, Knight. Yeah, Escrape on the Black Knight. But Godly also with Petra has been really uh, – I mean, he hasn't lost a single set this entire tournament. Neither of these players have. Here we are on Brawlhaven. We're going to start it off. Escrape makes his way to the Rocket Lance. First weapon up off the stage. Okay, neutral signature doesn't hit, but that would have been huge damage. Escrape is so explosive with this weapon. This is what you want to watch out for if uh, you're a Godly fan and you want him to come away with this. <laughs> Well, I'm a godly fan, but I can't help but cheer for S. Grape here. I mean, what what an unlikely hero. He's come so far. Down my side air. Play, he's playing a clean game here. And you oh, know the what? down throw? You know what, Steven? Spears, yeah. Spears an honest weapon. For S. Grape to be doing <laughs> this well with Black Knight, come on. 
Okay, that's Spear cute. may be an honest legend, but don't you dare go say in that Orion somehow an honest character. Okay, <laughs> that's, right. a whole, that's a that's a whole other topic to that's litigate. Diff that's different. And this, I don't think you're ready to level, make that argument. Look, at this level, Orion's an honest oh, character. Oh, gets the I'll double, double. right into recovery. Yes, Woo! blasts it off the top. Escape takes the first stock. He's been so dominant this entire tournament. You would think. Facing up against Godly, who literally has become a god in this region. Everybody's nightmare. Oh, there oh. it is! Quickly turned around, tied up. Doesn't take a lot of damage on his second stock. Doing the weapon juggle to delay the next weapon spawn for Escrape. Keeping him unarmed is probably the best thing you could do, but he rearms up with a spear now. He's on the attack. Who's gonna come up with a second stock? Godly with oh, a Godly's chance got here. him off the edge now, and he's Corner just guard. juggling him. Oh, still so much unanswered damage. Again, Godly punishes. Again, Godly punishes. How many times is he gonna just initiate unanswered oh, damage? Oh, great! Wait, what a perfect the neutral read! Thing. That he's was a, a freak. That was okay. such a perfect. That was such a perfect read. Oh, he knew side he must have lands, just known. goes to the side air. The pressure continues with Escrape. Now he's knocked off on the side of the stage. Okay, wait. Can he make it back? Yes, he does. Godly doesn't know what to do. Punishing the down signature. Both Very good players option. there. Right oh. now he avoided what surely would have been a killing okay. blow, but he just could okay. not get away from Ooh. it. Godly takes another stock. Escrape down to his final stock of the game. And you know what? That is killing him with consistent consistency. Because yeah. Godly, the, the, being able to nail that gravity cancel uh, down light into recovery on gauntlets is like something, if you want to play at this level, you got to be able to have in your back pocket. But Escrape has a lot of weird, really specific Orion setups. And so I'm wondering what kind of things he can do. Uh -oh. like, that must have been a super specific Okay, setup. oh, he baited him into that recovery. <laughs> into it was recovery. A, it's a genius move, really, if you think about oh, it. Oh, no. Oh, this is this is turning into trouble for Escrape. Yes, He's nearly a sure. full stock behind. He's still just looking for the knockout. Oh, oh, oh okay. no, he wasn't, yeah. he wasn't gonna fall really? all the way into that. It was, <laughs> That's just one of those, uh, you believe in yourself <laughs> yeah. a little bit too much. Nice, oh, okay, wait. Man, oh. Godly, Godly is, he's dealt with this no, already. No, Escrape. Wow, Godly. Oh. Taking him out 2-0, and that's that's one for the set. But this is a best of five. Five, yes. Best of five. Yeah, we saw a lot of great stuff from Escrape there. He has the potential to take uh, definitely a game off of Godly. I'd have to say that from what I've seen. But Godly, again, with the consistency, he Escrape at the end. Look at the gravity cancel side signature. I mean, that was a prayer for that to land. That, I mean, that was throwing I the know. haymaker from far away. I know, I know. But I mean, what? a lot Wait, of the things he was trying looked like this. things that could have worked. In <gasps> we got a queen nine. Okay, oh. everybody, chill, relax, chill. relax. I to toast relax. is literally chill. Let's go, queen, queen nine. nine. Queen nine mains rise up. We our boy is here. Let's go, Escrape. Uh, so now that I reassess the situation, Steve, oh, this yeah, has nothing this to do with queen nine. I promise. But I think Escrape, he's he's on the come up. This is probably going to be the one where he wins this and um, you know yeah. i've never seen him play better in this first 10 seconds i can say that he's he's looking good he's i looking really good. thought wouldn't you agree yeah i mean i really thought <laughs> of the two weapons that escrape was leaning on the lance so to see him to switch to a spear legend and not a lance legend was interesting but also <laughs> he did hit a double down light against the that's one of, right is the, against pr1 in eu so that means that he is a spear specialist as far as i'm concerned yeah, so i'm yeah. a believer in this pick so yeah. far even damage displayed against both players. Let's see what who's gonna. Oh, what Whoa! a crazy option, dude! You okay. got a Matt. Matt, that's a, that's a psycho uh -oh. move. Why would you do that? That's such a nice combo from Godly. As great, fighting his way to make it back, and you know, as as the slowest legend in the game, Queen yeah. Nye, uh it can be tough to get back from a far away, getting knocked away far. That's true. Like, not far enough to get knocked out, where you still have to like go ahead and jump all the way back. She's got the lowest airspeed in the game. Um, right. And a player like Godly can really take advantage of the limited recovery options you have as a result of that, right? Okay. But I still think Queen Nine never die, though? He's, he's, Queen Nine never die. And that's the, the, the trade off, isn't it? Because you have the most defense in the game, and, and, and everybody loves that. Oh, no. All right. No, all right. no, no. It's fine. Everybody, Queen Nine mains. So Stay in your seats, all right? We're gonna important be important to note. Godly okay. or Escrape rather got the first stock of the last game, whoa, and Godly whoa. still won. No, God, stop! All right, all right. Chill, chill. As much as I love Queen Nye, uh, that was the sick, nastiest g combo I've ever seen. Uh, on orb. And he got God. the weapon star. Oh my no, goodness! Huge. Godly is going off. Escrape is reaching now. Oh, These are yes. all oh, so my. man. Those that are some desperation see. signature attacks. Yeah. If I look. Like, like, yeah, I've I mean, seen we've enough. all been there. I've seen enough. Yeah, we've I mean, all been there. Look, look, you look know at what, you know what it's like. You know, you know that he's won almost any move in his kit would KO at this point. So he's just trying to find something that will God, take he, the stock. He just looks faster than Escrape. Like, yeah. he's reacting faster. He gets more out of every initiation. Escrape, oh, I want to see it work so badly.
Yeah. But man, Godly is looking good. Oh, he just, yeah, how did he, oh my goodness. This matchup He chased is... him up, like he knew where he was going. No, no, he, what? Godly, Double. he makes it look easy, but I guarantee you that was not easy. What an awesome play from Godly. That entire wow. game was a highlight reel for Godly. I... That is insane. Yeah, I got to imagine that uh, uh, the we're not going to see Queen Nye again. But <laughs> I could be wrong. Um, yeah. I could be wrong, right. but Look, that was let's say it that went from a close set not to Queen a fault, runaway. Okay? There's just a slight mismatch, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, not Godly Queen Nye's fault. <laughs> he had the answer for everything there. That was insane. Okay, what am okay, I Okay, what's that? Escrave, he's doing Whoa! something else this time. Something what's he else? going with? And uh, they can see it if, they, if you guys have good vision and you have your glasses on, unlike me. Mirage. 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 Another Spear Legend. So yeah. I was wrong. I thought I thought Escrape was the, the Lance Specialist, but really the Spear Specialist, which I'm a fan of as well. You're right. The so only the, the weapon that stayed common between all three Legends he's picked so far is Spear. And, three, man, you know, two, Spear so is a hard weapon to use. We did uh, there, switch I'll, up. I said it. Spear? It's not easy. It's not There's easy to, especially at this level, to compete. Right. You gotta get such sick, nasty reads. You gotta like know your opponent better than they know themselves to be able to land the strings that Spear demands. Of S course, you've got a lot of other tools that yeah. make it worth yeah. using no matter what. What are you about to say about S Grape? So he is a fan of signatures, which I love, and you can tell. Which, yeah, he's, oh, he's a and Mirage. No. Mirage loves signatures. What did we just? What did we see there? Okay. Uh, I think we just lagged a little bit. Okay, right well, now. you know, you know what? Like, S Grape's sight is <laughs> actually kind of clean. I'm liking what I'm seeing. <laughs> but what I was gonna say is, either two things have to happen here. Either S Grape is a big believer in Mirage's spear kit signatures, or his scythe is. Super hella dirty, and he's about to bust open a can. A can, on, uh, a can of what? A can of, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Mountain can of Amp charged Game OG. Fuel, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a can of Mountain Dew and Game Fuel. Uh, something <laughs> in this game. Because he is a player who really relies on the signatures, which I can appreciate because he's really expressing the true. Oh, yes, that's, that's what, what you I'm were talking, talking about. about. The down signatures on both uh, weapon kits from Mirage are super devastating for those stacked yeah. options. And uh, with spear and, they're, and, and they're, with they're quick, you just get to use them in these unconventional ways that signatures don't often get used for. Oh, oh but Godly, perfect, perfect follow-ups. He took no damage yeah. and he got that stock back, evening up the game before anything was uh, any consequence really happened to him. So S Grape armed now with a new scythe. Godly just seems to always look. Gauntlet sidelight, it's not as consistent as Godly makes it look, okay? You have to do a read every single time, but yeah. somehow he just keeps getting it right against a player like S Grape, who has come this far in the tournament without losing a single set in the entire tournament, right? These oh. are the only two players in the entire tournament that haven't lost a set. I can't stress that enough. That These great. are the best of the best right now. And Godly is just looking so in control. It's insane. Now, this game is huge, okay? Because if Godly wins this game, he's moving on 3-0, and he's waltzing right into uh, the grand final. Grand yeah, yeah. But let's not count as grape out. Okay? Well, no, I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just no, sitting no, no. up the stage. I'm not counting him you out. You did qualify Look. it properly. I thought that was going to KO when I was about to say something, but no. S Grape still searching <laughs> for this KO onto Godly. But oh, the, I don't know uh, if S Grape's going to be able to make it back. He's using his di the, the dive kicks. What? What? <laughs> Freak! Wall sweating. Wall sweating. Wow. Okay, that was awesome. You saw he's using the dive kicks to just get a little bit more horizontal yes. movement yes. when he had no more recovery options left. No one expected that ground pound out of nowhere That's to finish off Godly. Yeah. What in the world? Now S Grape has got a golden opportunity here to build some damage up onto Godly before he loses loses this stock. Maybe he just doesn't even lose the stock. That right? would be insane, but he I'm ready wins. for it. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> so He's already much. done a pretty good amount of damage, even if he lost oh, the stock. Man. The stock now, about now. <laughs> I'd say then, he's yeah. still in a, a pretty good position. I mean, he's got to leave maybe about halfway, depending on how you look at it, halfway down on this stock. He's, there, he's in dark yellow. All right. All right. You just know Godly's about to turn it up to 11, though, so... I mean, what's the odds we get a game five out of this set? I mean, that's really what I Man, that's see. what I'm about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. They Godly. call us the game five fiends. The damage is, difference is negligible now. It's all whoever oh, outplays yeah, this right, last you're stock. You're right. That lead he had just doesn't matter anymore. Oh, man. S Grape is having trouble landing an attack. Wait, oh, we got a sweet weapon throw startup. But that was interesting. It was like a down throw, but still the hitbox connected. Okay. Yeah. I was looking for the read off that the dodge. Uh oh. Oh no, punish. Nice punish by Godly. This could be it. One final edge guard to rule them all. No, S Grape manages to make it back. He whiffs the down signature that would have been so great for him. Godly looking for the finish. No! This is it! 
Game over! Godly wins 3 ah. 0 in winner's finals. I hate how far I saw that coming. <laughs> I really do. I'm that, such I an mean, S that Gravity fan. Cancel side so, was a was a prayer. Yeah, you know? S Ray, what I would say is uh, a big characteristic of his playstyle is he really relies on the signature kit. Sheesh. But see here, Godly was so effective in this set of punishing every signature that was, yeah. was used in neutral. Not only did he capitalize on every possible punishment, but he got so much out of it every punish. His 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 damage per engagements is 33, right? Much higher, much higher than average, considering how much of those are just coming from straight punishes, which is generally just a sidelight side air. Not with Godly, man. It's like downlight into like reading a dodge into another downlight, which gives him a neutral air and a side air off of that. Before yeah. you know it, he's done. He's hit you five times, and you still don't have a weapon. It was so overwhelming, even for a player like Escrape, who we, we have seen dominate players higher seed than him like crazy through this entire tournament, was no match for Godly, who is now sitting in grand finals, waiting for the rest of this tournament to play out to see who is worthy yeah. to come back up to fight him and challenge his throne here that he so rightfully deserves. At but, least it looks that way. Yeah, right? Escrape <laughs> is guaranteed at least third place in this tournament. He's he's waiting in losers finals for the the winner of the next matchup to come in and challenge him, and he has he's performed so well in this tournament. Don't count him out yet if you're an Escrape fan. Don't he's still in yet. this. Don't thing. count him out yet. Yeah, we definitely got some Escrape fans out there. I can hear them. They're, yeah. che they're cheering so loud. It's it's actually kind of deafening. Chill out, guys. Um. But with this next set, we've got Simple versus Knees. Okay. Okay. Is, now, okay. Simple in EU probably it's hard to argue he's the most consistent place like person who places in tournaments. Yeah. He's like top, top three f for since ever. Ever. He's top, top three. So, he, he's, but at one he's, point, he was the best and yeah. like undisputed the best for an extremely long right. time. And another point, he was like second place all day every day but no matter what it like basically through his whole career he's been a top three yeah. player no matter what dynasty you are watching throughout <laughs> eu's history simple's a simple of is in the top three of that <laughs> tournament yeah you know so yeah. he is always a contender we know this but then knees yeah i have just been so impressed with today especially in that last game we saw uh against coco yeah with the side strings that he was pulling off were just blowing my mind. I mean, yeah, it was like uh, you even said you were like the game's going in slow motion. It's like, oh yeah, that might just be the effect. That might just be me. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm a huge Coco okay. fan. Look, we've got a viewer oh. vote up here right now, yeah, and, in. and I think this tells the story better than we ever could. The fans are we'll divided. We'll see. Keep voting. 50, we don't 50, know yet. Truly 50-50. Okay, somebody tip that. Tip. Seriously, guys. They can't tip if you the haven't scale. voted yet, 50, what 50, are you doing? Really? It's okay. It's free to vote. Just okay, do it. Okay, 49-51. You're, we're one, you're one click away from having your vote matter here. Okay. Knees? Okay, pulling knees, away a little right. bit. Knees ended off Huge. with a 52%. Huge lead. Huge. That wins the election in any state. Straight up. I think that, isn't that like... Grounds for a recount? I'm not sure. <laughs> that was close enough for you a recount. What? I who, demand a recount. Oh, but wait. No, here okay. we go. Here we are. This is loser semifinals. Elimination semifinals. Yes. Is this is huge. Final. Whoever One loses this is out of the tournament. Yeah. In fourth place. Whoever wins this is on the podium. This That's is true. Like, this is a huge match. That's oh, big. And Nice oh, is already Nies, popping off I, with I these see crazy what you're talking about here That's, with the crazy scythe plays. That is what I was talking about. It's like, he's just... He's just got it going Deez on. Deez has been also the most consistent Mordex in the EU region since forever. Okay. Yeah. So this he, isn't like a, a flavor of the month or flavor of the week. This You're is right. something that he's tried and this true. Is, this, this is, is what he believes in. This is circa 2018 knees right oh, here. Oh, he did have some nasty edge guard. Oh, gravity gets him down light. What a great option there. He's going to catch him on the oh. recovery. Oh, he just went literally. for it. He he knew. He knew. He was he was there. He knew exactly what to do. He is so quick with these drop-off ground pounds, too. So you know he's just going to be dicing up stocks off of the side of the stage yeah. here on the wall. We got a classic uh, cats versus dogs yeah. situation here, yeah. right? Yeah. A tale as old as time. A tale as old as time. Obviously, I'm hoping Simple wins because he's right. playing a I Surrey. Mean, no if you don't know that Boda has an insane Asuri bias at this point, you've not <laughs> been watching enough. I wouldn't call it a bias. I it's would, a bias. What, what would I, you call oh, it? Oh, you're right. It's a bias. It's you a invent bias. a new word for it? Yeah. But yeah. get wrecked, now, Boda. Knees taking the first stock. Unfortunately, Simple loses the stock. That's it. Finally, everybody we can, wishes we can, that a Surrey had three stocks right now. Which you know what two. is good about this matchup? Yeah. Is we can finally put to bed what's better, cats or dogs. And I'm, you're right. Honestly, that, I'm when team this dogs. Match, I hate to say it. I 
don't hate to say it. I love to say it. <laughs> Team Dog, let's go, Knees! Come on! You're, you're right that after this match is over, we will definitively have yeah. that answer. Like, for now and forever, that will be the truth in the entire world. Oh, Knees was about to make the truth even more strong there the with a potential the, edge guard. The, tr the truth is worrisome right now. But you, you, you remember that this is simple, right? You remember yeah. how many tournaments we've casted. That's true. Where simple was in grand finals, okay? It's not even grand finals yet. So he's not even like he's not. He's not done. He's not done. Yeah, he's, he's still. There's so many pages left yeah, in this let chapter. Him <laughs> let him cook. Let him cook. This is where he wants to be. He wants to be uh, down in damage on the second stock. This is right where simple. It, you know, he he is like unflappable though, because you know that his mental is so strong compared to almost every player in EU, because he's been in Ooh. every single situation imaginable. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Simple's fought through every meta. He can he can tell you a tale. Yeah. From any from any dynasty. Oh, the oh, side oh, oh. Oh, what meta that is was that? really good. Just living that inside your really head good. meta. What I do mean, you do about yeah. that? Well, he he's seen it before. That doesn't mean it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't is, still work. You sometimes. know what? They say that's the punch you don't see coming that knocks you out. Sometimes <laughs> it's the punch you see coming. <laughs> sometimes you see the punch coming, you're like, that's pretty fast. I can't believe he punched me that hard. <laughs> yeah. And that's exactly what Knees did there. Takes the second yeah. stock. Now has a full stock lead basically as he's dealing damage on this final stock of simple. But simple, this can he make a big be, play to come back? Yeah, it's gonna be tough for simple. He's gonna have to do a lot to make it oh, back from this. Weapon. And he steals the only weapon available on the field. Knees in trouble now without a weapon. There's one on the field, and he manages to grab grab it before Sybil can stop him, but the damage has been done. Uh-oh, wait a second. Sybil's still a stock down, and Knees is getting a lot of damage right now. Sybil's got to end this stock and then win an entire other stock without getting hit. I, I think it's possible, but this is going to be a tough one. Oh, with the ground pound? Dude, Knees is ground pounds. On, he's the best guy. Well, whatever. Oh. Whatever. Whatever. It's over. Two, it doesn't matter. Two stocks. <laughs> Two stocks even. still, and he sits on his oh, throne like he gosh. deserves it. He's looking really good today on this Mordex pick. It's going to take something to knock him off of this. He, he was, was on playing a lot of Lucian earlier in the bracket. Oh, and that's now right. I'm like, why even? I love, like, I don't was know, that just the Blasters are fun to watch, and I want to see them. But also, yeah. if, if his Mordex was, just was like hold, this. He was holding the Mordex I close mean, to his chest. Like, I everybody mean, didn't know he already rocked that Mordex. Listen, I'm not good at math or whatever. I used to be, but yeah. almost 2x in damage? That's, that's huge. Right, yeah. I mean, yeah. Es estimated? I need a calculator, but I mean, okay, about 2x. It wasn't 2x. It was like What I saw was 45 damage per engagement, which is like, yeah, that's, that's so that, much wait, damage 45? per engagement. 45? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's insane. That's way that too much. That means his strings are going on forever, and okay, he's but consistently simple looking, getting reads. Symbol looks really good with his guitars here. Oh, wait a second. Good read off the side. Gets this is the recovery. why we do best of five. You know, it oh, just changes here? all the time. That's true. That's true. I mean, when 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 it's this close, we really need the longer set format to find out who is going to take it on this right, day. Yeah, yeah. But huge damage lead. You look at knees. He's already in red. He's off on the side of the stage. Simple going to swap out oh. for. Wait. Okay, that was oh, no weapon yeah, throw. You got yeah. you got faked out too. <laughs> no, not in your league. Okay. Oh, knees you went gotta love for this, it. You got to love the situational awareness by knees to go for a play like that at the top of the stage to reverse the situation. Now he's got it, the damage. <sighs> Kind of in his favor, the weapon oh, throw. Oh, that'll do it. Do it yeah. he, and Knees knew it. He just fast fell after that one. Great weapon I, throw by I've Simple. I've never purposefully steered myself out into the KO box, but that's because I'm Me delusional. Either. I'm absolutely delusional. Well, in in one v one, there's not a great reason to. That's, I guess he's true. respecting the fans' time. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. Play, yeah, any. you're right. In doubles, there's a great reason to. If you're done, yeah, you help should help get help back help to the yeah, stage as soon true. as you can. And if that means getting getting knocked out. So be it, but in one v one, your opponent just has to wait. That's true. Okay, knees can claim this. Okay, as close as you can be to somebody and still get the weapon throw. A couple weapon throws come through. Simple, simple. dealing some good damage. He's on still knees holding on to this knees without a dodge for a moment as he used a gravity cancel. It's back up now. <gasps> Let's go, Asuri. I mean, I think Simple's doing great this match. Oh, the gra dude, Knees is the best ground gauntless ground pounder in EU. I was going to say that in the last oh, game. Oh, you're right, you're right. You're I got right. Cut we were off just talking him. about that, actually, before we he came just, on, on like, the cast. Yeah. It's, it's a very powerful move because it has the steering, it has good force, and it's just like you can really home in on somebody. But I suck with it, so I, I kind of have right. to respect when it's, people are good. Yeah, it's easy to respect it, for sure. I don't know if it's easier because it is powerful. But Knees is so quick with it. He, he knows, like, decidedly when he is engaging in that ground pound. It's yeah. not, like, from the top rope. It's always as fast as he can do it. Right, and when he, when he lets it go, it's done. He, he lets it go before it's a problem and gets out of the situation right. after a miss. Okay. The game is still close, both in red on their second stock. And you can take it. The recovery okay. does it there. Simple stays the stock ahead, but Knees did a really good job of 
bring in simple down to a KO amount of damage. Yeah. He's, he's in KO range. Okay, but, but simple is getting a lot of damage out. This is what oh. you like to see. This is what, if you're if you're an Asuri fan, this is what you like to see. Stuff the recovery. Simple cannot be stopped. Oh no, he lost his guitars. It's over. He doesn't stand a chance. How are you <laughs> no, gonna do anything can, without well. guitars? This is over. This is this is a real big problem. Even when he grabs this weapon, it's not gonna be guitars. It's the sword. And oh yeah, see, pow, dude. He did, if it was guitars, it doesn't miss. A, you're right. He is the greatest. It's just like it doesn't EU miss. ground pounder out there. He has the title. You you can barely even see him about the ground pound because he does it when it will hit just from tapping it almost. It's insane. Okay. Stocks are tied up. Knees is trailing in damage. He really needs but to have a comeback stock here. It is yeah, totally it is doable. doable for Knees, and Simple knows it. He's got to play this right. Oh, whoa! Just throwing no, out a haymaker. Okay. Knees really made him pay for that one, but it could have been worse. Yeah. Now Simple, he's got the sword. He is surely most comfortable on sword, right? We've seen him dominate for years and years as Bode Bar, right? Right. Mainly using the sword, but oh my goodness, Knees just can't be stopped. He's practically tied up the damage. Oh man, what's gonna happen? Oh, Whoa! that was gross. That was a gross attempt, and that, it would have worked. It would have. It would have gotten him the knockout. It like, would have been was, close. That was the right move to be. No, no, what? no way! What? I, I thought he had. No way! I really didn't no know. That was way. close. That was close. That was a perfect, optimal, probably maneuver to KO with that exact health. I could have sworn wow. that simple would have survived that. The did damage he, done, damage he, taken is close. Did he drift into the wall? I. What Hold on, the slow mo. Look at the slow mo. Hold on, we're gonna see. No way he drifted. Why There's would he no. Drift? I know. Why would he? Why would he? Why would he? But he's in stun. He's in stun. Dude, he could have. A little sus. You think he, holding left? Well, I think he wasn't holding left. I think he came out he of float? stun for a, for a moment. With the momentum May carried him. It might have been enough where like if he down air did did a move that instantly oh, halts oh, his uh, okay. his momentum. Yeah, yeah. He might have drifted in just from the knockout that happens. Ooh. And holding left doesn't immediately stop you from going right. It only starts fighting the momentum. Right, right, right. That was a that was a game of pixels, and it cost it simple the whole stock, dude. Yeah. Oh, oh my huge goodness. ground pound, another Whoa! ground pound, down air no! follow up, Simba! and another ground pound, oh, not even needed! No! Popping Ooh. off! That is insane! Look at the stutter he's step! Already, he's already feeling this. himself, and he's he deserves out it. Out of control. He deserves Go if on you, with your dude, bad self, Nees. There oh is no... God. We could not animate a taunt or an emo at all to be a <laughs> DM as staggering your step that fast. Nees, so confident on this corner, doesn't need to do much. Oh, man. What if we made an emo that was uh, We couldn't! We couldn't! You're it's right. not You're physically right. it's possible. Impossible. We've been trying. In the lab, we try to concoct what is the saltiest thing we could possibly <laughs> animate. There's nothing saltier than stutter stepping like that. And Nees knows you're it. You're right. You're right. The mental game is out of control. Here we are in game three. This could decide it all. Simple. Looking for this edge guard. Is it possible? Dodge? Is it enough to get back to the stage? What a crafty recovery by Nees. He managed to get back no problem. But okay. luckily, luckily, yeah, yeah, luckily, for all the Yasuri fans out there, Ooh. Simple's put a stop to such ridiculous things. This is to decide whether or not cats and dogs back. are better. Yeah, I know. This is and, huge. and there's a there's a lot on the line out there for people who like cats because everybody knows that oh this will gosh. definitively answer that cats question for the rest roommates. of our lives. Cats are just hairy roommates who never wear shirts. <laughs> it's just weird what they do. Oh no. Oh, oh my no. gosh. That joke was longer than the stock. There it is. <laughs> Simple. Down to his final stock. Knees two up. Is there any chance of comeback for Simple here? Again, we talked about it. He has a history in this game of surviving any situation. He's come back from every single Whoa. possible uh, uh, downside you could be in in this game. Oh, no, the ground pound was surely about to come Dude, out there. Stuff by the fire. recovery. This is too much. The ground pounds, it's too much. Oh, Simba's ah, in trouble. Right. He's lost wait, to the sauce. Can he take it back? Oh, oh he does? Just what? barely you, the taunt? Nisa's already taunting. Dude, wait, no, okay, reacting out of taunt that quickly, though, is kind of a pro maneuver for Nisa. <laughs> yeah. Not going to yeah, lie. Yeah, that was a very optimal taunt, actually. All right. Simple needs this stock on the corner. Needs to recover high. Makes it back Simple to mid-stage. Simple needs the stock right now. Yeah, and then right another now. one late. Right now. now. No. Oh, late. He dude. needed it like a He's second ago. No! Game over. Knees wins again by two stocks. What, what? a dominant victory from Knees. 3-0 over the mighty Simple himself to oh. move on to top threes. Earn a spot in the podium. Steven, that was insane. This was insane. Yes. What, what do we say? What? What do we say? Dogs what? are better. Get wrecked, Dogs cat are people. Better. We now we, we know. Now we know. Look, it was a fair test. Okay? It was a fair test. We that's the, it's that it's the data. We we put it up. There's there's no fairer experiment than this. Look at this. And dogs now we know. Dogs are better. Cats. It wasn't even close. Do dogs 3 0 cats. Oh, you know what? Truth, These, though, I'm looking told. at the PR now, though. PR 4 versus 5. I mean, that's as close as you could get as far as whatever. But Knees was actually ahead on, on power rank. Yeah. So.
Whew. This isn't. This I certainly have... isn't a upset by any means, but still, to, to do it that dominantly though, a 3-0 against Simple, with the stakes that we have, that's kind of crazy. I know. I know. I mean, we're in top four, and we just saw two three O's. That's true. That's kind what of ridiculous. Dude, That's quite, EU? What is going on in this region? There is something going That's on in not... EU, and I absolutely love it. What is happening? Well, EU used to be so predictable, right? Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, for, like two years ago, well, we were always year. like, oh, here we are You're again. like, oh, Blue's going to win. Okay. <laughs> Akno's going to win. Gob's going to win. Like, you should always know. If there were safe bets, if you're like a, if you're like a betting man, you're like, I'll take a safe bet. This I don't care. Yeah, but now? Not, who knows? Is, I don't even... Everyone's going crazy in Vegas right now. That's for sure. Yeah. I, simple losing just costs people so much money. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> that's probably that's true. That's probably true. Anyway, we have still got more coming. Elimination finals next. After that, grand finals. We're going to yes. see S-Grape right now versus Knees. I have no idea who's going to win that one, although we have seen the matchup happen once earlier in this tournament. It's going to be awesome. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break. Quick, quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs>
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the European Spring Championship. We're in the midst of the yeah. most epic part of this tournament here, the 1v1 bracket. Who's the best in the European region? We're about to find out because we're down to top three. It's the elimination final coming up next, and Wait. there's only one match after that. That's grand finals. Yeah? We're what? the top Oh, are you we are my in the top three. My math? I was. I mean, we did. And you were right. No, you're, you're right. right. No, no, no. We're in the top three. We came in the top four earlier, and then we yeah, did yeah. two matches, and that yeah. math seems weird, but because of how winner's bracket works and everything, right. there's, we're, we're top three. <laughs> but the next match, we're going to find out who's third place and who's going to go up to fight against Godly, who has not lost a match in this tournament yet. Not only that, but he 3 0'd the other guy who didn't lose any sets. <laughs> yeah, either. That's true. So, like. Is Godly just... Godly? Godly? Yeah. Is he I just mean, the guy? We're going to find out here. But first, we've got S-Great versus Knees. And it's hard to say how this one's going to go. If we look back at the past the past tournament, right? There's the, the lifetime past. history. Okay. And it happened just uh, like a couple hours ago. Uh, but but S-Great won, right? Like, okay, he 3 so would I think, too. Their lifetime history is actually tied then. This isn't updated yet. Oh, chances are. It's one and one. I think it's one and one. Is that true? I know production? it's one and okay, one. You're right. All right, all right. I did the. I did my. Respect my math, Boda. <laughs> I, res I respect your I math. I did the math. They I saw you in the lab earlier. I didn't realize what you were working on, but now I get it. Well, you saw I was sweating, so you know how hard I was working on that math. <laughs> so for you to come and disrespect me like that, <laughs> that's messed up. All right, we're getting right into this next match, and I love what I'm seeing already. It's going to be Knees versus S Crate. Knees locking in with the Mordek the that he's been winning with. And S Crate, who played Mirage last time, I didn't want to say it when it happened. But when it happened, I was like, mm, he could have been Donatello instead. <laughs> yeah. And now he is Donatello. Let's go. We got the next match coming up. Did you see Final the viewer vote, though? Your vote was 70% in favor of knees. So okay. and, and well, that, that makes sense. makes sense. <laughs> that just, just makes sense. We just saw him 3-0 somebody. We just saw Escape Grape get 3 0 would so. Right. so that just that all that all lines up. A lot of people are look, doing math okay, out there. Let's just take a second to look at Escape's drip here, right? Is that Donatello or is that uh, Ice Wizard? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Donatello in blue with the like frosty spear. It's, that's it's really good. Oh, 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 dude. Okay, come that was on. sick that he even went for Everybody that. Everybody wanted that <sighs> to land. That would have been no. so sick. Knees uh. did not deserve that knockout. It was not, <laughs> yeah. it was not nearly as cool as, as what S Grape did. S -Grape no, I'm is kidding. Knees is doing great. This is insane. Yeah. <laughs> we saw, I mean, S Grape, like we've said, is he's, he has these crazy setups that are so specific to the legends he plays. You know he's got a lot of experience on these, le on these legends, but Knees. Tried and true on the Mordex for years of competitive play. Okay, oh, that's that'll it. do it. Nice. Okay, nice, there it dude. Is. What a dream for a Spear player to get the sidelight and know that the downlight's going to be true like it's 2016. <laughs> Whoa, Knees, what the heck? Okay, that's a great, man. Knees is, Knees is really jacked into the Matrix here. I will say for Escrape to come out here with a Scythe Legend against Knees, who is probably the most... Uh, you know, Scythe uh, knowledgeable player in all of EU, let's Ooh. be honest. Oh, and the weapon throw was enough to eat his options. He couldn't make it back to the stage, had to take himself out now into his final stock. S Grape in game one, in trouble. Okay. Oh, oh yes. nice. The crossover, the double, double triple. triple. The triple. Let's and go. The double recovery. The double double recovery. recovery. Come on. Come on. That's, that's as good as it gets. That's as good for, as it gets. From can... zero damage, that's as good as it gets. That was an insane play for a spear player. Holy cow. We need to see something big off the side oh, of the stage. The down air comes through. This could through. be it. He got, got him. He got him. Oh. He's just done. Oh, my gosh. That oh was my gosh. sick. What a comeback. Escrape was down two full stocks, and that he has basically equalized it now. That was so nasty. Was so he nasty, needs something bro. exactly like that to start off his final stock to get him back into this game. No, nice oh, punish. Oh, wait. No, all of that easy. might not matter if Knees no, just no. plays. Oh, okay. Wait a second. <sighs> Man, how yeah. many how many more side lights is he gonna get the read off of? That, like that, it's tough. That's you're like, right. That's so much. Okay, now with the scythe, oh knees boy. doesn't care. Unarmed, not he's not backing down. Wait, but there's a weapon. Might he knows how far ahead he is. <laughs> any any of those heavy attacks will knock S Grape out from most situations. Okay, what? Oh Whoa. my gosh, mixes oh, him up. Perfect spot dodge from knees. S Grape was on the way to a game winning combo right there, and knees put a stop to it. But, oh. oh, that's it. Knees wins. Oh, that's okay. man. Escrape did so that much. That was amazing. To Whoa, come back. Immediately he, back into he a run map so selection. so well, and it wasn't enough. Knees is just too powerful. Yeah, Knees has been looking incredible today, honestly. Like, Escrape had several highlights, and it just didn't and matter. The thing about <laughs> like, this is 
this is the second set they've had against each other today because it's Escrape who knocked Knees down into this That's lower right, bracket. Yeah. And Knees now like powering up and becoming the one to be beaten. Is, well, so is this has kind of become essentially a best of 10. And we see this sometimes where like the most uh, experienced player, the longer uh, the sets go on, yep. is going to gain momentum. Yep. You yep. know, yep. Escrape is still a young truth. player. Mm. Oh, no, please not. OK, the Nair misses. No way. Makes it back to the stage. Thank goodness for Escrape. He took a decent amount of damage there, but that would have been devastating had that come through. Uh, still holding on to this first stock, able to push some advantage here with the stage control. <laughs> Looks for the reset after that dodge. Man, Escape's having trouble landing any of the follow. He's getting the combo starters. He's winning neutral often, but he is right. not pushing oh, that engagement very ground far. Pounds. And now Knees just beats him with his ground pound. I wish and we, we had all know he's the ground poundiest ground pounder Literally, out there. I want to check this man's accuracy on that ground pound because I think it's 100%. I've not seen him use yeah, oh, double. I think, we the can, double I think down we can figure lights? out that data. Dude, Escrape landing these double down lights on the to tippity top of players in his region. That's actually insane. I know, I know. That, like, that only works in gold, I thought. But no. Escrape can do it against the, the next best player in the world. Okay, this was just like game one where Knees took the first stock, but then Escrape quickly equalize, but can Escrape actually have this turnaround stock where he gains the advantage here? Okay, doing really good Dude. with these Spear yeah. Nairs, oh controlling my a lot goodness. of space. He's bringing, he's, he got so much mileage out of the Spear Nair. Yeah, that downlight put him out of position, gave uh, Knees enough space to grab that. Weapon Spawn picks up the Gauntlets, but we've been seeing, uh, I mean, Knees can rely on either one of these weapons he has to his advantage. There's, there's not a, a position you can put him in where he's out of sorts. But that falling side air catches, weapon throw, swaps off to this. Oh, oh. Scythe? Aww. Oh, he charges Whoa. it. Oh, wait a second. Okay, okay. okay. everything's the cool. funky, you know what I mean? <laughs> the funky timing can sometimes be the mix up you need. That's exactly. Down off the side of the stage. Can he close this out? Goes for the neutral signature. Knees recovers over the top. Makes it back to mid stage. Good use of ground pound, even though he was actually on the ground for it. Oh. Okay, down signature. S Grape is a dreamer, and that's one of the things I love about his play style. Yes! Oh, now, okay, they, nothing exemplifies it more than what, what you just said. <laughs> But what he just did, yeah. Escape definitely dreaming, and he landed it. Dreams do come true, Steven. It's true. Well, when you fight so hard to get that amount of damage on your opponent, you know you're kind of that checkmate position away from getting that down light into yeah. ground pound off stage. Ooh, nice which dodge he did. from Escape. Oh, oh, that, that, was, that was enough. That was perfect. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, if that recovery <laughs> hadn't caught, the ground pound would have been it. But uh, he didn't survive yeah, for too much longer. Yeah, because he had that. to use his dodge. The weapon throw came in aimed so perfectly. Escape had no choice but to dodge it. That left him recovering. Okay, without, okay. what are you doing? That That's crazy. Was, You're being crazy that now. That was Escrape. too much. That was, that was for stream. I love That was for the viewers. You gotta, oh, man. Oh, uh -oh. he's paying the price. Ooh, gets around the ground pound. This is the first miss I've, I've ever seen from Nisa's <laughs> gauntlet ground pound. Yeah, I his swear. accuracy just went down from 100% to 98% on ground pound. Okay, double. No, what? you're actually insane. Yes. Oh, yes. my God. You can't, dude, you can't teach that. He you is would a never dreamer. teach someone to do that. Dude. And what's it? That's just knowing the range of your moves. That's being so familiar with your signature kit. He's playing the character. He's Dude, not playing the that weapon. That is it. Wait, let's. We gotta. Okay, after this. That clip, was insane. No, this is, this, yeah, that was this, great. I mean, that's it's just great. But when you know what what comes coming up next, you're like, whatever. Okay, here we go. What? Who does this? How quickly Who he does made, that? Did you see how quickly he did that? He knew. Knees was he like, uh, he's going to try to fade away for me to make it to the far end of the stage. That's such a weirdly precise, long-range I zig love that. And, when, like, such an awkward position to use it. You know, okay, okay yes, okay, let's okay. go. He's on, Do he's, not give he's this man locks. an ounce of confidence because he will take that and turn it into the yeah. most. Uh, right, yeah, he's unlocked something with that. Uh, he, the, the juice just kicked in. He's, yeah, he's juiced up. He's juiced. It's it's over. <laughs> Potentially. Here we are. Demon Island. Knees swapping off Whoa. onto Hitori. Another I, try and true now that's, pick. What's up with that? He's well, like, you know what? I want a down, down light side air now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I, yeah. Did, he, did, after he got did triple down light side air, good? he's like, wait. He's okay, like, wait that was a... <laughs> Dude, oh, the down light side air. true combo when you dribble it like that at the perfect time. What? He dashed Ooh. off and gravity ah. canceled side lighted. Did you see that? That was so That was good. so smooth. I'm okay, gonna do, I'm gonna start doing dude, that. Dude, yeah. I'm taking that. Take notes, everybody. Because yeah, Escrape. I, just, I actually. Did you yeah, see I'm that follow up the jump? Uh, neutral. Oh, dude, okay. Wait S a sec. Dude, he, something changed within Escrape. No, he's like, been like this the whole time. No, dude. He didn't nah, get to this position. Something changed just now, dude. Well, see, the thing is, he knows. He, he reminded himself, I can beat this guy. You know what yeah. I mean? And sometimes you need that. Because you think, it's, oh, out of the oh, smoke, he pulls whoa. him? It's it's funny how mental Brahala can be sometimes. Oh well, you're, yeah. You're at, like I can see it happening. I like we've we've all been here where you're just like, oh it, yeah. It's you're literally yourself. Everything works. You keep making the right decisions, and Escrape is like, he's he's. Oh, oh wait a second. That's, dude, 
Dude, but sometimes, needs, sometimes that reminder. is a checkmate, right? Yeah. Like the the fully charged uh, unarmed haymaker. When you when you know that they don't have enough uh, sauce to land any further in on the stage, he had that ground cover. That was a perfect option from knees. But he's already taken a ton of damage on the second stock. And S Grape, ooh, chasing ooh. down with the recovery. He knows that will KO off the top. He has plenty of options here. Okay, was reading the dodge in there. Didn't work out. But he's got so many different. He has a variety of follow ups on the side light for Spear. Oh, that's, that's it. something you need. Nice. And he yeah lands that down light side air, finishes it off, and has a. Plenty of stock to play with on the second stock. This is looking great for S Grape. He doesn't uh, slow down one bit here yeah. on the final stock of knees. He's a great grape. <laughs> he's he's the best grape. The best grape. He's the S Grape. He's the S Grape. You know what I mean? Of, of the <laughs> tiers of grapes, you know, you've seen like C tier yeah. grapes. You've seen yeah. maybe even A tier even grapes. Even A tier grapes don't compare. But this is the S Grape we're talking it's about. The only S Grape I've ever seen. Double down light into recovery. All Perfect right. finishing he's, move. He's, 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 this is possible. Yeah, it's, for sure. do, it's doable. He's like he's at that point where it's like it's not too far gone, but it's awfully close. I mean, once you get close to like one signature knocking you oh. out, and you've got the power of that down signature, it's 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 a hard thing to come around. And Dude, also, uh, S Grape is so effective with the signature kits of any legend he plays. You kind of just have to oh, be weary. Oh man! Okay, knees is Never popping mind. off. Knees is popping off. It's it's basically oh. a tie game right now. S Grape's okay. got to end this yeah, right now, or knees is going to steal it away from him. No he's way, no way, no way! S Grape's in trouble! He's feeling the pressure now, and Knees, Knees is, Knees is feeling it. He's about to, wait a second, I think, I think Knees has got this under control. Oh, okay. dude, they're both going for the hardest reads, just gambling on what their opponent's reaction is going to be. And now we're down to the, we're down to the thick of it. Oh, he Next went for it. Next big hit wins, no matter who gets it. Oh, what a Whoa. dodge! What I a dodge from it. S Grape! That was, that was going to be the finisher. Why he believed in himself? <laughs> Bet on yourself! <laughs> Woo! Woo! Dude, that... That's what the announcers say. Woo! Woo! I that love that. Close. Cause sometimes when you when you use a ground pound and it doesn't hit right away, you go, ah, I'm an idiot. You know, like yeah. I need to stop this. But he knew. He knew he, he knew. had the coverage. He knew to hold on. That is spear experience right there. Look how far he chased him with that. <laughs> Never give up. Dude, I love so much. When, when we made the end of match fanfare, oh, yeah. that was a moment that we <laughs> dreamed of. Like right. it happened, it happened. It it's was always perfect. correct. It was exactly, yeah. You you just, I mean, I was like, whoo, and then yeah. the announcer Dude, said, "Dude, Scrape was like, whoo." Would you believe in your ground pound like that? <laughs> that was well, such a good match, dude. It really went down to the wire between both players, and now Scrape is up in the set, two to one. Knees is. He, he still could get this, Yeah. he can't afford to lose another one. Knees has got to win twice in a row. s -Grape just has to win one more time. Right. s -Grape's locking back in with the Donatello. Which love it. I lo love it, love it. But Knees is switching back to his OG pick from earlier on in this tournament, Lucian. Let's see how he gets it done Three, in this one. Two, one. Yeah, I think um, I like this swap from Knees. I mean, I've been wanting to see more of his Lucian. I think this is a, a strong legend. I think Blasters are looking good right now but oh, S Grape is just really in a special he's in a, he's in the pocket he's in the pocket yeah yeah i've never seen someone more in the pocket than this oh, oh okay. no wait a second nope see he, right, he hits yeah, the he pole. brought it back wow knees an interesting option to go for it he succeeds perfectly with it keeping this oh, up. Wait, the wait that's throw. the best side thing you could ever oh, get oh, oh man, man. Oh. yeah heartbreaking not to get the follow-up but i know using the movement knowing that the movement of the side signature was going to get you out of the way of the weapon throw is just actually such a yeah. play and the fact that he caught him over the corner with it which yeah. sends him at this like super optimal spike trajectory Oh, S Grape, he got it locked down. That's a, that's a stock right there. That's, that's a nice saying. early stock for him, too. He's in orange. S Grape fans are going wild right now. Knees fans are complaining about the game's state of balance. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, they're being As really... if there's any universe where they would. <laughs> no, they're being really cool in chat right now, actually. Everybody's being really Whoa. cool. Whoa, I don't know how S Grape got out of that. Okay, he's using these nears to great what? effect. And the side finger. Are you serious? Oh, no, no. My Wait, God. one more. Oh, my Dude. God. Okay, three stock. Oh, my God. Game four, three stock for the victory. Can that we see be, it? Is it possible? Oh, Weapons are interrupting. And he gets it back. Okay, one. yeah, he did all a little right, bit. Right. Three stock dream is dead, but that's great. JV3, he's, let's he's go. He's really good right Davey? now. He just needs to take one more stock, and he's going to grand finals. You know, that's a guaranteed second place. That would be incredible, but he's got to get through a player like Knees to do it, and that is no easy task no matter where you are in the set count. Okay. This is the follow-up on the side light. 
But again, we see we see S Grape switching up that side light follow up every single time he goes for it. Okay, a little oh, bit of man. sauce. Uh, dude, S Grape. Ground pound, what? perfect ground pound. Oh, okay. the cider would have been devastating. That was beautiful, though. Yeah. I mean, that is like, I'm, I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes. I'm learning how to play guitars better right now. And Nise is doing a good job. Oh, the down Whoa. air. I can't believe that. He, he challenged it with. The, yeah, with the down air? He stopped that air. signature? Come on. No. I, we, yeah, yeah, okay. As Grave as 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 has achieved immortality. This is it. This he is, is one this cheeky signature away. This is when you figure away. out what enlightenment is. Okay. This is how it works. Side air. Has he's off the side of the stage. He can finish it right now. This is the, this is the ticket to grand finals. One hit away. Unless, wait, unless Nies? Oh, no, never mind. GG! GG! S. Grave is moving on to grand finals, winning the set 3-1 to one over Nies, who is truly looking unstoppable. S. Grave, the only one to be able to put a stop to it. Yeah, if you just started watching during Nies' last set, you would be shocked right now, because he 3 0 his opponent. And it was simple, nonetheless. Not like an That's easy right. opponent That's to right. get a win yeah, over. Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. But Honestly, Nies was looking pretty unstoppable. I okay, listen. And, and then it, it. after the first game of this, I was like, uh oh. I'm not gonna lie. I've been diamond hands on S Grape for a long time. Okay, ever since BCX 2022. I know a little that long ago. Okay, but <laughs> I've been a diamond hands S Grape investor. Yeah. I knew the potential. I saw it when he just yeah. went freaky deaky on that. One set. It was like the set took like it was brain like forty slime? seconds. Are you set. talking about the brain slime set? Yes. Oh, sorry, brain slime. Yeah, it brain slime. Nasty. Shout out to brain slime. They took Everybody it. They took that. that. <laughs> they took that loss well, and we talked to them after, and they were super cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were happy to be there, but man, they were basically just a canvas for S Grape to paint his greatest masterpiece. <laughs> and it was Honestly. beautiful. It was but, beautiful, man. But BCX twenty two is something to behold, huh? That was amazing. <sighs> okay. Okay. Well, the look next. at the numbers coming in. After all that hype, it didn't seem to slow down chat's favor well, here. Well, they did see Godly just three stock as That's great. true. Okay. Uh, not three stock, but 3-0 three three oh. Oh yeah, earlier, yeah, yeah. Uh, the winner's final. That's a good point. So the viewers, okay. <laughs> there, you we know. get it. We get it. We get it. But, but, but hold on. But don't count out my boy as great, though. Don't he's count him out yet. So, he's doing so good, though. He's, see, here's the thing. He got he got iced out in winners final. You know how long you have to wait when you and get to true. winners final. Oh, that's a good point. Now Godly he he's used to it. He was probably he was probably grinding with the boys during that whole break. He right. has he has some good player, and I know it because I, I I he was whooping me in between his sets at BCX. So he's 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 staying warm. He's staying warm. Right. But Esgrave he got iced out on on his wait for the match in winners final. But now he's coming in hot. He's coming in red hot. Okay. But here's the problem. Godly picked a Suri and the best skin for a Suri, so oh. it's basically over. Actually, it's kind of <laughs> now. Okay, I, I I'm actually at odds. These are the my two main skins <laughs> battling. That's each other. so true. And, and here I can't we are. Take, I, now I can't take a side. Game one of grand Game finals, one. 2023 Spring Championship for, for EU. This will decide who is the singles champion. A coveted title. I mean, the title is basically, I mean, there's lots of prize money on the line. There's lots of glory on the line. Right. But th this is a one-of-one -one title. The title is, right. It's huge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's uh, it's unique. It truly is one-of-one. One. And it's, it's not even automated, you know? Like, we got to, like, someone needs to go. We got a and, guy for and, that. And, like, tell their account. Like, oh, okay, this my guy goodness. did it. Godly looking good in game one. He's already stolen the first stock away from s -Grape, And he... He has a dig oh and a lot of damage, dude, and he's already dealing with it. That was so nice. Yeah, yeah. His guitar play is nasty. And Godly's been known for this Asuri pick for a long time, so this isn't like a, a meta pick or anything. This is something he's uh, practiced with. Dude, I said it before, and I'll say it again. Asuri is the most honest character. Though. Okay, you were saying that earlier, and I, I'm like, and maybe. You, and you, you somewhat agreed, okay? I, a because I'm bit. a good friend. <laughs> I can tell you your character's You're cheesy nice, because they have a, a, a disgusting nice. dunk off the side of the stage. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you your character's cheesy. But It's the most honest dunk in the game. Let's be real. <laughs> it's up there, baby, probably. There's some disgusting dunks in the game. Anyways, back to the game at hand here. Back to the game. Uh, S-Grape has actually done a good job equalizing the stocks. Oh. Has to come back oh. in the damage. No! Oh, oh, dude, what a great Ooh. option to go for. But S-Grape, perfect, a, perfect answer. There are great options and there are grape options. And there are, <laughs> and <laughs> and there are S -grape When you're S-Grape, you always go for the grape option because you are just <laughs> blasting fools. He's even got the grape-flavored turtle on his side. This is full synergy. Dude, I'm, wait, I'm a believer. is that why he picked Donatello? I think it's more because he's like, 
nasty on the spear and no, also no. has a sick. No. Uh, oh, dude, it's look probably at this spear for the play, name. though. He's all over the cover. Bro. He has a dodge, a fake back, a down signature, or a side signature doesn't even get punished. Dude, there. Wait, that's a great. And the side wait. signature almost oh, lands and a down sig. Dude, awesome he's option. popping off. I can't believe it. I know. Godly I know, started I know, with I know. such a hot start. Whoa, finally claimed okay, the second stock. Godly, Thank goodness. Okay, he still he still somehow holds it together with so much. Holds momentum it together by him. duct tape and band aids, dude. This is about to Sometimes fall apart. Duct tape and band aids is all you away. need. It's all you. It's not what you need. It's what you have. It's Sometimes it's what you have to use. But Godly on his back foot in a serious way here. Escrape needs to land one of these signatures. You know he's a master oh, with his legend. That weapon throw surely would have knocked Godly oh, out, but down he managed to crazy. avoid it. And now he's on stage. No, fighting. no! Epic. Wait, like no this. way! Godly turned it around. It looks so hopeless. We were joking about it. Like, there's no way, right? I'm mad. But he mad. <laughs> Let's see that again. You're going to see a replay of me being mad. <laughs> What the heck? And I yes. saw it coming too. As soon as I was like, "This is the right only now, glimmer of hope." I know, that I know, Godly I know. Has you were right weaving here, a great story Keeps about it stage, too. Ground but then pound. Godly boom, stops stops the recovery. recovery. The weapon throw, as if that wasn't enough. Ugh. A down air to finish it, no. and then he knows. He knows. Like just jump away. He's got both his jumps. Yeah, this, He's got yeah. his recovery. He could chill. As Grape knows, it's over. He's ground pounding. It's done. Oh my goodness! What a game that was. What an insane yeah. turnaround from Godly, and it is just. You know, sometimes you see a match going on and you're like, I know how this is going to end. And yeah. now you know, now that's just a reminder that you, you, you never know. You never know. You never know. So we're going into this next match. S Grape, just remember that even though Godly has the 1 0 here, S Grape, he, did more damage. he was in control the entire match. Yeah. So anything could happen here. All right, let's see. Pulling the first. Okay, oh, yeah, that was in the already, ground pound. That was so swifty. That already. was. Uh, yeah, he's a freak off a leash. That he's was a, he's insane. a freak off a leash, that's for sure. I can't believe it. All right, Escrape is... Look at he just... Is, no fear, even after the last game, because you know what? The last game proved to Escrape that he can get the damage lead. He can have control of this map, and he just needs to work on uh, getting that final hit for the knockout. So... Yeah, you're right. He doesn't you're have right. to tighten the screws that much to turn this into a win. But the important thing to note is because Godly, you see there that W next to his Ooh. name, that means he's on the winner side of the bracket. Ooh. What the heck, bro? Dude, out of the sewer, into the sky. Godly goes down one stock here early on. Let's see if Escrip can push this advantage. He had a fight for it last game, and this time he walks right into it in the first stock. You were bringing up uh, an important thing to know for oh, the yeah. viewers out there, that uh, the, the winners, there's a, there's still a winner's side and a lower side here. Look at this corner match, guard for though. Fine. We can't even talk about anything. s all I know, over I know, this I game. Know. Not you guys know what we're going to say. You yeah, gotta, whatever. You gotta, you, double yeah, elimination. Right. s has to win two sets. You know how it works. Whatever. Come on. Grand finals. Let's go. <laughs> I'm looking for him to win this first set here. He's, he's looked so good in this game. And it really is. You see the, the consistency from these old heads coming through in those last moments of the last game, but Escrape has something special going oh, on. Oh, punish dude. there. dude, Escrape was about to make the highlight of highlights. Oh, oh God, what? how did he get around that? That looked improbable. That was, yeah, that was like, that was like a task bot, dude. What the heck? That <laughs> yeah, was like, he, he perfectly spot dodged it and then canceled out of it, like what looked like as fast as could be, and okay. got the punish. It's beautiful. No, why would you? Uh, <laughs> okay, you know what did, I mean? Did, That's you know a young what? gun. This That's a young gun, man. Young pew, gun. pew, pew, pew. He just sometimes <laughs> shoots. He doesn't even look. He shoots. <laughs> And uh, that's what you got to love about him. That's sometimes he, he, sometimes dude, he still we've hits. seen where that comes, uh, you know, in that to be yeah. a very deadly option. And right nice. there, he believes in himself, that Look signature, his comfortability with the range. Stock ahead. But yeah. you just know, you just know Escrape's like, this is not enough. Like, he, and he should. I, I, yeah, that is yeah. the thing he should he have in his mind right now. He still has a reason to be worried here. He's got a double down light. Into, no. Okay, if he did Nair into recovery. Into okay, 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 Another one, right. please? Okay. Right. Somehow, somehow I'm still apprehensive. I'm like, you be careful right. now, Escrape. You be careful now. It's still, you know it's not over. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. No. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh, dude. He, dude. It that was, was a 50-50. It was a 50-50 at that point. Which direction he's going to go with that slide kick and and. S Grape is lucky. Yeah, S Grape needs to buy a lottery ticket because he, he came out big time on that 50 50. He flipped a coin and he somehow got the. Can he the make right it back? One. No, he knows it. All right. Ooh. Now, uh -oh. same exact situation That's we found right. ourselves That's last right. game, That's last right. stock. S Grape, huge lead, but Godly, always determined, never considers himself out of this. You he's going to fight you tooth just and never nail. Know. And off stage, that's where he's going to make things happen. So S Grape yeah, recovers like, high. You middle see that? Stage, middle of the stage for yeah. S Grape. Don't, Hold it down. Don't be caught on the side. You can get a KO with <laughs> either down stage at mid middle stage. That's your that's your bread and butter zone right now. Perfect Stay dodge right from there. Godly. He's got the opportunity. Again, it's not down enough. Sigs, oh, weapon throw. Man. Hot swap. Spear. We've seen huge plays come out from this spear. Anything could happen here. And the side oh! signature does it. 
He's done it! Esgrave has finally taken a game off of Godly. Yes, like, if you consider that's true. winner's final as well, it's still the first time he's beaten Godly this, in a bracket you're ever. You're so right. This was his, ever. Fifth, his fifth chance at it. He gets that's it, right. he gets he it done. It. But yeah, if it you, times if, the charm. That's what but if you say. look at the actual things that happened in the games, his fourth chance, you might that's like an asterisk, like he could have won. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was an insane play uh, from Godly to turn over game one. So now we're tied in the set, one and one. This is, again, the last set of the tournament. If Godly comes away with it, he will be the champion. But S Grape needs to win this set just to get another chance yeah. to take the title. Now, uh, unfortunately for S Grape, Asuri is just Godly's first phase. <laughs> that, you're so right. <laughs> like, so that, like a new health bar is, started filling up here. Exactly. And the music changed to like orchestral uh, Latin right. uh, choir. Latin? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Latin choir. Sure. You know how it goes. Um, I know how it goes. It's like, oh, be, hold on. No, like, like, <laughs> like Godly. Okay, in, yeah. <laughs> Wait, give us some trouble. more of that. <laughs> That's all. That's all I got. No, pipe in some more. Godly, <laughs> Godly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. And, yeah, and, and, and I mean, so you know, Godly. He's he, uh, Grave's still got a, a major challenge ahead of him, even this, though even though he managed to get a game in. This is a true test because Godly's orb has seemed nigh unstoppable in this region I so know, far today. I know. It's it's like. But S Grape has done incredible things against the best players in the whole region, even uh, helping eliminate. Oh, oh, oh off the what wall! What an option for Switch I'm actually surprised that didn't work. Oh, what a dodge from Godly around was, the ground. Yeah, that was like a oh, perfect dodge. Cider, oh, my goodness. These guys are so good at the game. What's, what, what is this? The what best two happening? players in Europe or something? Yeah, seriously. We somehow we get thousands of entrants. We whittle it down to the top two players, and uh, they're really good at the game. How does that yeah. make sense? It, yeah, it only costs us like seventy thousand dollars to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, to find out. <laughs> what, what kind of? We're such weirdos. <laughs> we're oh, like, godly! That was so sick. Okay, okay. Who pay all this money to see who's the best? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like it's, why? It's I don't know. It's something curiosity. To do. There's no other. <laughs> we like content too. Know. We get bored on the weekends and we need content. So yeah, this yeah. Is where we're at. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Right here. Oh, oh that was nice. Now, dude, you, you see how often that side signature gravity canceled is effective for Resgrave, so you know like, why he believes in it. Dude, I know, I know, it, for sure. But it's, it blows my mind how Godly is like, any one of these side lights, you'd think side air, right? It's true, it's easy, GG. Godly, oh, yeah. he never sees no! that. Oh, that was He saw that was the gravity so cancel. Perfect. He, he knew that that was free for him to pull off once he saw that gravity cancel pulled the, uh, the yeah. ice from the Bifrost go under S scrape and he was free to do whatever he wanted there and, and he pulls now the right option. Two, two stocks ahead. This and is it's, tough. And it's like, what what are you gonna do, S scrape? A couple more side sigs maybe? Boom! Okay. Side light, down light, side air. That's a good combo. That's that's the old school. That's old school. It only works if you know you got the dodge or you got the read and he pulls it off against the best player in the region. Yeah, and I, yeah, right. Getting catch, catching catching a dodge on Godly is like there's like 12 people in the world who could say right, right. Ever like he, Godly, you're going to catch Godly in a misplay. <laughs> Good luck if that's your plan. <laughs> Okay, Godly is uh, looking really good for closing out game three and getting a little bit or a lot of momentum in this set. He knows how close he is oh. to getting victory here in this championship and reclaiming his throne that he held so well last year. That's great putting up a good fight, but man, he's got a lot to go ahead of him. A mountain to climb. Ah, it's, it's oh, he's okay. The weapon throw. That oh, was a good weapon yeah, throw. Yeah, that was a that was like the ah, perfect oh. trajectory to cover his recovery, but it just doesn't matter. Godly had so much runway. He could have done. He he could have messed up twelve more times and still won that game, man. He was like, I think yeah. The win condition for S Grape is to get an early lead and just get that yeah. clean At air and his one exhaust. and a half stocks yeah. ahead, and then maybe <laughs> if you don't get good, <laughs> you can still get this dub. Because even with the lead, Godly won game one. Oh, that's beautiful. Can't forget that. GG. But yeah, perfect coverage there. Okay, he mean he did more than twice as much damage as his opponent did. It's just incredible. All right, so here we go. Potentially the last game of the tournament. If Godly wins this, he will be the European Spring Champion. Oh, but, with the, what oh, a dodge. That was nasty. The <laughs> timing what, what the a falling dive. there. That was insane. Dude, okay. How does he, he so consistently gets the reads off of downlight? Man. Okay, game four. s -Grape needs this to bring us to game five to even get a chance at the title, just to reset the bracket. And Godly needs one win to claim the crown. He's so close he can taste it. 
you know, there is a there is truly an art form to turning combos into strings in yeah. Brawlhalla. Yes. And Godly may be the best at it. It just blows my mind every time. Like, oh. like that. <laughs> like, that's not a combo. Yeah. That's not – you didn't – you have to, like – that was actually a, a one in eight option that he read perfectly. You know, like he knew. Yeah. It's not rock. It's not even rock paper scissors. It's not enough to explain what's yeah, happening. Yeah, it's rock it's paper scissors, scissors uh, grenade, handgun, <laughs> stick of dynamite, rubber band, slingshot. Yeah, that's the that's the official eight from what I know, and and he guessed right. He keeps getting it right every time. Okay, godly. Oh, no, another punish. Yeah, you see him punishing more and more of these signatures that come out from S Grape. And S Grape, you know, relying on those. And when they work, they're insane and we pop off. But when they don't, it's a big window for. Oh, oh my Godly. Godly's two stocks ahead. Oh, this is tough, yeah. Dude, he deserves this tournament. This is like S Grape. Oh, okay, knows. flexing on him. He's and just glad to be here. He's just. I mean, is it. Oh, the three stock. Wait a second. Okay, now Yeah, deny the three stock at least. We, we, want, we want the three stock. No. Three stock. S Grape. Three stock. You gotta at least get the stock away from him. You were oh, here, yes. Okay, all right, he all right, it. all right. That's great. And he's not out of it. Okay. A huge moral victory there. But look, he can still, yeah. Like look, he's he's still healthy on this stock. What if S Grape just turned it around? That'd be even cooler. Oh my god, that would be really cool. Godly has these insane reads. He's already got a bit red basically on his final stock. This is insane. God How could he even? Okay. He's, he's dancing around the second best player in his region. Dude, oh, that's probably it, too. This is it! it. Is. GG Godly! Oh, and he, dude, even, he even wins the RNG roll that's on that true. on that emote. What uh, in the world? Godly wins! Godly is the spring champion! That is insane, dude. He played so well. He didn't lose a single set in this entire tournament. He barely broke a sweat. No, you know what? He's, we he was, was trying. trying. Let's not sweating. act like he wasn't trying. He was trying. Boom, and he wins the roll. That now that's that's the real dub right there. <laughs> you know, no matter how good you are at the game, you could still lose that roll. That's true. And, and, he got and it'd be it. so embarrassing. GG, dude, godly. So impressive. So impressive. And you know what? Because he won that tournament, and the rest of the top three in that tournament. They're gonna be flying down to the Spring Royale. What? Right? They're invited. Another Royale? To a very another one. I know. We did one and we're already doing another one. It's crazy. Oh it's like gosh. the last one just ended, but these seasons just keep on rolling and time makes fools of us all. So here we are with the Spring Royale coming up next. And as a result of getting top three in this tournament, these three players are gonna be coming in. It was a, it was, it was, it was knees, yes. and godly, and S Grape are gonna be flying down to like here and they're going to be competing in person with the rest of the top players from the spring championship godly has played this tournament so well i mean it was just impressive the whole way through yeah and it's like it's funny how petra did seem like the final boss for him like uh it was hard enough to beat the asuri and when right. he did he was like fine here we go the Petra wasn't sweating, Petra. you're right. <laughs> the Asuri was maybe maxed out redlining on that Asuri <laughs> pick, but the Petra seemed to have like room to work he's with. Still, yeah, he still hasn't fully opened up on, yeah. on the Petra. That's insane. Maybe we'll see it in the Royale. But Godly, congratulations on such a monumental victory here in the Spring Championship. He is the European Spring Champion, and we'll be seeing more from Godly in the esports seasons, uh, in this esports seasons as as we continue. So there's still a lot more. Still a lot more 2023 to go. Yes. Here we go. We're going to take a break here because that's the end of the European Championship. And you may think, oh, man, all this Brawlhalla action that's, like, so awesome and I love watching. It's coming to an end now since this tournament's over. But you'd be surprised to find out, maybe. Well, maybe some of you are still surprised to find out that there's been another Spring Championship happening right underneath our noses during this european championship the south american championship has been going on which you know those of you who have been watching on twitch.tv slash bh they already know and if they speak portuguese they know even better what's <laughs> happening over there anyway we'll be right back because we are going to check out the highest level gameplay from the south american spring championship coming up right after this break don't go anywhere we'll see you soon I 
I'd like that read. What a no. combo knee! Not down the play. Up, but another recovery. As the unit war gets another touchdown. Head start opportunity. The ground pound. And that got him here. They're being back on scene where he dominated. All sorts of play for the game here. Pretty much. And he can't do it. That sick. All oh, that's sick. It's three feet now. Oh, These are yes. all. your head good. meta. Oh, 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 hey, that was sick that he even went for that. Everybody wanted that to land. That would have been no. so sick. Let's trade for the trade. Yes! One hit away. We got it! Probably it too. This it is it. GG Godly. Oh, and he dude even he even wins the RNG roll That's on that. True.
to Brawlhalla. That's right, welcome to Brawlhalla, and what's up, Brawlers? I'm Foda, and this is Steven, and we are about to begin with streaming our portion of the South American Spring Championship. <laughs> I forgot what season we were in for a second there. The South American Spring Championship has been underway as we have been recently covering the European Spring Championship. We are about to enter into top eight. And honestly, we don't even know the matches that are coming up because we, we were just casting the uh, the European Championship. Let's take a quick look at where we're at. <gasps> okay. Power. Power. Versus Wesley. Uh, Wesley, by the way, just in case you were wondering, Wesley has been dominating on the boots lately. And yes. that, that's exciting to me big time because uh, I want to see some boots. <laughs> I see some boots. <laughs> yeah, come I on, guys. I want to see some boots doing really well here. <clears throat> uh, I'm just excited about it. But uh, And then also, Lores still in this tour. Wait, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, here we go. This is, this is the real. What you saw before was a goof. We were just 
we were just joking with you guys. <laughs> what we got coming up here, this is the actual match queue. First up, we're going to have Kaina versus Fiend, which, yes. are you serious? Is this actually double Asuri? Are you guys playing with me? Okay. I'll, I'll, Look how much Asuri's on this screen with total. That still to be determined. We're going to find out later. Your cup runs over. And then we've over. got Yu's. Did our you did our you break? We we, we did <laughs> you, run out you of you's. Yeah, the you broke in our farm or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't like umlauts. <laughs> it broke. But that's you's right there. You's gonna be playing against Sack, and then we got Power versus Wesley coming up after. Those are the three matches coming up next. There's gonna be more matches after that. We are getting in to top eight of the South American Spring Championship. I'm super excited about this. There's yes. also a fun little just a fun fact for you guys, just to, so you know what's going what's on. What's a fun fact? But well, maybe it's well, not that me. fun. But uses uses internet died oh, at his house, yeah. right? And we just found out. We just got the down low. Okay, we got some secret tech for you guys <laughs> coming in, coming in hot here. And it is that use luckily lives like really close to Fiend and their homies IRL. Yeah. So use just went to Fiend's house when his internet died, and he's playing from Fiend's house. So they're like I love logging that. off and logging on. Yeah, that is totally how I would solve the problem if it happened to me. I'd they solve the problem I'd be friendship. calling up how my else friends could you like, do it? dude, can I use your computer? <laughs> like, <laughs> Bro, and that's no. literally what's happening I'm here. I'm trying to win this tournament. <laughs> it was what most people there would say. There is a world Fiend where is... we may have a local match for, for like grand finals. That would be insane. It could possibly happen. Yeah. But, but we're getting ahead of ourselves here. What we've True. got coming up now, and a real treat for you guys, but really it's a treat for me, is two of the greatest Asuri players in the game are about to fight each other in a row. And I know what you're thinking. What's up with all the Asuri? Did you rig this photo? And yes, the answer is yes. Yes, he did. Totally on purpose. I saw all this coming, and now I'm reaping the rewards. Kaina versus Fiend? This is such a dream. What's going to happen next? Let's find out. Right, At least who are you playing. thinking? If you had to just, you've seen oh, Kaina lately. You know, Kaina's, okay, so any day we'd say Fiend, right? Just because Fiend's, we got a lot of history with Fiend. He's a great, he's, he's awesome, he's super cool, and he's really good at the game. But Kaina has kind of been, like, super, super good lately. Yes. I, I mean, honestly, he's been looking like some of the, like, the best player in the game. And we've been seeing people talk about this. It's it's a sentiment within the competitive community. Yeah. Like, Kaina is just, oh, oh no, oh, Fiend oh, waved oh, Fiend made one enough? small no. mistake. Okay, okay. Fiend uh, kind of nearly made Fiend pay Kind of was, his reaction time on that was so insanely fast to yeah. pop off the ground pound into the weapon throw. It seemed like a checkmate, but somehow Fiend holds on to this stock. Luckily, is able to deal some damage back to Kaina's first stock. Who's going to come up with the first one here? Swap out the sword. The weapon throw comes through. Fiend coming in with this recovery is kind of going to be able to stop it. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? He's looking for a neutral stick. You just know it. Oh, <laughs> okay. He got the down light, but wasn't able to follow up there. Fiend holding on to the stock, but any large hit is going to knock Fiend out. Yeah. Oh, oh, that was it, what, too. Dude, what a feint. What a feint. Fiend coming in. That was nice. Okay, Fiend swapping off to the sword. We know he's got a lot of tried and true combos here. The downlight recovery. Not enough. Not yet. I can't believe it. I thought that was going to be the KO, but doesn't oh, find oh. it there. Double downlight oh. into recovery. Kind of comes away with it. But Fiend was able to fight his way back. He built up some good damage on a Kinda's first stock. He can equalize this quickly here. Okay, gets the stage control. What's he going to do off the side of the stage? Da neutral light into recovery. Perfect, yes. Perfect, perfect. Well, he caught his dodge, so it yes. was, was going to work no matter what. Yeah, exactly. There. That, that is not a true combo. Let it be known. Oh, I love that Fiend is like actually one of the best weapon throwers in the entire game, and he knew. Oh, dude, I can, I can, <coughs> I vouch for that oh. big time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> he is always just tripping people up with his setups with the weapon throws. So we'll have to look out for that as this match develops. But Kaina has back. Uh, into the driver's seat here. He is He's taking dominating control, the second dude. stock. He hasn't been hit a single time on this second stock of his, oh. and he's almost taken Fiend Ooh. out. All right, finally, Fiend de dealt some damage here, but kind of back in the driver's seat immediately. Looks like he's going to finish off Fiend any second now. Big side air. It's not going to take much. What's he going to do? Break dance on him? Wait, oh, that was his cute break dance. It didn't matter. He got it. <laughs> he got it, yeah. He swaps up the sword, gets that consistent downlight recovery. Uh, with the damage he built up on Fiend's second stock, that was enough to know that he oh. had it in the bag there. And he's already laying into the final stock of Fiend here in game one. I mean, you saw the chat. It was like 70 to 30, kind of, yeah. in favor. Yeah, and that is because Kaina has... Oh, the hot swap! Ooh. Okay, he almost went actually so frosty on that, but... Kaina's recent, recent performances has just shown to everybody yeah. what he's capable of. I think a lot of people are expecting him to win this tournament, even though he's not power ranked number one. I mean, Fiend is definitely the most classic champion we've ever seen in a oh, South American region. Oh, what a nasty, oh yeah, to 
jump over it, get the gravity and he cancel and down he leg. pivoted the gravity cancel because it wouldn't have worked otherwise. He knew Ooh, it was going to Oh, in the celebratory signature, he knew he had it on lock, <laughs> and there it was. Game that one. That is a good celebratory signature, too. Okay, kind of coming ahead there. This is, uh, we're in best of five sets, right? This is yeah. all yeah, best yeah, of five yeah, yeah. here, so yeah. we've got Kick a large back, set to relax. play through. You know, order another large popcorn at whatever movie theater you're watching this at. <laughs> oh, what? We yeah. are, yeah, aren't we? Um, I think. Are we? Isn't or I know, I don't know. Right sure. If you're watching this in a theater, we actually are owed some money that we did. What the heck? Yeah, yeah. Tell but us. It, Report but, that it, to but, us. It's, but it's cool, AMC. Yeah, that's it's, cool. It's cool, Regal Cinema. We'll be chill you about it. You can actually, this time. It's okay. You can stream our, you know, it's cool. Really? We're just going to say that? No. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, we don't have the we'll authority. We don't have the authority deals. to say that right now, but it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Okay. Right, kind of defeating Fiend is kind of messing with my worldview right now. Hopefully well, Fiend switches it up to another legend that I love a lot because that would really help my mental. you already saw the screen. They can see the screen. Yeah, they can I, see the. They everybody know. For those okay, of, Fiend locked in with yeah. Queen Nine. It's about to get crazy here. This is Whoa. like. This is a fever dream for me. This is like, this is a meme. Yeah. This is a meme. A fever meme, yeah. <laughs> Kaina versus Fiend on a Surrey versus uh, Queen Nine. Versus Queen Nine. This is, this is as good as it gets. Okay. Here okay. we go. Game and now two. Now that we're on Western Temple and they're both in the black color swaps, like the contrast is so perfect. This is great. This is a great match. This is a great match. Even though nothing has happened yet, this is a great match. <laughs> All right. This is okay. So they're both feeling each other out <laughs> early on in this game. I, I, you know, as you should. I mean, Fiend, Fiend really, uh, when you're playing the slowest character in the game, you don't get a lot of like surprise. Surprise, I'm coming in. I'm That's coming true. in right now. When you got three speed, they already know you're coming in. <laughs> so Fiend's, Fiend's looking for a little bit of counterplay here and kind of not willing to give it to him because oh. he, he's oh. seen what happens when Fiend plays the counter game. Fiend was so close to extending that string even one hit longer, but we'll see who can actually get inside their opponent's head. Because we've got a, a Qatar versus Qatar mirror match here. Yeah. But we've got different signatures to play around, so that's going to change up how they approach situations, what options they have uh, for knockouts. Yeah. It you should know, be interesting. And even though Kaina playing the Asuri has this huge like potential gimp here with the neutral signature, you can get a really early stock on it nope. if you land it in just the right place. Fiend with Queen Nine, despite her being slow, has that same I can knock you out really early option, especially yeah. on this extremely short ceiling map That's true. as Queen Nine, where you can land that neutral <gasps> signature anywhere on the stage and still get the knockout. Well, I don't know how Fiend's gonna survive this one. Oh, oh my gosh, he used every pixel he probably he possibly could have had. Yeah, he pumped fake Kaina, Kaina put himself below, I and mean, now Fiend able to do that as Queen Nine takes yeah. a special kind of ability, dude. That is so true. He's got the lowest airspeed in the game. I mean, that was impressive. Okay, but then kind of, he's like, all right, well. Yeah, one punish is, away enough there. Enough. You, you got to go down. Um, but yeah, consider that this is the lowest map ceiling. You know, when we're talking about, like, the KO lines in the game, this map has the lowest ceiling in all of the competitive maps here. And that is true. for Queen Nai, that's huge because that, uh, that Qatar neutral sig just hits straight up with an incredible amount of force. So if Fiend, if Fiend can get kind of even into orange and land oh, that, he'll double probably down like get the knockout. Has Fiend in a bad position. Oh, what? He just barely got his dodge back in time. Gets up over top of Kaina's side air yet again. But Kaina's done an amazing Dude, job keeping the damage coming on uh, uh, Fiend's second stock. And there's yeah. no stopping him now. Fiend's having a lot of trouble just landing a hit onto Kaina. Kaina is like dancing around him. And it doesn't matter how much of a fortress Queen Nye can be. He just keeps oh. hitting the fortress. Yeah, with a perfect you, you, read there, gets the recovery, claims another stock. Now he's two stocks up on the Fiend. That's too many. That's, and too, that's too, too many. In game two, it's looking good for, oh, no, okay. And now, were you, what you were talking about earlier with that low ceiling on this map, any type of uh, uh, combo that starts Ooh. high up on the map is going to be Gimp potential. Huge. Oh, okay? yeah, for sure. Yeah. If you've, if been, if you've been sweating it out up, ranked, dude, oh, I've yeah. been Gimped off the top of this map. Some, I have this map fan, okay? Yeah, I know. I've honestly seen this complaint map. about it before. And I, I, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been, dude, I'm Brent hit me with a downlight into Gravity Cancel, Neutral <laughs> Signature, I banned it right away. Banned it. But we'll see. Oh, okay, feed. huge. Oh, he's making oh. it look so good, dude. 
That's the thing. Big KO potential from these signatures from uh, Queen Nye. Fiend, if he can land one of them Dude, here in a spicy he's situation. Done so much in the last 20 seconds. It's insane. I mean, that was. He did a minute's worth of damage in 20 seconds. Let's Oh, oh, okay. That, that was, was a bit a of a prayer. It was that was a bit of hope and a prayer. He <laughs> I mean, sealed I that one that. in an envelope and hoped that it got to the sender. Uh, I don't know if Fiend's even if he gets the stock, he's still got a, a mountain to climb. Oh, that, oh, man! I thought I saw the neutral stick coming right there. He's looking for it. Catches him with the even though he spot dodged, Fiend was able to land that recovery. Oh. He tries again. Just a big guess on where kind of was going to be at the end of that one. He has no true combo follow up out of the Qatar neutral light. Ooh, oh, grounded lands that that's recovery. So smart. Yeah, the, that was spicy. The Falls right into the frames positioning of startup that that Qatar recovery has. You are actually falling during that, and Fiend used that perfectly. <gasps> Fiend is actually going crazy dude, on this last stock. He, he could do it, maybe. Dude, it'd be so crazy. Kinda this game two turnaround. Can Fiend pull this off? In a in a in a weapon ditto as well. Yeah, that's really getting uh, uh -oh. one over on your opponent. Right. Okay, swapping out for the sword. Yeah, kind of knows he's a downlight recovery potentially on That's this map, true. especially so potent. I think so he potent. can just get and a downlight recovery no? and win it. No, we were we were wrong. Well, Queen, Queen Nye never, never die. die. That's the old. That's, That's oh, the okay. That but now be Queen Nye died. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, we, it's, it's only so much. He only had it's one only left so. in him there. <laughs> GG. Kind of now up 2-0 in the set. Now that second set with the swap onto Queen Nye, it did look better for Fiend. He he pulled off some crazy combos with the guitars, but he didn't find any of the guitar. He actually didn't land any signatures whatsoever on You're this character. You're right. He didn't land any signatures, which is like a prerequisite to win any game on Queen Nye. That's true. Who do you think Fiend's gonna swap to now? Because I don't think he's Hattori? gonna go Queen Nye again. No. Well, you'd be wrong. I'm, I can already see it. Okay. I don't have my glasses on, which I should start wearing them, but I can see the <laughs> Queen Nye. Queen Nye has such a big head okay oh, for all he fans just, know. okay wait oh. oh he really did go with the queen eye again okay. yeah all right i i apologize even if you don't have 2020 20 vision you can that. see that queen eye big head from a mile away <laughs> i got it on lock fiend still locking in um yet to see whether or not kind of swapped off but i would be surprised after the dominant uh first two games yeah we're okay. of all the maps that feed left open and striking kind of chose small enigma to be going to which is an interesting option yeah i don't I can't make heads or tails of that. Well, he just likes that map. Sometimes you just like a map, dude. Maybe if there's a, maybe there's some technical three, reason behind two, it. Maybe he's thinking one. he's gonna get a downlight recovery off the top platform. That's what I'm with thinking. Sword. Yeah, oh, with yeah, the yeah. Sword, I mean that makes sense. It's a consistent KO option. He's very good at it. He, he's landed a few times in this matchup. It got him the win in the last match. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's just gonna make that all the stronger for him. Uh, but yeah, you know, Fiend has never been one to shy away from these uh, soft platform matches. I, I see him play him on him often. So. We'll see who it favors. Dude, look as at this. They're really are inside each other's heads to the max here. I mean, you have to be. At this level, with all this on the line, it's whoever has the best movement really is the one who comes away landing those hits. Man, well, if that's true, Queen and I is not the pick. That's the, well, slow, you that's can the slowest be... character in the game. But yeah, then but again, okay, wait a second. You can second. be swifty on a slow character. Well, that's exactly it. If you can go fast enough, you only need to go fast enough. If you can go fast enough with the slowest legend, then that gives you a lot of advantages in other areas. But you're right. If kind of wins this game oh, three. Oh, and I never die? Wait throw? a second. Nobody, no other legend in the game would have survived that, except Magyar. But, okay. Uh, yeah, except Magyar. And? No, nah, that's it. Roland? Yeah, all right, fine. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> well, it only lasts so long. We, we won't test your game knowledge too much there, but Kaina <laughs> comes away with a first stock yet again, and it is a huge lead over Fiend here in game three, and this could be it for the set if Kaina comes away with it. He just needs to close out two oh, more stocks. Big Fiend? combo, Dude. big combo. Oh, oh that was, he, that's, man. Fiend he's been looking for that neutral signature closer on the end of these strings. And yeah. He hasn't landed. Oh, and even no. at the beginning of a string, he'll try to pop one off and well, get one over. I think that's where the combo is the most potent. That's just, probably it's, true. It's a great raw option. If you can just, if you know where they're going to land for like the next 10 frames, you, that's a signature you can just land. Okay, and with the defense buff like we've talked about with Queen Nye, this is basically a tied second stock. Oh, you're good really, point. Yeah, good point. You're really doing he's the math out. got that extra bit of leeway here okay. playing such a high defense legend. All right. Trying to find his approach. Oh, I can't believe he pops to the ground, gets that down light, isn't there, able to find a follow up, yeah, but he's there's even no up the damage. true combo follow up off that down light. You just gotta be swifty. I mean, the down light 
is so good, but you're right. You yeah, do yeah, have yeah, to, yeah, 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 yeah. It definitely for landing. It, it can it can really open up a combo, but or a, a string. And we've seen we've been seeing players so good at following up with it, but it really just comes down to how you read your opponent. You know, every interaction like that is extremely unique, and every player oh. is different about how they no. react out of hit stun from any move. So here we go, both players with two stocks remaining. Uh-oh, kind of just got rid of his weapon. Fiend using that weapon oh, as yes. bait, gets the follow-up, steals the weapon away, kind of without a weapon. Fiend has the advantage here. He's Huge. looking for a signature to pop. Where's oh, it gonna be? No. Oh, what a great punish from Kaina. Oh, and he's gonna finish no. Fiend off. Wait, no, Fiend still manages to survive. Run, Fiend, grab a weapon. Can't kill okay, him with a signature. Clears the board. Oh, that's Only smart. Only one armed that's on smart. the field. Yeah, Kaina doesn't have a weapon once again. Oh, that was the weapon up there. Oh. Kaina knocks him away so he can grab the weapon. Fiend is definitely looking for the finishing move. He finally got it with that kill and blow. Feed up a stock, but he is so damaged on this stock. Even as Queen Nine with all that defense, he could easily be knocked out here. So we're seeing if he can build up any kind of damage lead. Yeah, this map can be kind of polarizing for weapon matchups. And I think, I don't know, I almost want to say Fiend should be favoring the spear in this matchup because he control the air with the downlight. Ooh. Downlight and recovery is such a good KO option here. Okay, kind of cleans up that stock. Now it's all tied up. Who's gonna come away with it here? Fiend's gonna grab the spear now. Okay. Who's gonna come away with it here? Well, hopefully it's Fiend because if Kaina wins, <laughs> oh, that's it's true. It's you're over. right. Yeah. We need more content. If Fiend, you're cheering please. for the best of five, you're cheering for Fiend right now because if if Kaina wins, this this whole set is over. If Kaina wins. Oh, let's go, Fiend. We 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 more content. We need more. A double recovery, Ooh, greedy. I love totally the greed though. Would have gotten the knockout. When you have this type of lead, it pays to be greedy sometimes. Oh, with totally, these moves, totally, so. totally. That that was that was the exact kind of risk that, yeah. that you should take. You but if took kinda? a little bit of damage for it, it was totally worth it. Oh, he wanted the reset. You just know Fiend light. is looking for a neutral signature finish. This is like it's so quick. It hits grounded. This is how he gets it. I mean, again, we've seen no signatures from his Queen Nine land. This is he's playing just basically raw spear and Katars. Which seems just harder to do. On Especially slowly. if if you're not abusing Queen Knight signatures, that th uh, <laughs> three speed is just like a lead weight around your neck. He throws one out there, yeah. doesn't land. Okay, but doesn't get punished either. That's good. But kind of I mean, has he, done at a great this job. point, if he misses a signature, he gets knocked out for it. At, yeah, at this amount of health. So, so true. It's it's really risky. And he lost his weapon. Kind of with weapon control. There's a weapon on the field, but you just know kind of using it. To predict where Fiend's punch. Uh -oh. How is Fiend gonna get away from this oh, recovery? Boy. He uses everything what? he's got no, he once again! Wait. No way! No way! Okay. Fiend somehow gets oh. through it, but he gets knocked away. He has to deal with the same situation again now on the right side of the wall. Two he's weapons to grab? He just can't. There's no safe way to he's grab this. Fight he's so slow. To get to one of them. How is he gonna grab a weapon? Far dude, one? look at no. kind of covering oh, it. He didn't, oh, even need it. No. he didn't even need it! He didn't need a weapon! Oh my gosh, Fiend, what a play! Ooh. What a play! Man. Dude, kind of did so good at guarding those yeah. weapons. I was seeing well, the mental game happen. Well, so kind of was doing an amazing job of locking down that one weapon, but when the second one popped up, it gave Fiend enough of an option. Yeah to bait him into this situation we see right here. He's like, okay, oh no, I can't let him go high and get that other weapon. I gotta try Dude, to close off his exit. Attack. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yes. Look how Fiend has less damage dealt than he has damage taken. He, That's he dealt less efficiency. damage than he took and he won. That's, that what is can efficiency. we say? That is efficiency. You know? Wow, what a game by Feed. That was that was so funny at the end. Like, that was close. Weapon control was huge there. Yeah. There were two weapons on the ground, and Kaina was being absolutely perfect about guarding both of those weapons. He's like, I know you're going to be at one of these places, and all I need to do is downlight you once, and it's over. If, if, if you come for one of these weapons, it's over. But Fiend caught him jumping using the soft platform. You were talking about how Fiend, like, He's always ready to fight you on some soft platforms. Fiend does not mind soft platforms. Yeah. He makes plays out of those all the time. And that play he made right there was the difference in winning that match. Man, and he, and you, you can't ask for a better time because he was down 0-2. He had to win that match to, to stay in this tournament. And he is still in the tournament right now. Next match coming up, we're waiting on Fiend to lock in a new legend. Nope. I, he, he, no, he's he locks right, in the same going. one. He's oh, go <laughs> yeah, nice dodge there. Psh, you'll never you see. You, no, you, I don't want you to see. <laughs> if you didn't see before, spot, you spot missed dodge, out. Spot dodge that queen knight, though. No. <laughs> You're not going to see till the game happens. You, it's be you, so excited you guys for you. just saw Steven's spot dodge animation. That's, that, if, yeah. If you had you know a spot dodge tell. animation, it's something like this. If you see, yeah, it's <laughs> kind of lame, honestly. <laughs> Pretty lame.
All right, same matchup here. We got Kaina still sticking with the Asuri pick. Love believes it. Believes in this love pick. Love it, love it. We, this, now, is, this is a meta we know. What I was going to say uh, there was that Fiend, he is the most innovative with the weapon throws, and he is a guy who knows how to, like, if you throw random spice into the game, he's going to utilize it. So random spice can True. be the weapon throws. You know, he puts you in a weird Whoa. situation you've never seen before. Or soft platforms. You're in a situation where, you know, being able to ledge cancel this exact move or anything like that is going to yeah. maybe introduce a little bit of variety to it. But he's the best at capitalizing on the variety of these matches. You're so, so, you're so right. What Ever, like, needs, since 2017, he's always on yeah. the cusp of, like, whatever little thing is in the game, he makes use of it in the coolest way. So what I was going to say was kind of needs a kind of neutral map to mitigate some of that X factor that Fiend has. Yeah. And this map is kind of neutral, but also has a spicy little There's moving soft little platform. Spice. There's a little the bit tiny spit of spice. spice. But you know? Kaina has been doing a great job dealing up damage onto Fiend's first stock. He's one hard hit away from taking the stock off of Fiend, but Fiend Queen still never holding die. on. That's the rule. It's uh, an advantage of having that, uh, that high defense, that high weight. You're not going to get knocked as far per hit, and you get a couple more chances to make something happen. But he doesn't have very many left on this first stock, oh, and that's that probably enough? it there. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was more than enough, actually. Okay. Well, this is a rough huge spot lead. for Fiend in. Yeah, for Fiend to be in. This is a huge lead, like you said. And Kaina is ahead in the set as well. Remember, a best of five basically means first to three. And since Kaina's at two right now, he just needs one more game to win this. That's and true. now he's a full stock ahead here Ooh. in the one game that he needs to win to move on to the next round of this tournament. Kinda sword is popping off right now. He's over. Uh, he's lapped Fiend basically in damage. He's oh, a stock that's, ahead. He that's has terrible. more damage on Fiend's second stock than Fiend has on his first stock. This is looking pretty dire here. But Fiend, these spear reads are coming through. Kinda. One thing for needs. sure about Fiend is that yeah. he will never give up. He wow. plays. Yeah. He. Oh my. Yeah. I that mean, is true. It, there's no one with more determination than Fiend. Okay. Looking for an edge guard. Oh, the clash! Oh, is if that didn't enough. clash, that would have been the knockout. Yeah, maybe. The clash does reduce the force. Dude, kind of not falling for these raw down. Oh, Ooh. but a neutral signature though. Neutral sig though. Nobody yeah. saw that coming. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Fiend disarmed off on the side of the stage. Can he make it back oh, that down was, here? Oh, oh no, dude, disgusting. That was so good. Bro, the presence don't of mind to go for the side air after the gravity yeah. cancel down light instead of a ground pound. That it, works so perfectly. That's the thing. Man, that, that's the thing that makes a player from like a top player to like the actual upper echelon is that yeah. you don't just go for the automatic down light ground pound yeah, that you've it seen a million worked. times. It would not have worked in that yeah. situation. And plus the, the where he was, it was better to side air. But but who ciders out of gra the gravity just, cancel slide? Uh, you gotta like, be afraid. Freak, and you've got to have a million hours in the game. And you've got <laughs> yeah, to be kind of maybe. That's, and that's kind of. Yeah. And that's kind of. And so now here we are with Fiend, uh, with one stock remaining, potentially in this entire tournament. Kinda has got. No, we're in the winners got a bracket. Whole extra stock to Wait, defeat Fiend here. <laughs> that's true, but we're in the winners bracket. So Fiend would. If oh, he, good point. Good if point. If he loses this, he's only knocked down to the lower bracket. He has yes. one more life uh, left on his health bar. I'm but gl I'm glad you brought that. You up. You want to yeah. be precious though, because this is a tough tournament, and you need yeah, every bit of. Yeah, you can't just of, like uh, give up. Like, oh well, it's okay. Like, I'll be fine. Uh oh, kind of with a corner guard here. How does he hold it down? He swaps off with the Katars. Kind of Ooh, the neutral position. signature. You can see him licking his lips for that neutral signature <laughs> on the corner. <laughs> yeah, dude, a Surrey I saw player. My face went. I'm in a Surrey player, my, my opponent's on the, so on the edge. <laughs> You're Just. so right. You're so right, dude. You know they're going Stop. for it. But. Yeah, get out of my head, dude. Get out of my head. <laughs> oh, okay. I swear he was about to pop it right there. Yes, Maybe in another so chance. Right, dude. Okay. Okay, right. now he's just. We've fought each other enough for yeah, you yeah. to know exactly. Well, he's what. looking for. I mean, oh, that was beautiful. Oh, what? what a read from Fiend, dude. He reacted to that so perfectly. And now he's got one more He can't get hit by anything. He, right. He has to play a perfect stock to win this. And you know what? It's not impossible oh, for gets the reset? A beautiful read. He got the reset on that neutral light. Extra recovery. Big damage. Kind of without a weapon. Rearms himself with a sword. Real quick. Fiend's in trouble. Uh oh. How's oh he going to get through this? Nah, I don't know. This could be okay. the way for Kind of. But Flow instead. He makes it back. Through. Nair punches his way through. He's dealing some damage. He can't. How does he oh. do this? How does he do this? I don't know. Dodging that cider is a good start. That's a good start. That would have been Dude, that I, deadly. He's, he's got kind of an orange. Is this has. real? Is he really going to do this? Oh, no. no. That's, oh. He whipped it. That would have been the one. That. But all it takes is one mistake yeah. and kind of makes it through. Man. That was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking. You, you saw it happen. Like, the moment it happened. The, the light at the end of the tunnel was, like, really starting to open up a little bit for Fiend. Just he was landing barely. a lot of unanswered damage. But you knew Kaina was one engagement away from taking that whole yeah. game and the set. 
And he did but, oh, so but bro, oh, right I there. Kinda, like, there's, That's sick. There's, no matter how much of a Fiend fan you are, you cannot deny that Kaina absolutely deserved that victory. Yes, for Not sure. Not only was it extremely impressive throughout, but like... He just played better. There's no way to say it. There's no other way to say it, man. He won the mirror match. He forced Fiend off of the Asuri, it's which true. is already a feat unto itself. I yeah. thought that the game automatically gave you an achievement when you did that, <laughs> but I guess it didn't. We should uh, make that an achievement. Yeah, I beat Fiend. <laughs> oh, oh, I just mean like forcing somebody in a rematch off of a mirror match. Oh, that's fun. We can detect that. It? Salt, I don't know. Salt, something salty, salty comeback? Yeah, I don't salt, know. Salt, salty, salty. Whatever. Yeah, we'll yeah, figure yeah, it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. That's a good one though. Great idea. Yeah. This is how this, this is how game this design is how game works, dev guys. happens. We're just live we're just on live right on here. stream. We're probably never gonna do that. Yeah, never. <laughs> Literally, do not hold your breath. Okay, let's check out the match schedule. Cause now that that match is over, we gotta figure out what's coming up next. Kinda. We Fiend, fixed the use. Fiend is going down to the lower bracket. Use is coming up next, and he's got to fight against Sack, who has been absolutely dominant on the Asuri. But this is Yuz we're talking about. He's power rank number two. That's true. Okay, after that match, Power versus Wesley. I'm really excited for that one. Will Wesley and play Boots? Am I wrong? It was Yuz was Yuz made it the furthest of all the South Americans at BCX, right? He was like fourth. He was like he yes. made it very far into the bracket. I think you're right. I, we're gonna say you're right. I'm he almost was honestly positive you're right. People's champion. He okay, the off. viewer vote. You decide who's gonna win this. Yuz and Sack, and you know what? They're just looking at power rank, Steven, okay? These guys, you guys they don't need know to what they're talking about, mind, bro. They don't okay? know what Sack has a great chance of winning this. Actually, you know what? Maybe about a 32% chance. I yeah, have right, to say, you know, if we were to like, calculate it it's, with it's, math. It's fun to try and like mess with the numbers. Yeah. But the numbers are usually right. There's, there's just been We've seen upsets. a lot of data. We've seen upsets today, and I'm not I'm not done with that yet. Yeah. Okay? And yeah. have we seen these guys yeah. face, face off today in this bracket? Because all, all these regions have become so competitive that it, it just depends on the day. It really does. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. some days you're feeling it. And it could be Sack's day. He could be feeling it. But Yuz has, I mean, he's the he's know, ranked two he's, for a reason. Yuz has been just so solid in the past year and a half. We had to nerf one I of the letters in his name. I'm fully expecting him to win uh, this one. But Sack could possibly do it. We are currently waiting right now for Sack to connect. I think he might be waiting for loading. Yuz to connect. <laughs> he's, he's, Maybe he's restarting his router, just trying to get the best connection you can get. <laughs> okay, you know how yeah. online can be. Sure. It's a miracle that the internet works at all. So we're trying to play a fighting game over the internet. Yeah. We're getting it done. We're getting it done literally as good as technology could possibly allow for it. That's true. Um, especially when you consider the, in the infrastructure for an internet in the world. Uh, it's not fiber all over the place. You know, it's right. just not. Sometimes it's just it's just like we just hope. It's literally just copper We're just wire shooting light beams across the planet and like That's hoping. literally what's happening. It's a <laughs> so, you know? so anyway, we're waiting for Sack to join the lobby here. Um, but use versus Sack. Man, I gotta say it would be very exciting if we saw Fiend versus Use. However, that needs to happen right now. <laughs> okay. I think that means Yuz needs to lose this one for that to happen, and I'm not like hoping for that or anything, but uh, that would be exciting. Uh, yeah, Yuz does, you just want to see that like local grand finals happen the on local like a local grand machine, finals, dude. That's Zero exciting. ping grand finals. You would have yeah, you would have Fiend versus Fiend too, and we would just have to know one of them is Yuz if that's what happens. That's true. Um, anyway, I think we're gonna be good here. We're waiting. Yuz. Versus Zach, the match coming up. I mean, up. Yuz has the numbers, but only slightly, really. I know. I, I mean, know, it's I two. Know. It's Let's over two x the the winnings, but yeah, like you'd like cares. you'd you'd like twenty four thousand dollars. Yeah, but, but you'd you wouldn't settle for mind 10 grand. ten grand. Yeah, for playing Brahala, like, no well, problem. All I can give you is ten grand. You'd be like, yeah, yeah. That's I don't nice. even know if I'd be that much playing Brahala. To be honest, that's cool. That's cool. All right, looks like we're good. Uh, Yuz Yuz has joined the lobby. Sack's in the lobby. We're good. We're good to go here. It's now Sack. He's playing the coolest skin in the game. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah well, factual. Actually, we've factually, only made like 300 skins since that one came out. But yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. No. Links the to artists, the, best. the artists have been doing a pretty good job. I'll give you that. You've been doing. You've been doing well. But you. you once you've done it, you've done it. Okay. Oh, don't don't get... zoom in on Steven's disapproving face, please. Okay. All right. Give me... <laughs> I'm sorry, Steven. I'm sorry. All right. Here we go. <laughs> on to the next match. Two. Use versus Sack. And use, dude, use lock it in with Jayun. Wait yeah, a second. What? Wait a second. What? Okay. 
I love right. that. You know, we're, we're in the era where you can respect great sword. There I said it. I don't care what anyone says. Dude, yeah, okay, look. Every let's, weapon's let's be respectable. Real. There I said right. it. I yeah. don't care. No, you're <laughs> Tweet at no one because I don't have a Twitter. Get wrecked. <laughs> you're invincible. You're invincible to these comments. <laughs> the game is balanced. So what? <laughs> yeah, I we said did it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Tweeted someone else. I can't <laughs> take this. But, you know, we don't see that much great sword anymore. Yeah, and no, so when I see it, got I'm excited. I think we can all agree great sword got nerfed hard enough to yeah. be respectful now. It's all res it's respected now. And right? as Foda mentioned earlier in the day, uh, Asuri is the most uh, honest character in the game. It's so. true. It's true. I, I'll, yeah, I this is coming it. down to all I skill here. It. We're being so controversial, Stephen. We're, ah, we're just, whatever. But you know what? We're telling it like it is. We couldn't be. We, there's no other way to be. Oh, that's a punish right there. Yeah. The use has to recover from this. Sack guarding the edge. And use, you know what? Use just sneaks his way on. Sack, Sack let that corner go. And how you? What? What else are you gonna do? Someone like you, so quick, he makes his way over the corner. Bust his gravity cancel though, and now Sack has an opportunity oh. to punish him while his gravity cancels down. That's oh it. no! Yuz wow. punishes. Okay, Yuz kind of feeling himself. Yeah, but you know how? what? He's got fiend over his shoulder right now, right? Oh, uh, that's true. That's Just the you power gotta of be fiend. playing better when you got fiend over your shoulder. Oh, okay. Oh, no though. stock extension now, there. Now fiend, a look of disapproval <laughs> as, as Yuz turns to fiend to see his face. <laughs> no, fiend's probably being really encouraging. All right, here we go. Okay, I like that run there. And catches the neutral light, another one. Stacking oh. on the damage on uses a second stock. Free arms with the sword. We got a ditto here. But I think Sack might be, I don't know if Yuse is uh, mostly relying on this great sword on this legend pick, but. I, l I love the weapon, the, the signature kit um, for Jayun's sword. I think it's I think it's such an awesome kit. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, you know, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, Ooh. was it awesome? You, you could try to ride okay, a tornado back to stage, but... You don't use signature first, dude. You use that last. Well, don't tell Yuz what to do, okay? Okay, you're right, you're right. He's I don't in know the what top eight He's like of the South best. America. You're right, you're which right. Which is one of the feistiest regions <laughs> we've ever developed. Now, that's a fact. That's a fact. That's this a is a fact. region that yeah, everybody is, watches. That's in the oh, okay, Yuz wiki. popping you off with a great sword. We knew he was just one great sword pickup away from taking the stock, potentially looks for the finisher there. All right, that's it. No. Not enough. Wait, get that great sword back. Ah, oh, he's like with a <laughs> tiny sword. You, what are you gonna do with this tiny back. little sword? He throws it away. He knows what's up. Little baby sword. Corner guard. All right, oh, off to go, go into the go. weapon oh, spawn. Waiting. Oh, bait him in. Surprise! Oh, I like the bait attempt. Yeah, he almost caught him with a surprise. As if Sack didn't know that great sword was the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> oh, that's oh, an boy. awesome punish from Sack. He can finish it right here over the corner. He catches it. Oh, what a great dodge from Yuz, though. Okay, it kind of doesn't matter because Sack is a full stock ahead. I don't know if you've looked. Over I literally at the, have not. At the Thank HUD. you for pointing yeah, that out. From the top right. Hughes is really on his back foot. This is game <laughs> one here. We're deciding who sets the momentum for this set, and uh, it's looking like Sack. It's unless like Hughes Sack, can have. Dude, he can, if he can do, gets a watch comeback. This. Oh, okay, I was. I said watch this, and then nothing happened. But watch this. Wait, watch this. Yeah, hold on. Wait, check hold this on. out. Check watch this. Out. this. Here it comes. Wait. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Watch this. <laughs> You, one good use, opening use from Yuz. Yuz is one hit away from damage, so he's got to play this oh, carefully. Man, he really needs one of these zero to death uh, great sword combos yeah, that you dream just about. Yeah, zero to That you death. tweet about. Okay. Oh. Yeah, show us one of those Twitter combos. But now unarmed, uh -oh. disarmed. Oh, wait a dude. Oh, Drops no. If Sack goes combo. down now, he is going to regret missing that side air. There's that no was way. a true combo option he had. Now Yuz is powered up by this extra chance at life he's been given. Sack has so many options to KO Yuz right now, and oh, Yuz okay. needs to do so much more work before he even has an option to claim this stock off of Sack. Oh, oh wait no. a second. Dude, off Yuz stage, needs that to swap his weapon oh. out. He's about to lose this great sword. One I more thought. hit, he's about to lose this great sword. Oh, I mean, it doesn't matter. One more hit, he's about to lose his stock. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, I guess hold on to the weapon because you're going to die anyway. Game oh, one man. goes to Sack. Wait, who did game one go to? Sack. Okay. You, what, you forget already? Well, I just, we <laughs> just watched it. I just wanted to hear you say it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you did forget. Of course. We're good at this. <laughs> We're really good at this, man. Okay, Sack um, came away with it. Oh, now look, you at us, look at us with the strength stance in the overlay, in case you were wondering what stance Sack was oh. using. Oh, look it's at that, that there? right up there. Yeah, that's awesome. Holy information, man, Batman. Job, look at that. Holy good information. <laughs> okay, I here we so are. I feel so knowledgeable. We're on to, uh, what's this map called? Lions? Den of Lions? Lion Den? <laughs> Fortress of Lions. That was, ah, that was, ah, 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 those are good names. Kind of you can't of lie. Those were good name options. <laughs> it could, might yeah, as well be called that. they all got the idea across. All right. Zach is one ahead in the set. On the winner's side, though. So this is still, you know what I mean? Okay, Dude, spicy great, great sword start play. from Yuz. Yeah, spicy to say the least. What a 
gravity cancel. <laughs> and then the signature to cop. Oh, and then the recovery. Let's Woo! go. 35 Use. second. A Popping huge off. knockout. Dude, that, that, that KO entailed using so much different stuff. He had to use the little sword. He had to use the big sword. He had to use his feet. He yeah. had to use he his to hat. Use, he, he had, had to, to use, use like anything. two of the three signatures on that weapon's kit. Yeah, he threw everything at him, and it was just enough. I mean, yeah, that was like that was like taking the SAT. You know, he had to he had to really right. He had to like, you mean I got to know language and math? <laughs> what kind of baloney is this? <laughs> I can do one or the other. But he did. Okay, holding on yeah. to his first stock somehow, trying to find his way to another weapon spawn. Sack's, Picks a great sword. Sack is doing a great job of like not getting overwhelmed on this stock, but it's getting wow, close wow. now. Any more damage, and it's going to be a problem. He's got to get the knockout. He's looking for it. Use. Use is extremely aware that he's one hit away from being oh, knocked down. And wait that. a second. Dude, he burned his hop. dodge. He's got nothing left. GG. Dude, that was beautiful. It was like a short hop, fast fall, neutral air yeah. on the guitars. And then he didn't chase the dead right. person. Yeah. He knew he was, it was over. If I go there, I might give him a chase dodge. He's just going to wait it and out. And he, he, in that position, he can corner guard with that nasty neutral sig on nasty. Asuri's guitars. Yeah, nasty. But honest. <laughs> so honest. So oh my gosh. Honest. When I get hit by that, when somebody gravity cancels that off stage against me in ranked, I'm, I'm like, that like, was so that honest was of them so to do honest. that to me. Yeah, I know. What whenever, a what a nice I honest land at, 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 at red and I knock somebody out. When you out landed at, white, at yellow when I, <laughs> I think, man, uh, that was so on I'm like so good at this game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well and Zach then, needs to take advantage of that nastiness if he can right here. He needs to steal a stock because Hughes is in the driver's seat. He's got the damage lead. He doesn't have the big sword, which we've Dude, been seeing him dominate with in this uh, matchup so Zach's far. Zach's doing so good. Zach's doing so good. He 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 knew. He's like, you know what? I'm I'm play I'm behind and I need to play perfectly for and a he while is? to get back up. And now he's done it. He's like he's caught up. <gasps> oh man, I was Oh no, man, that should have been a side air coming from Hughes, but the hindsight's 2020. Zach was still alive. He's able to grab a weapon now. It's a sword ditto. <laughs> okay, dance, dance. dance Quick, dance, 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 dance. dance keep dancing. They, they, they look good. They look good. Dance until your opponent breaks frame. <laughs> you have to yeah. blow their mental out. Take advantage out. of it in one oh. frame. Well, I'm surprised that recovery knocked out there. That was, that I'm was not, pretty early. But I'm pretty well versed in the damage. Yeah, maybe you're angle. just very perfect yeah, about yeah. it because I think most people were surprised. You know what I mean? They use they use me to double check the AI. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you can you check? Oh, what a dodge from you! Okay, the okay. back step side lights. I like these approaches to try to bait out a dodge to get a huge combo string. And he gets the dodge. Oh, he got it! He got it! Dude, yes. that's what he was waiting for. Dude, nice. Like, what did what did I tell you? The AI wishes it could keep up. Boom! You <laughs> landing that. <laughs> Signature. Okay, yeah. swapping off for the small sword. Interesting. I've I've been thinking the damage output has been excellent from the great sword from Yuz, but you know what? He can Whoa! do it with all of them. Oh! That, that was, sick. was sick. And with the it, with that teardrop weapon throw, so much coverage. There was almost no way back from that. Dude, and the now, way the way he pivoted yeah, that yeah. out, the, he pivoted the ground pound so out fast. of the dash jump. That was nice. Hold on, we're gonna see it coming up here. Yeah. Well, wait, is this a, is this a, no no no? Wonderfully no, done. Fine. Okay, here it comes. Here it comes. Dash jump. Dash jump. Pivot, grab. Okay, there's the weapon throw. With the weapon throw, like he. Like what do you do? What do you Checkmate. do? Checkmate. Every lane is covered. You're you're done. You're Boom. done, son. Okay, here we go. Next match. <laughs> What's the score? One to one. Okay, sure. Zach yeah. swap. Oh, wait, never mind. Swaps his skin and his color. I thought he changed legends. No, 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 no. Still but, the but, same. But changing your color and your skin is basically like changing your. Color. That is admitting that you need a mental reset, and I think Zach needed that after game uh, two. Uh, but we're yeah. on game three There's here. No in shame the, in a mental reset. And this, <laughs> oh, this set's tied, but Yuz is going kind of crazy, insane mode on the small sword. I, I didn't mean to be a sleeper small sword enjoyer, but here I am. Yuz. <laughs> Changing the tempo. He's got such a huge damage lead onto Sack, hunting down this first KO. He's already disarmed oh, his opponent man. from his he's, first he's weapon pickup. Really, he's really leveled up. Like I, I didn't hear the fanfare when it happened, but I guess he leveled up. Like it was confidence like, it was like, improves <laughs> your reaction time by enough milliseconds to be big, big, big in yeah. Valhalla. <laughs> like we see that time and time again. That once a player gets momentum and they feel like they've got the read on the opponent, there it is, as easy as a corner guard, neutral light. He knew where he was going to go. One now he's swapping out. He has he's a choice a of the weapons. Full stock lead. Full stock lead. He's like, you know what? To start this stock off, I'll hit you with some frosty uh, greatsword combo. Wait till you see it. I think okay. what Sack didn't realize is that the previous skin he was using was already the best Asuri skin. Mm -hmm. So he's in trouble. Mm -hmm. you know? You're right. You, you think he Apex maxed. Predator. Oh, Apex Predator. Sounds like. Sounds like. The best skin in the game, but you, <laughs> right, you'd be mistaken. Name. It was the other one. It was Link's Asura. You already had it. And okay, but 
It, okay. But it's not. He can still overcome it. He's a really great player. You know. Even though he's at an immediate disadvantage. <laughs> you know, from the skin pick. From the skin he's, pick. Oh, interesting. All right. So That's you, not true. It's there's a, a lot of, a when you guys are running these complex calculations on who's going to win, there's a lot that goes into it. Okay? Yeah, right. And the skin? Skin selection, part color of it. selection. It's not zero. It's you not know, zero. drip? Overall drip is definitely a factor. Drip is a factor. I, any pro will tell you that. Okay. You know what, though? Taking that first stock off of use, he gets... Uh, he's in, you know, yellow on his second stock, yeah, which isn't enough. terrible. He's this done is, well. Yeah. You know you're you're right at back. a position to get a couple of engagements on your side and to, to bring this back. And that's what he's going to do right here. Okay, fights his way on the inside. Nice he follow has less up range. off the neutral light. Any follow-up off the neutral light is something to applaud. So these so side lights guitars. that uses uh, been been dominating with on the great sword. They have such great priority over the entire kit from Katars. Oh, Yuz, oh wait a second. Yuz has got him on the ropes here. He might just finish Sack's stock. Look for the corner guard. Sack fights his way back. Yuz still, he knows he's one good hit away. Maybe a downlight oh, recovery? Did you see that fade oh, back? Oh, well, we enough. both had our math wrong. You know, Yuz probably thought the same thing. Like, oh, I'll finish him off with this one. Maybe gravity yeah. cancel? And then you got the commentator saying, like, yeah, 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 you're totally going to finish him off. And it didn't work. My bad, bro. Okay, falling side air, hot swaps. Wait a second, another hot swap. A lot of oh, coverage there. He makes good use out of those teardrop weapon throws to cover an extra lane while he goes for an edge guard. That is a thing, again, that makes an elite player is that every yeah. action is towards the same goal. Even when he wants to swap to the other weapon, he's like, well, I'm going to use his projectile if I have one. He's thinking ahead. He's thinking several steps ahead, like a, like a, like a chess player. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, like one of them. Well, <laughs> well you should have. Castled maybe in that moment. <laughs> I don't know. Chess things. Here we Chess, go. Yeah, Final yeah. stock. Damage is negligible. Don't even look at that. This is going to be an all-out brawl to see who comes away with this and gets some momentum in this set. Like we said, momentum is huge in this game. It gives you that confidence. It gives you that uh, bit so of It's so mental, edge. man. It's really so mental. Like, it's, it's just, it truly is. Yeah, at this level, you know all the options your oh, opponent has. Well, you can really you can like freak you someone's being in You can't just Brahala. fall back on mechanics. You can't, like, turn your brain off and win. You have to – there's there's so much that goes into, like, every decision that gets made. Oh, when you have to string off of follow-ups that, that are just not true. Okay, Yuz Wild. with a nice damage lead on this final stock. He's got the great sword. We've seen him extend these – okay, no. Tossing it away. Yuz he wants a small a great sword. position right now. He's got a pretty significant lead on the final stock of this game. The set's tied one to one, so whoever gets this just has some extra momentum going into what could be the final round. Oh, look at the okay. dance! Look at the dance! <laughs> he wants is, to be on the corner. Himself. I would be worried if I was used after seeing yeah, that dance. No. Well, that's, that's threatening. That's like a haka like taunt. <laughs> that's that's true. That's true. <laughs> well, because Sack needs uh he needs to be in an advantage oh! state here. Oh! What? Not enough. It wasn't enough. But he gets disarmed. Oh my god. And that's okay. It. Okay. 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 Woo! Woo! Okay. Oh man, that was a good one. Hughes takes game three. Now he's up two one in the set. Are we gonna see our first game five of our casting blocks? Oh man, I hope so, that dude. We insane. deserve a good game we five. We deserve We've it. We tested two different tournaments and we haven't gotten a game five yet. What, what the heck? What's a caster gotta do? Yeah. To get a, can I get a game five up in this piece? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I'm starting to get mad. <laughs> well, we'll see. Well, if chill, our dreams chill come out, true. David. Chill out. We, okay. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're I right. I think what we're gonna see. We're no, gonna I'm see. happy. We're You're play. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I just we, for the we content. Should just, we should be thankful for what we get. It's true. I, I think. And that's, you know. And what we definitely get peace. is a game four here on Brawlhaven. Now, if Yuz comes away with it, he continues on the winner's side of the bracket in the South American region nice for the spring recovery. championship. But if uh, Sack wins, that means we're going to a game five. So That's right, yeah. And whoever wins this is going into the winner's final, which is a guaranteed <gasps> top three position. I mean, no matter what happens after that, oh. you're on the podium. Whoever wins this, they're on the podium. That's Ooh, cheeky. Just think about attempt. it that way. And getting on the podium means, uh, the, the, you know the prestige. Sitting oh, yeah. on the that means you get a medal. I mean, that I've never done it. That, that means you're, you're at least bronze, add. no matter what. Oh, oh, there it nice is. Nice from Hughes. Okay. He's now Sax, he's in a position to equalize here quickly. True. But when you when you look at how Hughes is dancing around, how oh. <laughs> you you gotta feel intimidated here. Steals the weapon away. Maintains no, weapon juggle? control. He is just controlling Sack right now. Big punish. Oh yeah. Oh, oh whoa! That was a good attack. You know what I mean? Like Oh, perfect punish from Sack. Ah. There's nothing Hughes can do about that. Nicely Dang. done. Nicely done. Okay, but some good damage Hughes has already built up. 
onto Sack's second stock. If he can keep this advantage, but if Sack is able to find his way in, pull off a big string, he can equalize, maybe not quickly, but with some consistent play. Mm, You're right. It's going to take a lot of correct decisions in a row. And, oh, boy. Ooh, and no bad decisions. <laughs> Almost got away from him there. Yuz was hunting oh, down one final it. hit. Oh, man. And that was it. I feel for him there. But the, the truth is, going for that jump, pivot, down air was, was too much. That was too greedy. Okay. Needs a lot of unanswered damage, and Sack is nice. finding it here. Okay. Oh, Keep man. it going. Sack's in trouble, dude. This is sure. this could be this winner's bracket stock. If he does not win this stock right now, he's going down to the elimination bracket. And while he's fighting for a potential top three right now, he'll be struggling just to get top six if he loses this okay. right now. He's got to make it Big happen. edge guard. He's Big edge guard. Great. Oh, he needed that down air. Oh, man. That's a lot of damage from Muse. Oh, no. my. Oh! No! Oh, he almost. I can't believe he just Dude. keeps linking these attacks together. And, and even though you scored the knockout yeah. right there, he is in a terrible position. He's one good hit away from being knocked out. Somehow, Sack has to deal an entire stock's worth of damage. We need a dunk. Without you taking him out. We need a big, we need a disgusting dunk. You're right. There's dunk. never been a more appropriate time oh, for no. a neutral Can he make it dunk. through? Oh, he fights his way through. Yes. I think it's an off-stage interaction that Sack needs. Oh, no, that's, that's it! No! That was such a good punish from Yuz. GG! Yuz is moving on to the next round of top eight. What's that now? Oh, wait, no. I, wait, hold on. Yuz has just made it to the winner's final. Oh, yeah. He's guaranteed he top three. guaranteed top three. That is huge for Yuz. Okay. And I'm, and wow. I'm proud of him. Ooh, and almost 2x almost damage. Almost 2x. I mean, not really, because if you do the math. Yeah, but no, no, no. Don't do the math too much. Just look at the first digit of each one, and like that's double. If you always round down, it's two x. Round down. That's that's <laughs> no matter what, what I say. Round down. But until, three one. Until rounding up is convenient. Excellent performance from Yuz. We'll see him move on. Sack is not eliminated from the tournament yet. That's he right. is down in the lower bracket. He's got one last uh, life to live and to give for this tournament. We'll see what he does with it. One last coming life up. To live and one last life to give. That's that's. That explains it so well. That is basically the elimination bracket in a nutshell. Oh, my goodness. What a match, dude. That could have gone either way. Sack was playing so well. I was yeah. so impressed, but it just didn't matter against Hughes. Proving why he's power rank number two. Sack being power rank number four. There's a lot you can expect from it. But yeah. do, do the math, because we already we already did. And it came out exactly like we like we calculated. Wait, was Hughes favored? He was like, wasn't it like 70-30? In the viewer vote or yeah. something? Yeah, 70 to 30. What do these viewers know, though? The, Can we well, get an upset, please? Uh, I don't want these viewers to get too cocky. That's my <laughs> problem. I hate when they get cocky, I don't dude. think the viewers realize how much they have an impact on the match. You know? Oh, you think? The way they vote actually changes the potential outcome. So be responsible. Be responsible with your votes out there, guys. True. Okay, there is plenty more South American Spring Championship to come. We're going to take a quick break, but you guys don't go anywhere because you know the best is still to come. We will see you guys in just a bit for the big finish of South America.
Welcome back, you brawlers. We're in this. Don't laugh. <laughs> We're in this. You filthy brawlers. <laughs> yeah. You disgusting brawlers. Welcome you, back. You crazy brawlers. We're out here at the spring championship for South America. 1v1. And we whittled it down now to top six. The action continues right here, right now. And the next match we've got coming up is... Whoa. <laughs> Production really let you down on that one. Oh my goodness! I thought we I had a whole. I don't know what I was expecting. I thought we had a whole tile lined up for that. <laughs> Nothing. The fireworks didn't, didn't even go off. We didn't play. <laughs> what the heck? What kind of? It's Wesley versus Power. Yeah. Okay. And, and and people are thinking Power. We're looking at the the viewer vote, which you can yeah. see down here. Everybody in chat is voting right now. And in between all their laughter of our hilarity, they're they're, they're <laughs> dealing. They're, they can even find a moment to vote. If they, yeah, yeah, it's tough. It's <laughs> tough out there for a viewer, but they they got a lot going on. Um, Okay, even though it's forty three fifty seven, I think we can call that pretty much split right down That's the close. middle. It's kind of it's, it's hard to decide which way that could possibly be. Oh, and even more, but... more so, and more so. Okay, Power Ranger, what's he playing? Tell me a Suri. Well, we got Wesley uh, locked in oh, already with know. Tezka. Yeah, and okay, we, Wesley, you were excited we, to see some South American boots earlier. I am. I am so ready to see South and American boots. I feel like South America innovates on the latest yeah. weapon greater than any other region. There I said it. I that's, that's what I believe. South America, they got it on lock, dude. They create a Discord like the moment a, a new weapon is released. They got a Discord going. That's and, true. And like it's and they it's 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 a really efficient process they were, from what I've seen. Yeah, they were trailblazers on Great Sword. We know big DB time, was time, one of like time. the first, you know, super proficient oh, practitioners of the Great Sword. Yeah. And he was like I'm just going to use this weapon to win every tournament. And then he did. And then he did. And, he, then he, and, did. He, and he stacked up the money, and he was like, do you see? And, and then, then he sold and off then, his yeah. secrets, and, and then, it was yeah. genius. And then, and then peace out. And then peace but out. it is true that what we get to see, it's going to be really interesting this year because we get to see how these different regions, right, mm -hmm. kind of develop these metas, and then they get to clash against each other more often throughout the year with the Royales. With the Royales, exactly. So Wesley making it into the Royale would be very, very exciting. We're not quite there yet. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, don't yeah. know if that's going to be the case yet. He's got to get through power right now. Viewer votes got it down practically 50-50. It's 50, 52 to 48 in favor of power. Um, I'm really excited to see Wesley's boots. Yeah. Boots, the latest weapon in the game, recent, recently added maybe, what, three months ago? Four months ago? Dude, Time flies. What, what do Time I know, flies. dude? I don't whatever, know. Whatever. Bro. whatever. I'm just whatever. enjoying life. <laughs> I don't count days on a calendar. <laughs> All I count is stocks taken. That's stock a good taken. way to be, dude. That's a good way to be. All right, here we go. Into the next one. Are you ready? Because we're ready. Are you ready? Here we go. Three, two, one, brawl. All right, now now to the game. Here we go. All right, Power coming away with that first weapon drop. We see him on a Surrey. It's been a popular pick for the region for the day. Uh, but Wes, I know. this is our first Finally, opportunity to right? see boots. Am I, am I right, a Surrey mains? This is the time. Whoa. Hold on a second. In another universe, that was devastating. <laughs> but this universe, it was kind of a wide miss, there but we'll see. There is at least a few parallel universes where that landed, and Maybe. it's a whole different timeline. Maybe one. That might have been like an endgame type of like, there's only one universe where we, whatever. I don't remember. There's Who cares? Only one. All right. <laughs> Wes. only be one. <laughs> Wes, armed up with the boots. Ground pound comes through. How's he going to hold down this corner guard? He's looking for the neutral signature, which is a reversal Dude. and pretty devastating if he can land it. But Power Power's has having no problem yeah. dealing with this. It's, I was I was worried about the boots, you know? I'm coming in here like, whoa, what are you going to do, Power Ranger? And he's like this, this, and then this, and it's over. Yeah. And, that, uh, it seemed like, like no oh. problem for Power. Look at the no! neutral light. One more, no! please. One more, one more. Oh! I got yes. Two Dude, more, he's, actually. He's about to clip him. No. Okay, okay. He could have probably landed neutral light. I oh. think, yeah, that easily could have been a neutral light instead of a side light, yeah. but he decided to spare Wesley the, <laughs> the, like, Twitter fallout he was about to get from that. Oh, we'll see. Okay, Wesley almost uh, a lap behind here in damage. He needs to make something happen on his first stock of power. Okay, finds his way through. Oh, nice. Man. Dude, String. Boots does well. It looks so good, and that just cannot be denied. No matter how you feel about boots, you know it looks good. It's a flashy weapon for sure, and it, it relies on these reeds to get these strings, and that's what makes it so potent in the beginning of its life, right? You, you wouldn't have seen that coming. Yeah. Who knows you're going to just... Yeah, people don't know. People don't know uh, the strings yet. Yeah, but Wes is taking a lot of damage on this second stock. Uh, power has a lot of consistent options with this sword to potentially take the stock quickly here, especially a potent edge guard. 
on uh, Demon Island. We're seeing him go out for it here. He's holding down this corner. West makes it back, actually. Power retreats back to mid middle, middle stage. Uh, you know, hold down his weapon. Wesley playing Tezka, the, the first boots, the first and only boots legend, yeah. has me like, like okay, I know Wes is good at every weapon, right? right? But what I think Wes, I think all grim. I think lance and axe, yeah. right? And that's, that's true. That's neither of Tezka's weapons, and I'm and that's got me a little bit like. Do you bro, think he's bro, chasing bro, the meta sure? too hard here? Well, I'm just like, I'm just like, would he just be doing better as, as all grim? Um, um, but you know, I guess. But we're he's, still in game one, so th they're, they're, he's defeated hundreds of opponents to yeah. come this far. <laughs> so I don't know. Great point. <laughs> he might know what he's doing. It's a here. lot of inference to make. Yeah. But power is so dominant. He's oh. actually over a stock ahead now, and uh, is having no trouble confronting these boots. Now knocked off the side of the stage. Get power. Oh, oh off the stage. That Man, was actually pretty fancy, cool. Fancy, but it didn't like. It didn't help enough. Yeah, it didn't knock him out. <laughs> it it just looks cool. Oh, oh that's nice. It. That is nice. Okay, D looking good. Looking yeah, good. Yeah, what was that? Grab a cancel down light into side air. Is that the is that the combo? I don't know. I don't even. I know, don't know. Dude. Boots is still. It's still a crazy enigma to me. Yeah, I'm just playing Raphael still. I don't care. Yeah, I won't change anything. Woo! Okay, nice weapon oh, throw. Hot swap. Wait, Wait a, a second. second. Round okay, down. all right, all right. I take it back. Wes I, has. I'm sorry. I made it sound like his boots <clears> no, were he's got. He's got some explosive potential with this weapon. We're seeing some of it here off stage. He needs oh! something nasty. That's nasty. Can he finish it? Follow it up? No. Uh oh. Situation reverse. Power rearmed with the sword. Side air is not enough to do it. Oh, Has he to fast. Low. That was such a great. Okay. Oh. Oh. Wait. Oh, why? No, no way. way! He back no from the way. It was over. Oh my God. If Wes wins this now, that's too much. I can't believe. No. Uh -oh. No. You he might used be. His dodge already. No, no way. way. Oh my God. Oh, no way! What? No way! That's... Dude, okay, all right. Wes should not have won that. Yeah, well, Wes absolutely yeah. should not have won that match. It was over. Yeah. Was that right here? Wait, hold on. No. Was well, this I don't it? think no, we're no. gonna see that moment because it wasn't like a knock. Okay, right, right here, here, here it, it was is. over. He's dead. It was over. Just barely He's gets... so dead. Oh. But then, oh no, power actually just. Oh no. What a wild esports moment right there. And after after all the dust is Look settled. Look how far here he charged that ahead of time. I didn't dude, even realize. Hey, dude, okay. That was sick because he he pivoted after, like, before yeah. the slide charge, he pivoted right before he fell off. Still with enough friction to keep going down oh, yeah. off the back. And then he gravity canceled. As he steered backwards, he gravity canceled so what? far away to get the knockout. And I'm just like... How do you manage that, dude? That is insane. That is Gee. crazy. Okay. What a, I, you wouldn't have predicted that ending. Uh, so let's see what Power happens here. Power Ranger has got to be kicking himself for that one. That was, you like, know. Like, he thought it was over. He's like, oh, I won. Like, I'm going to be silly now. It feels now. like a throw. <laughs> feels like a throw. Let's, okay, let's not. Yeah, no, that's a, but, that's a throw. There's no other way to put it. <laughs> yeah. He threw. That's well, like, that's, that's a, the tough that's thing. unfortunate. That's a tough thing, right? Because you want to secure those KOs off on the side of the stage if yeah. you can. But sometimes your opponent is just gone, and you're the only one who can bring them back. Right. And that's what exa exactly what happened there. <laughs> Wesley got resuscitated by Power Ranger. Oh, or Power. Man. And gotta, uh, we'll see what happens here in game two. Now, we know this is going to be a close set. Okay, okay, we saw the potential there. Ooh. Weapon throw comes through now with another chance to maybe snuff out this stock. Okay, I like to see, ah. you know, then there is a turn, a time when you're like, well, you got to be more aggressive. It's a then deterrent. what happens? Uh oh. Okay, Power Ranger touched the wall at the last second. He got away from that ground pound. He rearms nice himself. Touch. Power played Ooh. it so perfectly. What a beast, dude. What you a beast. Okay. Even while he's at a disadvantage, he fights like he's at an advantage. Like he's like, whatever. I'll I'll, I'll come out of this, surely. Now, that's the exact type of play I'd like to see after a game that ended the way the last one did because Power shows that, that his mental sense. hasn't been rattled and he's still making these like high performance moves here. Oh, no. You're Side right. air, optimal time to hit that. Solo. So devastating with that angle it sends. And now we're tied up on the second stock. And what you were saying about Power Rangers' decision making, I think absolutely rings true here. That is that is what he needs. That is right. what he needs after after something like that happens to him in the last one. Okay, but what about what happens to him here? Okay, has yeah. to find his way through. At this through. point, it's close enough. Like the damage difference is negligible. Basically a tie game here, although Power Ranger in a advantageous position. Oh, Wesley turns it around. Power Ranger, oh, what? what? 
an amazing uh, turnaround side air oh, for power. He needed okay. to commit to another ground pound, but well, it's you, understandable again, that he'd be wary about after it. After last game, yeah. you kind of have to check yourself <laughs> on the side. He's got and, a bad experience woo. with ground pounding what looks like could be the end of the game. And you know what? Maybe corner guarding is his strength there. You don't have to lose your stage control. He blocked that corner perfectly with that down signature option from uh, Suri's you're Guitars. Right. You're right, you're right. Got the you're stock, right. and now he can play with a lead. And yeah. uh, hopefully not. You know what I mean? It is nice that a corner guard over an edge guard, you know, where you're you're staying on the stage rather than going off of the stage to go and finish off your opponent. At least if you don't land the corner guard, you're still pretty much safe versus an edge guard where Wesley yeah. just keeps turning it around on you or even trying. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So maybe that's going to be a different strategy here that Power has. And he is uh, looking to just claim some more damage onto uh, Wes's final stop. Oh, what a great oh, read. Okay. Again? Oh, reset it? Oh, he almost. Still a reset if you get it? Still, reset? Still a reset? Still a reset? <laughs> still a reset? <laughs> Ten minutes still, between hits of the yeah, reset? Like, <laughs> reset again? Yeah, there's a 500 frame gap in that combo. Oh, oh good oh, again with the play up with South air. America, though. They... They know something the other regions don't. They actually do, though. It, the meta is well, just different. South America has always been, since the history of Brawlhalla, the region that's the most comfortable fighting off stage. We'll see yeah, certain that's players that's or certain uh, weapons where people will feel more comfortable uh, with that. Oh. Victory! GG! Power okay. Ranger coming up with another, with another win. No surprise after game one that game two comes away tying up the set, okay? Power with one, Wesley with one. If we were ever going to get, get a game five, this is the D one. Come man. on. This is the one. We've been so good today, <laughs> Yeah, we Odin. Did, we deserve a game five. We deserve a game five. Come on. As we all know. How much better could Odin we be? Odin is in control. All right. And Power using the strength stance there, kind of popular today for yeah, whatever reason. I love reason. that we can see that on the overlay. That's, that's cool. Just, that's a win. So much information. Production. They're both using strength stance. Look at this. Yeah, we keep getting better. It's it's kind insane. Of insane. It's insane. I uh -oh. mean, I don't want to get braggadocious Medium on punish? the stream or anything, but we deserve. We, it's fair. It's fair that we oh, are braggadocious. Large punish. Extreme punish. Power out of control in this first stock. Oh. It's done some good damage. Whoa, West? Wait, power out of control? Wow, or did you mean listen. to say West? Because he got it. Well, oh, you no, tell me West he's out of control. Is, oh, he's so what oh, the heck? What? I'm mad. And Power thought it was over, too. I, I, he easily could have stopped that with a ground bell, but he clearly thought it was over. Yeah, the, the Nobody recovery. Nobody but Wes knew that it was over. Wes might have even been surprised by the Well, time there's not a lot of cover. drift on that recovery from the boot, so you have to line it up right, nice. which he did. Uh, yeah, it doesn't but matter, again, because Power gets the knockout anyway. And you see how he closed down that corner. He's Maybe that's part of the strategy. He's like, okay, I'll engage him. Guard. I'll keep stage control as much as possible yeah. in this matchup. Wesley is too powerful off stage. He can uh, reverse the situation. We don't want that, especially if you're fighting to be just a little bit ahead, which is what Power does, and it's taken away. Wes again claims another stock. He's get, he finds that low side air with gauntlets, and that's so devastating. It sends you down diagonal, which is the most punishing angle to be sent off stage, and he uses yeah, the great effect. Yeah, it is such an optimal angle. Yeah, it's just like it's it's what you want in life is to send him down diagonal. <laughs> A little uh, more down than diagonal, honestly. Ow. Like, sure, but like, like Nick's blasters neutral sick. That's that's got to be the most efficient <laughs> direction. And there's it's more than that. There's more than that move that sends that direction. That's just what I can think of to tell you to illustrate my point. Okay. Man, stocks tied up here. Wesley getting uh oh, getting close to the danger zone. Power Ranger. Oh, oh. he went deep for that one, and he yeah. succeeded. That was so well done. That was great. He challenged that down air off of the side of the stage. He outranged it with the the down light from the sword and just the perfect pickup. Now oh, almost a full stock ahead. But wait a second, Wesley. Oh, he uh, was just in a 50-50 there. He guessed wrong, and a huge oh. pickup from Power. Oh, <laughs> ducks the weapon throw. Somehow gets around the ground pound, too. All right, how's he going to guard this corner? Oh, a perfect punish on the side oh, signature. Oh, boy. And Power there's Ranger, another. You know what? He's, he's smart to just be safe about it. Some of these things he, he might be able to follow up on, but it, if he messed up, would result in his demise. And yeah. so he's just choosing, like, whatever. I just won't go for it. I'll get him if he comes back up here. And that's, that's probably the right way to be. But look, Wes so good, he doesn't care. He'll catch, if you make it an even match, he'll, he's bring, he'll bring it back up. He's but crafty. now he Wes could... has got to play an absolutely perfect stock yeah. because he is one good hit away from being knocked out Wait, on his what? final stock. That was and crazy. It's, it's a no great way. start. How do you do it's that? Like, no way. What? Not again. Not like this. Finish him. Finish him. Oh, Wait, my. He catches him on is the that corner? It? He doesn't have any more recovery options. Oh, he's the... one ground pound away. No. Uh, no. No. 
How is this possible? Oh, oh fights Power his way Ranger through. Finally, fights back, and it's that not enough. That was enough, enough damage. He's got him off the side once again. One more good hit could be it. And oh my goodness, dude, Wes. Wes has turned this into an even match here. Uh -oh. In the final moments, he's looking for a weapon. Power Ranger's got weapon control, but Wes manages to grab a weapon just in time. Power Ranger without a weapon. What? Oh, what a game. What? I cannot believe that Wes brought that back. That was. What in the world? Dude, he really turned it up to 11 there on that final stock. He went crazy. <laughs> should not have won that. All the math pointed to him not winning that. There's no amount of calculations that could be done to... to what? To damage done, damage taken. Look at that. Oh, that's Perfectly not a coincidence, even. dude. It was, it was tied. It was exactly the same. 529 damage taken, 529 damage done. Wait, are we out of game five yet? Hold on. No. I don't need the bracket. What's no, no, even no, no, happening? No, no. It's 2-1. Two, two, Okay, two one. Yeah, Wes is up. Wes has got two. Those were Powers got one. Yeah. The first player to three is gonna move on to the next round in this. And wait, is this elimination match though? No. No? Are you no. sure? Yeah. Okay. I am. All right, Sorry. all right, all right. All wait, right. it is? What? We what? <laughs> I Hold think on. it is. I this might is be an lying. elimination match. Who knows? Okay, that changes everything. That changes everything. That changes everything. Because there's a lot more on the line here. Like, oh, winner's side is like, oh, cool. The person who wins gets like really far in but where we're at right now yeah. is whoever loses this match is in seventh place which is still amazing let's which be honest is top eight hey, yeah relax amazing, top amazing. eight is amazing but, but but both of these players could just win this tournament let's true. be real they they both won tournaments before as if you needed any other proof than that they both won tournaments before so we're going into the next match here power versus west same Three, two, legends no swaps at all we're going right back in here what a great match that last one was. Yeah. We can only hope that this one's just as great. So Except it'd be really cool if Power Ranger won this one. <laughs> yeah. Then would... we'd get a game no, five, and I think we deserve lands. a game five. Oh, but... no. Oh, wait. Ultimate disrespect. One more. One not more. another oh, one. Oh, he almost. Oh, wait. It's not over. Nice. Oh, what a game. Okay. What that... a game. 18 second knockout. GG. He was one bold brash belly flop away from throwing <laughs> away that KO. But with quick thinking, he was able to claim it just as swiftly. So that. <laughs> It was almost a throw. One but, bold brash belly flop. Dude, I'm telling you. That's that, it's so like, well said, dude. That was, this is why the first belly flop, caster. I think, was optimal. The second belly flop was just like disrespect. <laughs> That's the only way well, I can yeah, describe it. Was, it. It, was, it was for the highlight. Oh, boy. Well. Wes level. is actually playing at a whole other level now. I was going to say, the, the, the only two wins he has. No, please. Okay. Oh. The, the head bonk got me scared for a moment. Yeah, yeah. But Nobody the only two wins that Wes, that. Nobody wants that. That Wes has were like sneaky, peaky, freaky little comebacks at the yeah. end, right? Yeah. He, it wasn't like he was waltzing through his opponent. He actually had the to pull off some pretty devious licks at the end of it. Yeah, but so and like in a row, several in a row. of them in a row. <laughs> but this has been a dominant start from Wesley, so he must be feeling very confident oh, now in this dude. matchup. Oh Man, my that gosh, new, everything's that landing. New down air trajectory on the gauntlets is making for some swifty combos. You see Wes like chaining the oh, that's all right. Well, he's a st he's a whole game ahead, so I guess he's you can, whole, you can yeah. afford to make. He's a game like plus one stock, plus, plus a stock ahead, almost yeah. two stocks. <laughs> If you, well, actually, that, wait, was, no. that was a, that was a bit of an error from West. Luckily, he was so deep in the red that it's like the the, the punishment that this causes him is maybe negligible. Oh boy. Okay. Finish it. Oh, the that was pounds. about to be it. That Those was, are scary. That was actually about to be it. Power Ranger was one hit away from getting knocked out. Wes hit the corner of the stage when he meant to go underneath. Okay, but Wes and actually now, on the comeback here. Oh, are no. tied. Wes throws power down. Power's going to the other side. Wes tries to get there in time, but he misses. It doesn't matter because he catches him on the rebound. Power down to his final stock that's potentially okay. of the entire tournament. Okay, that's not okay. But that's not okay. Power did power. a lot of damage. He, he had a comeback stock there on the second stock. He made up some ground. He still has a bit to finish off here, but... He is uh, in a position to turn this around. Recovery is not enough to KO off the top. Looking for some sort of knockout option from this sword. Okay, Ooh, belly flop. flop, huge punish. Love that. Yeah, yes, it yeah. costs him everything. Just, you can't just flop whenever you want. Yeah. You got to be optimal flopping. Be okay? <laughs> belly flop. You got to be floppable. Yeah, the belly flop wasn't. is actually a very tactical big it's a brain very move. You may have been hit by it off stage and think it's, you know, OP. No. But it takes a lot. It's silly. It takes a lot more than anything. <laughs> The silly belly flop. All oh, right. wow. He charged oh, it up. Okay, that was West disgusting. is in the power position. He is about to move on to the next round of this tournament, uh -oh. sending Power Ranger no! out. This is it. Uh, and it's over. Wesley wow. wins. He moves on to top six 
of the Spring Championship, knocking Power Ranger out of the bracket. He's going to take seventh place no. in this entire thing. I saw, I saw you already Sophia. know how this I know. ends. <laughs> it's still it's dramatic. No, I get it. I'm the same way when I run <laughs> reruns of things. I'm like, ooh, wait, what? Maybe oh. this time he'll not yeah, go maybe this through the time, door. Maybe this time he won't get, oh. <laughs> and then, yes, <laughs> and yeah. then he gets dunked anyway, just uh. like you remembered. GG, man, well played by both of these players. Even though Power Ranger lost this, I think we all know there's a yeah. big asterisk on how close the set was and how good Power Ranger played throughout it. But it just wasn't enough. There's got to be, there's a winner and loser in every match we watch, and we've just seen it again there. Congratulations to Wesley, who is moving on now to top six of this bracket. And this is, this is a big bracket here, man. There's like hundreds of competitors. Millions. Millions of competitors. Right. If thousands, you, probably. Well, thousands is, de yeah, thousands Definitely. is actually true. Uh, millions? Millions? If you consider all the people Whoa. who are queued into ranked right now, millions is correct. Let's talk about our next match coming up. And more so, let's talk about what the viewers have to say about it. What's up with this, guys? I, I think, no I think Ian's in. whole family Nine is watching, and they voted for him. And that's about <laughs> it. Because Laura has yeah, the lion's share his, of these his votes. his brother, his sister, and his mother. Those are the only ones who, <laughs> yeah. who voted for Ian. And you know what? Respect to them. We love that. 94% of the viewer vote going towards Laura's. Okay, okay. Sympathy is kicking okay. in Okay. Extended <laughs> family is logged on. Love it. Cousins. <laughs> he sent uncles. a text to everybody. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. No, but here they real, are. Wow, coming in strong. <laughs> What's happening here is Ian hasn't had a chance to prove himself just very much. In Do we have a power ranking now. on Ian? What, 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 do we, what do we got I for data? I don't know what Ian's power ranking is. I'm crying is. out we for data. We know he did pretty well Production. in the Winter Championship. We haven't Knowledge seen him up. that much in 2022. 2023 has kind of been his breakout. This tournament might be his true breakout performance here. That's true, yeah. We're going to see just how far he can go. But Ian, he did well enough in the Winter Championship to think that he could win this and move into top six of the Spring Championship. That would be sick. In front of his whole family, 26%. But to, but to defeat Laura's is going to be tough. I just can't get out of my head quite t oh, 10. Oh, okay. Ian's power rank Ian 10. Ian's power rank so that means, 10? That means right, higher that's than on I me. thought, to be honest. That's, that's on me. Yeah, that's well, pretty high. Maybe we don't know enough because I, I was thinking more like 30, that's really good. 33 or something like that. But Ian's actually power rank number 10. I impressive. Yes. Impressive. Okay, so, uh, so scratch that. He totally could beat Laura's, and and shame on you, viewers. You 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 might be wrong yeah. about this. Okay, you, I blame you guys. Yeah, you it's, yeah yeah yeah. They're controlling the narrative more than we, we just, are. I'm just We're reacting. just reporting on the news. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> the news is that we people, saw the forecast. People think Laura's is gonna win this, match. and we we're like Ian fans. You need to wear. You need to bring an umbrella. <laughs> you chill. You chill. <laughs> um, no, no, no. They, I, I I'm I, and you know what? Ian plays a Surrey, so like I'm on board, dude. Let's go, Ian. <laughs> He's my new favorite yeah, it's, player. It's rare to find um, the Surrey player today in this yeah, tournament. Yeah, okay. Is it is it my imagination? It's or your imagination, dude. Are there more Surreys than ever before? Like, I feel like I've never seen a Surrey in top eight. Okay, every once in a while. Every once in a while. What are you talking about? <laughs> you're literally so a Surrey pilled. You're like, dude, Surrey <laughs> needs to be buffed. She's yeah. really weak in the meta right now. <laughs> right. She has a dunk. She has two dunks. She's dunkalicious. What do you want? <laughs> yeah, uh, just a little bit more, you know? She can, she's got swords. She's the she's only got honest legend in the game, all right? There's only honest legend. Okay, and Pearl. Pearl's also. Wait, yeah. No, I, actually, no. That's not true. Everybody saw the World Championship. They know what's up. Oh, they, yeah. Just because you put on the crossover <laughs> skin can't get you away from the fact that you oh, just copied come on. the meta. You think okay. these are Impala imposters? <laughs> All right, let's go. Loras versus Ian is going to be a great set. Both of these players, amazing. Loras, certainly favored, according to the viewers. Three to one. People think Loras is going to win this match. But let's see if Ian's got what it takes. Because power rank number 10 tells me, yes, he absolutely does. And it's just oh. going to, whoa! Bleep. Whoa! Oh, oh, my. No way Loras okay, touched yeah, the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I cannot believe I can. that Loras touched the wall. He did. Ian deserved that gift. That is, Ian? This should have been, you know what? Yeah. No, that's not cool. Rick. BFG, <laughs> Rick. Rick. Totally Rick. Oh my god. Ian should have won Ian should have taken that stock. There he is. Like, buff guitars, so, buff story. So rigged, bro. <laughs> that was a pretty sick Oh, oh no, bro. The rigged, side air actually. The side air does move you slightly sideways. Uh 
on Katars, but it also locks you in for too long. Did he see into the future? How did he? <laughs> Bubbled. Lawrence it's trouble. out Ian so hard with that down signature. No, okay, okay, okay. that Not was... Not twice in a row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that relax, actually relax. was... If he had landed that, the mental would have been actually destroyed <laughs> yeah. on Ian. He could have not done it, and we all would have thought he was a telepath. But now, oh, no. now we know he just he just guessed right. Ooh, oh, beautiful side air catches uh, Ian trying to recover high. Oh, we about to see a three. That's two it stocks is, in less than is. a minute, and Loris you know is moving. The polarizing uh, viewer vote seems to be, you know what? It, like I it, try my best to create a different storyline, but yeah. we know that the viewers are usually just right. Why are they? Yeah, they're too smart. I don't want to give them credit because. Yeah, you know yeah, how much no. I don't want to give them credit. Yeah, 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 yeah. They'll get full of themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Think, yeah, I don't yeah, need yeah, to yeah, pop yeah. it off. Relax, chat. You, you get that. You know what's going on, but don't be impolite about it. Okay. All right, Laura's looking for. We're looking for a three stock three right stock now. Three stock top Three stock. Three stock. If we get the three stock, um, what, oh, what happens? Not? You'll do a, you'll do a backflip on stream. I think you were talking about that. <laughs> yeah, I'll do a backflip, and then you guys can just cart me out of here. That'd be great. Great content. <laughs> Only if Loris gets a three-star. Wait, no, Loris, don't do this to yourself. <laughs> Please. I need this. I can't do a backflip. Oh, he's about to oh get this. Oh, my gosh. He's about to Loris, get this. close it out. He's don't. about to get this. You're doing crazy stuff, Loris. No. <laughs> I'm not doing a backflip. Not today, not ever. It Ian, looks like it, did. Take a dive. It looks like it. Loris, please. Close. Okay, okay, okay. No. All right, all right, all right. Ian preventing the three-stock. He may not win this game. But he didn't get three stocked, and that's enough for his family to like. They're they're cool. They're not. Yeah. Gonna, they're not gonna give him. That's true. They're not gonna give him trouble about it at the dinner table. Or and there it is. It's, and that's okay. You know what? You, at All least right. you didn't get three stocks. Hold son. on, Toast. Show me. I can do the backflip. Show me real quick. <laughs> no, we don't want to see this. Show me. <laughs> I'm gonna do the backflip right now. Wait, Steve is doing a backflip, and we're missing oh gosh, it. You're gonna miss Wait, it. Wait, are you really about to back? Yeah, I will. Whoa. Wait, hold. Bro, he just, he just did a backflip off Whoa. stream. Whoa, whoa, dude, dude, don't, actually, dude, don't show the replay. Steven actually just did a backflip. Don't show the you guys didn't see it. I, I, I'm it wasn't my words, cleanest. Steven, I'm yeah. so impressed. I wanted to do a cleaner one for you guys, but. I, I, well, good thing it was. Okay, your, <laughs> you got the clip ready? Perfect. Oh, they, oh, have, the, they so have the clip. They have okay. the clip. Oh, you guys don't even After know. this game, there's a lot to look Steven forward to. Steven literally did a backflip off stream. It was like, I mean. That's insane. All right, let's get back down to earth here, okay? okay? Yeah, yeah, chill. Laura's 1-0 in the set so far. It's a best of five set, though. Laura's uh, is looking good on the first stock, but Ian has a chance to come back. And Dude. you know what? Some of this consistent sword play could turn yeah. out to be I, huge I on Brawlhaven. Like, even, though, even though Ian like, had oh, a... Ground pound. Woo! Let's go. Oh. Edge guard, keep it going. Okay, respect Laura's off on the edge. Let's react to the stage. Corner guard here for Laura's. Hot swapping into the spear. Oh, he got the, the double. double. Still oh. alive though. Oh, that's, that's man, Lord's so aggressive off oh, the. Oh my is. goodness, I've never seen a but more aggressive see, player off the side. The way that started was Lorez threw his bow at Ian, baited the dodge, and then he knew the double was true because Ian had no dodge, and that was just masterful spear play from Lorez, and from a region that has pioneered spear play the entire time that Brawl Esports has been You're a right. thing. You're right. That's just a true fact, dude. That's such a true fact. They're like the most believing in spear forever. A lot, there's there's been times where other regions have slept on spear that, you know, the faith that South America had was was unwavering. Yeah. Now I want to say, look, I want to say, even had trouble in the last game, but he he lost his stock so early before, like it's hard to come back from that amount of momentum. But now that Ian's taken Loris's first stock, not too long after he lost his first stock, like it's still, it's not a huge comeback yet. He's yeah. just fighting. Um, right. He, he might just be a player that needs a little bit of momentum on his side. And, and I totally get what that's like. It is easy to get demotivated after such a such a dominant first stock of the last game. You know what I mean? Now, he's got a better chance here. As long as he can hold on to the stock for a little bit here. Oh, oh big okay. punish. Yeah, I was nice. waiting to see what he had in, in the tank there. All right, does a good job. Basically, uh -oh. no, don't fall for it. Don't go in there. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> I feel so... Is I'm really uh, live yes. coaching Ian right now. Yeah, mid set coaching. Mid -set this is illegal, coaching. but you know he should be oh, listening nice. anyways. Oh, it's not enough to knock him out. Is he gonna come back with the guitars in time? He steals oh. both weapons off the floor. That turned out to be a good idea. Now Laura's without a weapon steals the next weapon. Ian just totally maintaining weapon control here. Even though Laura's knocks Ian's off the side, Ian comes back just in time to steal the weapon. Woo. Gravity canceled down light recovery and that an amazing good. play by Ian for him for the to take a lead for the first time in this set. Okay. 
actually goof troops him, <laughs> gets the weapon throw, <laughs> lands yeah, the, the extra OGs, damage. The OGs out there know the They goof know that, term. yeah. They know the goof You have troop. to know the lore. Yeah, type 1 in chat if you know what we meant. Like <laughs> um. Type 3 in chat if you're confused. <laughs> type 2 if you're an anarchist. Okay, here we go. Lorez tying up the game. Here we go. Pretty quickly. Yeah, this what, is it. With the choice of weapons, he actually comes away with the bow. We've seen uh, the least amount of his bow play so far in this matchup. I mean, and maybe yeah, he's got I'm some a bit surprises. Surprised. He's, he's, he's a spear guy. True. But, I mean, bow, I feel like, has always been a nasty weapon. And yeah, is, you're right. With you're the range right. and quickness, I feel like it's always good. Yeah, I try to downplay bow, but... Oh, oh no! My gosh. goodness! Oh. Ah, the power of that signature has Woo. been proven now. We, we, there's no more disputing. That move is good. But to yeah, find that GG. option right there that takes experience, and Lorez shows it with a masterful play. Boom, bubble, trouble, everything is going his way. <laughs> All That's right. the official name of the move. Boom. Look out. But look how Dude, much that damage. Was, that was so yeah. nice. Loris, I mean, Ian, Ian was like barely orange. even in knockout I know. range when that happened. Oh, boy. And we're going right back into the next match. Loris is up in the set 2-0. He only needs to oh, win boy. one more game to do it. And now you would think, and now if I was Ian, I would I would not leave this map open, right? He had the opportunity to ban this map. I, what map do you want? I don't, well, <laughs> you know, I don't I mean, know like... how much it's going to make a difference, but I would at least superstitiously believe that I got to change the map. Because I don't think you'd want soft platforms with the bow and the neutral signature, especially having so much. Uh, so you're thinking that this is this is even though he's lost twice on it, it's still his best option. I'm thinking the map's not oh. going to help enough. And Ian is uh, in trouble here. You may here. be right. You may be right. If he can't I do it on Brawl Haven. I don't know if he can do it anywhere. And oh, tossed nice. away, that and there was, it is. That was sick. That was sick. And that move is that's, so hard to land. I was going to say, that might be one of the hardest moves to land in the game. I, mean, I don't want to say worst move in the game, but well, that is what I would say. It's hard to land, and it throws in like one of the most inefficient It's so angles. bad. <laughs> and when I, and, and th that's the scariest thing is when you're playing Akaya in Ranked, and you see them land that move like yeah. perfectly, <laughs> you go, like, uh -oh. oh, crud. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, know yeah, when this move is good. They know too much. Move and he's... <laughs> Okay. Wait, oh, no. no, Lorez! Oh. Wait a second. No, he makes it back. He almost I, caught him slipping. He almost caught him slipping. He was at two exclamation points there, almost to the third. That would have been a devastating edge guard from Ian. Ian has to figure out how to get some unanswered damage. How's he going to do it? He's got the sword. What? Why oh. would he do that? That was nuts. That was cool. Look oh. at the there. Okay, Dude. Ian is okay. nuts, guys. Okay, yeah. and if you didn't know that because he's already in the top eight, of uh, you know the spring championship yeah, yeah, in South like, American yeah, region. That yeah, means you're nuts, you obviously. Um, Ian, good at the game. Very cool guy. Don't run into okay. that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. If you great, run into the fully coaching. charged down signature, Thanks, there's no coming Don't back from it. That, this is a comeback stock. Stocks are tied. Down in damage. You're right. Okay. This is how it happens. Gets over the top of the recovery. Has him pressured off to the edge. Can he find something there? Yes. And there comes through. Uh oh. Ooh, perfect dodge. But now he's in trouble. How's he going to avoid this? Nicely done. Man, a ground pound, too. That's like such a great move for Loris to no! do it. No. Oh, no. Why? Again? How does he know? Twice it's, in a row? Because it has range, but it doesn't have, like, it's, it's such a precise like, hitbox. It's like the smallest hitbox in the game. Yeah, because it, it doesn't hit in between, which is what you want from a side signature yeah, to be really, just like, right slam-tastic. Right on that one point at the very end. Yeah, so with that precision, we know Laura's is, is dedicated some time to this legend, and that's a scary thing He's to see. He's a sniper. It's, but you know. Ian, he, again, that comeback stock was working for him. He's actually made up some ground here, and there it is, potentially the stock. Yes! The downlight right. recovery is enough You've to do it. We've got a tie game, and, and I think, look, this is it. This is where Ian gets his game in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. see it. I'm We're ready. We're all hoping that for, for a not 3 0. Oh, yeah. Oh, gets around the downlight. That could have been crazy. Whoa, he's looking for something big off on the side. Has to retreat to the stage. Has the corner guard potential. Lorez trying to find his way through. Almost makes it in. He finally touches the ground, but he gets slammed into it. Now with the reversal. Ian, does he swap off his weapon? No. Oh, oh Lorez is going to do so. Great play by Ian. Dude, he's going so hard, but the damage is perfectly even right now. Oh, he tries to catch him on the dodge read. Ian makes it out. Uh-oh. <gasps> Ian? This, in the lead for the first time? This could be. He could get the dub. What? Big yes, he does it! Ian! He takes the game off of Loras. Let's go. Okay, and now okay. that he's defeated Loras and we know it's possible, we got a game five incoming straight up. We got yeah. a game five incoming. I mean, that was the uh, that was a huge bait. Next level right there. You saw that. I don't know why. Why would he? Did he go for the? Did he have the dodge? Is that why he went for the down light, gravity cancel downlight into ground pound into recovery? Because that was just kind of like sicko I, mode for I no reason. I think he was right. I think it was. Uh, 
he was just about being unexpected, you know? I mean, Which, I, and that I, has I, a lot of power in Brawl. It, it does. It actually does to really shake up your opponent, break his ankles if, in the if mind. If you always did the optimal option, you would be predictable. True. Right? So sometimes it's worth it just to be, like, surprised. And That's why I never do. You know this about me. I never <laughs> yeah. do the optimal option. And it's Yeah, and it's only because you're so smart about how you play. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> So smart. Okay, Ian with a little bit of confidence. I'd love to see how that shakes up this set and the momentum we've had. The oh, oh, my God! Talk yes! about confidence! Dude, oh, my goodness. You couldn't when, have said it any better, dude. That was so good. The confidence is exactly what you need to double chase dodge down off stage to land that side air. We see uh, really veteran guitar players pulling off maneuvers like that. And it can cost you because you can really it, just, like. It is like, so risky. You have to commit a lot of movement to that right. last side. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Oh, Wait, he maybe the with like something the dodge got, comes back? Whoa! No way! Dude, what a Please. play! What a play! No. Okay. Oh my god. Okay. Ian, what, what, is he back. ever gonna catch a break? <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> he made it back! <laughs> no! Oh. If he had gotten even one hit in, that would have been a special something, but. That was the most tenacious recovery I've ever seen in Brawlhalla history. Yeah, it's he, not he should have been dead trying. ten times over, but Woo. somehow he juiced every bit. I don't. You don't often see the neutral sig from Asuri's Katars used for its movement because it's not like. I mean, it's good. It's, yeah, I mean, it's more in, than a dodge. In the moment, it actually was his only way back. Yeah, which as an Asuri player myself, I never even find that moment. Yeah, like, exactly. I have never. That's my last resort. You know what I mean? What a play by Ian. Whew. And now the stocks and damage are perfectly tied. This is great. What a set we've got here. Oh, uh -oh. boy. Double pogo. Okay, triple, triple pogo. Clash. GG. Quadruple. Septuple. Oh, my. Dude. Okay, he actually he touched the wall. So if not for that weapon throw, he would have been able to make it mm. back. He reset his jumps there at the last second, and he could have made it back. But Laura's followed up so perfectly yeah. with that spear weapon throw that knocked Ian out oh. no matter what he was able to do. Well, after the, the first stock, how tenacious Ian Ooh. was, Laura's had to, you know, be equally as aggressive on the edge guard to know he had yeah. it snuffed out. Good, good thing he was, because now the stocks are perfectly tied one to one. Okay, game five. Ian, can you do this for There's us? Game We've five been... potential. I'll Please. Be, I will be it's so on happy. your back, bro. I'll be so happy if we got a game five here. I'm not going to lie. We've been failed multiple times. I, you know, this yeah, stream. And, yeah, we don't want to. Ooh. Okay, spicy. Dude, let's go, Ian. Let's go, Ian. Heating up. Let's go, Ian. We're fully biased right now. We want the game five. Ian. Oh. No. Yes. Big playoff. Yes. Oh, oh, nice my. read with Wait. the recovery. Oh, Keeping it so aggressive perfect. down air. What? what a crazy bounce that happened on, with oh. Laura's there, like down air. Yeah. Ian was oh, just was, so perfectly playing inside the hitbox. No, no not the dude, reversal. Oh, my, wait. Oh, oh that, that was a sick so attempt. Much. Yeah, a uh, sick attempt. That's the best. There's no weapon. Oh, oh, he perfect. kicks him he away. Steals it oh, away. He my kicked gosh. Laura's away and grabbed the weapon. He can finish it right now. Whoa. Oh. That's it. Oh, no, no. Man. You, you thought. I thought. Everyone thought. No, please. Okay. What's going to happen here? Oh. Dodge the side signature. No, finish him. This is it. <gasps> okay. Oh, no. He might be able to make it back. No. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. We did yes. it. We're going to game five. Oh, I Oh, man, all those Dude. Ian haters out there. There were so many of them. We Don't really, you guys feel stupid? We were, we were literally holding our breath in that last, like, can, can you make it? Right that here, was so right, crazy. Right here, it's like, oh, wait a second. We dodged that know, weapon throw. I don't throw. know if he can make it. Oh, and the side air yeah, comes yeah, yeah. through. And that was enough to Shoot. just barely pick Dude, those. just barely. That's why there's three exclamation points after game on that. On that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, we, that's we can detect how radical that was, and, and it that was, was rad. that was three exclamation points worth of radicalness. Okay. I'm like I am Game energized five, now. Dude. This is this is so esports right now. Right? <laughs> this is so it's e too esports. This is, this is way too. But e we can't we can't back down now because we're at game five. Woo, this is the yeah, pinnacle. We're actually we're at the height. And of this. we're on the lower side of the bracket, right? So this is an elimination match. Am That's I correct? That's right. Yeah. Whoever am loses this is out of the tournament in seventh place. Whoever wins this moves on to top six of the tournament, which is just. The thousands of dollars at stake in a single match as we go further and further into this bracket. Oh, no. Okay, yeah. sticking with the same legends, Ian is uh, Game five. gonna stick with Three, his guns here. Two, Back on Brawlhaven. One. See, like I said, if he can't beat Lorez on Brawlhaven, he can't beat him anywhere. And he just proved he could do it. And now that he knows that, oh boy, oh. is he really oh. off to the races Whoa. now. Ian with the Whoa. craziest okay. start we've Laura's, ever seen. Lorez with a very rude awakening Whoop. is realizing Ian. that Ian is entirely formidable to win okay. this entire set. Okay, Ian, just Holy. out of control, what running is, amok. Go for it. Just happened Everything to works. Ian. Don't back down now, Ian. Yes, go for it. One more. You got it. Did he, did he chug down an energy drink yes. in the last match? Oh my. Yes. Less than 
than 30 second knockout from Ian. He's been playing off the back foot this entire set. And for the first time in the whole set, he is in the lead and he is controlling this outcome. My Big. goodness, he is, he is yeah. just on it. This was huge, and it's a big payday for any Ian what? believers. Dude, the crazy offstage engagements he's going for, he's really Yeah, now with the lead, himself. he's, like, playing so much more unpredictably, and he's, like, starting to feel himself. He's going for the, all these unorthodox options. Okay, wait. Oh, oh, good maneuver by Ian to get away from that smart, ground pound. Yeah, Double smart, down air. Because that was that would have been. Oh, what? What? How did you get around? No, no, no way! Oh, Ian! One more! Oh my God, <laughs> Ian! <laughs> he is popping off! I cannot believe how well he is doing. He's two Dude, socks ahead. Ian's... This is game five. There's no second chance for Loris here. Yeah. Loris is supposed to win this. It's in the script. Yeah, we wrote it out that <laughs> They're way. They're going off script right now. Ian does not care about the script. He's broken kayfabe. He is off on his own tangent here. And this is incredible. I mean, with a name as tame as Ian, you, you want me? Yeah, perfect way. <laughs> he's already blasted. It's been a long set. He knows what's up, dude. Oh, did, dude you, did you see how he wanted to? Yeah, walk I know. Into I it? know. I, like, oh, I, Ian popping I felt, off again? I Hot felt swap? It. Catches the side light somehow? Dodges the down light? Is he? No, there's no okay. way. There's no way he three stops. Though, there right? is a way, like, and you might see it right Go! now. Oh, oh, that was nuts. Oh man, okay. that was nuts. Okay, dude. okay. He was playing for the three stock right there. He that was for the highlight reel. Yeah, that was oh, out of control. Man. Okay, yeah. Laura's can anything Laura's stop glad Ian? He, glad he didn't get clipped. He's, he's okay. Wait, double. What if he just clipped him right now? He could. He totally could. Wait a second. Don't count power out. This is. You mean Lores? Oh, Whoa, Lores! Yes, I did mean Lores, and somehow he's tied up the stocks. No mm. way he brings this back. Are you yeah. serious? That would be so ridiculous. It would be ridiculous. It's exactly the kind of thing that would happen. Ian knows that he's in a position where no. he just needs to land one you, big yeah, maneuver. Yeah, you know he's just like watching it happen. Like no way, he's bringing it back. He's bringing it back. Uh oh. Was running low on options off on the side of the stage. Lores to make a move oh, for the mainland. Comes back up top. Rearm to the bow. Now back to the edge. Ian. Laura is being really careful about his options here. Yeah. Nice neutral air again. No, no way. Do no not way. let this happen. He's going. No, no, he's no. going to do it. Ian. He's going to do it. Ian. You can't. They're be both going to win. I can't believe Laura has actually brought this back. There was a. No. no what are you? Okay. Disarm. Ian barely survives. He has no weapon. No. Oh again. my God. He's still, Ian. How is Ian still alive? Oh. No way. Amazing. What? Oh my goodness. How did Loris actually bring it back from that? That is so ridiculous. Dang. He was down two stocks. He, I, I, we haven't seen anybody get dominated like that in the entire tournament. That was and the earliest KO. He brings it back. He was in like yellow ochre for a second, caught him with the recovery on bow at the top, and then just never let off the gas on this <laughs> final stock. And that's it. Look at this here. Full power, what? ground power from the top rope. Loris comes away with it. I cannot believe it, dude. That what? is so insane. Thank you so much, though, for Ian. That that set is an all-timer. That was amazing. That was an all-timer. That goes down in history. That was incredible. Game what five, first we've seen so far on our, in our, any of our blocks, and I was quite entertained. I'm not going to lie. What that was sick. Comeback. That was I, so sick. How did Loris keep it together? Well, you know, the like, thing is, in the beginning of that set, we're like, is Ian even going to get a game off this guy? <laughs> right, and then yeah. we had him on lock to win game five. He was up two stocks. In game five, it was yeah. about to be over. I mean, he was a downlight recovery away for th three stocks. Yes. He was a downlight recovery away from winning. And somehow, Laura's locked it in. He he landed everything. He, w he went for every risk he could take. He took it. And if he didn't succeed, he didn't get hurt for it either. He still didn't get punished for it. Laura's somehow brought it back. I am so impressed from the play from both of these players. That was so amazing. Oh my goodness. Man. Whew. Okay, All right. let's recap real either. quick. Here's what we just watched. We came in to South America top eight, and coming into top eight, we saw Kinda defeat Fiend, and then Yuz defeat Sack, but then Wesley defeated Power, and now Laura's defeated Ian. Now let's take a look at what's coming up next here as we enter top four of the South American Spring Championship. It's gonna be Sack versus Wesley, and then Fiend versus Lores actually happening in the lower bracket.
Kaina versus Yuz oh. is happening as well. And wait a second, did I just hear? Did I hear this correctly? Right. We actually got a clip of Steven's backflip. Okay, well. Oh, I, I, thought mean, that, I thought that only happened off stream, but you guys well, are actually it. about to witness. No, let's see it, dude. I, you, yeah, Here you it would comes. think you would think that he would have been. A, whoa! whoa, dude, he backflips so oh, hard, bro. Watch this. And then he went backwards. Did I didn't tell flip? you guys he did it. He he did a backflip bounce. Oh. Into a front flip. Dude, that was so nasty. Dude, you are yeah. so sick. Dude. Well, wow. What wow, can I say? Wow. I was inspired by Ian, honestly, there. I know, that, was, I, that was too much. Like, it was very impressive, dude. It was very impressive. Whoo! What an amazing tournament we've had so far. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to be back with the rest of South American Spring Championship. There's so much coming up. There's so much awesomeness to be seen. Stick around, because you don't want to miss it. The South American Spring Championship going down tonight.
Six competitors remain for the South American region here at the Spring Championship. We've got Kaina and Yu's, Sack and Wesley, and Fiend and Laura's. Only two can earn that flight and hotel to the Spring Royale, but of course, always, there's one who will be crowned the victor and the champion of the Spring Championship. Yeah, so it's a little harder for these guys. They don't get the leeway of having the three slots. It's only two of those bad boys, so it's going to be a lot more scrap and a lot more weight on your shoulders once you get further and further in. We have six left. It's going to start dwindling down, and then you're going to see the light at the end of that tunnel trying to make it into those last two to get that trip. Well, we'll see uh, who we end up uh, watching, but, of course, let's catch up with who we already watched. We, of course, had the earlier part of the top eight, but we've got Ian and Laura's. That just happened before the break. Up next, we've got Sack and Wesley. So we're staying on the elimination side of things. Following that will be Fiend and Laura's. And then after that, we'll be going back up to the top side to meet up with Kaina and Yu's. It's going to look good, man. I like what we have left. I saw uh, Wes playing earlier, man, and man, his Tesca is top notch. I mean, but with any character he plays, he brings so much heat. He's always doing something flashy. He's always taking risk. And like a lot of the time, you see people that take a lot of risk. It doesn't work out for everybody. But for him, I mean, he's like 80% on his hits when he really goes out there and he tries to get you out of there. Yeah, I mean, his boots plays are, have definitely been impressive. And fortunately for him, he's going from an Asuri to another Asuri. He's going from power now into Sack on the Asuri. Um, Sack has historically kind of been that underdog. I mean, I will admit, when we went to the Winter Royale, I consistently kind of dogged him and was like, he's He's the, the bottom person here. Uh, but no, he definitely did very well for himself. Ended up with a top four finish at the Winter Royale. So definitely someone to keep an eye on as... Uh, okay. Yeah, we didn't get to... <laughs> We're not going to get started yet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, in the meantime, you know, I'm looking at this guy named Steven over here, and I and I heard that he did a backflip off camera. Yeah, they he does a back he did a front flip and a back flip, and then like a triple flip, and then he did when gainer. I was walking over here, they were like, "Hey, you have to you have to one up that," and I I don't know how I'm gonna do that. Okay, well check me out. Okay, I am the most athletic caster, and I'm the fastest caster uh -huh. of all of us, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and let y'all know. Y'all want to see me do a backflip real quick? Okay. You want to see me do it again? Oh, snap. Twice I mean, in a row? like, come on, dog. It's, it's, so it's, fast. It's too quick. You you probably didn't even see it, but they'll show you all the slow motion. Yeah, they Later will. on, maybe. Maybe tomorrow Thea, or something Thea like that. Thea is probably the only one who could catch that one. That was pretty quick. Thea, yeah, that's who taught me that. If you notice, I've got the hat on. You, you know what I'm hat, saying? Yeah. That's who taught me that speed. Well, we got time. You could probably do another one if you want. All right. All right, we're ready for the next yeah, match. That was really good. That was good. Um, <laughs> Sack locked in here. Wes locked in. I don't. I don't know what just happened with them. Like the the flips I saw, that was great. Yeah. But the uh, the getting into the lobby and then going nah, and then now they're going into it again. I don't know what that was about. But I guess it's it's you know what uh, hands washed. We're good to go. Going back to Demon Island for game number one. All right. Hopefully, we really get to see some tussling. Three. This is, you know what I mean? I feel like everyone understands this is the most exciting region, right? Like, yeah. I, I love how they, they they wear their heart on the sleeve with the fighting. And here we go. We get to see some of that already throwing out. Big Reeds tried to steal the first stock from Sack. Man, that side sig. If that hit, that would have been impressive. But still, a great start for Wes's. He's he's not done. He, oh, my goodness. Sack might be done off that recovery. Holy. Dear Lord, man. You don't even get to play that. That stock was almost as fast as my backflip. <laughs> almost. That was crazy. 
Oh my goodness. And he's, he's still going at it. Sack coming in. He's had no time to breathe as he's still trying to find some damage onto West, but West with the falling nair into the Ensig again. Goes for another Ensig. Not going to hit this time. This is what Wesley does, right? He does not allow you to breathe. There's no little moments where you get to hop around and think about what you want to do next and reassess the situation. He is forcing the issue at all times. And it's impressive because, like, again, he's coming in with the gauntlets as the primary weapon in this one. Generally, we're used to seeing the Tescas out there come in and be like, oh, I'm all about those boots, throw away the gauntlets immediately. But no, Wes is coming in here, and he's doing that work with the gauntlets. One of the things that, that works for him is because he's really SIG heavy, and I think that the gauntlet SIGs are better, in my opinion. So, I mean, it makes sense for him to stay on those heavily, and he's he's definitely got the side, the edge play down with those bad ones. Yeah, I got to agree. Oh, I'm a big fan of those gauntlet SIGs. The down SIG in particular, that kind of uh, frog splash, that uh, belly bounce, as some might say, definitely a fun one. Down like ground pound, though, from West will keep him in the lead. Unarmed gauntlets, boots, he doesn't care, man. He's going to press you, and he's going to get you up out of there. But uh, that that, uh, that move, I call I call that off the top ropes. Okay, yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's exactly what that is. If there was actually ropes, he would definitely jump off the top ropes and belly flop on you. But we see Sack getting some good damage in here. It's actually a little bit more even than you would expect after that first stock. If he can find the KO right there, we have a tied game, ladies and gentlemen. Very clean play from Sack, bringing this one back. Because, again, West started this one off very impressively. And Sack's still holding on strong. Now it's time for West to bust out the boots, see what he'll do with these. As he goes again for that D-Sig, that's kind of been a fatal flaw of his. As Sack gets a huge string, because that was a burned air dodge from West. Yeah, that was perfection. Yeah, he tried to hit that gravity cancel, but the ground pound is going <gasps> to... Whoa! Yo! Are you serious right now? That uh, ground yeah. pound was it. I don't know what happened. Wes went down there for something else, and then he just got sideswiped, man. Oh, my goodness. I got to believe Sack was watching that earlier set of Wes versus Power, where Power comes down, and he, like, tries to hit Sack and – or, sorry, tries to hit Wes and ends up letting Wes get back. Sack's having none of that. He's just going to slap Wes away and get game number one. That was clean. He, yeah, I saw it that time. He tried an extra ground pound, an unnecessary one, and, and it cost him the game. Wow. That's got to be that's got to be pain, man. It can't feel good. Well, neither can these uh, kicks to the face, but right now i uh, going to have to shake off all of the damage that's being done. Sat comes in, gets a nice two-piece, couldn't quite get the read with that second down light, but still keeping the guitar pressure going. He's been finding – I think this is the most consistent strings I've seen, like, this whole weekend so far with uh, the guitars and these Asuris. Oh, my gosh. He did not touch the side. I thought with the recovery he did touch the side. No, he got clipped, and that will be the first stock of West. Talk about applying pressure. Sack is giving him a taste of his own medicine. Yeah, West must have slid right along that wall but never actually got the wall touch there. And now he is a full stock behind. We'll see if he can do what Sack did in the last game. Bring this one back as a nice jumping Jeez. stand. Oh, West, can he finish it, though? Sack gets back up at the end, Sig. Needs a little more. Down like ground pound, and West cleans up the stock. So clean. The combo going back to the stage, landing the signature, and then getting the unarmed KO. He did all three weapons in one sequence. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a nice little clip right there to show everything that you can do. Even had a SIG inside of it, and now it's time to bring out the gauntlets, but he goes for the end SIG, and Sack stays to the outside, doesn't get caught by it. Very good defense on Sack's side. You know what I mean, he really tried to make sure that he had the read. It was a good reaction, too. He saw it start up. He noticed what side he was on, just hit the fastball down. Well, actually, he dodged down. Uh, this time, not able to dodge out of that string. Landed the sideline into recovery. Almost had the stock. This time, landed side air. Trying to find him. Couldn't get the signature. And here it is. Sack has life on the stock. No, he doesn't. What am I talking about? <laughs> no, it's Wes with all the life in that one as he hits the downlight recovery to take down Sack's stock. Uh, really good recognition from Wes. Could have gone for the side air, but because he was, like, basically dead center on the map, he's like, this one might be a little bit closer. Yeah, that was good stuff. I like the recognition of positioning. These guys, are, like, they think really fast. Like, for them to play as fast as they do and create this, the pressure that they do, they're so accurate on what needs to be done and when. Yeah, I got to say, South American brains are probably overclocked. They're, they're going in a very fast refresh rates. <laughs> All right. Trying to get back on stage. We got Wes. He's got the boots on, and he has nothing. He's going to come back barefoot. Going to try to find which weapon he's going to get. I think he's primed for the uh, gauntlets at this moment, right? He might be, and uh, yeah. yeah. 
definitely not uh, something to be shy about because his gauntlets did a lot of work. I mean, even in that last one, 397 of the damage that he dealt was on those gauntlets. Ooh, not able to pick up the end sig. Sack going down, staying low. Yeah, Sack starting to make really good reads after the uh, first hit now. Uh, as opposed to the first game, he was kind of getting clipped back to back to back to back. Now, he's a, uh, I mean, he's got the damage. He's got the damage deficit, but we've seen what you can do with these guitars. If he gets a touch, man, it can look really grim for Wes. Yeah, but Sack's going in with these nares. Not really a common tool for like setting up into those long strings. Just kind of tapping away at Wes. But the down sig <laughs> and Wes gonna take game number two. He is very effective. I think. Of any of the Tuskas out there, you got to be wary of Wes's signature usage. Oh, yeah. He hit him with a where do you think you're going. <laughs> he let him go past him and just snatched him up. That was nice. Hit the slow-mo on and everything. <laughs> Wanted to watch him uh, spin those boots. Oh, yeah. Clean. Nice pivot. Hits him with the sig. Instantly into the taunt. Knows this game. Yeah, he knew he had that one. And, of course... That's a dub in the pocket of Wes, tying it up one apiece as we go over to Apocalypse for game number three. Game number three starting off, and the boots are looking good to kick it off. Going for another Sig read. It gives the opportunity for Sack to go get a weapon, but Ooh. he's still getting pieced up, man. He's over here on the side, has no way to get around it. He doesn't know what to do. He's just getting swung on. He's trying stuff. Look, he's just throwing out neutralizer. and nothing's the right answer. Yeah, nothing Sack has thrown out so far has really hit West basically untouched. Finally, that neutral light can add a little bit of damage onto West. But, man, if West finishes off this stock soon, this is going to be a very rough start for Sack. Very rough, but he's been here before, game number one. So, I mean, he can bring it back, but you still don't want to have to be in that situation. All right, now, Sack not opting to swap weapons. In fact, it's going to be West who swaps over to the gauntlets, likely going to look for a setup for that recovery. Both of them did not want to engage for a little bit there. Sack waiting for those signature opportunities, trying to get his punishes. He's actually almost even the damage output. And this was what I was kind of talking about, right? Like, Wes got all this damage at the front, but he didn't get the stock. So Sack still has all this opportunity to bring this one back. Neutral Light still not going to KO. Edge guard. Wes backs away. No down sig on the wall this time. Okay. Dancing on the side of the stage, got the two exclamation marks. That Sarah was a great option coming through the platform. Doesn't get it, but he will get the recovery on the other end and get that KO. Sack, after taking a beating to start this one off, comes away with the first stop. And that Nair is not going to do it for Wes either. He built up all of this damage, but at the end of the day, it's all about getting those stocks, getting those KOs. Needs that big hit, and Sack's the one who's getting those big hits right now. Yeah, he's getting some really meaningful touches. That one's going to mean a lot for Wes. He needed to stop the bleeding. Here we go. Which, op which weapon? He's going to go for the gauntlets. After having a good performance with the with the boots, I mean, I feel like just rack up the damage and then get your KOs with the gauntlets, but he just wants to play neutral with them. Yeah, I mean, even looking at the last one, we talked about, oh, okay, into the end sig. Goes for it again. He's not getting that second hit that he wants in that off stage. Uh, but looking at the damage numbers, even in the last game, put out 306 damage with the gauntlet. So he definitely has been putting out more damage on these gauntlets. That is true. That is true. I feel like, yeah, that was probably the best sequence he had with the with the boots. Boom, oh. bam. Oh, yeah. Yep, okay. So how about rack up the damage with the gauntlets and then close them out unarmed? How about that? That's definitely the close. Definitely a, a strategy Wes could incorporate. And again, like you said, he's been very effective with those signatures on the gauntlets. So wouldn't be too bad of an idea. Now he's got, uh, we're in game number three, and he already has three uh, D-like ground pounds as his KO option. So, I mean, this dude can do it in any way he wants, it looks like. Yeah, got to be wary of those, like, offstage engagements. Like, Wes throws away his weapons. It just means he's bringing out the big weapon. That's right. That's the toes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, what a catch. No still the sweat beads still there. Two stocked. Wes coming through and making this two to one. I, I, I got to say, like, this match feels like one of those things of, like, if Sack wins on stage, if he plays really solid neutral, he could probably run away with it. But on the other side, Wes, all of these clips, you got to believe all about those edge guards. If he gets you in the offstage engagement, you are going to struggle. So it really comes down to, like, who's playing their game. Is Sack going to get that on stage, or is Wes going to be able to shove this to offstage? Yeah, exactly. And the thing about Wes offstage is he's forcing you to make decisions. 
he doesn't do like hover bait. He doesn't come out there and be like, oh yeah, I'm, uh, you're scared of this attack and I'm waiting for you to dodge. No, he's gonna force you to dodge and you better be right because he's trying to get you out of there at all means. Oh, and we're seeing Zack make a swap. Throughout the entirety of the Winter Royale, he was all about that Asuri, but today, making the swap over to the Ken, the Emo Ken, as Sparky uh, said it earlier today. Emo Ken, I, you know what? That's fitting. I'll go with that. <laughs> I will go with that. Got the That's hair dye and Ken. everything. Listening to some, some MCR while he plays. Dude, he's even got the flaming skull orb. Like, that's that's emo Ken for sure. <laughs> Wait, is it a flaming skull? I don't know. It's a flaming something. Yeah, I think that's a flaming skull. You think he's ever heard of closing the door? <laughs> 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 All right, so trying to get this orb to do something, but oh! ain't getting nothing. Wes climbing the ladder all the way to the ceiling, getting that first stock out of here. Sack running around trying to get his next weapon after getting just demoralized on that first stock. He's got the gauntlets out. He wants to do a, a mirror match, but no, nope, Wes has them boots out, and he's going to have to deal with these kicks. Yeah, what is better, the fists or the feet? We'll see in a second, because Sack needs these fists to hit. Because, again, we are on the elimination side of things, and Wes is already up two games over Sack. Yeah, he, I mean, he's got the Fist of Fury. Okay, Fist of Fury right back at him. I was going to say he was going to have the Fist of Fury versus the Toes of Terror, but it doesn't matter. Now we got double Gauntlets out. A lot of damage on the West. Tries to go for the Shoryuken. Un it's not going to hit. Okay, going to go right under the off the ropes. Ooh. Nice dodge from West. Looking for the weapon. Gets him, gets the boots, but... Ooh, I thought... It, dang, I didn't think he was going to have his dodge back yet. Got it just in time, managing to get out, but Sack is starting to find that damage again. He's bringing this one back. Wes, okay, nice. turning around, gets the Sair. Sack gonna get back, avoids the down sig. And he's clean with those picks. He went up a little bit higher, he's catching that, but that was a nice movement from Sack. Ends up taking the stock off. Good job. And, oh, oh man, oh. that's a good combo. Luckily, he couldn't extend, but he does find an extension after touching the ground, and it's going to KO my goodness. That's a full stock advantage to Wes. I'm surprised he wasn't going for Delight Recovery. I'm not sure why he didn't do it, because I'm pretty sure it's true off the Gravity Cancel as well. But either way, he still managed to pick that one up. That was cool. Oh, yeah, instead of going into the side air? Yeah. Yeah, because he was super high up. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, he had recognition that yeah. he was at such damage. Either way, he's going to get the KO, I guess. Yeah, whatever he did definitely worked out as he's currently one stock away from knocking Sack out of this one. Again, Sack was the one who represented the South American region at the Winter Royale. Sack was holding all Ooh. that pressure. He was keeping it together, keeping his composure, but pressure bu oh, oh. pressure bust pipes. And I guarantee that drop kick will break a pipe too. And that will be the end of his winner's run. He's going to go. Wait, that's. No, that's, no, that's, elimination that's the elimination run. Elimination that's run. No, Sack, I'm sorry. Yeah, he is done for the day. That is Sack going home with a fifth place finish. Wes goes into the top four to await the winner of our next match. Man, that like walk up side sig is so good. People just aren't, it's like, you know how like unarmed players will just like kind of walk up and they'll just haymaker and mm -hmm. you're just like, oh man, I fell for that. Same thing, you just walk up, do it. And sometimes people just aren't ready. It's just quick and it lunges, you know what I mean? Like. You're trying to be spaced for like the neutral buttons, and yeah. then you just end up getting drop kicked. Really you miss well time. Done. It's pretty active. You know, you miss time that uh, that dodge. You still get kicked. It's it's a tough one, man. It's a tough one. Definitely can uh, can hurt uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, <laughs> but Fiend and Loras coming up next. How do you feel about this one? Fiend and Loras. I mean, this is probably going to be one of the best sets we see of this night. Like this is this is going to be insane. Two. High octane players, Lores, Spear game, you know what I mean? Like the way he chases with the Sayers, it, it's, it's second to none, you know what I'm saying? And then uh, Fiend, same thing. Same, same thing. thing. Same thing. It's the same dude. They're, they're both the Spider Man looking at each other. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is going to be good stuff. <laughs> and it looks like even chat, not really sure who to root for. Fiend historically has been like that person that everybody loves. So many people have for a long time been huge fans of Fiend, mm -hmm. but he hasn't been finding those successes that people are used to seeing out of him, which is I think indicative of why people are like, mm, maybe not. Maybe maybe we'll root for Lores for this one. I mean, I, you know, I've been calling matches whenever we're up here and trying to like be like, yeah, this is what I think. I don't know either. 
I, I feel like you. this is one where you give it an even spread. I don't know who's going to win this. It just keeps bouncing in between both of them, too. Like, if you just keep yeah. looking at the poll, it's like 49, 51, 52, 48. You know, it just keeps jumping back and forth. Very evenly matched. I mean, in the in the head-to-head, -head, in the statistics, Lorez has the slight advantage in matches going 1-0 over Fiend. Uh, went to game 4-3-1. But at the end of the day, in the winner championship, Fiend got fifth place. Lorez got seventh place. So kind of a toss-up. It really is very close between the two of them. But we'll find out what the actual answer is as we get ready to get into this one. Fiend locking in the Asuri. On the other side, Lorez sticking with the Pearl. I love it. I love the Steven Universe uh, crossovers because first off, that show is fire. Yeah. And then I feel like all the characters, all their animations are just so true. To Not that, I mean, a lot of the characters in Brawlhalla's animations, the crossovers are true to form, but those those are so good. I remember um, when, uh, what was it, Pink Diamond comes out of Pearl's uh, Spear Ensig. I was like, that's sick. That is, yeah, fire. That's amazing. Fire. What is that the replacement for? Uh, a mammoth. The, the, yeah. The, the blue mammoth. It's the, the blue you just got that one? <laughs> Dog, I always just was like, she did the elephant. She got the elephant. Yeah. The elephant is the blue mammoth. Oh, my gosh. You know what, guys? I, I know that I'm not the only one that just figured that out. <laughs> Mine's being blown right now. Laura's not able to slide charge over the corner, though, with that down stick. Instead, just keeping that corner guard. But Fiend's having none of it. Oh, chasing down to the ground pound. Laura's manages to dip down low enough. Yeah, tried to come down there. I cannot believe he didn't try a down there right there. I guess he thought he was going to move out to the right and he was going to go for another play, but Fiend just held strong on the on the side. Back in neutral on the mid stage. Nair hits. Nice job to stay high, but <clears throat> I was going to say he evaded the recovery, but it finally the exhausted version comes out and takes him out. Part of me wants to be really critical of these, like, spear down sigs that Loras keeps doing because... He hasn't even gotten away with him. Like, Fiend has basically punished every single one of them as he picks up that down sig. Yeah. But at the same time, Loris, you know what? He got the first stock, so I can't complain too much. A down sig. He just sat there and looked at him for a second. <laughs> like, I know you're coming over here. <laughs> and he was 100% correct. Now, this is uh, almost 100% even. These guys are really, you know, I thought these these guys would be approaching each other a little bit quicker, right? This is a slow-paced game. They're really, oh, I mean, as he tries to steal a stock off of him. But, I mean, in neutral, they're kind of just chilling and trying to react and see what the other one's doing. Yeah, it really feels like both of them are, like, waiting for that one little moment. It's kind of like in those, like, westerns where they're waiting for the clock to hit noon, and then they start to charge at each other. They're just <laughs> they're trying to find that one tiny opening for them to go full throttle. Yeah, they're de like, because once they get a touch, like, they are ramping it up Whoa. a bit. Slide, he got it. He got the down sig off the slide. Caught Fiend slipping. Yeah, there was, like, three times where he primed Fiend with these onstage down sigs. Then he goes for the offstage. That time didn't get the gravity cancel. You saw him trying to go for the second down light. Instead, end up just doing a jump dare. All right. There goes that Sair. Comes back with a nair. Not going to touch. Now you're on, the, you're on the edge hiding. Wow. I mean, at that point, just do the side sig, right? Yeah, get that extra range. Yeah. I guess he thought Loris was going to leak onto the stage a little bit more, but unfortunately not. He's going to eat a lot of damage, though, getting into this point. Loris still in the second stock. Looking for the juggle, but the Sayer, that was good. Ooh, ground pound a little late there, and Loris with the turnaround down air. Nice dodge through from Fiend. He went for the duff. <laughs> I was looking for a D like ground pound situation. He went for the duff. Ooh. Oh, my gosh, and that's the snatcher Rooney. Laura's feeling good about that one. Rolls the die. He's ready to close this one out. Currently uh, looking solid. Was able to put out 530 damage versus the 321 of Fiend. All of it on the spear. Zero damage with the bow. Held it for a good old 2% of that game. How much unarmed? Uh, 37 damage on the unarmed. 37 36, 37. in all spear damage. I mean, I was at least one for two when I was talking about Lorez being that spear, you know, pinpoint player, the chases with his sayers. I thought Fiend was going to bring a spear in here, but obviously he's just sticking with this Asuri. We've seen so much Asuri this weekend, and I can't be mad at it. The character is just a monster at the moment. Yeah, it is interesting. Uh, South America definitely likes to lean on this Asuri. Of all players, I would have expected Fiend to have more wiggle room, considering we've seen him in the scene for a long time. Of course, we've seen his Nash, we've seen his Hattori, we've seen his Thatch. He's got multiple characters, but it looks like he wants to play this Asuri for right now against Lorez. Yeah, I mean, it was looking okay uh, for a bit last game. It was just moments when 
You know what I mean? Laura has just started to take control. Weapon toss and oh no. He got out of there clean and just punished. I, I like it. I thought he was about to get comboed and he turned it around. Tried to go for a Sarah, no good. Ooh. And there goes Pearly, AKA the Blue Mammoth. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. with the spear and sig on to Fiend and now Fiend a full stock behind Lores. He needs to find a much better answer to Lores right now because Lores is spear looking solid, his bow looking clean as well. Yeah, he didn't use it much last game, but here it is. I'm present, hand in the air. I thought he was gonna do a. Where, where's, the, where's the bow in light? I mean, in, in there. Yeah, he's not throwing any of them out. Very good, especially like for that stock up that they had there. I thought I was going to see it, but two Sayers came out. Yeah, he, I mean, he landed the second one, and so now we're back in. Uh, he's got the edge guard, Fiend, trying to come over and close it out. Mm, went for the D-Light, and it was just a little early. The spacing was a little off, and he was a little early to catch him leaking in with that gravity cancel D-Light. Oh, man, Fiend's struggling here, trying to find that finishing blow. He's throwing out all these heavy moves. Lores slapping him away. Fiend wanted that hit with the exhausted recovery for the chase dodge, but now Lores up in a big way, sitting on three stocks to the one of Fiend. He really wanted that touch, man. And I understand it, but you got to go for the wall. He had a good coverage hitbox, you know, by doing that recovery. And so he just goes to go up and touch that wall, man. That was too much of a gamble. That time he gambles on the signature, gets it, and he is down to one stock. You know what I mean? So. This is his last chance on this one. Yeah, you don't want to give Laura's a two-point lead, a, a two-game lead in this set. Yeah, definitely uh, a very challenging spot to be in when you're down two games. We don't see too often somebody make that comeback. The rough one. It is a very rough one. Oh. Nice combination there. Called him trying to go high. Wait, okay, so what's on that stick? I can't remember. Uh, It was an owl. Right, it is the owl, is but for her it was... I think it's just a pearl, like a pearl clone. Oh, oh, the other, okay, okay. Nice okay. dare coming out from Lores. Lores taking game number two. That one was a commanding game. He is uh, just, he's running wild. He is in complete control. Game one and game two, all about Lores. This time, putting out more work with that, uh, with that bow. 357 damage, like you can see on the screen. 129 with that spear. Great stuff. That spear play, man. And then the, getting to see the bow come out and uh, really do some work. He did a great job when he was off stage, making his way back on stage with it. He did a great job racking up damage with it in his closeout game with his signatures just pinned. Well, now it's on Fiend to make a very tough decision, right? You're down two games. You have a large character pool. But what is going to be that pick? What is going to be the thing that works the best against this spear and bow play of Loras? Oh, man. A character Ooh, swap. Ooh, okay. Hattori. That's, this that's this is kind of like the Fiend classic. This is his uh, – crutch isn't exactly the right word, but it's like that comfort pick. Like, this is like his blanket that he needs to sleep at night. When everything's going wrong, he has to go back to this Hattori. You know, if I had the stream on, I would feel like I was getting cooked, man. Dude, <laughs> dude said, just said I had a blanky dog. Like, <laughs> Yo, you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. If you if you have a thing that you need to help you go to sleep at night, you know what? That's on you. That's fine. I need that. I've been telling you, man. Yeah. I can't rest. But here we go. Getting into this bad boy. I can't believe there's a lot of, a lot of stuff I'm figuring out this week. I didn't realize that was a line back there. Like, <laughs> I thought you're, was, you're learning so much. I'm learning so much. This is so educational. And uh, Laura is trying to teach Fiend the matchup right now, showing him what Pearl is capable of. Oh, oh my oh. God! He's gone. He's gone. He Laura is dismantling Fiend. Fiend already down a stock to Laura. Less than 30 seconds into this one. That was so clean. The way he played that went down low and then came up on the left of him with the fade to the left and hit that Sarah. I mean, yeah, Sarah, that was so good. All right, let's see if we can get some, some spear play, something to work on Fiend's side. Because right now, this is just pure domination, the domination station. And he's going over to the sword, hoping that this will work. Maybe a higher speed sword. Ooh, narrowly reacts in time to avoid getting caught by the Sig there. Okay, nice. Side air. Oh, didn't hit him with the ground pound. All right, I like this. This is this is much better. He's got that sword out, and he's doing very well. Nice air, weapon toss down, but 
Dolores had the dodge in the pocket. Not able to get through that. D. Lysair is going to close that stock out. I like that down sig on the edge there, like kind of a bait out, force Lores to react to something and ends up picking up that side air. And I guess this is literally what Fiend wanted. High movement speed with a sword in hand. Yeah, he's doing great with it. So I'm not upset at this swap at all. Hopefully it's not too little too late. You know, he's down 2-0. He's going to have to do a, a reverse 3-0 to, to take this, this set. But, I mean, we're still looking at Laura's, right? When's Laura's going to get the momentum back is the question. Because if this sword stays doing what it's doing, this is very possible to run this whole thing back. Dude, Fiend's accuracy with down light side air, like, it, it's kind of crazy how many times he has hit that on Laura's so far. But this time, Laura's able to cover himself after throwing out that spear down sig. And Fiend going to go down to his potential tournament stock here. Yeah, maybe that was like his downfall. Being being so accurate with it at first made him start. He was just fishing for it for a second there, and it caused him to lose the stock. But tying the game up with a side signature and uh, getting into this thing, going back to the sword and unarmed. Loris doesn't care. Getting some good damage. Going to land in there. Doesn't go for the recovery chase and now takes over the ground space. Lands a sight light. Doesn't get that nair onto Laura's being yet to get a hit. Finally hitting this final stock of Laura's here in game number three. Fiend needs to win this one if he wants to stay alive here. Yep, got him on the side of the stage. Nice. He's racking up damage. He's doing a very good job. And now he's gonna have to do spear versus spear. It didn't look so good early in this in this match, but right now he's got control. He's gonna land Draw. a huge combo. Weapon toss. Tried to catch Laura's going down, but he goes over the top. Managed to pick up the double down line onto Lores. That's good damage. Now Fiend just needs to finish off this stock of Lores. Neutral line, not going to put Lores off screen. So still has some health to play with. Ooh, the exclamation marks. Oh he knows when you're coming up. You got to be a little trickier. And he caught him slipping. Last time in the other game, he tried that exact situation. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, he missed space the down light. This time he hovered over the down light of Lores and caught him. So that is just collecting data and making sure you capitalize. So he's got one on the board, and he's starting to mount the comeback. Yeah, really good adaptation from Fiend. Like you said, last time got caught by that downlight. This time stayed high above it. Got that gravity cancel downlight to lead to the recovery. And now Fiend's on the board, but he's got to win two more. Otherwise, Lores continues on into the top four. City is roasting back there, my boy. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do not want to live there. Okay, looks like uh, California, but huh? But uh, we got it. we got the double spear to start this game off. Two players, two games for Lores, one game for Fiend. Side lights good, and he's just racking up damage to start. It's looking good for Lores to kick it off, and now we got that sword. Let's see if he can get that gameplay that he had from last game. Yeah, Lores just completely winning in the spear to spear head to head, but Fiend. Starting to mount that comeback again. His sword play is what won him game number three. Nice Ooh. job. He's been kind of like shy on using that recovery after he lands a, uh, a nair. That time he just went ahead and chucked it out. And that's uh, getting a read that Fiend was starting to believe. Okay, he's not going to do it. Now Fiend stuck on the spear for a little bit here. Didn't work too hot on those initial stocks. Good patience. Ends up picking up a recovery. Oh. Okay, I'm liking this. He's landing blow after blow. Ooh, right back at him, though. I don't know what it is. It's something so satisfying about the spear side light. <laughs> it's just so, like, I, like, like the hitbox isn't that big, right? I mean, it's, it's a long hitbox, but it's not like a wide hitbox. So when it hits, it just feels so good. I just like how straightforward it is as a move. It's like, if someone's over there, I'm just going to side light that way. Yeah. All right, down light side air from Fiend. Potential to even up the stock count. Recovery not going to connect onto Lores. Not hitting the side airs. Lores still swinging. Man, he still hasn't closed the stock out. Been a long time coming. Hopefully he can get it soon because he's about to eat some damage. Nice dodge out. Lores committed after knowing he had the dodge on deck, but you know, force him to use it. That makes sense. Yo, but Lores is putting Fiend into the red on the second stock. Side air. Finally, Fiend manages to get this initial stock of Lores. But he is playing from so far behind. Yeah, I mean, luckily he didn't end up losing that stock before he got it, right? But he is highly damaged. If he can rack something up right now, this will be a really good look. Ah, dodged both together. Ooh. The timing went in Laura's favor. Lands that down light. See, changed up the timing. 
That is the same recover he's been using that time. He didn't wait it out. He just did it instantly and got the KO. So again, just went in. Fiend wasn't ready for it. Didn't have the jump gravity cancel in his mind. Now he's got to play the spear to spear again against Lores. I like that from Lores. He tried to dip under him. He's like, right when he does the recovery, I'm going to come right behind him and see if I can catch him. Okay, weapon toss to open up. Mm, whiffed attacks, costing a lot of damage. There you go. He gets a catch. Ooh. Oh, but he risked it all. Yeah, went for a big play there on that end sig. Lores. Again, trading really well against Fiend. Final stock here for Fiend. Mm, he tried to land the down light. He's not going to be able to get that one. Looking for the final hit of this game. If he can get a down light into a Sair, it might spell defeat. Just a raw Sair wasn't enough. Skates across the board a little bit. Slows that momentum Ooh. down. The recovery will do it. And Laura is going to knock Fiend out of this one. Fiend going home with a fifth place finish here at the Spring Championship. Lorez not done yet. He's going to continue on to fight against Wes. Oh, man. Lorez versus Wes? Did they play in Winterside? Uh, let's, let's click this button and see what happens. Hard yes. Brackets. How do they work? How do brackets work? Um, Wes versus... Where is Wes? How long... Wes is... Okay, Wes did not... Because Wes fought Ray Zyger. And who were we just talking about? Lores. Lores fought news to lose. To okay. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, they did not fight each other uh, at all until uh, in a little bit. But before that, of course, we've got Kaina and Yuz sitting on the top side. So we've got our top four. We've got Kaina, Yuz, Wesley, and Lores. Okay. So either way it goes, we got banger matches. But we're going to take a small break before we get to those games. Uh, we'll see you here shortly. And uh, stick around.
that up next we've no got kinda versus use on deck winner of that is of course going to be going into the grand finals and of course getting a guaranteed top two finish uh which means that they get a spot in that spring royale yes sir two people will make it so all right, hold on. Let's, uh, do y'all have the graphic for me? I want to take a Let's look which at which graphic. Uh, the the matches we just saw, the matches we're gonna see. What's there another it is. Graphic? That one know. right there. Oh. All right. So Thank those you. that missed it, we did have Sack versus Wesley. It was actually a really good set. The score shows three one, but I mean they, that was back and forth the whole way through. Uh, so Fiend and Lores, that was. Hold on. It's lagging a little bit. <laughs> it, it, it went three one, but. It, <laughs> the, the last two games, we they have not updated just yet. There you go. There it there's, is. There's a little lag. Fee is not delivering the news over here. All right? Sorry it's about all that. good. Fee, Fee is not. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so Fiend and Lores, that one was the last one we just saw. Fiend uh, had a great showing once he switched over and showed his sword gameplay, but Lores just stood strong. That spear was untouchable. Uh, and that was PR 3 versus 5, and, uh, you know, 5 pulled through. So now. Going into this next one, Kaino versus Use PR1, and I did not see the other I believe it's PR. Two. I'm pretty sure it's two. PR2. Pretty sure. All right. So we got a potential. It could have been a grand finals, but it's going on in winter side, and it could still be it grand It could still finals. be grand finals. It could Definitely still be. Definitely still has finals. potential because, of course, we're here on the winner's final. There's potential for whoever wins this, of course, to go to grand finals, and whoever loses this to go through the elimination side and go into the grand finals as well. But again, it is kind of versus use. I think on the graphic it showed um, Vector for use, but he's been playing the J Yun throughout today from what we've seen so far at least. Oh, clean. I always love seeing that character. Always love seeing that character. But so, you know, as he's been speaking about, we're talking about get, trying to qualify and go ahead and get to the Royale. If whoever wins this is guaranteed going, and then the other one will put themselves in a position where they need to win one more game to get back into that grand finals and get that flight to the Royale. So... Now, with that being said, tell us about the history of these two. Yeah, we got to talk about the history. We got the head-to-head -head kind of versus use 5-4, uh, very narrowly in favor of kind of. But if you look at recency, very heavily in favor of kind of. Won 3-0 twice in this uh, winter championship. And then before that at the autumn championship, 3 0 use as well. So uh, use has uh, definitely not been doing the best against kind of as of late. You know? Sometimes you just have that tournament. Sometimes it be like that. But it always feels the best to overcome versus that person. So maybe this is the day. We'll see what's going on here. We're getting into our winner's finals, kind of versus you's. We got the Jay Yun and another. You would never believe the other character. Another Asuri. Who could have believed South America loves their Asuris, but you's. Loving that great sword right now as he's going for those mix-ups. Not seeing the dodges come out from Kaina, so he's not getting that big dodge read for the extended combo. Yeah, and that's where it always, uh, always they always struggle. I feel like with a great sword, you always have to create situations, figure out the dodge patterns of the other player, and they're obviously trying to throw you off too when it starts off. Then after a while, you turn up the heat after you figure out what they're trying to do. See, a few <laughs> yeah. pokes, right? He's yeah. like... He's all like, right, come what on. are you going to do if Give I keep the doing dodge. this? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, after the poke, you are not dodging. All right, I'm about to tear him up. You know what? He's going to tear him up next time. Oh, no. He had it. The dodge back. The, the, the dodge was wasted, and he could have dashed up and got him something, but failed opportunity. Still getting some good damage. Those pokes are adding up, right? So he's been losing a lot of the engagements, but those pokes have kept the damage pretty close. Yeah, I mean, every time Yuz opens up, he's still getting that damage on the Kaina. Meanwhile, Kaina... Also getting used into the red. Who's going to get that starting blow? Soft punish there with a neutral light, but will lead to a KO with that side air offstage. Good chase from Yuz to make sure that one led to a KO. Yeah, went out there unarmed. That was nice. But, yeah, that was a that was a wild wake up from Kaina. Kaina tried to just catch him slipping. And good awareness from Yuz, but going to tie it up instantly and opt to go for the Katars. Unarmed for a little bit. Yuz is going to be in danger for a little bit. Nice. He just pitter pats him off with a side light and gets the weapon. Now we're going to have Great Sword versus Katars. Ooh, kind of reading big there with that N Sig. Yu's not going to jump into that one. And he gets the read that time, dash back into the neutral light, but still not getting extended strings. He's just opening up kind of a bunch, but there it is. Gets the full three piece, and kind of is going to fall down to his final stock here. What a stock, man. Like, he really 
collected all that data, as I was saying, and he put it to use, man. Yeah, he's just biding his time, hoping that he could find that one opening. He got two. He got two nice openings, oh. and man, chained it. There it is. We're getting some strings now. He's starting to find those dodges of Kaina. Kaina struggling here. Gets a side sig. Will shove, use off stage, but needs to lead to a KO here. That was good from Kinda though. He's seeing the pattern of how Yuz is trying to open him up, and he did a wake up uh, neutral light, got him up off of him. Got the sword, tried to get a D light. It was gonna go into maybe a Sarah, right? I feel like in that situation, maybe a recovery, trying to take him over the top, but it's a high ceiling. He does go for the recovery, and it does work. Okay. Yep, definitely wanted that recovery to uh, knock out, and now he's back to the Katars here. Yuz wants that weapon spawn. Kinda's not gonna try to deny. Instead, was just trying to cover the pickup. Yeah, he stayed around him. Didn't really uh, make any approaches, any advances. And there we go. d Sayer coming out from Yuz. Yuz looking strong in this game. He's going to have to put this sword to Yuz. Tries to go for the neutral signature. Gets a punish on the recovery attempt of Kaina. He had the sweat beads and didn't quite get him, but the Sayer hits him out wide. And he's got the bait. Oh! oh. oh. Dare Nair combo. Yuz with a nice first round. Yeah, really well done from Yuz and uh, solid control there throughout most of that. And a lot of that momentum was built off of that second stock steal on Kaina. You're going to see that in a hot moment here. Look, Kaina started that in orange and Yuz gets the four piece that leads to a KO. And he's like, all right, now I have just a massive lead that he maintains throughout the rest of that game. Mm -hmm. I like that. That was clean. Something you keyboard guys might not know about uh, us controller players, but it's kind of hard to do a dare and then turn around the other way. That sounds like John's. Huh? I said, that sounds like John's. What, who's that's, John? that's some excuses. That's not excuses. <laughs> it's difficult stuff. Most games when you play on a keyboard and a mouse or keyboard in general, I mean, you got more accurate. Sorry if some people can't afford a PC. How about that one? <laughs> Sounds like uh, some skill gap as uh, clearly not an uh, issue here as uh, both players definitely uh, able to hit those pivots that you're talking mm. about. Down sig from Hughes, and he is going to take that initial stock. And we'll see if he can maintain this lead again. Hey, that was that was a, a nice down sig. I honestly don't. I, I find way more use in the in the forward sig. Mm -hmm. I mean the side sig, but man, he placed that perfect. That's I mean, knowing your character. That's a good spot to do it. It's like on those corners because sometimes you can get it to dip down underneath and uh, overall we'll just kind of cover that main stage for a little while there. Mm -hmm. So kind of having a, a lot of trouble dealing with this greatsword. The Jay Yun of Yuz is looking so good. Look at that. Lands a Sayer, but going to end up weaponless. Kind of not really playing too aggressive and tried to guard the weapon, but you snuck in there and gets another great sword. So the next weapon will be a regular sword and finds a good hit. Oh. Ooh, he went for the reset at the perfect time, just the wrong button. Yeah, definitely a lot of damage being done from Yuz, regardless of if he's getting that full reset. Kind of struggling right now against Yuz. I mean, I already talked about it, but the last time these two met in the Winter Championship, kind of won 3-0 twice. Now, Yuz has already changed that history book. Oh, yeah, he definitely did. He took that first one. He's got a lot of damage here. He's on the way trying to take game number two and get two uh, rounds on him. So that's definitely a whole nother story told out on the side. What is the edge guard? Goes for a nair. Oh, the neutral light does not catch. He was trying to keep him from getting his resources back. A good recovery from Kaina. Uh, D-Light recovery from Yuz to take that second stock off. And he's only got him at about, you know, little gold. Dijon mustard. <laughs> nice. Turn Get a little bit more orange. Kind of getting some damage built up here. But again, he's just been playing from behind throughout the most of this set. Yeah, he's definitely been playing from behind every time. It's like... It's because the momentum, man, whenever you get something going, he's really capitalizing. He's he's getting damage up, and he is getting the KOs. He's finding the, the opportunities. And it feels like Kaina's kind of – he's he's playing use his game is what I think the issue is, honestly. Ooh, he's burning a lot floating right above use there. Yeah, he didn't want to get caught, man. I understand. Oh, oh baby. 
Gets them back onto the stage with the side sig. Kind of running out of movement, running out of options. Doesn't even go for the turnaround onto Use there. And Use is going to take game number two. With a two stock. This is uh, this is looking like trouble for Kaina right now. Yeah, that was, man. In this winner's side, to guarantee yourself a trip to the Royale, 579 damage dealt. That means that 398 was done on the other side. Uh, damage per engagement, only 30. But you got to think about the, the, what's going on here. He's, uh, he's, he's getting an engagement by a poke, right? But then, how much damage is he doing when he actually lands the strings? When he landed that one and almost had that reset, he probably did about 65 right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? That is, that's big time. And we get a character swap from Kaina. It's going to be over to the cross. An interesting swap, not something that I expected from Kaina. Of course, uh, known for his Bovar back in the day. He also had the Zol cross. Not exactly expected, but maybe something that's going to work well against Yu's. Right now, use it. he's sticking to his, his same game plan. Just amazing uh, great sword play. Oh, yeah, that's been the answer for sure. His sword's been looking good, but the great sword has been creating leads. All right. Saw the SIGs coming out, kind of staying grounded and just being like, come down here. I know you're going to have to come down here at some point, and I want to scrap with you with these gauntlets. Trying to land some side lights, the dare and the nair coming out from use. You can stay down there if you want to. I've got combos for that, and I got closeouts. Kaina really just covering the ground there. This is actually really good for Kaina. If you stays floaty, okay, gets the end sig, gonna get that initial stock. But like generally, great swords don't want to be in the air. They want to be on the ground for those long strings where they can get those resets. And uh, Kaina has that opportunity, picks up the recovery. He's gonna keep this one closer than it's been in the earlier games. Yeah, I mean, in game number one, it was kind of like this, but then we saw that that used combo. That was when he got that big read and he got that kind of like robbed that second stock. Cool. But nice combo coming out from kind of the blasters looking nice. Almost had a little reset there, but the dodge placement was nice from use. And now use is really running. He is afraid of this one. The blast just takes so much space, kind of swaps to a different set, was running out of ammo there. Gonna be looking for the downlight to set up for the recovery. Use just a tap. Those things hurt. Oh, oh yes! Oh my gosh! He baited him. Oh my gosh! Okay, he couldn't really do much. He got the bait, but like, what was the option afterwards after he got him to dodge? Nice landing neutral right there from Use. Kind of, he is trying to find the setup. He wants the downlight into the recovery, and Use is not giving it to him at all. And Yuse knows what, that's what he wants also, but he's also at the point where, what, the exhausted recovery, he catches him slipping. That thing is pretty slow, so for him to catch that and not get clipped by anything is uh, pretty lucky. Now, here we go. We got kind of on gauntlets. I think his blasters were really, really putting in work. What? Whoa. He's going he's gonna to throw away the greatsword there? He wants the regular sword, I guess for the KO potential. Mm -hmm. Downlight recovery, definitely a very consistent tool for the sword players out there. That makes sense, that makes sense. Nice weapon toss, nice air, and there we go. He's got the KO, and is he opting to? Yes, there it is. Okay, so he sword. definitely just wanted the KO, and he's gonna go back to the gray sword. All right, swapping, priming a second great sword here. Kinda, no weapon spawns, it's gonna be the gauntlets. Okay, so he's stuck on gauntlets. I'm pretty sure he would want those those uh those blasters back, man. Especially with everything on the line, final stocks for him. If he doesn't get this stock first, this will be the end of his winner side run. He's gonna go down to that losers finals and have to take one more game oh. to make it to the Royale. Use trying to solidify the spot. Oh. There coming out. He's got the he dodge. He makes it past D like ground pound. One more. Oh my gosh! A little too high. Both of them back onto the stage. Down or sidelight into the recovery. Kind of takes game number three. He's gonna hold on just narrowly. That, that, that's good. You know, if if he KO'd with a nair, that would have been. You know what I mean? Yeah. That would have been that would have been a uh, perfection. <laughs> <laughs> just narrowly. <laughs> Anyway, 584 damage done by Kaina, 581 taken. So when we talk about, look at how damage, even the damage was there at the top of the screen when you saw those health bars. 
And then, so that means that was the most even game that we've had yeah. so far, right? A three damage two. difference. That was a, a very close game. Oh, yeah. It was down to the wire. The damage told the true story. A lot of time, I don't think the damage tells the story, but that one, that was neck and neck all the way through. Every stock was just right there with each other. So, going into game number four, lead still he held by Yuz. We see the sword is the first weapon and the gauntlets are the first weapon for these two players, and I don't think either one of them want to start with these. Yeah, both of them likely looking for the opportunity to swap weapons. Uh, right now, Yuz honestly looking solid with this sword against Kaina's gauntlets. He is just really taking that space away from Kaina. Yeah, it's not like he's bad with this. I feel like he just knows, like, he doesn't have to, I don't want to say he doesn't have to work as hard. He just does more damage with the great sword. Yeah, I mean, he's just, he's got, he's got more potential to get a lot of damage if he gets that great sword out. Offstage opportunity, kind of is going to go vertical with this one. Sidelight into the recovery. Nice, another recovery, and kind of gets the initial stock. That was clean. That was clean. I like how he jumped out there with him and just instantly grabbed to cancel side side light. That was so nice to the uh, to the backside, right? Catching him slipping, catching him going up onto the stage. That was so nice. All right, so blasters in hand and then use it stuck on the sword. Nice short hop into the grab to cancel down light, down air. Okay, went for the recovery there. Used with the turnaround, but not enough damage onto Kaina just yet. Goodness. Okay. Does he switch or does he just stick with this? He just wants the downline recovery, right? Looking for it, he can't find it. He's trying to find the moment, but he's gonna get downlighted into a nair. Catches the recovery, Sair. Kinda in the driver's seat, trying to take him home to victory. Yu's just hoping for something big to hit onto Kinda. He needs to finish this off. Double end light goes for the immediate neutral finisher, but it's not enough onto Kinda. Yeah, that thing takes a lot of damage. That one will do it. But yeah, that double neutral light, that takes a lot of damage to get the KO on that. Yeah, it's funny. The uh, neutral finisher does less when you go straight into it versus if you go for it as like the third hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. But kind of does end up cleaning it up, gets that recovery. And now swapping over to the gauntlets, despite how much work he did with the blasters a second ago, he's like, I feel like gauntlets right now. He, he did amazing with those gauntlets, man. That, that first stock was crazy. The very true. He, he was able to put out a lot of damage with his gauntlets as well, but use with the great sword. This is his opportunity. He's been very effective with the great sword in this matchup against Kaina. Yeah, and he's been stuck on the regular sword a lot. You can see there's a big difference on the board when he just has to play that weapon. When he plays this, he look like look at him even in the game up. Like he's just staying on top of him, but now he has to deal with this, the blasters matchup. Lands a nice little uh, dodge read with an insig. Boom, bam. Still not enough. Takes a lot of damage for that. And now he's going to go for the sword for the KO on the stock. And kind of struggling to get damage on this final stock. He had so much potential to get a lead over Yuz, but Yuz stole it all away off his greatsword. Goes for a sayer there. Surprise. The nair's been so effective. But he does manage to pick that one up. And now we're going to the final stocks here in game number four. He cleaned that second stock up. That was beautiful, beautiful uh, great sword gameplay to rack up that damage like that and then found a timely KO. That weapon toss into the uh, neutral light, perfection. Now he's having to deal with these gauntlets and kind of has been looking strong on these bad boys uh, in this particular round, but not really able to get too much going. Lands a side sig. Just kind of walk up side sig with uh, the gauntlets. Nice falling dare there. Down light into the recovery. Not quite enough. Chasing high. Goes for a Sayer at the top of the map. Ooh, he tried to turn around on him twice. He's not dodging. He's just taking these pokes. Is Yu's going to be able to capitalize on the fact that he's not dodging? He doesn't want to give him a reset. Oh, he goes over the close. sword. Okay, so hold on. He wants that D-Light recovery. Yeah, but he, he had it. Like... If you look at what you were seeing oh, from Kaina, the neutral sig from Yuz. Oh, my gosh. I only remember seeing that one time earlier, and it was a clean whiff. That one was perfection for the set. Yuz able to close it out 3-1 over Kaina, guaranteeing a top two finish and guaranteeing that spot in the Spring Royale. 
Now Yuz gets to sit in the grand finals and chill for a hot minute while we watch the other matches play out. We've still got Wesley and Laura's on the bottom side, but man, Yuz's greatsword was incredible. 413 damage put out on the greatsword in that last one. Yeah, that's so good. So good. I mean, and then he's, he's at 652, so that means that he got some great damage with his regular sword also, right? Yeah. He had some good plays with it. He was getting it. I like how he was very decisive on this is how I want to KO. He racked up the damage with the great sword, and then he always was switching over to the regular sword for a downlight recovery. He was landing good sayers. He he was pretty, you know, just cookie cutter with how he was going to play that game, and it worked out. Yeah, he had a very clear game plan, and he stuck to it and uh, was not uh, dissuaded at all when kind of made the swap. And now uh, we go over to the elimination side of things where we get to watch Wes versus Laura's. Boots still in the building. Boots in the building. And we're going to be going up against the Pearly. That Blue Mammoth thing is, things got me messed up, man. Like, <laughs> it's stuck yeah, in your head. It's got me Every time cooked, you think about dude. It, like, oh. oh, yeah. Yo! <sighs> no. Okay, thank you all to... Okay, there we go. Wait. A little overcorrection there. Hold on. Come on. Hold on. Bring it, yeah, bring it back. On, bring on. it back. Put it towards the middle, dude. Let me give you some stats for you uh, <laughs> psychopaths who think Lores is going to win. Uh, currently 2-0 in favor of Wes. That is a 100% win rate in favor of Wes. Uh, six out of the three uh, – sorry, sorry, six out of the nine games they played against each other, Wes has won. Uh, last time they met, winner championship, Wes won 3-1. Before that, it was at the summer championship of 2022 where Wes won 3-1. Too. So West definitely favored in this one, but apparently chat feels very differently. They definitely feel different. I mean, started off, it looked like they had 100% on Wesley. I don't know what happened. But, yeah, we're down to 29%, 71% saying Lores. I mean, I feel like when I've watched them, it's looked very, very, very close. So, I mean, I don't disbelieve that Lores can win, but also Wesley is just, that dude's a different animal in the same beast. Yeah, it, it, Wes is, is absolutely insane, but I guess, uh, you know what, they watched Lores do very well in his matchup against Fiend, and maybe that's why they're so believable, that, or it, they, they have so much faith in Lores in this one. But either way, uh, currently, the winner of this goes into the top three. This is a fight for the podium here between Wes and Lores. Right on, all right, yeah, get, trying to get into the podium. You will get in the podium. That doesn't mean three, you get two, guaranteed one, first or second to get that flight, but... Still get you get you a nice chunk of change, you know what I mean? I ain't mad at that. So let's get into this bad boy. We got boots already, and then we got the spear. You know, for me, honestly, this is gonna be a learning uh, curve, right? I'm gonna figure out how this matchup is. I want to see what the what the uh, spear has in store for the boots, but it looks like <laughs> you're getting mixed up. <laughs> Wes with the side swaps, even led to a side sig on that one. Now he's over to the gauntlets here against Lores. Lores doing a really good job again. He's got that spacing advantage. That's one thing he's probably going to try to lean into in this matchup Ooh. is a lot of those side airs and neutral lights. Gets the pogo, and Wes going to fall here. Lores takes the first stock. Lores with a clean sayer there. He did, he did not go over the top. He was not looking for a dare. I mean, that's what I was talking about with him. He's always fishing for, for sayers, and he's so good with them. Yeah, he's been he's been very precise with his Sarah usage. Actually, like basically all of his uh, spear attacks have been incredibly accurate. Nice double pogo onto West. West trying to get in on Lores. It is just not working. So I guess uh, I'm learning what I wanted to learn. That keep away game is looking very strong. West is being controlled right now. Oh, Yo. Yo. <laughs> that style was nasty. All right, the side air West trying to finish off the stock. Wants to keep this one even, but Loras is getting that damage onto West. Throws out the down sig, goes for a double down light into the recovery. Okay, chat knew something I did not know. They Clearly. definitely knew something Clearly. I ain't know because that was golly, man. What a performance so far from Loras. Right, he's got the bow now. See if he even gets to play with it. I mean, he's at, he's at the cusp of KO on this stock. Ground pound's going to do it. Pivot ground pound at that. Nice job from Wes. Yep, denies the three stock there, but still a full stock behind. Lores gets the weapon spawn on the right side. Wes needs to pick and choose how he gets in on top of Lores. And, I mean, he's he's been having a big struggle. I mean, honestly, after seeing how... Loras has kept him out with these with these boots. I would be very impressed if he stuck with his character in the next game. But that's only saying that he can't bring this back, right? 
Maybe he can turn this bad boy around, but it's looking very, very in Loris' favor. Yeah, this is looking real nice for Loras. West starting to play a little bit more of a spacing game, trying to drag Loras into his space so that he can kind of get those turnarounds. But Loras with the pogo, with the weapon toss, with another pogo, with another weapon toss, and Loras going to take game number one. Man, he tried it. I mean, I like the option. He tried to win that save and touch the wall, but no good. Only 290 damage coming out. Two, 260 damage coming out on his end. Uh, g getting... Hit for 492 damage. Laura has put on a clinic. I mean, right there, he didn't even have to do the double downlight. I feel like he could have just did one downlight into the recovery and got that KO, right? You know, sometimes you got to play a little extra. Sometimes you got to get that, that niceness. And, of course, uh, 492 damage put out, 461 of it put out on the spear of Laura's. 54% <laughs> accuracy on his light attacks. Like, Laura's just did so much work with his spear in that one. That Wes is like, you know what? I, I like that weapon, too. I'm going I'm to switch over to the Orion for game number two. This is what I'm talking about. Three, you know, two, honestly, one. I love Wes's uh, Artemis, mm -hmm. but his Orion is very good. So either way, we're in for a treat getting into this one. He's the first one with a weapon trying to deny. Went for a downlight, but he's going to allow the bow to get in Dolores' hands. And now trying to create a neutral situation, but he's just getting juggled. Dolores could not get down. Finally going to land a nice bowstring. Yeah, Wes had some good pressure on Dolores there. Going to make the swap over to Lance. This is what Wes is historically known for. He's been an incredible oh force my. with the Lance, and you can see why as he gets the edge guard on Dolores. He said, okay, you're not going to disrespect my boots like that, bro. Let me tell you, let me show you what I'm really about. And went and got that Lance, and he is really showing him what his name is. He's like, sit down, baby, bro. It, it's time. <laughs> All right. Okay, so he's going to land a dare coming back down. He's going to get a little bit more okay. damage. Nice. Lands right inside the body. So why not go for the down seat? Yeah, a really good option there from Loras. You, you heard it start up a second ago. He knew that Wes wants to be stacked up with the way that he's playing that Lance and that time spot dodge and then throughout the down sig. And now Loras getting some good damage built up on his spear. That was a nice sequence. He landed some good damage. Back to back hits. Now he's got the edge control. Ah, Sarah would have been the option right there. He went for a nair thinking that Wes was going to come in. Woo. Got him in a bad situation, but fighting back. Wes not going to go down, laying down. Ooh, some, goes for the sig. There's no punish. Some rare drops from Wes. He's not getting those follow-ups off his side light. Avoids the end sig. Throws out one of his own off the side light. Wes still playing from behind, though. Well, actually, well, he's got the lead, but like he's, got, he's a game behind. He can't sleep yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. Nice cleanup. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I meant. <laughs> I know what you meant. Oh, okay. Lands in there. Lores was trying to find him. I like it, right? So now we're seeing Wes is, is just fighting back on every interaction. He's got a lead, and he knows that he just needs to build damage. So even if he gets touched by a light, like something really light that doesn't send him anywhere, he's just retaliating every single time. Yeah, trades absolutely in his favor. Down sig again from Lores. That stacked up signature option from the spear of Pearl. Wes. Still sticking close to Lores. He knows he's got a significant health advantage right now in game number two. Yeah, he's got the health advantage. He's definitely going for finishing touches. Wants to close this one out. And that'll do it. Side light Sarah. And turn around just for a little bit of flare. Throws out the neutral sig. And uh, yeah, this is, the, this is the West that we all know. This is what we were expecting. And this is like definitely why he swapped over to the Orion. Man, what a great play. The second he picked up the Lance, it's like, oh yeah. This is, this is the Lance King of South America, uh, <laughs> putting out 457 damage on that Lance. Um, but he's able to challenge uh, the range of Loris a lot better. That's one thing uh, that he swapped to this Orion for, is that extended range that he gets. Oh, yeah, because those stubby boots just weren't working. He was just getting poked out. He could not do anything. All right, trying to get back on stage. He's got the bow to deal with. The Sair is good. Those for the end light, nothing doing. And now he's going weaponless. He's going to have to deal with this for a moment. Nice job. Playing a little bit of keep away. Lores, oh, fades out to the right. And Wes sees that as an opportunity to go get that Lance. Well, and now it's time for him to do damage as he hits three nares into a side air onto Lores. Another side air. Lores did touch down, so he's got jumps here. Dare oh. to punish the whiff dare from Lores. I can't believe he didn't go for the ground pound, especially Ooh. Wes. Like, I really thought he was going to come over there. Nice job. Laura is getting some damage. Gets a pogo. <gasps> this is scary. Oh. This is it. Laura is taking the first stock. 
Really good recognition from Lores using that pogo to beat down Wes. Wes, he went for the outside option, right? He knows he's got a lot of horizontal movement, which is why he recovered away from the stage. But Lores is like, I've seen you play Lance. I know what to do. <laughs> yeah, he, he had very limited options. It's like, yeah, you can do the recovery away to give yourself that height, and then you have a little bit more room to play around. But it's 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 still very limited, and, and Loras was ready for it. But uh, ends up cleaning up that stock really fast, does Wes. And now we got Spear versus Lance once again. This is what we're going to see the majority of this match. And this has been a scrap fest, man. Both these guys, like, it's like momentum based. Once one of them gets a touch, like they just keep getting hits, keep getting hits, and then the other one just ends up starts bringing it back. I like what we're seeing from both players. Yeah, it's very rare for either of them to get like an extreme neutral state in this matchup. Oh my! It's I think so he's done. many stairs. Yeah, not nearly enough movement in the kit of Lores there. My gosh, the swap over Lores ain't got nothing for that. Lands. It's like everywhere he goes, Wes knows he was trying to go that way. He's like, you're gonna keep jumping. I got, I got stairs for that. You go down. Okay. There's another timeline where where Lurus went down and he got dared. <laughs> <laughs> Every timeline, Wes has the option. Every timeline, I'm is. telling you. Every timeline, Lurus is gonna fall to that Lance. But right now. Lorez needs to find a finisher here. Goes for the Nair. Not nearly enough for us to finish off that stock of Wes. Yeah, there's a lot of damage getting built up. Every single time he hits that, that Sayer, it's getting detrimental to Lorez closing this game out. Bam! Okay, there goes a Sayer. Talk about Sayers. That was a Sayer. Okay, swapping around weapons. Going to opt for the bow, surprisingly. All right, and he's going to be going up against the spear. No, he ain't. West said, man, get this thing out of here. <laughs> I'm a one-weapon man right now. <laughs> All about the lands. Doesn't hit the sidelight down there, though. Lorz has been doing a really good job getting out of that. Ooh, the end sigs. Mm. Okay. These guys are – this is the, the fastest I've seen them play. They're on top of each other, both just swinging for the fences. Lorez knows if one big hit happens, it might be the end of his days. Going into the spear, and I think it's down sick time. Yes, sir, Bobby. You, you could knew. see that you coming knew. from a mile away. You're like, it's time for him to do some spinnies with that <laughs> spear down signature. Four, uh, 527 damage put out from Wes versus the 450 put out from Lores, but a lot of it, of course, on that Lance. 383 damage put out by that Lance. Oh, yeah. 383, how much, wait, how much was the spear? Oh, 107. 107, okay. Three, two, so he, he's doing work. Draw. I think he was, you, if you cross the 100, 100 mark, you know, you, you played that. Yeah, you, you did You did some stuff with that uh, that other weapon. <laughs> uh, Just some stuff. <laughs> but on the other side, like, Lorez is still maintaining that accuracy. He had a 40% accuracy higher than uh, Wesley's 39% accuracy uh, with the light attacks. I mean, that just means those sayers that Wes hits are just, they're just more meaningful. Like, that <laughs> right there. I feel like every game has started like that. Like, it's not like sidelight Sayer every time, but a Sayer is carrying Loras out. He can't do anything about it at the start of every game. Wes is so good at being oppressive with this Lance, keeping this pressure, giving no breathing room. Loras has nowhere to go, no weapon spawns either, as Wes again denying the weapon spawns. There's the pickup finally for Loras, but almost a full stock behind here in game number four. Okay. Yeah, he's definitely a full stock behind. He's trying to make something shake right here. Uh, that's Sarah. Did he touch? He, he did didn't not touch. touch. Okay, went for the reversal in there. There was hoping that he could touch, but Laura's got inside, got that side air, and denied the wall touch just in time. And uh, that's going to actually keep this one relatively close. Despite the early lead Wes had, did not manage to build too much on that second stock. Yeah. That oh, was okay. A play. Oh, just, he just gosh. went back to the factory and said, time to start building. Oh, my time to start building. Got the hammer, got the toolkit. He is building the lead again. Taking down Lores with the lance. Wes, the construction worker. That man is definitely working on projects. All right, so <laughs> I don't know what Lores is supposed to do, man. He did such a great play to take that first stock off. That Sarah we were talking about when he leaked up behind him and just caught him right before he touched the wall. And then right after you do that, you just get robbed. It's just like. What more do you want from me? Wes, is, is, he's definitely making Lorez put in the work to try to bring this one back because he is putting out so much hurt on the Lorez's final stock. Down Sig going to launch far, but not far enough. Wes gets back safely. Yeah, he's trying to close this stock out. Okay. <laughs> there okay. it is. 
Ate a lot of damage along the way, but he got it. Okay, so here we go. Got the bow. He's really sticking to the bow a lot, and I feel like his, his spear was doing really good. Like, it's just maybe he's not prepared to deal with that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, decent. Oh, oh, it's going to happen a few times. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> I'm just waiting. He's like, come back on stage. We'll, we'll do another one. Just wait. Let me catch your landing with it. Shake, should we shake? Goes for the dare. Gets on stage. Oh. Okay. Good in there from Lores, but he gets disarmed. Oh, Wes okay. just going to start swinging, throwing out the big hits, but the side air from Wes wins it out 3 1. Gives him a thumbs up on his way out, and Wes is going to get himself a spot on the podium. That was the most meaningful character switch we've seen <laughs> of all day. Like, he swapped over, and it was a wrap of Rooney. Flores just could not hang with him. When he, caught, he, when he catches you in those moments, just getting these stocks out of there. That one right there, we didn't even get to see the whole thing because he lived so long after he got caught with that stare at the top of the stage. Yeah. He lived so long hovering, trying to get back, and he just couldn't touch the side. Just incredible Lance play coming out from Wes. And there you can see the final stats there, 467 to the 413 put out from Lorez in game number four. Still good accuracy on the side of Lorez. He had 50% accuracy, but Wes just, he hit more. He threw out 74 light attacks versus the 46 of Lorez. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's lot a more large light spread. <laughs> <laughs> like if your your accuracy might be better, but I threw out twice as many attacks, so you know it kind of works out. <laughs> my favorite, you know? I was gonna say his hits were more meaningful. I didn't know he threw that many more attacks. <laughs> Golly, but uh, man, uh, we've been seeing some really crazy games, and that one right there, we got to catch a breather after that. One. We're gonna have a short break. We'll be right back with you guys. Stick around for some more brawl action.
top three of the South American Spring Championship coming at you in just a little bit. The winner of our next match is going to be the one to go into the grand finals. The winner of our next match is also going to be the one to represent South America at the Spring Royale. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Going to have a chance to go into that grand finals and strut their stuff and then be able to come on, jump on that plane and get over there and stretch their stuff again. I've been talking about it. It's the double bread. You get this bread, then you go get the other bread. We got some stats. We're going to show you guys. Bam, slap them up there on the screen. Bam. Kind of. 40,000. Talking about some bread. 40,000 bucks. <laughs> that's, that's a nice chunk of change right there. 18 top eights, 10 top 32s. He's top eighted more than he's top 32 I don't know how that math works, <laughs> but he's got three golds and two silvers. 81% average win rate in 2022. Guy's a monster. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And we don't, Wesley, we got 20. I mean, okay. We have $67,000 earned. More money. We have 27 top eights. More and top eights. 25 top 32s. More top 32s. You know what? That's the same thing. I'm feeling like they're just dividing them up. So, like, yeah, if you get a top yeah. eight, it just If he gets a top, top eight, 32. but not – if he gets a top 32, but not top eight, maybe that's what that number is. And top yeah. eight is, like, solely you got into the top eight. Yeah. But, Five uh, gold medals, eight uh, silvers, silvers, and then two bronze. Good memory. Yeah. Because they got rid of that graphic before we could say it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they left it up enough time. Yeah. I just did the classic yeah. zip wherever I do that thing where I make something extend way longer than it's supposed yeah. to. You know what I'm saying? You gotta Sometimes you got to drag it out for dramatic <laughs> effect. Uh, <laughs> but when you look at the head-to-head, -head, four, three in favor of Kaina in terms of games, 13 to 11. A 54% win rate in favor of Kaina. But... We're here now, and we'll see how well they do. The last time they fought was in 2022 in the Autumn Championship for South America, where kind of won 3-1 over Wes. 3-1, okay. I mean, the same thing here, best of five, getting into this bad boy, but I'm pretty sure the matchup wasn't Asuri versus Tesco. No, Tesco was not existent the last time that they ran into each other. So now we'll see how well Wes's Tesco does. We did see Wes make that swap over to the Orion in his last matchup, and it worked incredibly well, but he's back to the Tesca to go up against Kaina. Yeah, I wonder what makes him feel like, like how do you put that type of performance on and just say, you gotta play this? Yo, you know, like that. Never mind. That, I mean, you, get, you do stuff like that, and then you're like, <laughs> oh, I can play whatever I want. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Man of many talents, Wes, uh, incredible plays. The gauntlets on his Tesca have been something like no other Tesca we have seen so far, but Putting out good damage, has a nice lead over Kaina right now. Qatar plays for K for Kaina. Oh, he catches the spot dodge with the down sig. What a call out from Wes. Yeah, definitely called him out. That's a lot of damage, too. And he's not really taking much damage. Kaina cannot find opportunities. Finally gets a hit, can extend it. Nice weapon toss, trying to find another situation where he can get something going. And there it is. Kaina's been sniping people with that down sig all day. He's been catching that movement. It is a really good SIG for this specific matchup because Wes is going to want to stack up. He's got boots, he's got gauntlets, both kind of relatively close range weapons. And so kind of if he catches that movement in, he can catch him with that down SIG. Exacto Whoa. mundo. Oh, what a dodge from Kaina. He tried to catch him with that drop kick and doesn't. Oh, oh my gosh. That is patented. It is definitely the where do you think you're going. Dude, if you see a Tesca do that now, that's West Tech. You know what I mean? Like, they're they're just copying West with that slide charge down sig on the corner or the gravity cancel as well to just throw them back. But now, again, full stock advantage to West. Well-deserved, too. The plays he's made to create this lead, very well-deserved. Now, landing a nice combination. Still got these boots rocking. Oh, yeah. Look at that damage. Dude's tap dancing on your forehead. And you know how much disrespect that is? Uh, a lot. I, I've never had it happen to me, but I imagine I would be very insulted if someone did that to me. Down sig misses, but he's still in position for the nair. Side sig thrown out. Wes, he just he wants to finish this. He wants the KO. He's going to go for the big hits. That's the scary part about Wes. It's like you see him do that kind of stuff, and you're like, why? Why? Right there. Like, But you're like, now you're thinking, Dude, he's going to do it at any given yeah. moment. I have no idea when. <laughs> and the thing is, like, he gets away with it, right? Like, he's not really getting punished by Kaina. So he's putting out these big threats and getting away every single time. Kaina will catch the landing down light side air, but Wes has enough movement to get back to this wall. 
Yeah, he gets up there clean. Kind of just kind of struts over there, gets the weapon, and then he gets snatched up into the dub for Wes. Oh my gosh, Weska, I like it. 493 Dude. damage done, 331 taken, 35 damage, average damage uh, per Pretty engagement. Uh, so, I mean, 278 on the gauntlets and 188 on the boots, man. Even spread, he did his yeah. thing. He was doing well with both weapons, definitely playing both of those weapons. I love that final moment, because it was kind of indicative of what he did in an earlier match, where he just kind of like walked up side sig. This time it's kind of walk up down sig. He's just like, nobody expects me to just throw out a heavy button. Yeah, yep. He's doing it, and we got kind of switching back over here once again, this time going early, not going to let it get to the to game three or four. Just going to go over here now and try to see what these gauntlets and the, and the blasters can do. In, tries to connect with the end sig, trying to read with the down sig there, kinda. It's a nice two piece in response. Round <laughs> and again, Wes with the lead. The edge guards from Wes have just been too much for kinda. This dude is a burglar, dude. He still stocks like, just far too often. Yeah, we're talking about sandwiches. Wes might be the hamburglar. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, bud. That was good. Kinda just dancing back and forth, can't figure out what he wants to do with Wes. Wes was just letting him do it too, right? No approach. It just kind of lets you know that Wes kind of is like just catching you income. He's yeah. like, if you want to try to fight back, he's like catching you trying to do so. Like every time you start thinking about what you're going to do, Wes is already in that spot getting those hits. Right now, kind of over to the Blasters, they were very effective in his earlier matchup. Uh, we'll see how well they do here, but right now it's just it's been the West show. Wes West is a uh, has too much movement, man. I mean, he just can't keep you stationary with those blasters like the way he was in the previous game. Oh, Over the yeah. kind of stays high this time. He's ready for it. Oh, yeah, he's seen it one too many times. Weapon throw was real close. Goes sort of down like into the ground pound, not gonna hit. That's a clean punch. Really good option from Kaina. I like that he went for the down sig. Could have gone for the side sig, but the down sig has a little bit more of a, like a projectile, right? So it's a little bit safer if he positions correctly. West comes in, down light side air, full stock lead. Instantly, right? Like just comes back, gets off of that little, his little homie dropped him off, and he just instantly got the KO. That was, that's what you want to do when you've got the damage racked up. Even if you lost your stock, you just come in and clean that bad boy up. Now, Let's take a look here. We're getting a nice combination. Kind of just doesn't look like there's any situation where he's comfortable. Wes is always on top of him. Yeah, right now. <laughs> a little, little stutter step. Okay. Kind of getting cheeky with it. But still, he's he's playing behind. He's a, a, a still a full stock behind Wes. Uh, he's not getting that big momentum. Oh. Yikes. He, he might be done soon. Oh, Yikes. yep. Three ground pounds from Wes leads to another dub and now Wes is up 2-0 over the top PR in South America the person who won the most recent championship for the region and Wes is he's looking good right now looking unstoppable man he's, he's just putting on so much pressure kind of can't feel comfortable at all and figure out what game plan he wants to go with is he's what he does when he plays like this he forces you to do what he's allowing you to it's not like you can just go, all right, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to set up. No, he goes, no, you're going to do whatever I give you because <laughs> yeah. I'm never going to stop pressing buttons. <laughs> they, they go to the restaurant and kind of like, or sorry, they go to the restaurant and Wes is like, he's having a salad. All right? <laughs> I don't care what dressing you give him, but he's having a salad. He's having a salad. I want ranch. No, <laughs> you know what? He wants Caesar. <laughs> And take out the tomatoes. <laughs> but now, kind of making the swap over to the Zolt for game number three. Hoping that this swap is going to be the thing to close it out over West. Because we are on the elimination side of things. And while kind of was the re representative at the Winter Royale, there's potential here for him not to be the representative at the uh, Spring Royale. Mm, that is a rough one, right? You, get, you made it this far in the bracket. I know you start to feel like you're going to make it. But in the middle of this tournament, maybe that's not the biggest thing on your mind. You just don't want to lose right that's the biggest thing going on here and you know going over here got this cannon got the heavy hitter out i want to see if this is the answer it's looking good the cannon is definitely controlling controlling the game zol is looking so nice for kind of right now 
Yeah, and one thing that's that's really solid about the Zul, besides the absurd amount of damage that he's able to put out with it, is the fact that, like, how many Zuls do you think are in South America? Like, it's pretty much just kind of. There really aren't that many Zuls in competitive esports for Brahala, let alone in the South American region. That is for sure. I, you know what? I mean, this is a character we don't see often at all. Now, we will talk, we're talking about his strengths, but we do got to talk about those weaknesses. That character has low defense, and we just saw right there, he got smaculated. But you still have to compensate for him being such a slapper somehow, right? Very true. I mean, he's coming in with that base nine strength, so he hits incredibly hard and kind of is putting into that movement speed. So he's worried more about being in position than he is about getting hit. But he's putting out the damage on the west, so I cannot blame him for wanting that movement speed to go along with that high strength. I mean, the thought process here on my end, I like it. Like, you're, okay, I have to play at your pace. Okay, well, every hit that I hit you with matters that much more. You know what I mean? He's yeah. really clipping Wes and, and making everything count. No, what no. a chase! But Wes gets back. Good pressure from Kaina. Great damage. Now it's Kaina with that full stock advantage. Goes in with a weapon toss. Wes beaten out by the down air, but he still gets the wall touch. I can't believe he made it back. But it's still looking. He's a dire straits, man. I mean, this is going to be a real rough one to bring back. Look at that. Look at how that neutral light almost sent him flying. He almost got KO'd by that. And one more could do it. Goes for the side light instead. Tried to do a turnaround. Sayer not catching him. A lot of whiffs at this time. Wes is trying to be a little bit more careful. No, he's trying to be aggressive. Nair touch. Down there from Wes. I wonder. Oh, my gosh. It wasn't quite enough. Went for the down light on the axe. Goes over to this cannon. The cannon's definitely been doing a lot of work. And the down air with the cannon will do it. Kind of going to get himself on the board. The Zol was the thing that worked. That cannon was the thing that did so much work for Kaina. Uh, I think that's the 364 damage. Yeah, 364 damage put out by his cannon against Wes. That is more damage than Wes did, period. Gosh. And what a way, right? Like, to swap over to this character and you were getting just straight smacked, right? Like, he was getting dominated. He was. And then you switch over and you just shut Wes out like that. That is a good look for you and a boost of confidence going into the next round. And now it's on Wes. He's like, you know what? I had such a huge lead. I won the first two games, but this Zol is something different. I need to find something to halt that momentum. And it's not like saying, oh, okay, you can just stay on Axe and I'll do all. Okay, well, maybe, maybe, maybe you can. Oh, oh. wait, uh oh. Both touch. Okay, we're good. Yeah, that was scary. <laughs> when that hit, I was a little worried. I thought Kaino was going to be able to edge guard him and keep him from making it back. He's going to back off, doesn't even want to engage with Wes out there. Tries to go back into neutral, and it looks like, okay, yeah, I was going to say it looked like Wes had control, but, oh, he does. Yeah, he's getting some good damage, throws out that down sig, kind of ready for it, tries to punish from below, but now it's the cannon, that thing that put out the most damage for Kaina in the last game and starting to put out the damage here in this one. He throws it away, just wanted that little weapon toss damage to create a, hey, I'll keep you at base situation if I, if I need to. Wow, what a dare, what a oh, weapon toss. Oh. Kind of looking great on this Zul pick. Chased after with that dare. He hits the dare and he fast falls alongside it and hits him with a weapon toss point blank. Finishes off that stock and now Wes needs to find a big hit, but kind of back on that cannon. Dare, new angle, puts him off stage. And Sig kind of doesn't touch. Uh, I love it. I, I like the movement that I was seeing from Kinda. It was very smart decisions, especially with Wes being that aggressive. And, and it's just was a little shy on the Sayre touching the wall. So, I mean, you had a lead. You were very damaged on the stock. So it's not the worst thing in the world. But he definitely wishes he could have made that. Yeah, he definitely was hoping he could get that extension, just get that slight tap onto the wall and get, get back up safely. But still has to be confident Ooh. as the end seed connects. Weapon toss connects. Kinda done for. Final stock here for Kinda. Potential tournament stock here for Kinda. Huge. Huge play from Wes. I mean, I would have never seen that coming as the defender either. Kind of definitely didn't see it coming. He's looking for a weapon now. Finally got the axe. He misses the punish. And Wes racking up a little bit more damage on this final stock of Kind of. He's just getting all this momentum. He's like, all right, you got one game. But now I figured it out. Doing well with the boots. Kind of with a nice side light side air. Going to launch Wes. But Wes has plenty of movement to get back safely and swap weapons. Yeah, he got back very easily. 
It was just a down, a gravity cancel down there to try to stop him from making it back. Setting up that down signature on stage, trying to keep him at bay. That will KO if it hits, because death, they, that for sure would have KO'd if a Nair KO'd. <laughs> and now we're going to go to the patented cannon to try to close this out. It's been looking great. This could be the answer to keep him on the board. Nair doesn't get the read on the GC down light. Kinda going for the turnaround, doesn't hit the dare. Another dare, doesn't hit the Sare, kinda. Has enough movement, he'll get back up, but West mm. with the punish. That's rough, he's got one opportunity, he's gonna, no, he didn't even have to use the recovery. Playing some neutral, nice job, catching him, try to go through the body. West caught him with that Sare. Ooh. Oh, there's a dodge, but West gets away. Oh, narrowly avoids that side sig, that could have been devastating but now kind of with the control Wes out of weapons kind of got the stage but Wes gets back to oh. ground pound hello on stage ground pound from the cannon from kinda and he is gonna take this to game number five what explosive play and an explosive move to take that game to put this into game number five I of all things I I was not thinking that the ground pound was gonna be what took the stock I could see him doing it in a lot of ways, and I knew he was at the point where almost anything would be the KO, you know, of, of the th with the defense of Tesca and the and the power of Zol. But that five. that little blast radius that comes out, I did not think that was going to yeah. be the option. That was like if you had a, a bingo card of things that would KO, that was not on my bingo card. Uh, <laughs> but kind of, oh my goodness, he has brought this one back to game number five. Wes had the lead in the final moments of that one, but kind of cannon just a little too much for Wes right now. Yeah, the cannon's just been holding strong, and right now the axe has really got a great start for him. So it's oh, it's really good pound. when you got both weapons getting jiggy. Oh, Ooh. and it's gonna he didn't touch. Yep, that's gonna oh. be it. Oh, <laughs> that almost he almost got the life again. He he had that happen in an earlier set where he got the side air chase dodged up, but kind of made sure he was low enough under the stage that Wes couldn't do it. But the end sig. Where's the weapon toss? Chasing after, doesn't need that extra hit. He brings this back. <laughs> you know, you think you got a lead and then you remember you're fighting against West. This dude, I, I swear he's been on screen like, like three times so far uh, on our block and he has like nine stolen socks. <laughs> <laughs> Le leads are an illusion against West. He's just so good at making those disappear. Kind of gets back onto the stage, has the cannon in hand. It's been very effective for him. He put out 348 damage in the last one with it and close the game with it, you know what I mean? And he knows that. That's why he grabbed it in that situation to close the last game. But right now, the boots are doing very well Ooh, against okay. it. Nice movement to get away from that pivot down, uh, down signature. And it was a good option from Wes, really trying to deny that landing position, forced kind of to the outside. Both of them in the red, though. Wes with no weapon in hand. Gauntlets just to open up, just a side air. Needs more. Doesn't hit the second side air. Yep, side get it single! Oh. <laughs> oh, so the other one is where do you think you're going? And that one is come here. <laughs> <laughs> Get back here. Get back over here. He kind of was trying to run away and he just got leapt on. That's like that little kid running away from his parent. Parent grabs him by the back of the neck. It's like, where do you think you're going? Get back here. <laughs> Down like ground pound, kind of keeps it close. Final stocks here. Again, the winner of this, whoever survives this final stock, is going into the grand finals and getting a spot at the Spring Royale. This stock means so much for both players. They've both been playing so amazing. I've loved this set so far, but only one can do it. The cannon is getting to work right now, getting busy, kind of. loaded the cannon. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm reloaded. Okay, switches over to the X. And there's no weapon for West. He's going to guard and go back to the cannon. Good denial from <gasps> Kaina. West comes in swinging, but it's not enough damage on the Kaina. Jumps over the down light. Neutral light going to launch West off stage, waiting out the signature. I can't believe he punished that. Ooh. That was big. Oh, no. Oh. That. Oh, it doesn't combo. So much damage on West. Both in the red. What's gonna be the hit? The down sig and Wes steals the victory from Kaina, and he is going to the Spring Royale and the Grand Finals. I, I'm in awe, man. That dude, he had adversity in his face, which was the damage of Zol. Kaina was playing so well, 
and this dude he leaks up on the map and punishes as you see that that down signature retracting from Zol, he just followed it in with that catch and just tossed him off the stage what a pinpoint play this dude 553 damage coming out from kinda only 483 from wesley i mean the accuracy is about even for both guys. The, the number of attacks was pretty even. What what weapon did he do the most damage with? I think the uh, boots, I think right? It was the boots. Yeah, he put out 258 on his boots. But man, that was a 70 damage difference in favor of Kinda. But Wes's signatures, that's the thing that worked out the best. Throughout seven of them, hit 57% of the signatures that he threw out. And that's nice. one of the big reasons why he was able to close that out. You saw it in the clips, right? Second stock, that was a side sick. Final stock, that was that down sick. Yep, he was definitely doing his thing. I mean, he yeah, the first stock he had that raw that steal on the side with the gravity cancel. That's that's good stuff, man. I love to see it. I, I mean, we talked about what we were gonna see before all this kicked off. That these matches were gonna be, as I keep saying, a bangers, and they've definitely lived up to it. And we only have one more left. Both of these guys are gonna be able to go to the Royale, but only one can be the victor of the Spring Championship for South South. America. <laughs> I, I could not have said it better myself. They're now Maybe playing for the crown. Now, you said it perfectly. <laughs> you know, we all we all kind of stumble at times, but the important thing is that we get back up here. And, of course, Wes is here today. He did not podium at the Winter Championship, but he will today going up against Kaina. That's the, that says use, but just pretend it's Kaina. I don't know wait. if that's the mods who messed up. No. Oh, it's, wait, no. Kaina's is done. I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you. I told you that we stumble. That was my turn to stumble, okay? We all make oh. mistakes, and that was my mistake. Guys, Duke Duke is a very nice guy. He he actually purposely messed up, so my mess up didn't I do that. This I do that at times, yeah. This, that's what I'm here for. You know what I mean? Yeah. When, when one falls, we all fall together. <laughs> I think. I don't know. Either this way. This is Sparta, bro. Like, <laughs> come on. All right, so... <sighs> We see the poll. Yeah. We got Wesley. We got uh -huh. used. 51%, 52 now in Wesley's favor. After seeing his performance, I am not shocked that he's looking like the, the crowd favorite. It's but. tough. It, it's a good 50-50. Uh, I'm not seeing the head-to-head -head right now uh, to see, like, what their past matches have been. But, I mean, they haven't really fought today. Wes, uh, I think he lost earlier today to uh, somebody completely differently. Uh, let me double check here. Yeah, Wes lost to Ray Zeiger in top 32 of the bracket. So they have not run into each other for a hot minute. Uh, we'll see if the head-to-head -head is updated. Nope. But either way, like it, it really could go either direction. Both of them, of course, knocking out PR number one for the region to get this spot here in the grand finals. But again, you got to remind people, Wes coming in from that elimination side of things. So he's got to win two back-to-back -back best of five. Exactly, exactly. You know, so I was going to say, after seeing what Wes has been doing, like watching him for as much as we just did, and seeing the, the way that he was able to close these games against people, the way he's able to clutch up, I'm so surprised that they're still going for use, but maybe that is it. They, they know that he has to win twice. Yeah, I mean, it is a nice advantage. Again, you just got to win three games, and you are going to be crowned the victor. Finally getting that head-to-head -head update. It is 1-2 in favor of Wes, a very narrow margin in favor of Wes. In terms of games, 5-7. to seven. The last time they fought Winter Championship, Hughes was the victor, but he was playing the vector. Mm. You know, I wonder, why are we not seeing any vector? I, I, don't, get, I don't get what's going on here. I, I feel like Hughes kind of just has a thing ready for the tournament, and that thing right now is, of Three, course, going to be two, that uh, Jay Yun. And the Jay Yun's been looking really good. Yeah, all right. Either way, we're underway, and let's going to see. Let's see who gets the first weapon, gets the first start. And Wes, back at it again, doing what he always does, goes for that off-stage play. Yo, and he, he wants to continue it, hits the end sig this time. Just needs a side sig. Got to show off all three if he can. Uh, meanwhile, Yu's just trying to get away from Wes, just trying to get a reset onto the main stage. And this, again, it's kind of a matchup that we've seen, right? Wes loving to push those offstage engagements. Yu's definitely going to want to be on stage for this great sword. Definitely. And, oh, man, he is taking a beating to start this one off. You are running into – he's been sitting and chilling, and he is running into a warmed-up West. A West that Yo, takes the, the first stock, has not reset the bracket, and he's already taunting. The disrespect – already dead he's putting skull emojis in his tweets right now 
but he has a full, he, not a full stock, but he has a sizable lead, and it's basically a full stock at this point. Man, yeah, it's definitely a full stock. I mean, he's he's been so dominant. We haven't really even seen West get to, I mean, use get, get to throw out an attack. He's thrown a weapon or two, but not many attacks. Nice, okay. Lance Sayre. Mm. Oh, okay, I like that dash stance to lead into the three piece there. West gets launched. West utilizing that weapon toss to try to guarantee that ground touch, but uses cover in this corner. That that a uh, common <laughs> what? Okay, use that was that was nice. I'm a fan of that one. I feel like that was a specific call out to the way that West likes to keep that pressure going too. He's like, if West didn't go down there, that's just, he's burning a dodge. But he's like, you know what? West is gonna try to get aggressive here despite the fact that he's unarmed. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. He's gonna come down there. He has no like extended hitbox. He has to use his whole body with the gauntlet, of course. All right, so that's just make, cover yourself. Makes so, so much sense for use. And use, man, like, he, he hasn't, it looks like he doesn't do much, and then all of a sudden he lands like two strings with the greatsword, and it's it's curtains. Yeah, I mean, that greatsword hits hard. Uh, and then you get those big strings, you get a lot of damage put out. Wes has him in the red, gonna throw out the N sig there, oh. and it's just a bait, taking his time to go for the ground pound. <laughs> Another taunt. Dude, Wes, Wes is, he's feeling cheeky right now. He's trying to get in his head, man. The art of war. You know, sometimes the battle is not when you're hitting each other. The battle is uh, is in the mind. That is definitely true. I think I saw a Jet Li movie where they did that. That actually makes sense. I, I'm sure there's some Jet Li movie out there <laughs> or some Kung Fu movie where they did that. Oh, side sig thrown out from Yu's. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Got the three-piece one for the neutral finisher on that one. Uh, given their positioning, wanted that vertical potential knockout because the horizontal was a little bit further. It was close. It almost KO'd, but just not quite enough. Now you're giving Wes a chance to end your final stock. Mm, nice recovery. Pretty low down. And it's still KO'd. Okay. Now, going into this last one, he's really going to have to make something happen. A lot of patience, and, and he's going to have to make some hard reads here. But this is definitely doable. Gauntlets in hand. Use might have to respect that just walk up Sig from West, but right now West disarms Use. Use is still swinging on him. There's the end Sig. Yeah, he's Roll showing a lot Sig. of patience. He Bet. does not want to get caught. Because if he gets caught, he knows he's going to be in the worst position a possible. Or it could just be a raw Sig and he just gets KO'd. Yo, but Yuse is finding hits onto Wes. Wes trying to open him up with those weapon tosses. There's the side sig, mm. but it's going to be the gravity cancel down light into the recovery from Wes, jumping over that side light opener from Yuse. And Wes gets game number one, but uh, maybe rethinking some things right now. He's been very cheeky throwing out a lot of those taunts, but like that that went down to the wire. That was last stock red. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was throwing out those taunts. He was being very aggressive early on, but I think he's realizing I hope he realized that if Hughes catches him, it could be it could be a, a bad, bad look for him. I mean, because that's with him getting that, that early stock and creating a huge lead, coming down back to the wire. Hughes did this in the previous set, too, in winner's finals. So, like, we know that he, you just let – he slows the game down and he's going to find his opportunity. So you can't allow him to get the lead, honestly. You got to just take that lead and maintain it whenever possible. Use trying to play that spacing game. He has a lot more range than West does. I'm surprised he doesn't try to approach with like a downlight just because of the, the sheer amount of range he would have over West. Uh, but he wants to stay forward, wants those sidelights a little bit closer. You know what's interesting? I was going to bring that up earlier. Like, I don't think I've seen him downlight at all. Yeah, he really hasn't. <laughs> He's just, he does the sidelight a lot. Yo, yo. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, uh, oh, no. He had it. Looking like a Marvel combo with how many things he was hitting there, but he gets that GC and Sig and Yuse now with a big lead. This is not what you want. You talked about it at the start of this game. You do not want to let Yuse get a big lead. Yeah, because he's definitely going to be able to slow the pacing down and, and make you play on the ground with him. He's going to find hits no matter what. Like, even if you're finding your hits, while you're in those exchanges and those mixes with him, he's going to be tapping you too, and that's a lot of damage coming out from this great sword. 
double neutral light. Instant neutral finisher jump Nair as well. This time gets the three piece neutral finisher on that one as well. Trying to play that vertical. Ooh, tried to hit him with the pivot. If he did it the other way, I think he might have hit him actually. Very possible. Ink. Ink. Side trying to find it. Got the side sig. Yes, sir. You said that that the strings look like Marvel combos. Well, that sig is gonna take you for a ride. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't even need an assist or anything like that. He just throws out the big hit. Finally, Wes able to clean up that initial stock, but he's a full stock behind here, and he wants the gauntlets. Yeah. Okay, he's got gauntlets. I mean, he's been doing okay with the boots, but I understand. Experiment a little bit. Try to figure out what these things got. He's been doing okay over time against everybody with them. So bring it out, especially here against the sword. Going to test it out here. But I'm curious myself how it's going to fare whenever the Greatsword comes out. He is down to the final stock. Boom. Gets caught slipping. Trying to dodge through that weapon toss. He's a lot of damage. Ooh. Interesting dare there. I think that was supposed to be a GC down light, but he just kind of delayed a little too long. Mm -hmm. N-Sig not going to connect. Caught him with the side light, but took his time on that. There's the N-Sig. Needs to finish it, though. Always looks like that, uh, that signature is going to throw down a little bit harder. Oh, that actually could have gotten nasty. I don't think what you realized he was going to get that weapon back like that. Nice. Ooh, okay. Side sig. Final stocks here. Wes, back to the taunts. He's feeling some sort of way. Yeah, he's feeling it. He said, okay, okay. Got that stock. I can do it. I mean, this is definitely his type of situation. All he has to do is catch you, catch you with one good stolen stock. See, if he lands that, you're in a real bad situation. So I, I see him. I see him getting confident. And he's definitely dominating right now. Oh, man. But he gets caught one good time by the high damage of that great sword. Yu's going to tie the set one to one. Yeah, that is small brawl haven. Those neutral finishers will eventually finish off the stocks of Wes. And uh, again, 390 damage put out from Yu's. That's been his game plan throughout the entirety of this. He wants to put that big damage out with the great sword and then finish off with the regular sword. But Wesley going to make the swap. No longer on the uh, Tesca. He's going over to the Orion. Mm, and we saw what that Orion did last time. Ooh, it worked very well in his earlier match today against Lores. But uh, this is going to be a different beast. This is not going to be a Pearl that he's running into. It's going to be a Jay Young. All right. So now a question for you. What is the matchup like, Lance versus uh versus Greatsword? Honestly, I feel like it's kind of Greatsword favored. Like, both of them want a lot of runway. And the thing that works really well for Wes in this matchup is a lot of offstage. That's not really a thing you're usually looking for when you got a lance in hand. I can dig that. I can dig that. Well, Wes is looking for that, but, yeah. but most people wouldn't be. Oh, oh my god. Another one? Use! Oh, no, use! That was oh, that was a huge play. That was a huge play. I thought Wes was toast. Yeah, that weapon toss actually saved his skin there, or I guess his armor because he's Orion. But Wes, I mean, he almost had a massive lead, and then Yu's got the one tap he needed to chase dodge up and almost put that back in his favor. We got the spear. You know Wes doesn't want this. Well, maybe he does. Okay, I forgot his down sig season. Now, but the side sig, the pocket sand is going to work out for Yu's. Come on, tell me you know that reference. Pocket Gotta love some King of the Hill. Yes! Yes! But lands in hand for Wes. Falling side air for use. Another Nair. Needs to chase up. Wes needs to find a side air. His side airs have been his big tool for finishing off stocks of his opponents with the Lance. Yeah, he's definitely been finding some big hits with those side airs. But use not really playing in a manner where he can hit those. He's going to force him to hit grounded side airs. Maybe he's going to have to go for a side light side air. But... Spacing from use is just too good right now. The move is too good. Sword, getting these punishes. Oh my gosh. Down light side air. Oh, Wes getting picked oh. apart. The ground pound from use. And use. I, I love that use is not falling for Wes's game. He's not like taunting back. Instead, he's like, you know what? I'm going to let my game play speak for me. I'm just going to get this dub, and then you're the one with the egg on your face. <laughs> Yeah, he's definitely just letting his gameplay speak for him. And there goes the taunt right, right after you mentioned it. Wes still throws out the taunt. He's down a whole stock. And Yu's, man, Yu's is playing so good. I like uh, the sword gameplay we just saw from him. That Edgar he did was clean. Able to get out of that uh, zero-to-death combo from Wes. 
Oh, Ooh. wasn't able to get out of that one. The back step into the SIG after the sidelight. And the end SIG as well. Wes getting so much damage here. He needs to finish off the stock of use though. He's doing a good job. He's making his way back into the match. The huge deficit. He is at orange, though. We know how much damage he could eat if he gets caught by a string from this great sword. And I think that's the stock. Yeah, he's got to use the stock out of there. So that was good. He minimized the damage that he took, right? He didn't go into red. That's a very good look anytime you can do that. But one full string from the great sword could spell disaster. Wes needs to get another momentum swing. Nice three-piece coming out. Just some Lance ground to play down air. Ooh. Oh, baby. That was Lance nice. Egg. What a read. They're just swinging, both of them swinging for the fences. Oh, no! my God. This dude. He, he said, you know what? You want to keep playing this air game. You want to go high in the sky. You're trying to catch me with a recovery or an air at the top of the map. But guess what? Gravity cancel and just throws out the big old laser beam to launch you into the sky. And now Wes is up 2-1. Potential to reset. What a move. What a play. Are you kidding me? He landed a nair and just watched him hover above him. was like, I'm going for it. I'm going for it now. And what a way to do this. He needs one more game for the reset. Hughes was really, he was holding it down the whole time. That was a clutch from Wes. Uh, and and that's holding strong, man. Against Hughes, who really didn't ever look like he lost his composure. He just could not, he couldn't land any hits in that last stock. Yeah, Hughes really struggled in those final moments. Wes's Lance just putting out so much damage. 450 damage oh. put out from his Lance. Of the 532 he was able to put out. That's, that's good stuff. That's when you know you're cooking. Okay, trying to find the read opportunities, but good defense so far from Wes. He hasn't really eaten too much damage out of this great sword. Uh, giving up, well, he's eaten some good damage, but he hasn't eaten like a full string. He got reset. Yeah, he's finding the right ways out. He's jumping out. He's hitting the back fades, uh, fade, uh, dodges out. But Whoa. I'm going to take you for a ride. The, the side sig is going to land, and that thing slaps. Use gets the first stock in game number four. He just catches the movement, and all things considered, Wes was not able to get enough damage onto Use's first stock that, oh, okay, Son. okay, chasing. Burned a lot of movement there, still will land down safely. And then wakes up with a sideline. <laughs> that dude is relentless. Can't stop, won't stop. Wes is just chasing after use. Okay, a little bit of neutral here. Oh yeah, that was a good side there. Oh wow, turns around with the, with the neutral sig. He can't find the last hit though. He's getting some good damage. Just not in the territory where he's going to get the KO. Gets double recovery. Look at how much damage that did for Yuse. Ooh. But Yuse with a great spot dodge. Avoids that finishing side air. What a wake, wake up. up. Why? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know how you taunt you're down this yeah, much. I like, I get it when you have the lead. You know, you can get in their head a little bit. But when you're down and you're doing it, it's like... What are you thinking right now? What's going on in your head? Use though is thinking that he is one game, oh, one stock away from getting this one to game number five. And you know Use wants to close it out as soon as possible. You do not want to reset, especially against the guy that's been taunting you the whole time. <laughs> nice, nice Lance play. He's carrying out to the side. The dodge okay. is good. I mean. Yeah, he would he would have made it back. I was gonna say with no dodge in the in the holster, I don't know if he was gonna make it. Weapon toss Whoa. and wow, that was clean tie game here in game number four. Wes, just one more stock away from resetting it. Really well done on that edge play too. He had the lance toss to force an action. Goes over with the spear toss, connects on the use immediate pickup GC downline side air, and now we're down to final stocks here. And uh, Wes could very well reset at this rate. Oh, yeah, and look at him. He just keeps landing down lights. He's landing good attacks, and then he doesn't even have to go for anything big if he just keeps racking up this damage and being untouched. His defense against the Great Sword has been amazing. But specifically on the Lance, when he's on the spear, struggles a little bit more, but when he's got the Lance, he's been doing very well against this Great Sword use. I agree. Neutral light, neutral air. 
Was the down sig? Ooh. <laughs> Use is ready. It's so funny that it's so readable, but it's still a scary, scary tool. I know Use is sweating in his in his uh, boots over there. Uh, oh, nice. And that is a reset bracket here in South America. That is my man. He's too good. Wes is just too good. I, 590 damage going on this one. 438 of it on that Lance. When he swaps over to this character, it's just a totally different story than the Tesca. And that's crazy because his Tesca is mad nice. His Tesca was looking very clean. It's a thing yep. that worked so well against Kaina, but now he's over to the Orion and his Orion is looking Three, solid. Two. And every now and then I get this like thought where I'm like, why don't you try a different Lance character? Why don't you go to the Olgrim, right? Because the Lance is definitely the thing that's working and the Spear not so much, but then you see him utilize those SIGs, that end SIG on the Lance. You see him utilize that down SIG, you see him throw out that spear down sig as well you kind of go okay i get it yeah exactly once you start seeing the sig pack you're like oh yeah that's the orion i can't stand i got you okay <laughs> <laughs> what a start okay good start from use he's had a few of those though where he ends up taking that first stock and he just can't clean uh clean up the last two of west west just holds strong and west back over to the lance here down light, falls down, still manages to pick up a fadeaway Nair onto Yuse, throws out the end sig, Yuse avoids it. But you're also seeing Yuse not, he's not being able to play the grounded game that he wants to play, right? He's not going in, getting that side light into the reset. Yeah, he's not been able to play that at all. West just holds that middle ground and he's like, he's like, if you want to land a combo, I mean, you, you're going to have to force it through because he's been waking up. That's really been scary for, uh, for Yuse. And nice KO, good side air. Switching over, nope, gonna stay with that Lance. What am I talking about? He's monogamous with the yeah. Lance. Like, why, why would I even think he was gonna go with the Spear? He's got, a, he's got a very serious relationship with this Lance sometimes. You know what, he'll send a text message to the Spear, but for the most part, <laughs> sticking with that Lance. Use though, he's got that sword, wants to finish off this stock of West. There's the Lance. Yeah, we know what he's going for. He's always going for the down light recovery. And there it is. He's got Wes on the final stock in game number one of the reset. Yo, but we've been here before. We've seen Wes bring these back from the brink. See if he can do it again. Back over to the spear. Does feel like Yuse is starting to do a little bit better against Wes's lance, though. I will say that. Yeah, he is. He really is. His defense has gotten much better against it. It doesn't mean that you can do that forever, but he's doing it good at this moment. away the spear back over to the lance he's really forcing use into the air use cannot just stay grounded he's fishing for the nares he's trying to just you know just tack on a little bit of damage i feel like soon he's gonna really want something big though that's the recovery okay it's a two-piece use racking up the damage west needs that finisher soon it's gonna be the gc side sig to go over but still not enough to finish off the stock of use Spear ground pound doesn't get over the corner. You still holds on to this second stock. He cannot find that final touch. He's going for big stuff. The ground pound was just a little shy, bumped his head into the uh, side of the stage. He couldn't leak over the side. And uh, yeah, after that, he just whiffed a couple more buttons. And now we're not seeing much whiffs from Yuse. Yuse is on the prowl, trying to close this bad boy out. Recovery, raw, no down light. It's not going to do it. Doesn't hit the Sair. West still not able to finish off this second stock of Yuse. Yuse really floating out there, and he still manages to get that wall touch. Charge up. Uh, still I thought he was going to make that. Yuse takes game number one. 555 damage put out by Yuse. West not really able to put out the big damage on either weapon. He put out 218 on his Lance versus the 150 on his Spear. Yeah, he's got that... Uh that that's the 90s movie phone number. Five, five, five. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah he did a he did a lot of damage that was that was one of Wes's games where he's been pulled up with the with the Lance right mm -hmm. I feel like uh you's kind of been really diverse in his damage with both weapons but this time he really had uh, a banger game with the, with the Artemis Artemis. I mean, I, 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 I didn't complete my thought. I yeah. just saw Artemis, you saw Artemis and, you're like, and I just up. got excited. You know what I'm saying? I said earlier, I wish he was playing the Artemis. And here we are in grand finals in the reset. He, he feels something. 
He can feel it in the air. Yeah, There's going to be a lot of side sinks, <laughs> my boy. Definitely a, a, a real possibility. Or those down sinks are very effective on uh, both weapons. But right now, it's over to the scythe and use. Feeling some confidence here as he's forced Wes away from that Orion, which was so effective in the earlier matchup in the Grand Finals. Hughes was definitely putting on some big pressure on that at the start of this. And he's sticking. Wes had an opportunity to go to Lance. He really stuck with the scythe. Yeah, I mean, he made the swap consciously to go over to the Artemis, and it's clearly not just for this, the extra speed that he's going to get. It's going to be because he can use this scythe and not just be a one-weapon Andy. I always forget that his scythe is mad nice. Nice GC sidelight to get through that weapon toss as well. It's clean, right? Like, he really has some, some really cheeky stuff with this character. All right. Uh-uh. Oh, okay. no. Went the other way on it. I guess he was looking for a dodge through the body on the left. I don't know. I thought the dodge already came out. Sarah's going to hit. Resources are still there. Wes going to make it back. Oh, scary situation, but he's going to survive. <laughs> Weapon toss keeps you safe, oh! but he can't be safe forever. The neutral SIG on the gravity cancel will take the first stop. And Wes priming the lance here. He's going to have a slightly different signature kit. Can, oh, okay, no, he wants to prime the scythe for this next stock, or at least he's just focused on denying weapons from use. That time tries to go for the up toss, just denies a weapon from himself. There it is, he's got the scythe in hand with the recovery. Nice punish from use to get that first stock off of him, okay? Very, very, very even game. Both players utilizing both weapons. That great sword had a great start for use. Let's see what we got here coming into this one. He's got the lance in hand in the wake up once again from Wes. Yeah, Wes, you talked about that defense against the Greatsword. His ability to pick the right option, just a gravity cancel that time. Sometimes he'll dodge away and then immediately side air. He'll really change it up on use and make it difficult to get those big strings. Yep, he's been doing a great, great job making use really think about it. And now we see use going, you know what? Let me just get this sword and punish you for playing a little wild. Another punish for uh, the raw signature. He's going to switch back over to the gray sword. If he can catch a neutral sig, you know, could be it. But he's going to go for a mix. Doesn't get it. Goes into the... Oh! That would have been clean if he landed that neutral sig. Yeah, trying to get it off that weapon toss. Wes... Still swinging unarmed, did not want the weapon spawn. Sidelight puts Yuz off stage. He went for the gravity cancel, but Yuz hits him with the recovery. One more hit. Ooh, gets back down safely. Waited till the last second to burn that dodge. Very necessary because Yuz was definitely trying to find the right moment and was trying to find that hit. A lot of damage sitting on West. Almost anything will do it at this point. Yes, definitely. It doesn't matter which side of the stage he was on. That was it. That was an on-stage neutralite that ended up finishing off the stock of Wes. Is that a side sig? I like the adjustment from you. So he's not even, he's like, okay, you know what? You keep waking up. He just poked him and then backstep <laughs> weapon toss. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Just take the damage where you can. Don't allow him the opportunity to get damage on you. Yeah, I mean, he's got this lead. Does not need to go for those big plays anymore, or at least for now. Because all he's got to do is whittle away at Wes, and he will eventually get the W here. Yeah, he's doing a great job at the moment. Now we got the Lance back for Wes. We've been seeing, I mean, I keep talking about the defense of Wes versus the, okay. oh, that was clean. I'll talk about the defense of Wes versus the Greatsword. I mean, Hughes has been making this, the Lance of Wes look more tame than anybody tonight. Yeah, Hughes has definitely uh, found more answers to the Lance of Wes than anybody else. Wes, oh, gets caught. Hughes goes for the recovery, didn't connect, but Wes running out of health here in game number two. Where are the oh! side six? The neutral six from Hughes, no side six from Wesley. That will be a two to zero lead coming out for Hughes. And the Artemis pick didn't look as good as I thought it was going to. 649 damage for Hughes, 416 this time on the great sword and 189 on the regular sword. Yeah, about 277 damage put out from Wes on the Lance versus the 112 on his scythe. Was not able to get a lot out of either of those weapons. And now Wes has to decide, what is it going to be? Is he going back to the Orion? Is it going to go over the Olgrim, apparently? Wait, oh, it's a bait. Oh, he's going back to think about it, but you It's a different Olgrim. There you go. He didn't like that last skin. It's going to be the Macho Man for Wes for game number three here in the final set for today. But he now has to win three games in a row if he wants to be crowned the spring champion.
That's going to be hard, man. That is going to be rough. But you did call it. I do. I'm, I'm a big fan of the old. I like the old. You called it, man. Why are you not playing the old? Gets pushed back against the wall, and he picks the old. Well, we'll see if the Olgrim is the thing to get him back on the board here. He did manage to get that reset moments ago, but since then, Hughes has been in the driver's seat. Definitely has. Hughes has just been playing so strong. He's he's switching up the gameplay as it goes. He doesn't do the same things a lot. Does a little bit of work with the gray sword. Swap over to the sword, do a couple tabs. He runs away when he needs to. I, I just like how he's piecing together his game plan. Wes is looking pretty nice on this axe to start this bad boy off. And maybe it's just the chase, t change of pace that's catching Hughes off guard. Mm. Oh, big hit. Will launch. Hughes needs another side air. You can see the way he's wiggling there. Hits the down air, but Hughes did get the wall touch. Gets another wall touch. Oh. Hughes still living. Just shy on the hit on the recovery. Coming back to the stage and went for a nair. Nothing big. And now Hughes gets another chance at life on this stock. <laughs> well, short-lived. The Sair from the Lance will do it for Wes. He's going to be sticking with the Lance again. Despite the fact that he got some good damage to start this one off with that axe, ultimately, he's a Lance player at heart, and that's what he wants to have here against Hughes. Hughes goes in. Wes not able to find any damage on the second stock just yet. And finally got him a touch, but eats a two-piece for landing that. And now Hughes Ooh. tried to go for the neutral sig, not going to land. And here goes some more damage for Wes. Hughes with a good dodge out. Down light will put Wes off stage, so unfortunately couldn't keep that pressure going. He's chipping away at him at the moment. He's doing a good job of building on top of this lead. Hughes can't even really play at the moment. He hasn't found any opportunities. Good movement to get away from the recovery. You know, Wes is ready for those end sigs of Hughes. He's managing to avoid those finishing blows that Hughes wants so badly. Trying to mix up that KO tool. Went for the recovery this time, but Wes avoids it again. Throws out the chainsaw. It was a bait so he can get the side light side air. And there's the taunt. Wes feeling good. He's definitely feeling good, but there's one thing we all know, and he was going to taunt regardless. <laughs> <laughs> Down light recovery for Hughes. Going to take that stock off. Uh, it's still a situation where with this big lead, Hughes can definitely bring this bad boy back, and you know he wants to. He wants to close this out 3-0, but West trying to get on the board. Nice. Lands a nice little succession there with the great sword. Opts to back out. He's been seen. He's seen the wake up a few too many times, but he's still getting some nice damage. Oh, tries to chain it that time. Doesn't land it. Yo, but Hughes is still getting these hits onto Wes. He's opening them up. Wes not finding any big blows on this final stock here of Hughes. Goes for the uh, offstage there, but Wes staying close. Ooh, the dodge is burned. Ah, doesn't go for anything. Hughes had already put that poke out, so he couldn't really get anything. But nice, the close out of that stock. Fairly early. That wasn't even that much damage on West. And uh, I mean, it was pretty high, but it was just a perfect situation, the perfect point on the stage to land that KO. Yo, West with the wake up this time, but this is his tournament stock here, the grand final stock. If Hughes gets this one, he is going to be crowned the spring champion, West. He's got that Lance, got that side air, goes for the end sig. Wes is looking good right now. He does not want to go down in this situation at this moment. This great sword is looking too nice, though, for Hughes. He's finding the moments. He's figured it out a little bit. I feel like this is the best it's looked. His, he's landed more, more strings, and he hasn't been uh, attacked back by Wes in a little while. That side air is looking good. This might be a yeah. game. Doesn't commit. Hughes gets back on stage with the neutral light. Him off stage, Wes. Ooh, that got stuffed out, but he still had enough movement to get to the wall safely. Hughes avoids the recovery. Wes wants that finishing blow over to the axe. What's the option? Down sig, side air, neutral light. Down Ooh. sig. Oh okay. my Avoid goodness. The toss. Oh, Hughes. One hit away. Wes with the falling there almost gets it. Lance in hand. A heavy move from Hughes could get him the victory. A sidelight just kicks Wes away. A dare from Wes? 
These dudes are scrapping oh! the recovery. You're dang right. Unbelievable. Use clutching that out. West did everything in his power to keep the run alive, but use closes it out to become your South American spring champion. The Jay Yun just a little too much for Wes in that grand finals after the reset. Credit to Wes. He made that lower bracket run after an L in the top 32, and he got here to the grand finals. He got the reset, but ultimately none of the Lance characters were the answer to the Jay Yun of use. Yeah, he swapped between three of them. There was three games. He got three old, but he tried three different Lance characters, and it just would not work out. Get that vector off the screen. That's <laughs> wrong. <laughs> that is Jay That's Yun. That's wrong. That is Jay Yun. No, I'm just messing around. <laughs> but um, either way, both of those guys, we, we just saw an amazing grand finals. Mm -hmm. And both of those guys will be at your Spring Royale. And, uh, man, I, I'm excited to watch that. I mean, we already saw a few other people qualify. These guys, these these are two of the favorites, man. Yeah. They, they played immaculate. Uh, everyone loves to see South America. They had an amazing per performance at the Winter Royale. Definitely some big expectations for these two going to the Spring Royale because neither of them were the ones to go to the Winter Royale, but still amazing plays all around. It was a very fun set. And, of course, we're not done. We've still got N.A. tomorrow for the Spring Championship. That'll be the end of it. So make sure you pull up with us tomorrow and, uh, oh, we got to recap. We got to tell him what happened because we, of <laughs> course, saw Yuz go home with the victory. But how'd he get there? He 3 one kind of to get there. Wes had to 3 one Lores to go through that lower bracket. Wes then went on to 3 2 kind of to get into the grand finals, where ultimately Wes 3 one Yuz to get the reset. And then there's one more set after that where Yuz was the one to close it out 3 0 over Wes, which is why Yuz's name is here and not Wes. Champion. Yeah, that's that's what that word means. Yes, he, he won. Mean. What a what a performance, man! I just was excited the whole time. Everybody, every game was so good. I mean, even when somebody was getting cooked, it was just so many highlights in it. It was still exciting to watch. Normally, you don't want to see a shutout, but whenever you're seeing it in high fashion, it's worth watching. But uh, with that being said, like I was telling you guys earlier. We have more NA tomorrow. We have more of the spring championship, but that will be the last of us. So you want to make sure you're here with us to rack up those rewards and see some of the best play possible. We will see you guys tomorrow. Y'all have a great night. With the weapon toss, chasing after doesn't need that extra hit. He brings this back. Into the red. What's gonna be the hit? The down sig and West! Those weapon tosses. There's the side sig. It's gonna be gravity against the down light. Uh, oh no! He had it! Like a marble toss with how many things he was in there, but he gets that. Definitely dominating right now. Oh man, but he gets caught one string from this great sword. I think that's the stock. Yeah, he's got to use the stock out of there. Both of them for the fences. Oh! oh my God. In the holster. I don't know if he's going to make it. Weapon toss. Oh. And wow, that was a boot over there. Oh, oh, nice. And that, once you start seeing the same pack, you're like, yeah, that's the Orion. I can't see it. I got it. <laughs> what a start. Oh, charge up. Charge up. Scrap oh! in the recovery! You're dang right! Unbelievable!